Hello everyone. Good morning. So, uh, <clears throat> my name is Serena Flux. You can call me Serena or Flux. I'm going to be doing Final Fantasy 13 Platinum Trophy. Uh, this is um, a very long category. <laughs> uh, it entails getting the Platinum Trophy, um, or just all achievements. Um, which I'll kind of explain as I go. It's kind of a lot of things. Uh, but... I will, uh, yeah, I'll just kind of explain as I go, and I should have commentators joining me shortly, so I will go ahead and start, if that's good. Alright, well, here we go. Thank you for the good luck. So this is uh, going to be pretty similar to just the uh, any percent run for the first, like, three and a half hours or so. It's not until uh, chapter 11 that things kind of start diverging. There's kind of a lot going on in this run. Uh, I'll do my best to explain everything, but uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, so uh, I know a few there, Mr. Zwanzig, will be commentating uh, Das Pharaoh, that's D-A-S Pharaoh. She'll be commentating. Uh, Lude Dolphin will probably be here. Lil Sharky. I'm not 100% sure who all is going to be here. There are a lot of people who are like possibly joining. So I can like say who's on as they join. Yeah, the FF13 community is pretty excited to see Plat in a marathon because until I started doing runs this year, um, nobody had touched this category since 2017. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of a 100%. It's just all achievements, basically, so... It's like the closest thing to a 100% run that we have. Um, obviously, in like a true 100% so run, we could... Um... Oh, and I'll explain the trophies as I get them. So, Instrument of Fate is just the trophy for starting the run. Uh, for the first four and a half hours or so, the only trophies we're going to be getting are um, the chapter trophies. There's a trophy for each chapter. Um, and then about four and a half hours into the run, we start getting uh, some other ones. So yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory so far. Um, the nice thing about this category is, or the nice thing about this game, I should say, is uh, there's no random encounters, uh, which is kind of a big part of the reason I got into it instead of other Final Fantasies. There's like, um, and I mean, I know there's like step count and stuff in, in uh, other Final Fantasies, but I kind of like the dodging mechanic where you have to kind of uh, like just avoid the enemies. You have to like, there's a lot of tricks we do. Like here, we lure this encounter to the left to create an opening on the right. Things like that. Uh, chapter one. The fights are fairly straightforward, but it's actually one of the harder chapters in, do uh, in terms of the enemy dodges because, uh, well, as you can see, the corridors are pretty tight. Which, like, I know that, uh, like, a lot of the, a lot of the later chapters are kind of have a similar deal, but usually the space to move around is a little wider. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Random encounters are just a bad mechanic for uh, casual play and speedrunning. 
Now, this is actually PS3. Um, I don't think I said that. Uh, yeah, you, you can run this on PC. It just kind of sucks, because once you unlock the uh, achievements on your Steam account, you can't unlock them again. <laughs> so I kind of think PS3 is better for this category, personally, just because you get to unlock the trophies every run. Yeah, another thing about this run is there's very little downtime. As you can see, we skip uh, we we can skip basically all of the cutscenes. Um, later on in the run, there are going to be some decently long like loading screens. Um, and there are some unskippable cutscenes that get up to like 25 seconds or so, but those are like the longest breaks in the run. <laughs> So I'll, anytime I, I need to take a break, I'm going to lose time for it. So I try to minimize that. But I also don't want to die, so <laughs> I always take a couple of breaks at least, sometimes more. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no, like, built-in breaks. Like, if you ever need to take a break, you're going to lose a little time for it, most likely. Um, now, there are, like, spots you can take breaks that you'll lose less time. Like I mentioned, there's some, like, 25-second break... 25-second uh, unskippable cutscenes later on. So, like... You know, it's better to take a... That's, like, not enough time for a whole, like, bathroom or snack break, but, you know, it's, uh... It's better to take a break then than, like, when you don't have any downtime, you know? Because then you at least this. lose less time. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Same plan as always. <laughs> Dang, I thought I was going to get Legendary Dodge. Uh, hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Zwanzig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the first commentator who's actually woke up like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, dang, if I, had, if I had started at the scheduled time, you would have made it for the start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was the plan. <laughs> You're the only but yeah, it uh, ended up starting a little sooner, which is fine with me, because I, I was already awake, like, an hour and a half ago. Hmm, fair enough. Oh, um, geez. All right. <laughs> uh, have we have we explained what what the category is? Um. Well, I just told said it's all achievements. Uh, I guess I could elaborate on that now. Um, basically, uh, so there are 36 trophies, but you can sum. There's a lot of overlap, so you can kind of sum it up. Uh, you need to get a 5-star battle rating on all 64 missions, as well as the final boss fight. Uh, you need to defeat a long Gui enemy, which is like a super boss at the end. Uh, you need to get uh, 20 Chocobo Dig treasures on Pulse. Um, you need to max out Crystarium on all characters. Oh, I forgot the camera trick. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, we're fine. <laughs> Oh, no, we're not okay. fine. <laughs> I'm just going to fight it. This dodge sucks on retries. <laughs> oh, yeah, it absolutely does. Yeah, so those, <laughs> you're you're not supposed to have to actually dodge that last guy. You just ran. Jesus, ran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of forgot uh... to do the trick. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, max out Crystarium on all characters. Uh, you need to obtain the Treasure Hunter and Pulsian Pioneer titles from a robot in Erba, which I'll explain more of what that is later. Um, then you need to deal 100,000 damage or more with a single attack, which almost doesn't even count as a goal, because we're going to do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, li literally any percent would get that trophy, yeah. so... Yeah, and... Uh, the last thing is we need to collect full data on 100 enemies, which actually used to be really free in the old route, but is actually pretty tight uh, with the modern route. 
Yeah. The biggest issues and most difficult trope. So basically, this centers but, around five starring the missions, maxing Crystarium, and uh, the Treasure Hunter trophy. Everything yeah, that's else. That's the big three. Yeah. Like everything else is either just incidental or requires like very little extra work <laughs> on top of all that. Uh, for eating and toilet breaks, um, I have a lot of snacks on deck. I'm pretty good about snacking during like load screens. Huh. Whoa, he said we gotta win this in chapter one. I didn't know he could. Didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess uh, I guess I'll go ahead and explain the uh, the treasure hunter trophy because that one's not super self-explanatory. Um, that's kind of the bane of the existence of casual players who want to get the Platinum Trophy, because it's very time-consuming and not really intuitive how to get it without, like, a guide. Um, but basically, you need to have, at some point, every weapon and every accessory in your inventory. You don't need them all at the same time, just as long as you've had every one at some point, you're good. Um, and then you just need to talk to a robot in Erba, and uh, you get the Treasure Hunter Trophy. So that's going to be the very last uh, trophy that I get. Um, well, not counting the Platinum Trophy, obviously. But. Hello, thank you for the good luck. Yeah, and so for the people who've, who've played 13 before, um, you know, they, they probably remember that most of the optional stuff only really opens up later. And so this means that for the purpose of the run, for the most part, the first three hours are going to be very analogous to any percent. Yeah. Like until gonna, you hit chapter eleven. Yeah, there's gonna be like a little extra stuff in uh chapter two. That's like about it though. And some different Crystariums. So here we get our first weapon upgrade on Snow. It is a increase of eight strength, I believe, which is actually fairly chunky at this point. Oh, yeah. This dodge is Wait. really tricky sometimes. Yeah, when you've only got 32, yeah. an extra 8 is the... Like, by the end of the run, 8 strength is basically meaningless, but at this point, it's pretty noticeable. So this wasn't a very good Chapter 1. I think I failed, like, 4 dodges, <laughs> but that's okay. Including <laughs> one that I should never fail, because I forgot the... <laughs> Got to do the thing. Uh, that's in, it, in, oh, no, okay. in any percent, these things matter. In yeah. plot, eh. yeah. Like I think, like let me look at my yeah my chapter one gold in plat is twelve twenty five, oh, which <laughs> like I wouldn't even continue <laughs> on any percent run with that probably. <laughs> but since it's plat, like I wake up in the morning and I'm like I just need to start this run and I'm not gonna reset so. I have yet to get a good chapter one in any, any of my flat runs. By the way, um, Serena is the world record holder for both this category and any percent. Um, yeah, came very the close. The version. Yeah, came very close to losing the any percent world record yesterday, but it lives on for now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how long is each chapter? So it varies a lot. Um, like the first couple chapters are like around 12. Well, I guess in this category, chapter 15 is more like, or chapter two is more like 15. Um, then like chapter three is like 18. Then chapter four is like a lot longer. It's closer to 30. And yeah, they just kind of vary until we get to chapter 11, which is two hours. <laughs> and then chapter 13, which is three hours. Also, for those who don't know, um, there are no actual game overs in this category. If I die to a fight, uh, I can just pause, or I can just uh, retry, and it just puts me back right before the battle. Um, so I'm not really going to be making safety saves much. I might do some just in case, like, God forbid my PS3 dies or something, but I don't anticipate anything like that. So this is a fun thing that needs some explaining. So chapter two, we're going to be farming items called shrouds, um, in particular Deceptisols and Fortisols. 
Uh, now, the fun thing about this is um, from this point forward, most of the fights we do are going to have some chance to drop a shroud. But what is interesting is that the drop rates actually increase the lower your battle rating is. Um, so we actually intentionally get really bad times on these fights because it actually increases the chances. Or in this case, it actually guarantees that we get the shroud drop. Um, like if I just got a five star on the fight, it would be a 50% drop, but because I got a two star, it becomes a 100% drop. This place was supposed to be yeah, empty. shroud drop rate for anything from three to five stars is just its normal rate. And then for two stars, it's times two. For one star, it's times four. And for zero stars, it's times eight. Since that one's only uh, is already fifty percent to begin with, three uh, two stars is enough to guarantee it. Uh, so we only need a good battle rating on these sixty-four missions, which don't start until chapter eleven, and then the final boss fight in the run. Um, so for these, our our battle ratings really don't matter. I mean, they, they, well, they, they do. do. Yeah. You want try, but <laughs> they matter in that we want a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Hope actually failed the two shot that once. Yeah. It can happen if he gets really low damage. Yeah. Again, doesn't matter because we want to go slow anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we actually set the battle speed to slow for those fights because uh, that makes our that makes hope attack slower, but for some reason doesn't actually affect the cutoff for the star ratings. So if we don't set the battle speed to slow, then uh, we actually can't get a two star fight on or two star rating on that fight because hope will kill them too fast, even if we don't do anything. So shrouds. Um, so the main ones I'm going to be farming are deceptisols, and we're going to get some fortisols as well. Uh, so Deceptisols, basically when we activate them, they make us invisible, so enemies can't see us. And um, if we have one active when we run into an enemy encounter, we get a free preemptive strike. Um, so that's mainly what we're going to be using them for, but we also use them for some really tricky dodges. Uh, and then the other shrouds are Fortisols, which when you activate them going into a battle, they grant you <clears throat> three buffs, um, Haste, which is self-explanatory, and then Bravery and Faith, which increase physical and magical damage by 40% respectively. Um, and so if you activate a Fortisol going into a battle, then all of your characters just have those buffs for five minutes, which uh, there's only one fight in this entire run that should ever go over five minutes, so that just means for the entire fight, pretty much. <laughs> Does Atticus not go over five? No, Atticus, Atticus, Atticus Flat, is Flat like... Is really fast, yeah, Atticus is usually sub 430, and like with a good fight, it can be sub 4. Okay, fair enough. Like in my PB, I had Snow die, and I had to revive him, and I still got a 359, because <laughs> the spacing mm -hmm. was so good. So yeah, the number of Deceptisols you want to farm in Chapter 2 kind of varies depending on what preemptive strikes you're comfortable doing manually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do 7. Uh, there is one preemptive strike I'm going to be doing manually that might kind of suck, but I think it's a cool strat, so I kind of want to do it anyway. Um, so I might regret that, but I, I think it'll be good to go for it, at least. No, I'm not even sure which one you mean. It'll be uh, a surprise mission, for me, too. Mission 9, <laughs> Kaiser Behemoth. Oh, oh, ooh. Spicy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's weird. Like, either it works, either it's, like, really easy first try, or you just get stuck there for, like, ten tries. <laughs> Like, I'm just in time for the good part. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Pharaoh. Don't oh, worry, I was I was one. late as well. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I I'm the Pharaoh. I helped Serena route the current iteration of Plot. Yep. Pharaoh probably knows the most about the modern route along with myself. Yeah, I, I used to run this 
category when it was new, but uh, I've not run it since like 2016. Yeah, I've, you know, <laughs> I've, yeah. I've, I've, the route I've watched is completely Serena's different. Run. The route is completely different right now. Yeah, than what it was before. Yeah, I'll explain some of the big changes as we go. Um, I guess like the biggest change is still the uh, the CP farming. The uh, the primary farming for Crystarium points has completely shifted from one enemy to a different enemy, um, which saves a lot of time just because it's more efficient Crystarium points, but also actually gives better gill as well. So it's actually kind of a double uh, double time save there. Yeah, it, it honestly makes the category a lot nicer. Yeah. It, it also removes a few of the RNG elements of, of the yeah. run to a degree. Yeah, no, definitely. And it makes, the main, it makes the main CP and guild grinding a lot more engaging than <laughs> yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, because, like, the enemy... Yeah, the enemy we used to farm for at Vladislaus is a very kind of tedious and uninteresting fight. Uh, but now we do Shaolong Guiz, which, to be fair, are kind of bullshit fights, because um, <laughs> there's a lot of RNG, but they're pretty fun fights, because there's like a lot you gotta react to. Forces you to not fall asleep 15 hours in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like you're a lot more likely to fall asleep farming Vladislaus for two hours than farming Shaolongs for two hours. <laughs> so this here is another... One of the fights where she's going to go slow intentionally uh, in order to farm the Shroud. This one gives a Fortisol, and then it also guarding a Fortisol chest, which will give two, which is all you need, right? Yes. You're not getting any extra forts for yeah, this? Yeah, it's just two. Yeah. Um, we were getting three before, but then I realized we can dismantle the Champion's Badge before PC2 to get a Fortisol. Because we did need three before, now that we're doing uh, Fortisol Gazeric. Hmm, oh right, yeah, that changed as well. So, like, the two from the Doctor's Codes go to Batuidus and, uh, and, uh, Gazeric. And unless we get a bonus, we're gonna grab the Chapter 7 chest as well. But that's just faster than, uh, than farming a ghoul. So we're still effectively getting three, I guess, if you count that one. I mean, but that's the best chest in the entire game, so... True. <laughs> I am a big fan of the Chapter 7. Oh, that all... grenade didn't hit anybody, that's cool. Good job, Snow. It I begins. Guess. It begins. Snow okay. starts being useful. Pretty sure that ghoul survived with 1 HP, too. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure with 2 HP you can see at least a little green, and there was none. Has this run changed much since Pink Pajamas run it? Yes. I don't know who Pink Pajamas is, but yes. It's changed a lot since anybody besides myself ran it. <laughs> since it was not run yeah. for three years. I recognize the name vaguely, but I don't know that they've ever run 13. There's definitely not a run. And I've been in the community for like six years, so I feel like I should know. <laughs> so uh, this, this fight is actually one of the other divergences from any percent. Uh, we're doing this to get... That ghoul survived with one HP too. Oh my god. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're doing this fight to get... Very cool game, thanks. To get the power wristband trophy. This is a 20% increase in strength, which is huge. Um, at this point, it's not really worth getting an any percent anymore, but we kind of need it in this category because we're going to be farming a few of these guys for um, more shrouds. And uh, basically, if we don't have the power wristband, then the target time or the, the time threshold to get a zero star fight is actually like significantly higher. Um, yeah, because the game scales these things with your strength, so if you are stronger, then it will be expecting you to get better times. Yeah. And so it's easier to get, according to the game, a bad time if you're stronger. Right. I mean, Thus, easier sense. to get the shrouds. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it makes perfect right. sense. Yeah, it is kind of trolly for the uh, for five-starring missions, though <laughs> I know... I know some casual players have actually like figured out 
Um, in some cases, it's easier not to get super beefed up. Uh, okay, well, I want to farm this ghoul, but it can't see me. I can't get a preemptive <laughs> oh, strike. <laughs> <Sig>. <laughs> hey, Sig. Thanks for the good luck. Sig is my roommate, by the way. He can probably hear what? me talking right now. <laughs> What's the final party setup? It depends. Uh, most of the time it's going to be Fang, Lightning, and Snow, but sometimes we will change to Vanille based on what we are trying to do. Yeah. I mean, th th this is the beautiful thing about this category, is that it really uses everybody. Yeah. So like, right? so like a big thing about this game is the Crystarium sequences take a very long time, especially on PS3. So yeah, like most, so yeah, for most category for for most categories, leveling more than your main party is just such a time investment that it's never going to be worth it. Because yeah. by the by the time you hit hit the later chapters, it's like okay, I could spend you know in any percent two minutes leveling hope for this one fight where he might be faster, but like he's not going to save two minutes on that fight, so yeah. why bother? Yeah, whereas this category. Maxing out every character and every role is a requirement of the category, so uh, obviously we're going to be leveling everybody for that reason, which means every character is, you know, at least viable to be considered for any battle. I, I'm not going to say viable for any battle, because some characters just are bad <laughs> for certain battles, but... Yeah, um, I mean, obviously there's still a little bit of overhead with that, with like having to switch out yeah, paradigms yeah. equipped and all that. Um, so yep. you know, as, as much as possible, you still want to stick to mm -hmm. a party. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, we but we will be changing parties a decent amount just because um, at like really high development, like every character is pretty good. Saz and Hope in particular kind of fall off pretty hard at late game development, but even there, even they have like their niche uses in post game. One thing that makes me kind of sad that Saz is the main character of any percent in all missions, but um, for plot, he's only really, for plot very late game, he's only really good for setting buffering cold blood and that's only really useful for one fight, even yeah. hope is useful, but it's mostly to lower target times because <laughs> his stats yeah. are lower than everybody else's. Hope is also just good for, uh... Hope is also just good for, like, fall warrens and, uh, like, sacrifices. I assume Sass continues to be extremely good for general purposes to do Blitz shenanigans. Yes um, and no. Blitz shenanigans can only take him so far. Yeah, the thing is that Saz can still out damage most of the cast, even like at very late development. The problem is that you have to lead him for him to be good. And that becomes a pretty big liability because we get more benefit from leading Fang for most of post game. Uh, because she has very broken buffs that her AI does not use well. <laughs> also, High Wind is pretty good. <laughs> uh, one interesting thing about the category that I was thinking about yesterday, the only full ATV skill we don't use in the, in the category at all is Snow Sovereign yeah. Fist. Yeah, and I... that's only because we barely lead Snow. There's one yeah. non-mandatory fight where we lead Snow. Yeah, And he's not there to do damage. Yeah. And he's not there to do damage. <laughs> we did try for the memes, or, or I, I tried at least. Uh, for the memes to come up with a Sovereign Fist strat for Gigantoir. <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, surprise, <feels> surprise. <laughs> yeah, the problem is... He will still be getting quite a lot of use, Dello, don't worry. Yeah. The funny thing is Sovereign Fist, like, in theory, could actually be decent to save, like, a little bit of time on Gigantoir, but... The thing is, the chances of you getting pained before it goes off are so high, pained or fogged, because both of them disable Sovereign Fist, that it's just, <laughs> it's not even worth taking the chance. Anyway, we, we, we had the first uh, boss fight here. Oh yeah, it's so. already over. <laughs> Didn't have much to say about yeah, that one. Um, 
Yeah, yes. Uh, um, by the way, I didn't uh, get a chance since we started early, but um, is there like an RTMP thing for this? Oh, you know, yes. Commentary? Um, yeah. Uh, I wonder if Zell's in chat. I can like... Yeah, shit. I should have. I could join the Discord real quick for it again, I suppose. To look for it. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure if it's there. Um, are there any RRLAT mods in chat who have that by chance? Because, <laughs> yeah, I guess you're going to be kind of behind watching the actual stream, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's why I am going to look for it real quick. Um, so... Okay, I have it here. Uh, so I have like the server URL that I put into like OBS. Is that what you need? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure that I have the actual URL to like just view it. I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> So anyway, um, I'm taking, I'm doing a quick menu here to take off the power circle from Snow. Um, that's going to lower his strength a bit, but it sells for a pretty good amount. We're going to use that to buy some accessories here. Um, yeah, I can go ahead and post that URL. I don't know if that's helpful or if you can... <laughs> find the uh um if, if you just send it to me i can just use it responsibly <laughs> yeah that's fair i can just put it into vlc real quick and see if that will work yeah. don't remember if that's the same link uh yeah <laughs> okay and if you get that to work you can send it to pharaoh as well So this is a fun fight. Very technical. We are going to auto battle once. The best battle. Fastest battle in the entire run as well. Snow actually missed an attack, so it was two seconds longer than it needed to be. <laughs> oh no, Snow, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, actually, I didn't do the menu. That would probably be why. Hmm. Luckily, that doesn't matter too much for that fight. But that is actually why it was bad. Time to reset. Yep. I wonder what happened. Fang was my least favorite character in my casual run, but I get the impression that if you know how to use her, she's the best character in the game. That's very close from the truth. Fang is the best synergist yeah. and the best commando, unless you can hit all of Saz's bullets, so it becomes hard to yeah, use like, that. Yeah, like, Fang is pretty, I would say, undisputably the most broken character at max development. Like, Lightning and Snow are also really busted, but... I think Fang is kind of on a different level, personally. <laughs> like, yeah, so the main thing she has going for her is the Bra is the Ra synergist spells, Bravera and Phaethra. We are going yeah, to see it? those a lot in the late game. They quadruple your damage? Um, I'm not really sure. No, it's a 80% increase. But it's basically twice the increase of Bravery and Faith, which are 40%. Yeah. Braver and Faithra are 80% increase. And then she combines that with having the highest strength growth in the game and um, High Wind, yeah. which is a very good full ATB ability. You're going to see that a lot. It's a ridiculously powerful finisher move. Yes, Braver and Faithra are very busted. <laughs> like, the, the balance so to speak, is that they don't last as long as Bravery and Faith, but, like, the fights are so short that a lot of times they'll last for the whole fight anyway, and even if we have to recast it, like, once, like, the time we save from the extra damage is, like, more, gonna, more than, uh, or will more than offset the time we lose uh, doing extra buffs. 
Yeah. Uh, so her worst role is medic. She's pretty garbo as a medic. I actually use her medic for one fight now. And even there, it's not mandatory. It's just kind of convenient. Are you going to use medic on Oedipus? Yeah. It's so I can oh. save her anew, which uh, can a lot of times help me save the Aether Soul on the first yeah, turtle yeah, loop. Yeah. No, Sentinel is one of the most useful roles in the game, especially in a run like this. Yeah, I will say that Fang is like pretty much the second best Sentinel behind Snow, but we don't really use her Sentinel that much because she's just so useful in other roles. <laughs> and like, the thing is... Most of the time when we need a Sentinel, we just use Snow. Yeah, exactly. And like, um, even though Fang is such a good Sentinel, like, the thing is... Like, multiple characters can be pretty good sentinels, while no characters can really do the f shit Fang does in other roles. Yeah. <laughs> we Yeah, we do. As the run goes on, we use less and less medic, um, just because our yeah, HP is so ridiculously high, and we kill the enemies too fast for <laughs> them to kill us. There are still some fights where it's useful, um, and we're mostly going to be relying on Snow for that. Because uh, he's yeah. like, he's a good medic when you don't need like really big full party heals. If you need like big full party heals, then you pretty much need Hope or Vanille. Um, nobody else is really going to keep up. But for just single target heals, Snow's one of the best in the game. Just be mainly just because he ca he has a very fast casting speed, as you'll see. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, every character has three primary roles that they learn by default, um, but then starting it in Chapter 10, they can learn the other three roles, which we call secondary roles. Um, now, we're not going to get any secondary roles in Chapter 10 because they're very expensive to develop, um, so getting them too early is really going to hurt our stats, but as we go on, uh, it's going to be worth investing in them because it gives the characters a lot of flexibility. And a lot of the best roles in the game are secondary roles. Like, Lightning and Fang are the biggest examples of that. Um, where they go from, like, pretty meh with only primaries to, like, the two best characters in the game with all their roles. Also, I'm about to do a Deceptisol cancel for the first time. Um, uh, I just ran through that frog, okay. So basically, that Deceptisol, um, so I activate it because it makes the... Enemy is not able when to that see happens. me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it makes it so they can't see me. But then when I get to the other side, what I do is when I when I clear the battle zone, I actually turn around and run into the enemy and instantly retry the fight. And what that does is it actually puts the Decept Assault back in my inventory. So I can use a Decept Assault to dodge encounters like that. And then I can spend like 10 seconds or so to keep that Decept Assault. Oh my god, I didn't... <laughs> I need to pay attention. <laughs> I didn't do the menu. <laughs> Lightning's secondary, best rec secondary role. I think probably her saboteur. As soon as she sees uh, yeah. good, but not that good. Yeah, I mean, Lightning has a very good saboteur and synergist. Her sentinel's all right. We just don't really ever need it. It's very, <laughs> it's very unique. Her sentinel. We are going to use it in one fight. Yeah, but even then, like Snow would be fine for that fight. We just don't have him in the party, so it's faster to use Lightning. Mm. We used to use uh, Lightning Sentinel for one of the big fights of late game. Yeah. Which is Atticus. But um, because of the new route, her stats were too low. Her stats were too low, so she started dying way yeah. too much in that fight. So which when I got there, I was like, no, this doesn't work. We need to use Snow here. Yeah, it's like she doesn't really survive very well, which is kind of the whole point of a Sentinel. So. <laughs> Because Lightning, as you'll see, is one of the squishiest characters. Um, the only squishier character is Hope. Yeah, Lightning is a very good saboteur because she only so she only gets four debuffs, um, but they're also the 
all of the offensive debuffs, which are the most useful for speedrunning. She doesn't really get the defensive ones, but that's fine because we don't; those ones aren't nearly as useful. Um, and on top of that, her casting speed is very fast, so she's very effective at getting those to stick. For clearance's sake, the four debuffs she gets is Deprotect, D Shell, In Peril, and Poison. Yeah, which we'll be talking a lot about debuffs later on. They're not really relevant yet because we don't uh, have any. We saboteurs. only unlock saboteurs on the next on the next chapter, and they immediately start becoming important. Yeah, because we get the uh, probably the two most overall useful. Well, I don't know the three most useful debuffs overall are going to be Deprotect, D Shell, and Imperil, and we're going to get Deprotect and D Shell in the next chapter. Uh, poison is going to be pretty handy as well, but the thing is most of the bosses and like hard fights are actually immune to poison, so we're not going to get nearly as much use out of those as uh, Deprotect, D Shell, and Imperil, which like most enemies are vulnerable to, including there like... Are st Go ahead. Sorry. There are some fights where poison is nice to have, but not a necessity. But there is one fight where you really, really, really want to see poison as soon as possible and as often as possible. Well, two, really, because you have uh, Fairsi and Longui. Oh, okay. Longui, we couldn't one stagger without poison. Okay, that's fair. Like, we'd have to take down the legs twice without poison, I'm pretty sure. Poison does so much damage on Longwees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, in fact, the element one. Yeah, it, it reduces elemental resistances, which is useful in two different ways, actually. Um, it is useful for creating elemental weaknesses where there wouldn't be one otherwise, and it's also useful for enemies that, ha that um, have elements, which there are quite a few that just have half resistance to every element. Um, Imperil actually drops the to normal resistance, which uh, is actually a big deal because um, that doubles the chain that we're able to build. Because on an enemy, or if you use, say, a fire attack on an enemy that has fire damage, then that's also going to have the chain that you build with fire damage, or with fire moves. Um, and since all of the chain that we build, or most of the chain that we build, is with this uh, Ravager roll, which is almost exclusively elemental attacks, that's a really big deal on a, on a few enemies, because it allows us to build chain twice as fast as we otherwise could. Then there are some enemies that have elements and are immune to Imperil, and it's annoying. Because <laughs> just all of our chaining is halved. Right, so I tried and I can't get it working with the with the link that you gave me, and uh, Zelmus is asleep, so <laughs> it is what uh, it is. Yeah, um, if you want to join had... the Discord, maybe you could ask yeah, like, the I... mods. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, I, I, didn't even, I didn't even. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I don't think there's any one else online who would know yeah it's fine i, I mean i've 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 posted the the, the question there for if, if anybody oh okay else. cool yeah dang i didn't yeah i didn't even think about that i should have asked <laughs> it is what it is it's fine yeah like how delayed is it not that much i don't okay. think um i mean lightning uh, just start running up the stairs. Oh, okay, so yeah, a few seconds. You didn't manage to make it work. Yeah, uh, as long as I'm cognizant of the fact that I'm a couple seconds behind, it's really fine. And uh, even with RTMP, there's usually some delay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to pick up a chest of two Libroscopes here. These are a pretty useful item. going to use quite a few of these. Uh, this, when we throw these, these uh, reveal um, all data on every en enemy in, uh, in the battle. Um, and that is useful both for the Lore Master Trophy, which requires us to have full data on 100 enemies. And it's also very useful um, to make our allies less dumb. <laughs> we uh, we rely 
since uh, we rely a lot on the AI in these battles, since we only control the leading character. Um, there are a lot of fights where we're going to use Libra or Libra scopes to reveal more info about the enemy, which is going to make our allies be better at what they do. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, the, the, the AI doesn't necessarily always do the thing we want them to do in every situation, but the, 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 lucky, the lucky thing, thing is it, it, they are very predictable. Yes. So generally, <laughs> you, you can rely on them doing the same thing every time, which is nice. Yeah, so like, we've found a lot of workarounds to the bad AI to make them less bad in a lot of situations. But they are still unfortunately bad sometimes. <laughs> But to be fair, a lot of the strategy in these fights kind of derives from <laughs> from uh, manipulating ally actions. So that kind of like adds to the depth of the strategy, even if it's annoying sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Like, um... Starting from Chapter 6, we're going to start unlocking the end spells, which um, grant elemental properties to your non-elemental attacks, uh, which we are going to seriously abuse those to um, target elemental weaknesses on enemies. Um, because basically, the, the role that is primarily for damage, the commando role, does not have any elemental attacks by default. So we're going to use the end spells to double the damage that we're able to do in the commando roll. Um, because like we can hit an elemental weakness with Ravager abilities, uh, because those are elemental, but those don't do nearly as much damage. I mean, there is one fight where you we are primarily going to use Ravager abilities for damage. That's true, but that's also before we unlock end spells. <laughs> yes. Is ATB refill their line shift a bug or intended? I am 99% sure it's intended. Yeah. I feel like that'd be... That'd be a really weird bug. <laughs> if it's just every 12 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Coincidentally. You, you just made me water at the mouth by, like, the very idea of having Enfrost for Proto. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yes. I've, I've thought about that. <laughs> or, like, D-Protect. Do protect would also be very good. <laughs> yeah. But hope's useless. Yeah, I mean we could get D shell too. He still does pretty good damage. At that point. No, I mean hope is useless because he's not absorb. Oh yeah, that's what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and but to be fair, that means lightning is also useless. Lightning is just uh -oh. better. I guess we didn't really explain the the idol and fight oh, there. Yeah, well, we, we can do it on Odin. Yeah. Shiva is a little. Yeah, there will be there will be better <laughs> ones anyway. That one's that one's fairly basic. The, the The main thing to know about that is that you can fill up the bar really fast by just standing there in Sentinel and taking the big attack. Yep. All right, chapter four. It's never really explained in the game. The game doesn't explain you a lot of things that make it vastly better. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that is like, <laughs> I mean, as much as I love this game, that is one thing I can't really defend is how, how just opaque some of the game mechanics are for no reason, but. The game does not tell you about the repeat button. That's a sin. Yeah. It really I, is. I didn't know. I didn't know about it until I no, started speedrunning. Same. Blew my mind. I never used it casually. So for and, everyone and... who doesn't know, if you queue up a string of abilities manually, you can then hover over abilities and press the um, right button on the D-pad, and that will put repeat on queue, and that essentially repeats the current string of ac the string of actions you did before without needing to manually input it again. Yep. 
I cannot repeat is probably what we are going to do the most in the entire run, not only for this category, but for all others. Uh, uh, this is not good, yeah. Uh, this dodge is kind of annoying, because these dogs are kind of like lurchy and random. Welcome to chapter four. Pretty Welcome to chapter four. considered the worst chapter by most runners? Yes. Because uh, it's long, the scenery is terrible, and there's a lot of RNG. Um, Imperil does improve chaining in some cases, so uh, basically if an enemy halves an element, then they're going to, or then that element is going to build chain half as quickly on that enemy. Um, so with Imperil, you're going to reduce a halved, oh my god, came in at the last second. <laughs> Uh, you're going to reduce a halved resistance to a normal resistance, which effectively doubles chaining. Um, now, now, if an enemy is just normal to elements, and Imperil makes them weak to elements, then that still technically increases chaining a bit, because it adds some what are known as conditional modifiers to chain. Um, but it's not going to like directly double your chaining like if the enemy halves it. Yeah, also if an enemy is immune to... Uh... But but if the enemy normally is uh, normal to elements and, and Imperil makes them weak, that does mean that we can then abuse that weakness. So yes, yeah. So in it... both of those cases, it's very useful. Exactly. So Imperil is pretty much always good. <laughs> yeah, unless an enemy is just already weak to elements. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can auto-battle to get through a lot of the game. Uh... It's not going to be very it's optimal. Like everything but... <laughs> yeah. in your path. It, it, I mean, I, I always find that like a strange criticism because it's like, yeah, sure, you can. Yeah. But you can do many things <laughs> yeah. in game. But wouldn't you just want to do the fun thing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I do, I, I do understand to a degree that you, you want, you want. You know, right? People, people will take the path of least resistance if they can. Yeah, it's just so. I, I wonder if like I just feel like if the auto battle option wasn't there, a lot of people would have complained that the game was just way too hard. Well, if they advertised repeat more. Well, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not uh, this wrong. This is the first fight where debuff. Oh, this, this is the first fight where we have access to a scepter, which in this case means to kneel. She only has D shell, and it's immediately useful. Yeah. We want D shell on as many enemies as possible here. It's always going to be on the um, post work soldier. On the yeah. latch drone, it might, may or may not inflict. Yep. And if it inflicts on all of them, it's a faster fight. Yeah. Um, so that is kind of one of the big RNG elements in this chapter is uh, some fights we don't need debuffs but they're nice so we don't like wait on them but if we get them it can save some time that's gonna be applicable if you got the kill there. yeah I don't think I did actually no I did okay cool nice. it yeah, is it's... possible for the uh, for the other enemies uh, to kill the pulse work soldier there which actually makes you miss out on the CP yeah because they yeah. get credit for the kill <laughs> Which, it's only 29 CP, so it's really not that devastating. It just means I need to be mindful on a couple of Crystariums to not go too far in certain rolls. Uh, Luckily, like, there's, there's very few fights where that's ever a concern, and they're yeah. pretty much all early on enough that the CP is pretty irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. So, these three dodges... The, the, the Serena just did the second one. No! Uh... The Iron Gutter, and it begins. Oh, I was so close to getting through without a hitch. That looked so free as well. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So basically, as Pharaoh said, these this is called Arn Gutter. As you can see, uh, these enemies can't see me, so I don't have they the option. This is one of the few dodge. This is the only dodge in the game where the enemies don't react to your presence, and that's actually important because yeah. that means you cannot manipulate their position in any way. You just need to wait until they are in a good spot for you to go yep. through. The only other yep. option we have is to just fight them if we want, but that would take a very long time. Yeah, because, because it's we... not a fast fight. Yeah, and we have no commandos in our party right now. I'm actually getting very unlucky right now. It's not usually this bad, but... 
Definitely can't Learn be. Learn Together 3 is the oh worst of the three. Because uh, unless you are named Kaya. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah, um... The thing is, this would have killed my any percent run if I was doing any percent, but since it's plat, we're fine. <laughs> This would yeah, losing probably time be to a re through four plot doesn't really care about that. Yeah, like this would be, <laughs> I would more than likely reset at this point if this was any percent. Well, not in a marathon, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd hope not. <laughs> so uh, this fight um, is one of the few optional fights we're going to be doing in the first 10 chapters. It's a very fast fight and actually gives us a weapon that, funny enough, it doesn't actually sell for that much gill, but what we can do is we can put it on Hope to replace his starter weapon, which does save for a pretty good chunk, or sell for a pretty good chunk of gill. So we're actually going to get this weapon and put it on Hope and then sell his starter weapon to pay for a shop coming up. This is not chapter 4 yet. Yes. Oh no, this is it's chapter 4. It's always chapter 4. Yep. We're already having fun. We should see you, Daddy, now. Yeah, so, um, speaking of, um, weapon chests for money, so did you end up cutting, like, all yes, of them? Yes, all of them. There's only one um, fight we do for the taming pool. That's the yeah. only one left. Well, yeah, and, and the any percent ones, like Spike of Defenders, we still do. Um, but like, uh, and not not even not even doing the healer staff there or anything. No, no. Man, sad times. Yeah, sad times. it's just I don't know. It's hard to say if that's faster on average or not, but it's definitely faster in the optimal case. So I'm just so, rolling with it. <laughs> And since since we need to eventually get all the equipment for Treasure Hunter, um, the the route used to have a lot more um, picking up weapon chests along the way, so that we don't have to buy them near the end, since there's going to be so much money grinding anyway. Um, with the new route, since Gil is a lot less tight, um, Serena started questioning to what <laughs> degree those chests were really worth picking up. Um, and basically ended up cutting all of them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so the run, I like to think of the run right now as three different segments. So the first one is any percent. It used to be different because of all uh, the weapons we picked up on the way. Um, made it also, Crystariums were also different. Um, oh, jerk. Yeah, this is another part of the uh, RNG in this chapter is these birds are very unpredictable. But yeah, since all of those, all, literally all of those chests are gone, there are some criteriums that are still different because we need to develop hope and fang a decent amount, and like what it was before. But uh, that's li really the only difference between normal any percent and what you are going to see here up until chapter eleven. After Alexand after the first boss fight of chapter eleven, which is right at start. We are going to the all mission segment, which is <laughs> very similar to all missions, except for two missions where we lead hope instead of leading Sass. Hey, and that goes until the start of chapter 13. At the start of chapter 13, Flat becomes its own category and does its own thing and starts doing its own thing. Uh, menuing is hard. Okay. Menuing is hard. <laughs> My menuing is always so trash at the start of these runs, because I'm, like, still waking up. Oh, um... Titan's asking to join, but only just joined your Discord, so it doesn't have the role to oh, join uh, the channel. I think a mod would have to do that shit. on her Discord. Um, I need to just mod... Uh, some people. Because my normal mods are probably not awake. <laughs> um... Time to move. Yeah. Oh yeah, he talks to me too. So, uh... I'm gonna try to multitask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> Had to think for a second. Yeah, so this is one of the fights where um, the debuff RNG kind of matters. Um, we really want Vanilla no, to it... land 
deep protect on these uh, enemies, but we don't really like wait for it because it's not necessary. But if she can get it, it's gonna save us a lot of time because Lightning is our primary damage dealer right now. Because one, because her stats are good, and two, because she's our only commando. Uh, Vanille's doing decent damage as well. Uh, oh my god, Lightning's dead. Oh, I have eight Phoenix downs. Okay, that's what. Cool. How do you have I'm, eight I'm very confused. <laughs> okay. So like eight normal Phoenix here would be to have like one or a couple. <laughs> yeah, like, like that's ridiculous. Eight is like the the there, there's a fight in in chapter three that has like several soldiers that can all drop them so i guess just every single one of them drop <laughs> yeah, the phoenix or something or maybe uh, i mean i did fail four dodges in chapter one so, oh my god he's yeah you so i probably you got a few there uh pharaoh yeah, you, and oh. zwanzig you are both mods now so you can give titan the roll uh, oh okay. titan here You know, usually I de set that on retries, but I kind of forgot to, and it worked out, so. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't realize what time this was actually starting at. No worries. Um, yeah, it, it actually started like 20 minutes ahead of schedule, because, uh, you know, marathons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you have the roll now, so if you leave later, you can join again yourself. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Mr. Hello. Titan. I write notes. <laughs> yes. Titan is the great unsung hero of the, of the community, yeah. <laughs> and, and not not only our community, like FF10 as well. Yeah, I'm working on 12 right now. And 12. Damn. What can't you do? Uh, get a good Actually, time. Run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is it's Redmond. the truth. It's a very consistent fight, it and is, it's. I think it's pretty cool, too. Yeah. It is the most consistent fight in Chapter 4, for sure. Well, oh, besides yeah. the Pantherons, I guess. <laughs> so, so for this fight, we want to... I mean, if Titan can explain, he's just got here. Sure, so this is another two-stage fight. Um, Dreadnought has some different properties in Stage 1 versus Stage 2, but the first stage is really rather simple like we are gonna stagger we want to get deep protect and d shell because it's gonna deal a lot of damage doesn't really matter that Vignal died there and again lightning's gonna be doing a lot of the damage yep. once this is over there's gonna be a cutscene and then phase two dreadnought's gonna start you're gonna heal up to full this one's actually really interesting uh because what's gonna happen is dreadnought has this move called wrecking ball that if it hits us we're pretty much like guaranteed to die but the thing is that we know exactly when it's going to happen, because it always happens at the same point in every single fight. So similar to how we stagger canceled Crystal Rain all the way back in Chapter 3 in uh, Madison War Mech, we're going to stagger cancel the Wrecking Ball here as well. And we do this simply by just like monitoring what the chain value is. So if after the string, Dreadnought was at above 164.5%, then we'd have to do two fires instead of three, and we just sort of chill here, and then as soon as Dreadnought starts to walk up is when we stop cancel Wrecking Ball. Past that, the rest of the fight is like pretty simple. He's gonna steam clean to remove some debuffs, and we're just gonna like hop into bully for one string so that Vanille can reapply deep protect because D shell. It, or D shell. Yeah. yeah. Deep protect. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> like it, it's just it's a lot of damage. And Lightning's gonna be doing most of it, and the rest of the fight is is pretty nice and easy. Like yep. it is very cons like Dreadnought will do the exact same thing every single time, right? So as long as you don't mess it up, the fight should be the same every single time, which makes it consistent. Mostly. There is mostly there is a chance for Vanille to miss some. She actually missed one debuff that fight, and if she misses two, it can be bad because she can uh, <laughs> she can stagger before Wrecking Ball because she keeps casting. But yeah, luckily that did not happen. <laughs> Yeah, well, like, most of the time, if you miss the stagger cancel there, you are going to straight up die, which yeah. is not great. Oh, um, fun fact. The, I the did actually... Chain... Go, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're good. Um, so, <laughs> in a recent practice run, I actually had a... <laughs> I actually had that exact thing happen where Vanille staggered because she missed too many debuffs, and I got hit by Wrecking Ball and survived with, like, 15 HP. <laughs> Oof, nice. 
Uh, so the chain differences in Dreadnought only really happen on PC. It can happen on PS3, but it's very, very rare. And no one really knows why the chain can be variable on PC, but it can be very variable. And most of the time, we will only be doing two fires on things Captain yeah. console when like, you all, almost always do three. Yeah, like I was confused why the notes always said uh, only do. Okay, hopes. About to die. Oh no. Alright, well, good news is I have seven Phoenix Downs, so. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so. Coming so in real handy. Yeah, so, like, a couple of things. One, uh, we, we used to have an older strat for that fight, which wouldn't guarantee cancel the Wrecking Ball. So we would get. We would have more HP. And most of the time, you would live with the Wrecking Ball. Except sometimes, Wrecking Ball can glitch and actually damage you twice. So yep. that was not that was not fun. Uh, aside from that, so character positioning you can affect how the where the characters are by manipulating their AI and like what spot yeah. in the parties that they are. And we do this actually in some of the fights a lot later in the run. Yeah, like we don't have direct control over character's position, even the character that we control, but there are a handful of little things we can do to manipulate it, which we're actually going to be doing um, not on the next fight, but on the fight after that, which is Odin. Uh, we actually yeah. do um, manipulate Lightning's position because uh, with her Ravager spellcasting strings, she actually backs up at the start of them. And, um, we're, or well, I guess... I guess the real manipulation is at the start we use attacks to get lightning close to Odin and then we use her spells after that to back yeah. her up from Odin and what that results in if it goes well is she gets away from hope which means that if Odin Odin won't hit both at the same time usually which is really important because if he's hitting both then the fight uh, takes a lot longer and is sometimes dangerous <laughs> if you can't heal in time. Yeah, so a, a lot of the fights in this in this game are let's manipulate the mechanics and the AI to do what we want them to do, and it's like really cool. Yeah, like that's, that's... our primary use of Libra, actually, uh, yep. Libra scopes. Yep, I, that's the only use of them actually is to manipulate our our teammates, right? I mean, it it also affects our auto battle as well, which can save some inputs, I guess. But yeah, um... dreadnought. Yeah, so this is the one mini game in the run, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of out of place. <laughs> but wait, um, you don't count chocobos? Okay, I guess you can count that. <laughs> oh, the, oh, you mean chapter eight? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, I need to hit at least twenty-five of these uh, because that affects the chest I get at the bottom of or at the end of this mini game. Um, basically, by hitting twenty-five uh, through like forty, I think. You get um, 20 thickened hides here, which is a really handy component for upgrading, which we haven't done any upgrading yet. Um, that's going to be I a can, really I, yeah, big thing. Yeah, I can thing. explain that when we get to it. Yeah, that's going to be a really big thing over the course of the run, especially in this category uh, because of treasure Where it's hunter. required. Yeah. <laughs> because so, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can only get through upgrading. So so the weird thing, like the, the thing that I never understood about that mini game. For one thing, I like it. I wish we could use the dreadnought more because I just like the idea of like running. Yeah, we are never going to see that off. mini game again. Yeah. We never see it again, right? But but the results of that mini game are that the the chess contents change, right? And it's a random chess content at the beginning of the game that you're only going to notice if you play the game again. Do that mini game differently enough so that you get a different chess content and you remember what it was originally. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's just like, why? Yeah. <laughs> There's no indication that this thing should be different or that you get different rewards for doing that mini game. It's just like, why? Yeah, so we should actually explain the Eidolon fight this time because we didn't on Shiva. Oh, yeah, we did. Um, uh, so basically, Eidolons are different from basically any. Oh my god, these soldiers are on crack. Um, yeah, these, uh, <laughs> this is a terrible chapter four. I'm at like seven failed dodges. Yeah, but um, every chapter four is a terrible chapter four. True. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Eidolon fights are different from every other fight in that they don't have an HP bar, um, but they do have what's called a Gestalt bar, which 
there are a variety of ways we can of ways we can fill them. Um, it's kind of difficult to explain in full, but basically we do it by building chain. Um, and depending on what role we're in, the amount of chain we build corresponds to a certain amount of gestalt increase. And when the gestalt bar reaches max, we press square and that completes the fight. Different Eidolons generally respond to respond to your actions differently. For most of the fights, they will respond better to Ravager chaining. Uh, for Snow, actually the greatest Gestalt increase is tanking attacks in Sentinel, and for Vanille, using Saboteur um, spells is better, generally speaking. Oh, I didn't put the Silver Bangle on Hope. That would explain things. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, yikes. That's okay. Uh, Only four die. more Phoenix downs. I think I still have five. <laughs> Math is hard. Okay. I don't so, think um, that there are any other chests that are manipulated or that are that change in other spots. No. Uh, no. Sure. Yeah, it's like just that. Yeah, every other chest is the same under all circumstances. Having routed all chests, I should know. This is, this is true. <laughs> you did do that. Um. Oh God. God. So yeah, yeah th this is one of the. To have a hundred more HP here. Yeah, I I, yeah. I goofed. <laughs> it's okay, I honestly though. think it's faster to restart. Maybe though. maybe not a, not at this point. It's not like not, well, not if, I had, point. if I had if I had restarted at the beginning, it might have been. <laughs> yeah, so the way that this fight is supposed to look uh, <laughs> yeah. is that the, the way this fight's supposed to work is uh, you saw you see, you see how now lightning is super separated from hope. So that's the manipulations that we were talking about earlier to, to change their change their positionings. All right, hope's gonna die and again, but I don't care. One about of the <laughs> one of the things with chain is that like commandos add duration and ravagers uh, like don't add enough, more or less. So because hope usually has more HP, it's enough that we can get into this really nice pattern of string and then potion, string and potion, and, and the chain never runs out. The more chain that there is, the more the Gestalt Gauge increases. Uh, but since Hope died, and it was attacking Lightning more, and time had to be spent on Phoenix downing, then it meant that the, the chain ran out, so it made the fight like a lot slower than it usually is, because like the, there wasn't any chain. Yeah, I just... Uh, I, uh, yeah, I may have been a little distracted on a menu earlier, and kind of forgot to equip the Silver Bangle on Hope. <laughs> I'm so, going to try and play it then. You should double check the Hope's weapon then. No, I, 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 I did the... No, 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 she did, no, she did. Yeah, I, I, I did it now. Okay, sure. Yeah. So th this is supposed to be the uh, Gestalt tutorial fight, which we do by ignoring the tutorial and then summoning and Gestalting anyways. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Eidolons operate differently than essentially every other character in the game in that you can summon them at the cost of 3 TP and they replace the rest of your party uh, so it's just you like your main character and their Eidolon uh, the, I, yeah, each Eidolon that? has like their own set of abilities and they do their own things and as you do more damage as they're out longer they build up their own Gestalt meter at any point that you want you can enter this Gestalt mode as, as we saw here, and it transforms the idol and you get this new set of commands. However much that your Gestalt was increased before you moved into Gestalt mode will affect how many points you have access to in order to do commands, and it will also affect the level of their sort of ultimate, their finishing ability. Uh, in Lightning's case, she's got Odin. Odin's finishing ability is Antetskin, which operates much the same as it does in a lot of other Final Fantasies, where it will one-shot kill anything that's below a threshold of HP given the level of Zantetskin and the chain that the enemies are at. Yeah, as well uh, as uh, Odin's physical strength, which uh, depends on his... Oh, dang. Which depends on a couple of things, but yeah. Uh, so, I Eidolons are, like... Summons are, are, are really powerful. They have a lot of... Uh, unique traits to them that we're going to be using throughout the run, or at least uh -huh. we we do in 
in any this, percent. I'm assuming we do it in no, platinum. No, in this yeah. category, we this is the only category that showcases all of the summons. All right, yeah. great. Um, so that that's a lot better than any percent then. Uh, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> so they they all have uh their own uses and they all have a few things that are common with them. Uh, for one thing, you're completely healed when you summon. They will revive any dead party members uh, when they're dismissed. If you were to die while it's out, then it dismisses itself and... Um, Bahamut is uh, used to skip uh, like phases on turtles, Niji. Yeah. It Sorry. can also be used on Versi, depending on luck. Yeah. I'm trying to think where we use Alex. Uh, just mission four, <laughs> which mission honestly four. Oh, will probably okay. not be the case at some point because I I kind of want to route right. in Saz lead for those two fights. Yeah, I, I forgot that this category wasn't doing Saz lead there. <laughs> <sighs> I think I got out of the battle. You zone. can try the old mission strat. No, I so. I have tried it. It's I don't know. Oof. I I win like maybe eighty percent of fights, so it's like it's pretty scary, but like usually saves time. So. The thing right. is, okay, let me do the shop and then I'll continue that. Uh, so while you're doing the shop, let me just talk about because you're still upgrading. Oh yeah, right? upgrading. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the, same this is the first upgrade. This is the first yeah. upgrade in the game. So uh, we gained the ability after Dreadnought to upgrade uh, items and weapons or accessories and weapons rather. And the way that it work is never really like very well explained. But there's two types of components. You've got organic components and you have mechanical components. Uh, oh, organic components don't add a lot of EXP, but they do increase the EXP multiplier. Um, so that when you use another component later on, you'll get bonus EXP from that component. Mechanical components give a lot of EXP, but decrease the multiplier. Um, so what our, our strategy is most of the time is use enough organic components to get to three times uh, EXP multiplier, which is the max that you can get and then use all of the mechanical components that we can at once in order to eke the most amount of EXP from them yep. in order to level up the items and accessories. And leveling them up gives them more stats. Uh, when they get to their sort of star level, you can upgrade them to the next tier of, of, uh, of items in its chain, and then you sort of repeat the whole process again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so one other it, thing to note, um, or sorry, were you done? No, I, I was gonna say go. Oh, okay. Um, so one other thing to note is we actually don't have the ability to purchase organic components yet. Uh, we unlock that next chapter. So that is why that uh, thickened hides chest that we got after the minigame earlier was so important, is because those are actually like really good organic components, um, which allow us to do that upgrade, basically, which we couldn't really do without them. Now we are in the gauntlet section of chapter four. Uh, there's four of these fights we have to do in order to activate some switches. Uh, they can be kind of annoying, especially because you really want to preempt all of them, and some of those yeah. can be a little bit tricky. Yeah. This next one is the only one that we absolutely have to preempt. Uh, I mean, we don't have to, but it's the only one that if you fail to preempt, you should 100% retry and go for the preempt again, because it's a very slow fight without... Yeah, Pulse Rook Soldiers just, like, do not like being staggered. Yeah, they have high chain resistance, and it's very hard to do any damage to them until they're staggered. So by preempting them, we can stagger them both at the very start and save a ton of time. Yeah. Um, brief description of plot. Let me see if I get all of this, and if I forget something, you can correct me. Yep. Finish all missions with a 5 star rating, beat final, bo beat the very final boss of the game with a 5 star rating, um, get at least 20 chocobo digs in Grand Falls, um, well, hold all of the items in the game at least in your in, in, in your inventory at least once. Yeah. Items meaning and weapons uh, and accessories. To yeah, weapons and accessories and killing a long Wii. Yeah, and uh, also, well, Pulsey and Pioneer, lol. And uh, oh, no. I think I think it's pretty impossible to not get Pulsey and Pioneer and get everything else. Yeah. Um. Uh, is, also, is Max, Max the Crystarium. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Max Crystarium. That was the one I was missing. And uh, uh, Lore Master. 
Yeah, so category end uh, ends with us beating the final boss again. Yeah. So we actually do the final bosses twice. Um, there's been some debate over whether the category should just end on collecting the platinum trophy. I am personally against this for a few reasons, but the biggest one being that the second round of final bosses has a pretty swaggy strat. <laughs> I, I 100% agree. <laughs> also, also, it's it's like another five minutes at the end of like yeah, a 19 hour exactly. run. Yeah. So like, who really cares at that point? Do the swag. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know, the thought of playing for 18 hours and then ending time on talking to a robot just really bums me out, so. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, well, I might die. Um, this is a pretty dangerous fight, because... Uh, oh, yeah. This okay, fight sick. can kill you very easily. Okay, so I was able to... Uh, I was able to damage one, but the less HP they have when they explode, the less damage they do. So I was able to... Um, get one of them down low enough and get out of range of the other one, so we didn't die. The bad news is that means I did not get CP from either of them, so I'm actually gonna have to do an extra Crystarium next chapter, I believe. Um, but that's okay, that's not a big deal. I don't, I don't think you're, you're missing water because you got uh, the post war Soldier and at least one bomb. Oh no, no you I didn't, didn't, I didn't get, get either bomb. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. then you, then you, <laughs> yeah. then you yeah, will be sure for water. So most people decep this dodge. I, uh, yeah, this is why. <laughs> I, I. <laughs> most people decept it. Let me show you why they do. <laughs> I, I typically prefer to do it without a decep. Some people yeah, have I'll called me dumb for that, and that is completely legitimate. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh... All right, so um. <laughs> this chapter in fact, is... in fact, I just needed. In, in fact, I just needed to really show you why people decept this. <laughs> so uh, this chapter, we have to, to drive the point home. <laughs> well, okay, I don't like decepting it on retries because they real. There's really not a good opening. Decepting it on the first try is it is okay. Um, you can go in between the two soldiers. Okay, we'll see. And if That's it fails, you then... can go between the two soldiers. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, but sometimes the bombs don't give you no. But yeah, the, sometimes the bombs get in the way, but. The, the, oh, this always. Um, can't get any uh, age assaults. That's unfortunate. This always reminds me of uh, several years ago. I did a I did a relay. I was I was part of a relay that included FF13 uh, that was organized by Japanese runners, and at the time. There was still like a significant contingent of the Japanese 13 running community that banned the Septisol canceling, so that was the rule of the relay. Oh. So no. I just I just grinded decepts for most of the decept dodges that we would normally do, and everything else that I was like, okay, this can be reasonably done without one. I just was doing manually, but the, the I realized that. I had made a miscalculation when I got to this dodge in the run, and I realized I had not calculated that one into my um, my decep farming, and I had not practiced doing it manually, so I just had to do it off the cuff. And I first tried it, so good time. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, really rubbing it in there. Like, people people want to bully me for doing it without a decep, but I usually get it first try, but then sometimes that happens, which is the risk of doing it without a decep. If if I if the bombs look absolutely free, I do the decept. If they are way too far to the left, then I yeah. try decept. Well, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't, and I decept. Yeah, the thing oh, is that I hope sometimes... you like bro. That's the last time we're gonna see her. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, for those who aren't who like couldn't tell how bad that chapter four was, this was a thirty-five minute chapter four, which oh, my gold is like a twenty-nine thirty-four. So. Yeah, that That's is the rough. general consensus item finder, which is why we don't ban it now. <laughs> it's it's just a weird rule, honestly. I, yeah, it's I just like a weird. It's just like a weirdly arbitrary restriction that, like, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. It's like it's not even really a glitch, like. So even uh, if you're it's... trying to make it like a glitchless type run. It still doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know. Even even as early as like uh, twenty fifteen, when when Shirasu, who was who was like doing uh, runs on on Nico, 
he also just did decent cancels, so yeah, you know, the 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 good runners always knew what was up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a fun thing. Um, oh, uh, everybody's favorite character is um, quite infamous for running at 92% the speed of every other character. Um, every character in the game runs at the exact same speed, except for Hope, who is about 8% slower. So, uh, Major, and everyone else is an adult, right? So, Well, Vanille is like 19 and like... Well, no, Vanille's like three. No, well, okay, she, but no, okay, but her 16. physical age is like. Uh, I looked it up the other day. I thought it was nineteen, but oh, I, it, it, okay. yeah, it is. She does her... not look nineteen. Well, no, okay, and Lightning, Fang, and Snow are all allegedly twenty-one years old. So yeah, <laughs> and Saz is yeah, allegedly forty. No, does not look 21. like twenty-one. No, none of them do, and Saz doesn't look forty. Saz is not forty. Yeah, Saz is allegedly forty. What? I thought he was like 30 something. Oh, I, that's the opposite of what I thought. I thought he was like in his 60s. You no. think he's 60s and he can run around that well? <laughs> no, my dad is literally 60 years old and, and basically looks like Saz. <laughs> Age wise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna. Oh man, I'm, I'm sad that he doesn't have the afro then. Yeah. <laughs> that was what I was about to ask. <laughs> my dad is bald. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, so, these uh, it... I've I've been fairly fortunate so far. These dogs can be a real pain in the ass to dodge because of Hope's bad run speed, but uh, so far they've cooperated. So this is chapter five. This is going to be just entirely a lightning and Hope chapter. First it's half is Hope, second half chapter. is lightning. Yeah, I really uh, story wise, this is one of my favorite chapters. And I like the battles in this fight. I just hate controlling Hope <laughs> for obvious reasons. Well, I hate controlling Hope when running. I'm fine with like leading it in battles, but yeah, most of there's actually a lot of fights in this chapter because there's going to be an area that's going to have like energy gates. So we have to clear the area of monsters so that the energy gates can open. Yeah, there are actually five out of the seven fights in this chapter are because of that. Then yeah. there's one fight that's guarding an elevator we need to ride, and then one fight that's just the boss of the chapter, which is actually yeah. going to be, uh, I I would say, the hardest fight of the first ten chapters. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Uh, no. You could maybe but, argue yeah, Bart one. 1. Yeah, I was but... going to say Bart 1. So the the end boss for this chapter, Aster Proto Florian, yeah. Florian Aster I'm gonna... Bulbasaur. Just FYI, um, I'm gonna let you all commentate because I'm not gonna be able to talk during that. Yeah, time. of course. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's it's one of the hardest fights in any percent. Um, yeah, it's like top five in it's any one, percent. It's Arguably one of the, the hardest fights just to learn. It's one yeah. of the hardest fights in Black because like I, for, I for, didn't like, want to state that because <laughs> I don't because <laughs> like the harder like the hard enemies were mostly kind of like jacked Jeez, as like, hell for those. Uh, <laughs> sure but it's it's like one of the hardest fights to learn it's one of the hardest fights to execute uh and it's new it, runners it will struggle the most in two fights the the proto florian and pc2 yeah and orphan yeah. one too sometimes and uh part strat. two i would say oh yeah and part two and part one. the cortisol and uh, everything else. i don't know i didn't really <laughs> I no, didn't really like, find Bart, Bart 1 that hard when I learned just because I did care about this Yeah, because like Bart 1's not hard to win if you just spam potions. It's... Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Bart 1 is just hard to get this run escape. It's not hard to actually win. Proto is hard to actually win. Yeah. Like Proto is just kind of a huge step up um, from anything we've fought up to this point just because of how much you have to like keep track of and multitask in that fight. Um, cause like you have to, we don't use what, much medic. Why, 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 don't, why don't we, why don't we get more into the details about it when we yeah, actually that's get fair. the proto. You have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, so like another 10, 10 minutes, minutes from now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. thinking ahead how much time it's actually going to take to explain that fight. But yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's true. Um, oh, I missed the preempt. So you, you want the preemptive strike here because it uh, makes the fight more consistent. Um, it doesn't really save time. You can actually, I actually think optimally the fight is faster to not preempt, but um, 
No problem. The but thing is, preempt, though. yeah, the thing is that if you don't preempt it, like that fight ended up being kind of not as good uh, as the preempt because um, I had to do an extra Fyra. Um, if the fight goes well, you can kill with two Fyras and, and four Blitzes, even without the preempt, but it's just right. not guaranteed because they like to Wait, wait, around. water, 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 water. Yep. Got it? <laughs> okay. No, I didn't. <laughs> but I'm okay. getting it now. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so you, you this usually is don't the do reason a, we need water. Yeah, so you usually don't do a Crystarium here is why I forgot, but because I did not get a kill on either of the bombs at the I end of... I didn't remember either. Oh, I, I, I like saw you running up and I was like, wait, wait, you need it! But I guess I didn't say it fast enough, sorry. Yeah, uh, um, yeah we so need the these are the so, so these are the Behemoth the... fights. Oh, uh, there's actually going to be two of these, and, and they're both very similar to one another. Uh, they're weak to water, and... We can use these in this in order to interrupt them, because uh, they're going to start off each fight with two attacks, and we're going to stagger really quickly. And the attacks, like the swipes, will kill us. So after we stagger, uh, Serena is going to be ex like early executing the waters as needed in order to make sure that the feral behemoth just can't attack us. Because if it attacks one more time, like lightning's going to die, and this was a chance of killing Hope. And, like, we don't, we don't want to deal with any of that. Uh, this version, this is first one of the fight where we have Hope Lead is actually a Turbo lot jet. slower than... Hmm? Turbo Jet. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, Go ahead. So, the, is, is a bit riskier, and it's slower than the second time we do the fight, even though we're not doing any development between the two yeah. of them. Simply because Lightning currently is strength, uh, or has a lot more strength than Magic. And the AI will prioritize alternating uh, abilities. So her string was water, Aqua Strike, water, or Aqua Strike, water, or Aqua Strike, water. But when we do the fight next, we're just going to have Lightning under control so we can just use entirely Aqua Strikes and it will be a lot faster because she's using a lot more damage. In this fight here, Crawler X10 is. Not, not even like, like joking. Game. Is a really scary fight. It is like <laughs> probably the most dangerous fight in the first uh, like ten chapters, just in terms of like you can die even if you execute properly. <laughs> yeah, because all all ten of those do a lot of damage. They can all target hope, and you can literally spend the entire time throwing potions and still die. Yeah, I there was a clip I had a while ago of like um. I literally opened, I didn't even throw a Fyra at the start because they started attacking me right away. I threw a potion instantly, then lightning died, so I threw a Phoenix down, and then I threw like two potions and then died after that. That was all I did. I threw a potion, <laughs> a Phoenix down, and two potions. Didn't even shift, and I died. <laughs> yeah, it's it's honestly like a really scary fight. And yeah. if it goes wrong, there's not a lot that you can really do. Yeah. That it, fight... It's also a fight that we really don't want to preempt because there's 10 of them and that preempt animation takes forever. Yeah, which the preempt would make it considerably safer, but like... Eh, Got to go fast. It. it takes yeah. forever <laughs> to preempt them. Yeah. L luckily, also... even if you die to it, it's a 20 second yeah, fight. Yeah, it's a pretty right quick now. death, so... Like, yeah. That, yeah. Like, a death to that oh, fight isn't, isn't even preempt... really going to kill like an any percent run. Isn't pre a preemptive also a little um, dangerous because that means their ATV is also filled, so, so they immediately start, I don't know that that's, start off the fight? I don't know that so, that's ever been confirmed. That's like a theory. It, it is. And, is it? I'm okay. pretty sure it is, yeah. Because, well, I mean, it's need, just, need you would know more. But... It's not consistent is the weird thing, because, like, sometimes they attack right away on a preemptive strike and sometimes they don't. So, like, I just never really understood. I, yeah. I've, always, I've always noticed that it does, but... Uh, the thing is that you can instantly stagger them before they get the yeah. attacks off, so it's a lot better. So this is the Feral Behemoth 2 fight, and if you compare it to the first time that we do it, this is going to be a lot faster. Um, yeah. Are you doing the three attacks? or? Yeah, okay. I do three attacks. Sure, so... I've never had uh, good results with two. <laughs> maybe console versus PC thing Could be. there. Um, so we, we start off just not even doing a full chain, because we're going to kill... So much faster that we don't need a, like all the stagger duration, and every single time that the Feral Behemoth is gonna like start like right you see there, where Feral Behemoth started jumping forward, and then Serena 
used only one aqua strike and it interrupted and it just like eats the atb and that fight was so much faster than the first time and it's yeah. like a lot safer you don't have to worry about about like anything with that fight yeah also uh i know it looked scary when hope got down to like 10 hp or something but we actually keep track of that um the max damage calculated roll, the max damage roll on feral behemoth swipe attack is 158 so i saw hope was at like 167 or something so i didn't bother potioning because because behemoth's only going to get one more attack off so if you can if we can survive that one there's no need to potion a few times that we actually like can be as precise with that Mostly because it's early game and yeah. the the numbers aren't like so incredibly high, and the rate of attack is is rather yeah. Low. Like on a lot of later uh, fights, it's it's yeah, harder. There to... are some later fights where HP is routed in very precisely for us to survive, especially yeah. on the first and third to toys loops. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, when we when we first put lightning in our turtle farming. Uh, party, she can survive two stomps with like potentially like a hundred HP. <laughs> if if uh, both the if both the stomps do max damage roll, then um, lightning will survive with like a hundred HP, but she'll always survive. I will I will bow to your expertises. <laughs> Which a hundred HP is a lot right now, but by that point our HP is like in the fourteen yeah. to twenty thousand range, so a hundred is. So, Very when, so when I was rerouting the Crystarium after the after the new Vladislav's farm, because I did another reroute in another in all missions, I knew I know how important HP is. So after grabbing all the important things for all the characters, I just prioritized HP on everyone, and it was oh just God. perfect for Lightning to be able to survive that loop. So there's going to be another summon fight here. Um, this bike is kind of a pain to deal with normally. The, the any percent strat used to actually be to just deal with this fight normally, but it's it's faster and a lot more consistent to use the summon here. Yeah, yeah it does require us to use an Aether Soul because we sometimes need to be able to summon on the next fight, which is Proto. Um, but like, we really don't need that Aether Soul that badly anywhere else. Yeah, fine. it was it was literally, I was looking for a place to use that Aether Soul since I realized we didn't need it on B&J anymore. Yeah. yeah. And this uh, was the best candidate. Alright, so... Proto. The next fight is Proto. Uh, or, especially nickname Bulbasaur. Until yeah. next time. Um, so what... The, the deal with Proto or the, the main deal with Proto, is that it's got four, uh, they're called exoproofings, where it becomes uh, elemental affinities. Uh, you've got exo fire, ice, water, and light. Uh, the thing is that each of them requires a different strat in order to deal damage with, because the uh, e each of its... Why am I so, so hard trouble speaking right now? Uh, <laughs> It, it, its resistances like, will change nice. and its immunities will change as well and part of the reason that this can be awkward uh is cons is relating what they're weak to versus what it's not weak to so we have stuff for uh water and lightning because we have both aqua strike we have lightning strike for when it's exo water and aqua strike for when it's exo um exo lightning but we don't have something for Exo Fire, and we, which is weak to Ice, and we don't have something for Exo Ice, which is weak to Fire. In fact, we don't even have Blizzard on Lightning at all, so it's a lot harder to deal with Fire. So, what we're, if it is Exo Fire, we're, it's, it's really slow, because we have something to wait it out. The rest of this fight, um, Proto attacks a lot and does a lot of damage. So, we actually try to split up Hope and Lightning, so that... Uh, its seed burst attack won't hit both of them very often because it, it will kill. And then it's going to use efflorescence, which you already saw twice, and that does a lot of damage. And if Hope isn't at full HP, it will kill Hope, and we don't want that. Be All right, so Sex of Fire, which is not great. So yeah. because we don't have a good way of dealing damage to Proto with Lightning at this point, we're actually just going to stall this out 
get its chain to about 180, 190, and then just sit in war in peace and keep on throwing runes or attacks just to wait this out. So yeah. like whenever this happens, it costs like 30 seconds, which is unfortunate. Yeah, we're not gonna get a lot of damage here just because we can't really do damage till we have a weakness to target and it's staggered. Um, yeah. But the max. If, if we stagger here, he's not going to change to anything else until he gets out of stagger, and there's just no way for us to kill. So, and and then afterwards, if we did like half of his HP, then we would just die afterwards because he becomes much more aggressive. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so what we don't want to see here is all right, cool. We didn't want to see ice. So now we're on Exo Water. So. How are we going to do this? Well, we're actually treating it very similarly to the Feral Behemoth fights, where we're going to be using Spark Strikes, we're going to be doing a lot of damage, Lightning is Strength spec, so this is doing a lot. And we're going to time our refreshes so that it refreshes Hope, with the intent of keeping Proto stun locked the entire time. So that it all goes well, Proto should not be getting another attack off. And we do that, some people do it with 4-4-1 four, four, Spark Strikes, some do it with 4-3-2, it's really personal preference, doesn't really matter a lot. And this should kill. Yeah, if it doesn't kill, it. Um, which it always should because of fire, then the reason that we use the Aether Sol is as a backup here, because we can summon and instantly Zantets can, and that should also pretty much always kill. The other reason we use an Aether Sol is the Exo Ice Strat, because we don't have Fire Strike also requires that we use Zantetskin to kill it, or it's like we just yeah, don't like we just damage. we just can't kill because uh yeah lightning doesn't have flame strike she has fire but she doesn't really do that much magic damage right now so um so that that was yeah. that was clean that was very clean uh, yeah the, aside from the, the exo fire but that's not my fault <laughs> for for this fight was called magical proto we, we didn't have a max power respawn i don't think i don't we remember didn't. it was a long time ago no, we didn't um, it. yeah we did okay. Uh, we used to get that. We, just, we basically had to use Odin for all of the exoproof things except for fire because we can't really kill on fire. Yeah. But so uh, the, the nice thing about Fizz. Is... Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, finish your sentence. No, 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 go, 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 go. I yeah, so the, the really nice thing about physical proto is not only is it faster, but because we have that PW star, the power span star, it makes the fights at the end of chapter four a lot faster as well. Yeah. Because. Saz is just doing a lot more damage. That was actually the main time save of that yeah. of that rerun. Yeah, that was a funny thing that when um it was Rooster who um came up with that uh route, and his main idea was that it was going to save time at the end of chapter four. But then it and then then he was like, okay, well, okay, then how do we do Proto with this setup? And then it turned out that Proto was also faster. So hey, good times. Oh, you earned a trophy. Yep. So That's that one is... of the fun things about running this on PS3 is that you get to just you can just easily make a new profile for every run on your console, and then you get to see all the fun trophy pop-ups. That was the time. actually really close. I was nervous I wasn't gonna afford a poison there, but I was it, I it was fairly be guaranteed. Uh, yeah, but I, I just wasn't sure because I uh, missed. Uh... Oh, let's not put so... the power wristband on Vanille. Yeah, so, so you only miss you the, the Crystarium here, <laughs> yeah. you miss both bombs and the uh, pulse work. Wait, so did you not grab the extra HP node on Saz there? Do you... I, I couldn't afford it, so I'm just going to uh, hope I don't die. <laughs> I, I think you can afford the one no, you grab, it's, it's really cheap. It's 100, and I have 88. Really? Yeah. I thought it was bad. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> So this is chapter six. This I'm is a really sure. chill chapter. You can double yeah, check if you want, but I'm fairly. I, I'm, I'm I'm double checking this real quick because I'm fairly certain it's cheaper than that. Because I know there's plenty of times I've been not able to afford that. Like when the I miss. Music in this chapter is like so good. Oh yeah, great Do music in this chapter. Pretty easy dodges. Um, there are like a couple kind of tricky ones, but there's only one fight in this chapter, and it's uh it's kind of a neat fight. It's kind of annoying because there's some RNG, but. Um, it's yeah, kind of no, a cool his, strat. His stage one nodes are 75. Oh. Uh... Grab the node! Uh, okay, I'll check. I don't think I can afford this. Oh, yep, you're right. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm confused, because I know I've been short for that before. Mm hmm Oh, well. 
I did get both of the end spells, right? Yeah, sure. The music yes. in this game yeah. is, is, is very good overall. But th this chapter is, like, super calming. We're, we're going to be doing another uh, upgrade here. Hey, the only other person who sells components here. <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's just not worth not selling them. You're, you're gonna lose more time than you save. So we're, we're just gonna be boosting up Saz's uh, weapons over here to uh, make the next the next the, the end boss fight a lot a lot faster. We're also gonna be picking up uh, going a bit of our way to pick up a doctor's code. Um, have you explained what the Doctor's nope. Codes is assembled to yet? Okay, so uh, Doctor's Codes are, are really good in the early game because they increase the effectiveness of potions, and we've been using them a lot so far. But yeah, The Doctor's Code is the main reason why we don't need medics at all in yeah, the doc early game. Doctor's Code completely outclasses medic for a very significant portion of the run. Yeah, really, we pretty much don't use medic at all until, like... It used to be Sky Tank, but like that's not even the thing anymore. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I still me. I still use Tireless, but I could probably stop. I just haven't tried it <laughs> without. I haven't gotten a run there yet, so I technically still use Tireless. Uh, well, we use we use yeah, War and Peace for Chap uh, I mean, for Frodo sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, um, but like, like, it. like all right. So, uh, in the early game, early game, the Doctor's Code is useful because it outclasses medics. In the late game, it becomes one of the most important accessories in the entire run. Yeah, so what one thing that we didn't go over is disassembling items. So we can upgrade items as, as we've seen before, but you can also disassemble items. And if you disassemble an item that's max rank, you get even more things from it. So what are Doctor's Codes disassembled to? A Fortisol, Aegisol, Aethersol, and Elixir. And Elixirs not only restore full HP to your whole party, they also restore all of your TP. Which we haven't really gone over TP either, but uh, oh, I, fig I figured you might have. Wow, I wasn't yeah. here. I mean, so, they've we've been using it, so people will probably notice. But it, we can it's we can the probably closest go. Over. Thing, it's the closest thing this game has to like an MP system because yeah. regular magic is free. Um, but you don't you don't have very much of it. It's basically what you use to use some of your more advanced techniques like summons, yeah. Libra, Quake, that kind of stuff. Basically, there are techniques which are distinct from abilities in that you can use them in any role and they don't consume ATB, but they do consume your technique points, which you can have a maximum of five. Um, and uh, like Libra costs one, for example, Summon costs three. We're also going to be using Renew and Quake quite a bit later on, uh, so we'll explain those as well. Yep, and the way that the recharge system works for TP uh, is the first two uh tp gauges are like very quick to fill up and then the next three take progressively more and more and you get tp by like fighting and being in fights for longer yeah well you are yeah go ahead or you can use an ether saw to restore all of your tp but you can only do that outside of a fight and like we've already used one uh before proto where we had three. We, we used three TP to summon, and then we used the Ether Soul in case we needed to summon again, because you know three plus three is six, which is more than five. At least I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's what my calculator yep. says. Yeah, we um, do have some uh, math experts in chat, so I I got the same thing. All right, cool. cool. <laughs> um, but that that's not very useful in a fight, and there are definitely fights that we need all of the TP that we can get. So for that, that's why elixirs are so, are so important, because not only are they going to heal everybody, but they're also going to restore all the TP, which means that we can use like more summons, more quakes, more renews, like all the good jazz. Yeah. And there are only four elixirs in the entire game. There is no repeatable source of elixirs, um, and three of those four come from dismantling the three doctor's codes in the game. And then there is one that we get from a treasure chest in chapter 13. Um, elixirs are nice in plot, but they aren't really 100% needed except for one fight just because I mean, it makes it yeah. faster. I mean, we could uh, easily get by with zero elixirs in this yeah. category. We'd just lose yeah. a lot of time in a couple spots. In, uh, in any percent in all missions, elixirs are very, 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 very important. 
Yeah. Also, also in case it was not obvious, I pretty much only do any percent. <laughs> so yeah, all my commentary is from an any percent slant. So I will. Uh, yeah. They. <laughs> The, you're, you're, everyone else in here are, are the order order category experts. <laughs> yeah, yeah Zwanzig and I are the only ones who have done runs of the category, but Pharaoh... I want to do a run next yeah, week. Pharaoh will be doing a run, and uh, she is also really up to date on the route, because uh, she basically co-authored the new route with me. So are the chapters in this game more linear? Uh, the first 10 chapters are fairly linear, yes. In chapter 11, it becomes chapter very Chapter 11 non really opens up. And then chapter 12 is linear again, and then chapter 13 is semi-linear. But then uh, after chapter 13, we come back to post, or we come back to pulse for the rest of the run, where we... Uh, Do basically whatever we yeah. want. Yeah, and that that is a very non-linear uh, segment one of the hardest so, segments to optimize because of that so here here's the end boss for this chapter or should i say end bosses because there's two of them and Kena. so now the only fight yeah it's, it's yeah. the only fight in the whole chapter so they each have uh, different weaknesses one of them is weak to lightning and one of them is weak to thunder uh so what we do in this fight is we use a lever scope uh to manipulate saz's ai so that Saz knows the right way to buff. Um, as you see, since we're targeting Enki, who's weak to li lightning, he's going to use End Thunder. Uh, we're going to hop between the two synergist paradigms so that we can get all of our buffs. Like we want bravery, we want faith, we want all, we want all the good stuff. We really and don't care about faith. But... We really don't care about faith. <laughs> Saz will put it on anyway. Saz put really? it on first. So if but... if we could control Saz here and make sure that he only casts the, uh... the buff about it could be a lot faster uh -oh. but uh -oh, so, I so see the, 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 the primary thing with this fight fans. oh that's not good you're um, like digging into the endless phoenix dance stash yeah <laughs> so, so the primary thing with this fight is we want to stagger and then we get to use poison for the first time and poison has some really good uh mechanics to it namely that it deals percentage hp and does a percentage hp once per second and this can interrupt so ideally, what's going to happen is we stagger each of them one at a time. We use Poison and Saz's attack to keep them interrupted so they can't do what they just did, which is Bellow. Because Bellow removes all debuffs that are on it. We worked hard for this debuffs, right? Like, we, we don't want them to break out of them. And it and it buffs it itself up, so it gets, like, haste and faith uh, and bravery. And, and Don't you it, want bravery? I mean, I guess you don't uh, know. I don't know if it's I, worth it at this point. At this point, you'd have to sit in Tide Turner for quite a while for him to get to bravery again in his buff uh, priority list. Fast. So, <laughs> not very good here. So, the, uh, like, that's what's supposed to happen. But unfortunately, Saz died, so it kind of stopped the stun lock. Uh, but this has been a very good recovery. Uh, it was an okay it, recovery. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. as you, you see, won the fight. Yeah, uh, won the probably. Fight. <laughs> You're about to win the this, fight. This Enlil here is is how it's supposed to... Or, I say that, and then it bellows. It bellows. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, and, Enlil, Enlil would have already been dead if he still had bravery, but... Yeah, I'll, lost it. yeah. yeah. Which is a bit unfortunate, but th that's how the fight is. The fight's supposed to go that you stun lock each of them one at a time and, and they die, but then the, oh, yeah. the stat does uh, kind of throw so... a wrench in the That's kind of died, so... Except chapter 6 was where plot used to start doing its own thing. We used to do an extra fight here for a weapon that we were going to sell later in order to be able to afford some upgrades. Since that's out of the way, um, this chapter becomes any percent. The next were we, chapter were we was. The I thought we just got them early so that we didn't have to buy them. Um, that's what they did in the old route. Then we started selling them to get max upgrades on oh. Blaze Fire and Wild Bear in Chapter Seven, which saved like a lot of time on fights. But we kind of just came really? to the. Yeah, no, like huh. it, like um. Those were huge time saves on like Sky Tank, Kalavinka, Bart One, Bridge One. Um, yeah, like they were pretty nice. Oh, and Ushu One as well, and Ushu Two. It, it could be pretty good, but we kind of decided it's just not worth it. <laughs> um, it, 
Yeah, and chapter 7, be because of the max upgrade and because we needed to do another fight for another weapon and that one we kept, which was going to be a weapon for Snow, the Paladin. Um, and to do to grab that chest, we used to summon, and summoning there meant that we could not summon on Rushu 1. Not getting getting that chest means you need to TP to use, to use the summon on Rushu 1, so the strat is just any percent, which makes it very boring. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as much as I like the time save from skipping all those chests, it, it was kind of sad that it just turned the first 10 chapters into any percent plus some extra shrouds and crystarium. Yeah, so uh, this is chapter seven and we're going to be doing a lot of team switches in this chapter. We're, we're actually going to be seeing all of our character, uh, all six characters. Uh, no, no, we're not going to see Sazer Vanille. <laughs> no, but but we get to but like we're going to see Fang and that's number six. Oh, yeah, we're going to see what I was trying to yeah. say. I realize I phrased I, I might not have phrased it. Very <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Which we, well, we we see our six. Which we technically saw Fang in uh, chapter three cutscenes, lol. But it's a cutscene. Ah, cut yeah. Speaking of cutscenes, there are a few unskippable ones in this chapter, but they're pretty short, like this one. Yeah. I mean, that's kind uh, of a cutscene. Basically, basically, the only unskippable cutscenes in this game are all around elevators. Uh, yeah, and the ice ramp after the ice Orion. ramp, which is also in this chapter. Yep. yep. They're all just loading zones disguised as cutscenes, <laughs> or loading loading screens, I should say. So, to um, since there's quite a bit all of running around at the front of this chapter, um, something to kind of note if if you're used to this game as a casual experience and you're wondering how we are still like doing so much damage to things, there's there's a few reasons for that. One is that strats are better than stats, uh, and buffs and debuffs are really OP, and we leverage them really well. Uh, the other not reason is that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, not not this chapter because we don't have our good buff. Like the Saz and Vanille are are the the best buff and debuff uh, character respectively. So for a very long, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of yeah. sad that whenever we switch back to the other party, um, we uh, can't use it as well but um the the other thing that's kind it's of important very sad to you know... can't use vanilla on bart one and make it good yeah <laughs> that strat was yeah. so cool <laughs> look <laughs> we thought the strat was so cool when it changed to this but it's just whatever you're used to i guess um but anyway um the other important thing is uh, compared to like an average casual experience okay, we probably have higher offensive stats for most of the run or at least like comparable because upgrading is really op yeah like we didn't really comment about it specifically but for that previous chapter saz had like an upgraded weapon to level 19 and a maxed out power wristband which gave him like a hundred and something strength which is pretty high for that point of the run yeah it's like massive um but that's all just because upgrading is really OP, and you can't do as much upgrading usually in a casual file, because one, upgrading is weird and you suck at it because you don't understand how it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of a bad system, but it's really useful if you know how to use it. The other reason is a casual player generally is going to want to keep most of the equipment they pick up and not just sell everything. We just sell everything that we know we don't really need right now. In Chapter 6, we actually sold the Belladonna Wand pickup, which is, like, a really useful weapon for Vanille, but it's way more useful to sell it and get, like, 17,000 gil out of it. Shoutouts to Minus, Belladonna Wand strats and fee for any percent. Mm. True. <laughs> True. I, I, another way that I like thinking about it is they can't kill you if they're dead. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, compared to an any percent file, we... we, we or, um, I mean, com casual. That's not why. Com yeah, compared to a casual file, we'll generally have much lower HP, but our offensive stats are usually pretty good. Yeah, basically, offensive stats are going to come a lot more from equipment, while HP is going to come a lot more from Crystarium. So, our HP is going to kind of lag behind because we're skipping all of these, um, like, unnecessary fights. But we are, like, really efficient and calculated with our 
uh, gill usage, so we are still able to get like really big offensive stats. Or, Is that some kind of power? Oh yeah, Pog. Uh, so that was Shiva Stadium. Uh, hi Snow, it's been a while, like four chapters. Oh yeah, Snow's back. Yeah, And in fact, it's been so long since we've had Snow. Like, it's been so long since we've had Snow that the game gives us a tutorial about how to use Sentinel again. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, to be fair, it never explained it in chapter three, but yeah. <laughs> well, it was supposed to. Like, that's what the Manazvin tutorial is uh, supposed to teach you. Oh, I thought that yeah. mostly just explained, like, Medic. Yeah, I guess it's well, probably both. It, it keeps on saying, like, the tutorial, like, says, like, switch to the Sentinel roll to take less damage when it, oh, okay. like, hits you. Um, and then we just yeah, so, make sure it hit us. <laughs> yeah, so so we're back here with Snow. That was Shiva Stadium. It's one of the fights that we start off in a summon. So we get to just, like, It's an interactive kill... cutscene. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we get to kill them all. You you can actually, uh, on... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's... I don't think you can do it on PC, but on PlayStation, you can entirely do that AFK, right? Just with auto assault. You could. Uh, uh, you could. It's slower than doing what we do, because you would. Yeah, it, it is slower, but like it would be good for a bathroom break if somebody yeah. needed it. I, that, that's that's known in the in in, in the old school uh, yeah. community as Sharky's pee break. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the chest we just picked up, we talked about it. Supports his old chapter seven chest. The chest is, although there are enemies there, the chest is actually unguarded, so you can just decept cancel past the enemies to grab it. Uh, world record grabs We're that chest there. because in a, a world record eighty percent. Uh, world no, record because... almost didn't grab that chest. <laughs> For almost world but, record, uh, didn't almost world record didn't grab that chest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, in any percent, some runners choose to pick up the chest if they don't get a bonus for it is all for bar two. That is especially important for console because the second fight against Barstandalus in any percent without a fort is all is pain and suffering. Although, <laughs> although pain also, and suffering. also we we haven't at all Suddenly gotten into fame. who Barstandalus is yet, so don't really worry. About it. Yeah, we're gonna. Fight. I mean, we're not gonna go into it. The story doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna He's fight like Barstandalus. Right? Like Bar Bart's the owl. I was never clear sure. on that. Is he, or is the owl just like his minion? I've I've never I understood. The, I think I, think, I, I actually <laughs> the think the owl, owl has like a, his minion. The owl has a name of its own. It's Minerva, so I'm pretty sure it's just a minion. Yeah. Also, hi. That was Fang. I hope you enjoyed the Fang section of the yeah. chapter, the first We're, one. Uh, fun fact: in any percent, there are two fights um, that we lead Fang for. Uh, one of which is a fight that's coming up later in this chapter, which is, funny enough, the second longest fight in all of any percent. Um, but we really don't lead Fang very much in, uh, in any percent. But in Plat, we lead Fang for more fights than we don't lead her <laughs> in the entire run. So, oh, really? Yeah, we lead Fang for more fights than the other five characters combined. Mainly that's because... Pretty yeah, this is going to be a full run. Yeah. It's mainly because she is the lead for every grind fight that isn't Longwee's. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, right, yeah, Vlad Farms, so like, every Vlad, turtle. every Shaolong, every Turtle, well, besides the first Mission 63, which is Saz's lead, most, yeah. Most of Fault Warrens as well. Yep. Just most yeah, of post-game. Also sacrifices, uh, I didn't get the to chest. Go. Yeah. Chest, 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 chest. chest. Honestly, I don't know if it's even worth backtracking for at that point, but I just don't want to <laughs> screw myself over to save, uh, like, 20 seconds. So, Fang, Fang is, like, a pretty sweet character, uh, and actually in any percent, we used to use Fang um, as, in, Bring as back part Frank of our endgame. Yep. Hey, Sharky's trying. Uh, but we, we used to use Fang as part of our endgame. And, and we don't anymore, which is a shame, because Fang's awesome. Yeah, Fang's pretty fucking sick. Which is a big part of why this is my favorite category. So Are they really that afraid of us? That's fair. Yeah. Which, uh, we kind of talked briefly about how broken Fang is. You're going to be seeing a lot of it once we get to that part of the run, because... Uh, yeah, I'm excited, around, I don't know. Yeah, around, like, seven-ish hours in... Um, Fang, Fang effectively becomes the main character at that point. Yeah. yeah. We're going to put her in our party, and once we put her in our party, we use her for every single fight for the rest of the run, except for Longwees. 
because so she's... also some, something that I don't I don't know was discussed. So any Crystarium points that you get throughout the run are shared throughout all characters, even yes. if they're not active, even if they're not in your party. So like that's why at the beginning of your chapter we're actually able to level them up. Mm -hmm. Thank because God! Imagine if we had to do like yeah, separate. No. Farming for like the we'd, different oh, characters. We'd no. have to use all of our trash characters and post game. We'd have <laughs> to like have farming show ones with low. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh god. That'd be a yikes for me. And and actually, so the game knows this, right? Like because so the game knows by this point that you're used to experience being shared throughout everybody even when they're not active. So what it does is when you get Fang here for the <laughs> first time, it actually has her, like, pretty well-developed. Yeah. And uh, so it, it makes it seem as though she's been with you the whole time and you've been loving her up. But if you actually look at, at all of her Crystarium things, all the nodes cost zero. Yeah. Beforehand. Like... So they're, they're just, like, lying to you the whole time. Yeah. So basically, they they put Fang at a level that they expect the other characters to be at this point. So she is yeah. just like absurdly overpowered. Another thing about Fang is her starter weapon, Bladed Lance. Um, at level one, it has 55 strength. Uh, which to put that into perspective, like the oh. highest stat on a starter weapon on any other character is like I don't know, like 20 <laughs> or something. Wow. Not very that much. Sounds right. Yeah, the, the downside yeah. is that um, upgrading Bladed Lance really doesn't give as good of returns on stats as the other, because like at max level, Bladed Lance is pretty comparable to like Blaze Fire in terms of strength. Um, but like at level one, it, it just outclasses every starter weapon. By, like, well, I mean, a lot. that makes sense, right? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. like they kind of expect you to, okay, I need to kind of pay attention for this. Uh, sure. So up come, so we've got another shop here. We're going to be doing a bunch of upgrades, and I think this one's different than any percent. Nope. No, no, it's no? the same. Okay, fine. It used to be. <laughs> uh, it used to sure. be. So what? Uh, we're gonna we're just gonna be upgrading like blaze fire and uh, wild bear, which are lightning and snow's weapons. Uh, but then afterwards, we're gonna have Ushumgal subjugator one, and it's it's a pretty uh, interesting, unique fight. Um, Is it? Well, I mean, it's kind of interesting. It, it it's kind of dumb. <laughs> now it's boring. So, you explained the long, uh, long paradigm shifts earlier, right? Nope. Nope. Okay, so <laughs> we're not as methodical with our commentary as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's just too much to explain. We're covering what we can. <laughs> um. So, every single time that we do a paradigm shift. Uh, it has an animation associated with it, and each and and there's a most of the time it's a short animation. So you just do a paradigm shift. They do like a, a quick, you know, stance like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna punch you now," and uh, and oh, then that's, that's that. where you punching. backtrack for those. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, I think my notes. I was really that. confused for a second. <laughs> uh, so. The, the exceptions for this are uh, when a fight first starts. So, with only slight exceptions, uh, the first paradigm shift that you do in a fight is going to be a long paradigm shift, where it has uh, much more animation, it zooms in on each character, it takes a lot of time. This is really slow because, additionally, the first uh, paradigm shift that you do in a fight is also going to be an ATV refresh. So all the time that would be spent in that animation uh, is time that we could be using, like, spending our ATV. How do we get around this? You can delay the first para the first long animation for the paradigm shift if your character is jumping in the air. So what Serena did in this fight was Snow's punching, 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 and you do a paradigm shift while still in midair. Uh, this means it's going to be the short animations, and we were able to to delay the long paradigm uh, shift animation until a point where it didn't matter and we weren't going to be wasting ATV by doing so. We did a similar thing all the way back in chapter three, 
beat Chapter 3, I can remember, oh, yeah. um, in Chapter 3 during Garuda fight. And, and yeah, so, like, we, we do it again here. The rest of this fight is, like, pretty simple. Um, it's got this tail hammer attack, which we summon buffer so it doesn't knock us up. Uh, it casts overdrive at a certain point, which inflicts on itself deep protecting D shell, which means that we just do a lot more damage that we, than we were doing before, and the rest of it is just, like, we just kind of punch it to death. Uh, it's kind of funny that we, we summon on that fight, despite not even, like, going into Gestalt at all. It's just because Shiva, Shiva? is just a better party yep. member than Hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hope that is... That fight uh... without the summon used to force you to use Sin to get Bar Thunder and protect. Yeah, because Hope really has no survivability at this point. Yeah, the thing um, is, we are kind of... We not level him. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of intentionally keeping Hope under leveled at this point, because we're actually about to have a fight with Solo Hope, where we actually want him to die as soon as possible. Um, it's actually my joke. It's, it's actually an unwinnable fight. Um, so uh, you're you're supposed to lose it, and then after you lose it, Fang and Lightning jump in to help him out, and we do the actual fight. But uh, basically, if we level Hope too much, it takes longer to die there. So oh, why am I backing up? You. Nope can win the fight can you but you need to yeah. well no you can no you can't win so, win uh but uh if the, you do one percent damage yeah if you do one percent damage you will trigger the next fight yeah. oh gotcha okay so that, that's <laughs> what you do in randos usually actually oh that's is, cool i didn't know that. it's, it's faster to just deal the one percent than hope to die because in randos you kind of need the stats yeah <laughs> makes sense um, yeah, so yeah, this hope, hope just kinda, are hope interested, kinda... the randomizer for this game is actually pretty fun. It was made by Bart. Yeah, the rando's a lot of fun. It's it's a really good rando. Uh, there's a lot of different settings, so you can tune it how you want. Um, yeah, it's 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 really good. So the upcoming there's an upcoming dodge here in the next hallway that is is really weird uh, <laughs> because the battle zone doesn't extend to between the columns. So if we just hug the left between the columns, we keep on hopping in and out of the battle zones, and I I, I feel like really bad for the soldier there because like, it, it is blind. It's, it's like it's like a little kid yeah. when you play peekaboo. Like, that's what that is. Except even worse, because we're clearly within <laughs> within sight range. Yeah, so so this is the this is the fight where we try to die, and usually we make yeah. a joke we about We really like, take advantage I, well, of I believe in hope! Hope can Bye do it! Hope. We really take Bye advantage hope. of hope's strengths here, dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is Ushu 2, uh, which is... You would think it would be very similar to Ushu 1, but it's not at all. Um, for one thing, we have more characters, and for another thing, this one hurts a lot more. Um, so we're actually gonna, like, be doing all of our menuing and stuff here, that's why we retry, because it's slower to this do it. Because the fight would be very <laughs> bad with the default paradigms. <laughs> yeah. Very, very bad. Uh, and we're getting an ability here on Fang, uh, uh, Launch and Smite, which we haven't seen yet. Um, but commandos, if they get launched, have the ability to, on a staggered target, knock them up into the air. To launch uh, them. This is to launch them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have been a better way to phrase it. Than it was. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is this is very useful because they can't attack us back. Uh, yeah. And yeah. then additionally, we also have smite, and smite works on a launch staggered target. And if you were to do an attack at an enemy who is launched and is about to end on st end stagger, uh, instead it will smite, and the smite just does more damage. You can uh, actually so do it on a grounded character if your character is airborne. Fun fact. Oh, I did not know you that. You can get that smite on Bart too. Violent. No, that, on Bart that's... 1. You can get smite on Bart 1 if you time it just right. But it but, has to be well, during the distribution animation. Yeah, if uh, lightning happens to jump. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a lot more violent if you think about it. Like, I'm gonna smite you from 50 feet in the air. But anyway, so, Ushim Gull Uh, This fight, like, it attacks really quickly. So, we're, Fang has slow, and 
We're going to be using slow for two reasons. One, so that it stops killing us. And two, uh, one of the things that Saboteur's abilities can do is they actually increase chain duration. So Lightning and Hope are just going to be in RAB during this whole time. They're going to be building up the actual chain amount. And we're relying entirely on Fang's slows in order to uh, actually make sure the Saga lasts long enough. Yeah, it's, it's also... turn back around there. Yeah, it's also yeah. worth noting that... Uh... <laughs> Uh, spamming slow is the really only way Fang could build chain right now because she does not have the Ravager role by default. She's the only character, which is actually a big liability uh, early on, which is why she doesn't really get super busted until late. Um, yeah, it's also why she got removed from the any percent. Any right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that and having, snow out damages her because of faster really. animations. Yeah, like not having tried disaster for so long is, is not great. So this is actually going to be one of the the fight, at least in the any percent part of the run. Can't speak of flat percent. Where you do a uh, two staggers. Uh, yeah, so it after is two stagger. The... Yeah. Um, you so... even with the other you could have one spider. So uh, after the first stagger, it's going to start attacking like a lot more and with a lot more damaging things. So that's why we're going to be chilling in the stick tower for a bit so that. You know, People don't die like lightning. Please, please move. Okay. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> um, yeah. So, after, like with that aside, like once we reapply slow, once it's targeting Fang with the provoke sentinel and stuff, like the rest of the fight is is pretty simple. Uh, what we're what we're doing in the staggers is really just keeping uh, Ushu two in the air while refreshing uh, lightning primarily so that like her thunders just do a yeah. lot of damage they so, add a lot of chain yeah lightning is actually doing massive damage with these thundaras because they are um, targeting an elemental weakness which we don't have access to um the uh in spells at this point in the run we, we, we don't have access to most of our good shit in this fight which is why it's the second longest fight in any percent yeah like, um, it, we're actually not able to use a Fort Assault on that fight because there's a fight right before it. Um, if we were able to, I'm f fairly certain we would probably farm one. I don't know if that's actually no. been, like, tested with, like, Cheat Engine or something, but... I, yeah, I don't know. Um, Cause then like, I, one stagger would be viable. Because, like, then, yeah. yeah we'd be worth... Like, a Fort would just save so much on that fight. Yeah, but sadly we we can't. Uh, yeah. So this is Hope's house. Uh, this this is not a great place. Not no. gonna lie. Nah, this is the best fight. No, no, it's really not. <laughs> Someone else want to explain it? I don't even want to think about it. So these okay. these enemies here are very rough. Uh, they can kill you real fast. So we use a summon to be a lot safer. Summons will always heal you, so even if they damage you... Um... Not 100% true, there is one summon that... Yeah, I do <laughs> um, But so, this keeps us safe. The summons are also really good at just provoking the enemies, so they just usually are the ones getting targeted. But so the annoying thing is that you have to try to build up chain duration on all these enemies. Uh, I think uh, I might. Okay. One sniper may survive. Yeah. With, with just Lightning and Odin, it's pretty hard to build chain duration on all of these guys. And then the the idea is to have enough before you go into Gestalt so that everything will then stagger during Gestalt and die to the finisher. Yeah, these guys yeah. die pretty quick, luckily, so it's not too bad. Yeah, and, and, and like, they, they're all, they spread out, so it's just hard to hit them all. Yeah, the, the, there's a lot of randomness in this fight with regards to positioning, or if they actually manage to all, like, hit light, then it turns into yeah. a mess. Yeah, and um, these scavengers are really cool, because they uh, cast Vigilance on themselves, which means their attacks interrupt our attacks. Very cool and fun. That was very cash money of them. Uh, this fight is a bit easier. Not as, not as many enemies. There's a Bombardier, which is like a uh, It's honestly a really scary enemy, so we deal with that one first. 
it's if uh, if it gets its bazooka move off, it, it just I think it can get close to one shotting you. Yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it can. Yeah, luckily we can stagger him pretty quickly, so it's not too big of an issue. So, one of the coolest fights is coming up. Oh yeah, this fight is awesome. Yeah. So, something that we uh, that we did earlier during the Ushu 2 menu is we strength spec Fang and we magic spec Lightning. We're going to reverse those. Uh, so that we're going to be doing physical spec Lightning and magic spec Fang. Now, you might not know this because it doesn't really come up very often, but Lightning's weapon is actually a gun blade. <laughs> But we don't use the gun part of that very often because Lightning really likes slicing her opponents to pieces. But this next fight's gonna change all of that. Because in this next fight, we're fighting Havoc Sky Tank, which is this like giant helicopter thingamabobber. I don't really have a better way of explaining it. Yep. To, to be, yeah. It's like a giant <laughs> helicopter. You'll see. The, the, point is, the point is, it's rather far away. It's yeah. so just it slicing is it with your sword is... <laughs> Yeah, so. so what what happens when it's so far away? Lightning's actually going to be using the gun part, and it, like it attacks so fast and it's so nice, and I wish we could force it more often. Yep. Um. So the other really cool thing about this fight is we're actually going to summon. Uh, and the summon does a a lot of really nice things. For one thing, it provokes the sky tank so that. It, we don't have to worry about it knocking up our party members, which can cost a lot of time if we can't do anything when we're knocked up. It's also a lot better at actually like hitting the Sky Tank than the other members of your party are. I also and... say light, Lightning is just so OP for this fight that yeah. we can just do all the damage with her and Odin is just like useful support. Yeah, <laughs> like I... I wish we could use the gun part of the gun fleet, like, in more fights, because it's really nice. Yeah, if you but just look can't. at how fast Lightning is getting these attacks off, it just, Plus the attacks are ridiculously fast, and since we have haste from the Fortisol, it just, we've already taken out the four minor parts, which uh, decreases its HP, and now it's going to, after a little bit, go into its... Uh, its main cannon phase, and at that point we can stagger and kill it. Yeah, and and this is the only fight that we get to force uh, machine gun mode with lightning. Uh, she, and the other time that she uses her gun is when she's like doing a backflip as like a, as part of the end of chain. And that's not so, fast at all. Yeah, that one's yeah, really slow. Cool. So there's main cannon. It it can hurt. It can knock everybody up. But once it's in main cannon mode, we actually can stagger it and then just start, you know, killing it down. The other interesting thing about this fight um, is if, let's say, uh, a character doesn't have axe, like, it, it happens in randos, but if <laughs> a character tries to use an ability that it can't actually use, to hit because the sky tank is too far away it will force shift it to another ability that can hit it but that is like super slow but it's it's just cool that they like put that put that in there i mean we don't we don't see it there but it comes up in rando a lot more yeah that's also one of the very few fights where we're going to stack magic damage on fang because <laughs> uh, she is significantly more effective as a physical uh attacker um but they are gonna see magic fang. Yeah, we later, still. Though. Yeah, like we'll still we still use magic fang a bit. Um, mainly because even if her magic stat isn't one of the best, she still has Phaethra. <laughs> so even on enemies where we really rely on magic damage, we still want to lead Fang. Why does she have Phaethra? What do you mean? Fang and Vanille have Phaethra and Bravera and Protector and Shara. That's their thing. Sir. That's why Fang is the best synergist in the game, just because of Braver and Phaethra and Protector it's, and it's, it's uh, arguable. Yeah. She doesn't get end spells. Yeah, because no end yeah, spells. No, are... She doesn't have end spells, true. But she is but... the only character who gets the combination of the raw spells and haste, yeah. so there's an argument there. Yeah. It's like... It's she's the best when you don't need end spells. Like, and even when you do need end spells, you're still probably gonna rely on Fang synergist. You'll just have like lightning or Oper says. That's literally what we do for Shaolongs. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, well, I guess Vlad, we don't use Fang synergist. But yeah, well, yeah. yeah we don't. This is chapter eight. That. 
Yeah, this is so chapter eight. This is the shortest chapter on the run. Um, it's got two fights. A lot of plot. Uh, three, yeah. two, three fights. One two. of them is a tease. Yeah. Oh, two yeah, forced sure. fights. One optional fight. Because it's seven yeah. seconds and gives us a rather expensive weapon. So, well, not that yeah. expensive, but expensive money, enough money, to money. be worth seven money. seconds. Yeah. It's good money. And like, uh, even though we're gonna need to buy all these weapons back for Treasure Hunter, we're we're gonna be getting most of our gill in early game from selling weapons. Yeah. Um, just because that's the best source of gill <laughs> early on. Like, there yeah. aren't really enemies we can farm for gill, and even if there were, it would be slow. So. And again, the 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 money we get from that lets us upgrade yep. stuff early and that make is... us do actual good damage. Yeah, that's like the. For almost the entire thing we use uh, Guild for is uh, upgrading. Yep. So we, we're we're gonna have another mini game here, where uh, Saz has a chocobo in his hair, <laughs> and <laughs> he'll and get a lot chocobo of screen time later. <laughs> yeah. And and the chocobo wants uh, wants to play hide and seek, so we play hide and seek, but it doesn't do a very good job of hiding, and in fact. Most of the time, you just run straight forward, and the chocobo is just there. Oops. Also, picking up some pretty useful abilities in the Crystarium oh, right yeah. here. Saz is getting Note. jacked. Note Blitz. You'll uh, The most potent ability of any percent. Yep. So, uh, Blitz is fantastic. It's it's all right. <laughs> so. <laughs> So each, well, not each. Most characters have have blitz, which is their version of like an AOE attack. Um, the AOE that it does is different for each character. So we've seen Lightning use her blitz a lot, where she kind of swings her sword around her. Yeah, for most party members, it's so, sort of like they do a little twirl, twirl and it hits yeah. everything around them. Yeah, like Snow does like a roundhouse kick. Um, but for Saz, they, they kind of did his differently. Where... Well, they kind of had to use his guns. It doesn't yeah. really work the same way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could throw them as... I mean, Hope, Hope manages bullets. to have a blitz with his boomerang. So. Yeah, I, I still find it weird that he even has a blitz. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. the boomerang goes like a little circle. He just, he just throws the boomerang and it twirls around the enemies. <laughs> now I'm kind of imagining, like... Like, I, I don't understand why they didn't get the Neo one. Saz's Blitz. So, Saz's yeah, so... Blitz, um, he basically shoots his web, uh, shoots his guns in, You'll a, see it in a second. In a, in a semicircle in front of him. Well, not really semicircle, a little like a kind of like an arc. Until it's, yeah. well, it's in, in an angle in front of him. Yeah. And um, if an enemy, fire. if if an enemy has a large enough hitbox, all, all or at least most of the bullets will hit. I don't really know what the damage multiplier so it, number for those bullets. So um, it's uh, uh, it, 0.7. Yeah, so Saz fires out seven bullets, and each bullet does 0.7 damage that a normal attack would do. Yeah. So well, uh, when you blitz... A well, normal attack is actually 1.2. Yeah, a normal attack is 1.2, and each Saz bullet is uh, 0.7. So if you hit all seven bullets, it's a total multiplier of 4.9, which is about four regular attacks. Yeah. At the cost of two ATB, yeah. which is like half of what four attacks would be. So it's yeah. it's really powerful. Each bullet also applies on any hit like, on hits, any effects, anything like that. Like they apply on each bullet. So it, in, especially in any percent, like it is an extremely useful tool and it's, it's kind of one of the primary reasons why we can do it so what we it's do it's also so well. very important for my favorite fight in the entire game yep so i although now i am kind of imagining like saz sending out his gun like a beyblade and just having it like, yeah <laughs> bullet. Right, so, so here it comes redefining little, pistol whip yeah little <laughs> metro droid is just basically gonna get one shot by blitz yeah poor thing never had a chance oh nope he backed up, <laughs> so it didn't get one shot. He knows. <laughs> so yeah, that is that is uh, one thing about Blitz is it's going to be a lot more effective against large enemies, 
and or and enemies that, that get close. close. Um, because yeah. of the way he, he fans out the bullets, if an enemy is either small or far away or both, then um, uh, a lot fewer bullets are actually going to connect, which is the reason that I didn't kill with one blitz there, uh, is because I didn't um, land as many bullets as I can. Yeah. Luckily, also, most of the when, bosses tend to be large, so... Yeah, when did we stop using Saz blitz strats in flat percent? Uh, we stop using Saz... Uh, what am I doing? In the first... Uh, in, okay, or the well, second visit. <laughs> Yeah, I just doing... forgot my strat. <laughs> <laughs> so we stop using Saz uh, on the second visit to chapter 13, or at least we stop abusing him, I should say. We, he still gets a little bit of use after that. Yeah, so, um, so, so one thing then before... There is one fight in late game where you're gonna use him, and then we just don't use him at all. Uh, yeah, so... Basically, we use Saz for everything until we don't. <laughs> So one one thing and before I discuss the Midnight Reaper, uh, Saz's Blitz can also like straight up completely miss if the enemy moves because Saz is not very good at targeting things. So this is Midnight Reaper. So this is uh, a relatively easy fight. Yeah, deep Um, we got yeah, deep protect deep. good uh, because we need like look at the damage that Saz's Blitz is going to be doing now uh, after deep protect and all this like it's just chewing through the health bar. Uh, it's weak to ice, so that's why we end spell. Yeah. Uh, Saz with Saz with the ice. I don't know. But the, the kill. first, the first phase of this fight is mostly just like building up chain, building up chain duration, trying to land the debuffs, uh, and then after that, once we stagger, we try to primarily land deep protect. If you land poison, it's like also pretty good. Yeah, poison's uh, nice, but it's not like. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the good thing about this fight is even if you fail to kill and stagger, as, as Serena just did, you're pretty safe, like, even afterwards, because it enters this, like, charging phase for yeah. an attack for, like, that I've 30 seen. Seconds. Yeah, that I've, I've, I've literally only ever seen once. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Midlight Reaper has pretty low chain resistance, so you can, um, even if... Uh, stagger ends with a good amount of HP left. You can usually restagger pretty quickly, and it's not. I mean, you lose a decent amount of time for it, but like you're more most likely not gonna like die or anything or lose yep. the fight. I, I just reminded myself of like the 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 Dragon Ball Z like five minute charge up move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Bryn Hilda would destroy the moon in two episodes. <laughs> Bryn Hilda so... is a fun fight. Um, we're going to take advantage of. Uh, as Titan mentioned, um, Blitz has uh, triggers on hit effects on every single bullet. Um, we're gonna take big advantage of this because um, there is a thing with what are called conditional modifiers, where if we alternate attacks, meaning if we do, meaning if the attack we're doing is different from the previous attack we did, and especially if it hits a, an elemental weakness on top of that, it chains significantly more. Now this is particularly broken for this fight because Commando, which isn't really supposed to chain that much, um, has like a really big Gestalt multiplier, which means it builds Gestalt really quickly relative to the chain it actually builds. Um, and so basically on these blitzes, we're getting those juicy conditional modifiers on every single bullet that lands because it's both alternating and hitting a weakness. So like all of that combined like leads to Honestly, building Gestalt yeah. faster than they probably intended to be possible for this fight. Yeah, it, it, it's a really weird strat that I'm actually kind of, like, surprised they... Because th this has been the strats for as long as I've known the run. Yeah. I'm surprised they figured this out. It's like, really on Because <laughs> yeah, This it's, is it's the only fight where you use Commando strat. to build uh, the Gestalt Gauge and not Ravager. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, well that, and... um like, kind of slow because... But As that's we because, mentioned before, yeah. <laughs> the closer that they are, the more blitz bolts are going to hit. And Brunhilder kind of spent that entire fight just being really far away, like social distancing. Yep. <laughs> um, so we, we weren't able to hit most of the bullets, unfortunately. So, so chap that's chapter 8. So now yeah. we're in chapter 9. Chapter which is 9's, actually a pretty long chapter. Chapter 9 is probably my favorite chapter of the first 10. There's a lot of, like, there's some pretty cool dodges. There's some really neat fights. And, uh,.
towards the end of this chapter, we actually get to pick our party members for the first time. Uh, well, we don't so get to pick them. Yeah, well, we don't get a by party members, I mean um, allies. We don't we don't get to pick the leader yet. Um, but that's okay, because Lightning's still busted as fuck at this point. But yeah, we're going to start seeing uh, some really cool strats um, once we're able to like pick our party for everything, because they're like just a lot more optimized than the fights where we're using forced parties, just for obvious reasons. As far as the options are good. Yep. <laughs> First fight is pretty similar to the oh, first one we had in Hope's house, where we except just it's a lot more consistent. Yeah, it's a lot less bad. This one, this one, is really <laughs> it can still sometimes bullshit you, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's rare. But being bullshitted by this fight is a lot less bad Until than being bullshitted time. by Hope's house. Yeah, getting pretty good chip drops. I think you're at two incentives and two credits right now. Oops. Or three credits, something like that. Uh, so we're actually going to be changing parties uh, like, a lot shit. in this. This is this not looks how it's very supposed wrong. to be. Yeah, I, I did it wrong. I went. Uh, I uh, uh, I only did the first. I mean, it, it gave me the right paradigms, but they yeah, you, you weren't in the. the they weren't in the <laughs> spots where I wanted them, so I just moved them. Yeah. So yeah. we're we're going to be changing parties like a lot. In this chapter, we keep on switching off between them. Yep. Uh, we don't actually have access to snow until like the very end of this chapter, though. So. Yeah. It, 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 so snow's just kind of like chilling there behind us. There's yeah. a there's a, little, there's a little funny tech that we do for some of these um, parts of the run where we keep changing parties back and forth, where we very specifically um, make our paradigm order such that whatever we want to be our default paradigm for like a later point is in the top slot because we keep the same paradigm decks when the party switches back and forth but it it changes your default to whatever is at the top yeah. which we actually so. did that in chapter seven as well that's why we put uh aggression at the top on ushu 2 even though relentless is there to begin with yeah, because we want to start an aggression for the Hope's House fight. Yep. This is a lot more Chris than I'm used to seeing. Yes, yes. because we actually <laughs> need to develop Hope <laughs> category. Uh, what am I doing? So, so to be clear in any percent, that the the Hope Crystarian that we did before Ushu 2 is the last time that we touch Hope. For the and rest she already... Of and she already did a lot more Hope Crystarium there than we do in <laughs> yeah. any percent. True. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you buy the power spend for Snow? Are you going to understand? Uh, no, I, I didn't think about that. I hadn't uh, really been doing that yet, but... Yeah, that's probably worth it. I just didn't really think about it because I haven't done it in <laughs> runs yet. No, I just remembered. If you buy the power spend for Snow, that's, this is probably the best time to unequip it. Yeah. So, fun fact, we actually unequipped the Silver Bangle from Hope in this in that menu because um, it's actually a liability on a fight later in the run because uh, there is an enemy or later in the chapter because there is an enemy who does a very powerful attack that always targets the character with the lowest HP yeah. and in this category okay. uh, with the silver bangle uh, Hope's HP is actually very close to lightning so it's pretty risky because uh, there's a good chance lightning could get I uh, could get targeted with that attack if we have the silver bangle equipped. Also unequipping, yeah. Also unequipping the silver bangle saves a little time on the bridges equip because um, it means we don't have to unequip Fang. We can just optimize defensive on her and then go straight to lightning. Uh, Aishma, it depends. It depends. Um, for it, the there is the party. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, generally speaking, the party we are going to be using the most in the late game is Fang, Lightning, and Snow. Yeah, we're going to be using uh, Sazvanil Snow for a while. That's the any percent party, and um, as the you might expect, as well. Yeah, as you might expect, uh, at any percent levels of development, they're still the best party. So um, we're going to be using that team for a while, but then after a certain point, Saz starts getting outclassed pretty hard. Vanille 
still has uses in late game, but she is mostly outclassed as well. Snow is just good at every level of development, so we're going to use him for most of the run. Right, and so Hope I... gets some use, but is generally not that good at any level of development. So I, I just want to be perfectly clear that there are so many OSHA violations happening right now. There's like no guardrails. <laughs> there's people flying around on jetpacks. <laughs> like there, there's like open slats on the bridges that people could just like fall down. Yeah, I always just oh, found like, it amusing how we we're just like running around like fucking a billion feet in the sky where the wind's probably blowing a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> like like jumping between platforms under these conditions, like. I, I don't no understand how this uh, um, how, how this flies. So Aishma, uh fast animations is a big part of why Fang Lightning and Snow is the best team in a uh, post game, because um, those are the characters with the fastest animations. Uh, they also just have really good ab ability coverage between the three of them. Like the only weakness that team really has is like they don't have a really good medic. Snow's like a solid medic, but um, has his shortcomings. Uh, but again, in like late late game, we really don't use very much medic anyway. But yeah. Also, um, one, one of the reasons to use the Deceptisol here is because when we cancel it here, it just sets up so cleanly. Well, for to be going past. To be fair, that dodge is free anyway because those soldiers anyway. those soldiers run up in front of their battle zone, so you literally run between them and they don't even see you. <laughs> Right, but but it's but it's like it it the it is, cost of using the decept on yeah, outside is, is a lot less because like it the, your your retry is yeah. like completely free. I also always go for that dodge decept list in practice, and I think I've gotten it first try maybe like twice in my life. So yeah, no. <laughs> the, the last outside one. Yeah, yeah, it's so bad. Like I don't understand. Like, the argument so, is that it's quote-unquote free on the retry, which it usually is, but the thing is you have to wait. So getting it second try is still slower than just decep canceling. I, I, oh, I, 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 de I, I decept on the on the dodge before it because that one is also sometimes I, dumb. I do sometimes so. do that. I opted not to this time just because I was feeling it. But <laughs> uh, Did you get the Ember Ring because of Plat or... Oh uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's because of blood. Yeah, it's, it's a very it's, free, it's a free chest. It's the fastest, uh, fastest way to get an ember ring. We could also okay. dismantle the fire charm, uh, which would probably be fine too. But we just get the chest, and it's and we sell it in this next shop, so it's nice gill early anyway. Sure. Yeah, it is just the fastest ember ring chest. Every other ember ring chest is guarded. I'm pretty sure. Okay. And uh, we yeah, could. Or, sorry, go ahead. No, no. It, so in any percent, oh, uh, in any percent, that's like a backup guild chest. But yeah, yeah. You, you, you didn't even think about picking it up, so I was wondering. No, with the with the cheap cheap drop she had, if this was any percent, that chest would one hundred percent be skipped. Yeah, yeah. So uh, here we unlock haste, which is a pretty good buff. <laughs> It's um, so fantastic. It, uh, it's an believe, understatement of the year. Believe it or not, uh, a buff that makes you do everything faster is pretty good in speedrunning. What actually is the haste multiplier? Uh, it's 1.5, I believe. I believe it increases uh, ATB charge by 50%. I'm not 100% sure, and I'm gonna double check this now. Yeah, like, I'm not 100% sure on that. That's just the number in my head. Yeah, it's uh, not something I've ever looked into. I just thought I, it was faster. Game Mechanics Guide tells me plus 50%, so oh. yes. Uh, yes, we so. are going to farm twices, not only for the ingots, but also for the uh, trapsohedrons, which we need the three of. Yeah, those are more just. Uh, luxury if we get them, because we can't really rely on getting those from the choices since they're only 5.5%, but uh, if you do happen to get some, it can save a lot of time farming long guise later. The, this this chap, like this part of the chapter is like pretty chill. Yeah. Not really a lot, it's just a bunch of, of pretty simple dodges. That last fight can suck if you fail the preemptive strike, but luckily, usually you don't. 
Or, well, if you're me, usually you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love when the flans just okay. run at you, flinging their arms, like, hug me. So to clarify, the reason this estimate is so high is because I submitted this category after my first run, which was in 1802. The world record has dropped almost two hours since then. So I really would have felt pretty safe with, like, an 18-hour estimate or even, like, 1730. Uh, but... Yeah, it's 19, so <laughs> it's nice to have yeah, a buffer anyway. You're going to come in pretty far under the estimate, probably. Yeah. Like, if I, this I mean, could it, be... It, 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 uh, I mean, like... If, there, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> there's some pretty significant RNG uh, later on that could lose a lot of time, but, like, two hours is a lot. Yeah, like, even even if I get terrible RNG, like, there's no way it's going over 19. Very unlikely it even goes over 18. And I would say the odds of the sub-17 are even pretty good. But I, I would definitely not be comfortable with a 17-hour estimate. <laughs> no, that'd be a bit... Yeah, that'd be a bit... Uh, optimistic. <laughs> So here he is the catalyst for the first time to turn the brawler's wristband into a warrior's wristband level 8. It makes it very strong. Yeah, it's gonna make Fang pretty jacked for the next uh, fight, which is gonna be pretty nice. And then we're gonna put it on lightning for the fights after that, which is gonna make lightning pretty jacked. Oh, those were nice Vikings. And Cat catalysts uh, and just um, transforming things into the next tier is fundamental for Treasure Hunter. We need to keep track of a lot of catalysts for that menu. Yeah. Basically, as I mentioned, there are a lot of weapons and accessories that can only be acquired through upgrading other weapons or accessories. Um, and in order to change one weapon or accessory to another, you need a catalyst, which there are 10 different catalysts. Um, some we need a lot one more than others. One of them is useless. Well, Catalyst. yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, fun thing about so Millerites. So there are nine different catalysts, and then there's Millerite. Fun thing about Millerites, they sell for 1,000 gil, and the only accessory you can get with them is a silver bangle, which costs 800 gil. <laughs> so... <laughs> Technically, it does save you some gill on upgrading the Silver Bangle, if that's the route you're going, but... But the funny thing is that you can buy a Millerite for 3,000 gill, and there's just no possible justification for that, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be selling any Millerites we get. Good shit, Vanille. So Vanille landed D-Protect on the Vespid Soldier there, which is really Long. nice. Because it uh, saves us... Without without uh, without D-Protect, we're not going to be able to kill in two Blitzes like I did there. And that can get kind of scary, because if that Vespid Soldier lives for too long, then it can do some bad things. <laughs> Alright, well, now we're not getting any debuffs. Okay. That's because it sold the Belladon in Chapter 6. True, though. <laughs> yeah, Glacier Wolf actually Lude used to make the joke of getting, like, a warm beer when he got a Millerite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you're, uh, you're not the only one who's made that association. <laughs> yeah, so, I, you may have seen I waited a second for the... Uh... Um, I almost said Gurngatch, the uh, Thermodon to get close to me there. Um, which is, again, because, as we mentioned, Blitz is going to do much better damage against enemies that are close. So, uh, upcoming here is actually... Uh, I really like this next fight. Um, we actually... There's actually a relatively new strat that I'm using for it that was just found in the last year or so, I think. Um, Probably, yeah. Where we used to have Hope start in... Oh my god. We used to have Hope start in Synergist and cast Protect on the whole party. Um, then uh, Shirasu figured out that that's completely unnecessary. <laughs> and uh, 
we can uh, completely... Yep. The answer is always just potion more. Yeah, we can uh, instead just have Hope as a permanent Ravager for the whole fight, which uh, means we stagger much quicker and kill much quicker. Um, yeah, I also want to complain about the OSHA violations here, because there's just, like, jet engines that are open that anybody <laughs> can walk to. Like, <laughs> true. They're also just, like, fucking, you know, like, killer robots everywhere. Which well, I, guess I think they put those out guess... for us, well, right? Fair. Like, that's <laughs> normal. Fair. They're like, we have to, we have to deal. Who knows? Maybe they're not even trying to kill you. Like, they're like, man, these people are idiots for being on the outside of the ship. We yeah. have to bring them in to protective custody. So, that... you know, I'm. I was always confused why the deck drones, those yellow robots, are so much tamer than the watch drones in earlier chapters for dodging. They're for maintenance, obviously. Yeah. They're not meant to fight. <laughs> yeah, apprehend them before they sue us, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, this so is going to be a... Yeah. This is going to be a two-part two fight. fight. Um, Fang still doesn't have Ravager, so we're gonna have her as a uh, as a saboteur um, to build chain. Also, just slow and curse are handy to have anyway. So, oh, so curse increases the likelihood yeah, that we can interrupt them. Yeah. Uh, so we're we're just gonna like stop the Calvinka Shark from doing anything. And also, in case anybody is wondering, th canonically, this is actually two different Calvinka Strikers. There's oh, a yeah. Scene, there, there's like a cutscene between them that shows that we're fighting a different thing each time. This is something that I forgot about for many years until yeah, I same. watched Arena's all cutscenes run. Which was not a successful one because I skipped a Gestalt cutscene on Bandersnatch and Jabberwocky. I was very yeah. sad. Nobody but... in nobody in the stream even noticed, and I didn't notice until like a minute later. <laughs> So any percent is 442, right? Well, 41. 441. Uh, any percent world record for PC is 441 by Kyrun. Uh PS3 world record is 458 by Serena. Yep, should have been 456 though. Yeah. <laughs> Even I agree with that. Yeah. All right, so um, we are going to be trying really hard to stagger this enemy within a uh, short amount of time because um, it has, an, a, has a move called Hellstorm Bolt, which uh, is kind of nasty because it's going to kill whoever it targets, which means we're going to have to uh, throw a potion. Um, however, if we can stag or a uh, phoenix down, sorry. However, if we are able to stagger before it goes off, then um, we can just straight up interrupt it with a move. Uh, yeah, like, see, it started it there, but uh, Hope's, so, like, grab ability, like, canceled it out. Oh, I need to so heal. So, the other, the other nice thing um, is that even if it does get Hellstorm Bolt off, uh, this is one of the reasons why I removed the single the Silver Bangle earlier. Because Actually, the it entire will always... <laughs> Well, yeah, and, like, and it saves some time on the equipment. Yeah, like, it will always target whoever is the lowest HP. Yep. So older strat used to be to have Bang and Saboteur so it provoke and like Sentinel. Bang and survive it. And yeah. then we realized, or Shirasu realized that like, if we could just use a Phoenix down on Hope and it's faster because like everyone's doing damage as opposed to just like sitting a Sentinel. Yeah, same. I do like the cutscene where Lightning Hope yeah. just... Uh, <laughs> same. Wait, which cutscene is it? <laughs> there are multiple. There's multiple? An, oh, even it's better. In, it's in Chapter 2 and uh, Chapter 3. Yeah, so uh, we can pick our party or um, our allies. We still have to lead lightning, but as I said, she's still busted as oh fuck. Oh no, leading lightning, the horror. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I, so actually, funny enough, like I try to do a casual like cutscene percent run, but I'm I was just so used to skipping all the cutscenes that didn't last yeah. very long. Nope. <laughs> so, was... these are the bridges. Um, there's. Are, do you just do any percent for this, or um, yes. mostly? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, we do grab the umbra, but that's it. Sure. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a few. Uh, oh, and there's... we throw a Libra scope on bridge two for Loremaster. Oh yeah. Sure. That too. Um. So 
there's two fights that we're going to be doing here. And if you've played the game before, um, or even if you haven't, you can see that there's a lot more fights here, and they seem to be in our way. But we, we just kind of, like, ignore that. Uh, and I'll explain why after the next fight, because the next fight is the first time that we're going to be using Quake. Uh, and no. we've picked... Second fight. Oh, that, that's second fight. Two. That is Rich 2. All right. Oh, usually I explain oh, Quake in Rich 1. So, anyway, so, so Quake is another uh, TP that we're not using in Bridge 1. We're using it in Bridge 2. And um, for, like, the next but, three fights after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what it does is we've been talking a, a lot the whole time about, like, stagger duration and stagger age and all this sort of stuff. And what Quake does is it adds, like, 27 seconds of stagger duration to every enemy. And this is really powerful because it means that we don't need to be sitting in a comp uh, in a comp paradigm for a long time in order to get 27 seconds of stagger. We can just quake and go into like a tri disaster or like something with more ravs and, and do everything there. And then we're building up the chain amount, we're building up more damage, and it just it saves so much time. Yeah, just being yeah. able to use Quake. Quake is one it, of the most. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. It's it's especially useful for fights like this one here, where there's a bunch of enemies that we all want to stagger, yeah. so that you immediately have chain duration on everything. Yeah. But there's even times where we use it on bosses. Yeah. Um, like, it it it, it saves it saves a lot. Yeah, it's one of the most unintuitive. Uh abilities in the game I think just because like a casual player is going to look at it and be like earth damage what the hell <laughs> like, yeah, it, it does not, not do it. a good job of explaining what yeah. it actually does what's funny is we actually do sometimes use it for straight up earth damage in one fight in the run but generally that is not its purpose <laughs> yeah so th the rest of this fight is like pretty simple um you can see what Quake is doing essentially here because there are like five enemies and we're really only ever targeting the Reaver, but we have chain duration on all of them. Yeah. Past that, it's, it's just, you know, summon Gestalt, uh, spam a bit with some Thunderfalls, and then, and then Wrath of Odin! And uh, so then after this fight, there are supposed to be two more fights if we just go straight down the path. Uh, but we're going to skip those with a little bit of a despawn ticket. Yeah. yeah. So, so as I was as I was alluding to before, the Septisol. Um... Oh, nice. Uh, I'll have to think about so, how to use that. So the the mission battle four area. Is being a I, I have one for mission four. I could use it for oh. mission nine because I didn't farm one, but. That's a cool preempt, and I kind of want to show it off. <laughs> so, the, every thing has a battle zone. And as discussed before, um, when we decept cancel, you respawn outside of the battle zone. Like, wherever you were last safe. So that's the whole reason that this stuff works. And most of the time, everything is still going to be there. Um, because that's, that's just kind of how it is. Like, the game isn't so big. But there's a lot of things in this area, and so we actually uh, get to see the load lines being used for the first time, more or less. Uh, and enemies only spawn when you cross their load, when you cross their trigger line in order to actually make them spawn, and they will despawn when you get far enough away that that you're outside of that. So what happens here is we lo we spawned uh, the bridge three. It was already there. And we ran down a bit in order to respawn bridge one. We ran all the way back up. We decepted to get into the ba into their battle zone, past where the load line for bridge three was. We enter the fight. We get back. We we retry. We get back out of it. And now we've spawned outside, past the load line, so we don't cross uh, it again. So the enemies don't respawn. Yep. So basically, by retrying that fight, it essentially teleports us past the spawn trigger um, so that we can just run down to where the fight would be without spawning it. Yep, and it, we can use this not only to skip bridge 3, but also to skip bridge 4. 
Yeah, these two combined. Bridge four is the big one. I remember yeah, yeah. doing bridge four, and that fight was a fiesta. Yeah, these yeah. two combine. These two skips combined save like a minute and a half, I think, roughly. Um, I think it's more than that. Is it? No, because I, I was I thinking bridge. Because I think bridge four is a minute, and I thought bridge three was thirty seconds, but it may not be exactly that. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it, it was it was like we skipped bridge three. So like the first bridge, the first like one that we skipped saved a chunk of time, but some of that was lost by the replacement fight that we had to do because mm -hmm. we had to fight Thermodons instead. And then we skipped both of them. I, I think overall it's like two and a half minutes saved. No, 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 it's, it's nowhere near that much. Yeah. Um. Oh, item finder. Sorry, I didn't answer your question. So the fight where we use Quake for Earth damage is uh. The Neochu and Fault Warrens. Um, That's actually, such a pog strat. It is. It really is a pog strat. Uh, I might be biased, but um, yeah. Basically, <laughs> we have a lot of little guys that we need to kill, and they are all conveniently weak to earth damage. Uh, so what we do is we cast Faithra on Fang, and we um, spam some Thundaras to build chain, and then we just spam Quake for damage, and we can usually kill with three Quakes. I guess that's only if they actually spawn. Yes. Um, so in a yeah. in an ideal fight, we we have an ability called random instant chain equipped, uh, and if we and if we get lucky, then it actually skips those guys spawning. But I guess, right. I guess we'll so, get to that when we yeah. get. To yeah, we'll get to that one. I really want to talk about random instant chain. I hope you guys let me. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know much about it, so you'll 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 we'll have the shot for it. But so this is Barth Andalus one. I say one because we're fighting him five times. Four. Four. Yeah. Oh, we four. Fight three three, five. Four. Yeah, okay. yeah sure. For some reason, I was counting Bart as orphan. Yeah. Place. I don't <laughs> know it. Um. So we fight him four times. Uh. He's he's sort of like the big bad. Um. That we were alluding to before. And this fight is split into two parts. We've got the the first here, where he's got his pauldrons. And the other thing that I don't remember what they're called, but they're uh, like called Aylet. 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 Yeah. So I don't know five heads. For it. Five heads. Each of the heads is weak to a different element. So we're we're kind of leaving Saz in synergist for a lot so that he can end spell um whatever he wants. Yeah, this we is also in fact the entire reason we use Saz for this fight. <laughs> we we also get to see uh, most of the time when we're in a calm uh, paradigm and we're the only commander. Um, then everybody attacks the same target that you're targeting. Like, the Ravagers Wait. will do oh. it, and, and whatever you have, like, it all focuses on the same thing. But here, we've got two comms, sometimes three comms, and what happens is they all target different things. So what we do is, you saw Serena hover over Bart's main head to get Snow to attack a different target, which is the remaining pulse. Now that the, now that the first phase is done, this is where things sort of start to get a bit tricky. So we've got one here, and we're seeing Thanatos even smile, which like can do a bunch of damage. Uh, actually, only hit lightning there, which is a bit unlucky. Um, but if, once we stagger, he's going to have this attack called Destrudo. We don't want Destrudo to go off. It does a lot of damage and wastes a lot of time, primarily because it resets his chain. So what our plan is going to be, it's going to be kind of similar to Enki and Enlil. We're going to raise the chain up by a lot, and then we're going to try to stagger each of our attacks from Snow, Saz, and Lightning in order to constantly keep Bart interrupted. And if we do this correctly, then it means that he's never actually going to get Destrudo off, and this is called ah, Destrudo I fucked up. Damn. Uh, yeah, so... I guess we'll, we'll be seeing it shortly. Uh, I may get this. Yeah, we're good. Nice. Cool. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay. Nice. So that's lucky. Yeah. That, I got... that, Could that, have been that's a lot actually worse. really lucky that he did another smile instead of instead of doing just. just well, he that. usually does smile he first. He usually does smile. It's just hard to. Destrudo. It's just hard to start stunlock back yeah. after smile because Destrudo is right after that, and you're usually interrupted. But lightning and Fang were, or uh, Fang, lightning and Snow were both available to, uh, or Snow started the string like right after Smile. Right after so. Smile. Yep. So that that was that was pretty clean. Yeah, that, that could have. I was, uh, yeah. If I had 
if Destrudo had gone off, it usually loses like 30, 40 ish seconds. Roughly, yeah. Depends because on it just like like chain. Yeah, that, that's true. It depends on how much depends on how much HP is left. Because sometimes you need to re-stagger and sometimes you don't. Yeah. Although you're also you're playing this in English, right? Yes. Yes. So if you do that fight in Japanese, his interrupted <laughs> noise is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. It yeah. is so great. So this is chapter ten. Uh, this is actually the first part where we get to fully, uh, not right here, after the next fight, uh, we get to fully change our battle team as we want, so we can have anybody who wants to lead, anybody who wants the allies, we do it all. It, we also get to unlock all of the secondary roles. So yeah. each character has their three primary roles that, that I'm sure everybody has seen by now. Um... But every character gets access to every role. It's just a matter of, of not only the different abilities that they get, but also the secondary roles cost a lot more Crystarian points yeah. in order to actually level up and use reason. We're not going to be getting any secondaries for a while because they're just not worth it at this point. Like yeah. our, our Crystarian points are much better spent um, uh, on primary roles for stats. Yeah, th there's just not enough return on yeah. investment. Because, like, it. with secondaries, the stat boosts are really, really bad. Like, what you're paying for with secondaries is the flexibility. So, like, the stats you get from them are, like, really, really inefficient uh, compared to primaries. And, and in any percent, no, like, we only do two. We only do, like, two secondary yeah. evolves. Yeah. But we, in, in plat, I... We do all, you have yeah. all of them. Yeah. We don't use all of them, but we do get all of them. Yeah. Imagine Actually, if... use Hope's Calm. Oh, we do use Hope's Calm. For oh. comp buff for last resort. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good use of Hope's Calm. Um, but yeah, we actually use every roll on every character except for... Uh, except for Saz's Saboteur and Saz's Medic. Uh, okay, I died. Oh no. <laughs> Good fight. So, so this fight is is actually a lot like it's actually way scarier than it should be. Yeah. Because these are just amped up versions of the Pulsework soldiers that we fought mm -hmm. all the way back in chapter four. So they're like re they're like really annoying to stagger. They do a lot of damage. They can interrupt you. It's yeah. it's like not great. It's not uncommon to die there. This fight used to be a lot safer because we would have Snow as a Sentinel, but we figured out that like. It's Hello. safe enough most of the time without that. Yeah, we haven't we haven't provoked the enemies at the start, so usually they'll be targeting him. Sometimes yeah. they they retarget to lightning, and they they can kind of get attacks off really fast sometimes. Yeah, like, like like the time between their attacks varies quite a bit. Yeah, and in that previous fight, Serena just got hit twice in a row. Pretty. Uh, yeah, and, and this fight's also a really good example of Quake, because we, we let off with Quake, and it means that we can just spend the rest of the time essentially just increasing their chain without spending more time, like, actually trying to increase their chain duration. Yep. Like, it, it's a really good example of why Quake is so strong. What do we do? Yeah, Wait, there's at... a 45 hour long super. There's a brawl run, yeah. There, there's like a lot of downtime in it. The like, I'm pretty sure the runner is gonna be able to get like a full night's sleep in the middle of it. <laughs> okay. Because there's like, there's like some. It's like an all challenges. Oh shit. It's I like think an all one challenges of the run. challenges is just letting the um, having a f not a long fight, but you need. Um, well, there's a challenge. You need to have a certain amount of hours actually fighting. Well, there's, there's like a challenge that's like a certain number of KOs, I think, and you can create a custom stage that just oh. like, like, like kills the fuck out of CPUs. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. So, but like, it needs to go for hours, apparently. I, I don't know. I actually kind of looked into the run because I thought it was a hilarious <laughs> concept. There's like a, there's like a route on SRC for it. I don't quite hate myself to learn enough to learn a run like that, but 
I did I did temporarily consider learning uh melee all trophies. <laughs> oh. Because, oh. like, I could probably pick that up pretty quickly. Isn't that, like, horribly random because of the slot machine? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. So this is chapter 10. It's, uh... A lot of running. Very pretty, chill. It's pretty chill. There's, like, some really annoying dodges that yeah. can happen. But there's, there's, like, only, like, three actual... Yeah. Things to do. There's uh, three fights. Um, one was the Pulse Work Knights that we just saw. One is Sid, which is actually a really cool fight. Um, and then there's Do you Bahamut. Hate yourself for that? No, I don't. Okay. Um, but uh, there's also Bahamut, which is terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bahamut's not great. Also, I... we get to see birds again. Yep. So the return of the terrible random birds from Chapter 4. So yeah, this is the last chapter that's going to be pretty much just any percent. Uh, after this chapter, it's going to... Almost right at the start of chapter 11, it's going to start diverging. Oh yeah, my knowledge is about to tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's Real fine, tight. Pharaoh's ready. <laughs> well, I, I am as well. I yeah. know this stuff. But... Yeah, that, that's like part of the reason why I'm trying to get explanations out now, because I know I'm not going to be able to say anything later. <laughs> Fair. All good. Yeah, so I'm for for this, um, we we are now actually able to uh, swap out our party members. Um, the, after the pulse work knights fight, you can uh, swap lightning out as the leader. Um, but we're still going to use her because she's good for this section, even though we're going to come chapter 11, she's going to be out of the party for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, but right now, she's still preferable she over Vanille for this, uh, just yeah. just really for the next fight. Basically, this next fight is an enemy with a pretty high stagger point with very high chain resistance. So most of this fight is just going to be building chain to stagger, and then once we stagger, uh, we kill pretty fast. So... We really want to um, use Lightning because she's her Ravager is like really fast. Um, Saz's Ravager isn't really that fast, but we still want him for his buffs. Uh, and then Snow, we're gonna use mostly as a Sentinel, uh, yeah, mostly as a Sentinel, but also as a uh, Ravager. Um, Sid does quite a bit of damage, so we do need to use a, a good amount of Sentinel, but when it's safe, we can, uh, switch Snow to Ravager. Thanks for the raid, Camper. Yeah, thanks for the raid. Hope your stream this, was good. One of the most annoying dodges in this chapter, because yeah. Gremlin One of the walked. most annoying dodges in the game. Yeah. Yeah, this one's awful. You can't even, like, decept it uh, very well, either. Uh, yeah, Gremlins are way bigger than they look, for no reason. <laughs> like, their hitboxes are, extend way past what they look like it should. I mean, I guess these are imps, but you know, gremlin type enemies. Thanks for the raid. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, one eyed deacon. One. -eyed oh, deacon. that makes a lot more sense mm. than what I Took was. Oh, I was really <laughs> really hard for me. Yeah, that, that's why I was confused. <laughs> uh, the run is about six minutes behind PB, but that's okay. <laughs> We're having fun. So, the the upcoming fight with Sid, there's another strat that you can use with an Age Assault if you have a bonus one, and that strat is really cool. It's also surprisingly riskier. It's riskier than you would think. if you're Kaya. Kaya makes yeah. it risky. It doesn't have to be risky. Yeah. Well, I it, it's it, it's got more chances to like to, for for something to go wrong. Uh, my PB less. is a 16, 16, 24. Oh, 16, 16. I thought it. Oh, so it hasn't uh, been updated yet. Yeah, I yeah, still yeah, have to submit it. Uh... I still haven't submitted. No, I haven't someone. submitted it. <laughs> that is not, that's not Zwanzig. <laughs> that's me. All right. So here's Sid. And unlike in most Final Fantasies, Sid has nothing to do with transportation or airship or anything. We've got an owl for that. But Sid is uh, a lessee, um, and is he wants to like 
wreck us. And he's he's kind of spends the whole fight trying like kind of transforming yeah. more into a Seath. But so we're gonna start off with Quake because we really just want to spend, like Serena said, we want to spend the whole time just like trying to chain up. And Snow's kind of gonna be in Perma Sentinel because Sid does a lot of damage that really can't tank very well with anybody else. Yeah, like Sid Lightning has... is still pretty mega squish at this point. Yeah. Um. So Sid has two uh, sh uh, stances, like shifts, that he'll be in. One of them is offensive shifts where he, you know, he'll do offensive stuff, attacks, runes, etc. The other is the de uh, like recovery and defensive shift where he'll heal himself or he'll go into guard. Uh, and we, we can kind of just like wail on him at that point. Uh, the thing is that we have to be careful about is once we stagger him, we have to make sure that he can't do anything for the rest of the fight. After he goes to uh, uh, what about 50% HP. Fuck. No, no, this is fine. <laughs> uh, well, after he goes to about 50% HP, he can uh, do metamorphosis. Oh, Fennec. Oh, no. Um, so he's targeting Lightning here, which is really not good. All right, but now he's back on snow. Um, Because Lightning is super squish. Uh, so, okay, this is not good. Okay, we're good. <laughs> one, so once he gets to about 50% HP, He's got a damage gate on doing metamorphosis, uh, which will transform him, make him do a lot more damage. He gains access to new attacks like Seraphic Ray, which not like on the one hand it would remove all of our buffs if we were capable of surviving it, which we are not. Uh, so we really don't want that to happen. Luckily for us, though, both Snow and Lightning have access to launch at this point. So once we stagger, we can just kind of keep Sid juggled the whole time in the air, and we don't have to worry at all. So most of the time, like the fight is really nice. That was a really scary at some points because he was targeting lightning instead of snow, and lightning will die if she eats two strings. So it's really good that we didn't die there. Uh, yeah, I I, I messed up one paradigm shift and it just threw the whole thing off, but luckily we were fine. Odin can be used as a backup oh, if you see um, Seraphic Ray, but it's kind of rare. Oh, Kit, are you? Do you know somebody who can get the uh, the RTMP link for the commentators? Because uh, I just oh, have they, like they actually said in Discord that we can just look at the mainstream. <laughs> so. Oh, okay, that's fine then. I mean, oh, that's what, what I have been doing. Well, that's, yeah, well, that's yeah, what I'm doing. That's what everyone's doing, because we didn't have the... Yeah, so it's... Sid is... is it's it's a really nice fight once you get used to it. The Age of Soul strat, uh, the reason that it can be riskier is, is simply because you're doing a lot more damage uh, before you stagger. So you could accidentally trigger Metamorphosis before you're ready, and then and then you will die. Like, is yeah. the accessory shuffle the same? Is what? what? The accessory shuffle the same? Mm, not now because because uh, we put the blessed talisman on hope. Yeah. So then we just put magicians and shamans on light, and uh, everything else is the same. Oh, I'm supposed to get these out of ring. I'm doing whatever doesn't matter. I you know. Just Normally sure I would say, them. but I I don't really know very much. <laughs> uh, so that doctor. It's like good. a lot more Chris than I'm used to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just you wait. Do any barium in this whole chapter? This but... is this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, starting. Yeah, you don't know all missions that well either, do you, Titan? Because at the start of the next chapter, then any percent just gets thrown out of the window. Finally. Yeah, well, so like, like, I know all missions from when Kaya was doing his run, and I'm okay. Uh, that sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm still messing with the notes for those, which will be done Sunday. But I, I, I don't, I don't have like an fun. understanding of it really. Like this sense. dodge is fun. Wait, right, ring around the bombies, a pocket full of I. I, you know, I keep on coming up with this, but I, I can't figure out like something that actually rhymes. Nah. 
Bring around the roses, hope they don't catch <gasps> you. If they do, you just then Tetsuken. Carry. It almost got me past the battle zone, but that's okay. Oh jeez. Because that's just a retry. That's not that bad. Yeah, so so yeah, there's two get... times yeah. that we're doing an elevator like that, and we really don't want to retry those fights because then we have to wait for the whole elevator again, which sucks. Uh, if, if we're caught by the bombs, like, it's pretty simple because the Zantet skin will just instantly kill them. Yeah, we just instant summon Gestalt Zantet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, the, the next one is going to have birds. And while technically you probably can, if you're very lucky, dodge them all without worry, most of the time we just we just do a decept. It's, it's honestly not even that difficult. If, if I went for it, it, I would get it more than I would fail it. But the thing is that it's just, it loses it's, so much time if you fail it. And it's not in your control. <laughs> like, yeah, I've yeah, gotten it like once. They don't run at you. Yeah, Benny Hell music, exactly. But yeah, there, there isn't really anything else for the rest of this chapter, aside from the Bahamut fight, which sucks. Yeah, it's usually okay in this category just because Fang has a good bit more HP, so... Yeah, exactly. you love Fang li Lightning is dying in this fight, Yeah, it? Lightning still dies, <laughs> we but... Used, she used to not die, but because we cut so much Crystaria, because we cut so much... So well, much I fight, also... Now she's dying. They, I also, again. uh... I stopped doing Crystarium for Lightning in this chapter um, because it was giving her too much strength and she was running in on Alex. <laughs> so I, oh, I actually oh, oh. stop uh, stop leveling her at Quake until after Alex. That that's really funny, honestly. Yeah, I was just I, like I appreciate that. I was just like, why is she running in so much? Like, are the stats that much different? And then I look at the Crist and like all the Crist we do past Quake is like seven strength nodes and no magic. It's like, oh. <laughs> also, hi birds. Fun yeah, birds. this is a fun dodge. So this is a fun touch. It's like the brown birds you can more or less outrun, but if the, the green yellow ish okay, one I got past that time. you, you just kind of screwed. Yeah. And it depends, because sometimes they look like they're going to gun you down, but then they just stop. So if you're lucky, they do that, but sometimes they just keep running and you're, yeah, not much you can do about it. It's... So. If the, the yellow bird wants to catch you, he will catch you because it doesn't actually have an attack animation, so it doesn't stop. He only stops when he hits you. Um, Davy, I mean, if you want, like, you can you can join the speedrun server. Like, we have notes to walk you through the whole plat run. Um, if you're not wanting to do like speedrun strats, then I'm not sure that there's a great resource. Like, there are guides on, like, uh, game facts, sure, but I can't really <laughs> vouch for those. Yeah, um, I, like, when I platted this, I just I just stole the plat percent. Yeah. Folks, and I just did the strats there. Like, um, uh, the, 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 one, the one tip I would give is get a checklist of all the equipment yes, yes, and yes. keep it up to date. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also... Do not sell any of your elemental rings until you've gotten all of them. Uh, because that is the only way that you can lock yourself out of the platinum trophy is if you um, is if you sell or dismantle all of the all of the rings of a certain element before you've gotten all three of the types or all three tiers. Treasure Hunter is kind of a mess to do casually. Yeah. Since yes. we, you know, we... we I mean, it's a mess to do in the speedrun. <laughs> sure, but at least we, we know exactly yeah, what we're true. doing. <laughs> at least we, like, plan it ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Yeah, so that's Bird Bridge, and you can do it without a Decept, but I don't know why you want to. Well, that, yeah, that's what Rusa did on his first run. He didn't know you were supposed to do something. I guess that's what Dodgeless does. Is not Dodgeless, Shroudless tries to do as well. Shroudless yeah. uh, is bad for many reasons, including that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many reasons I will probably never run Shroudless. Yeah, so upcoming we've got another uh, just all, uh, not just Eidolon fight. Uh, this one is going to be Fang time for Bahamut. Oh, no. And the. Palma has like a really consistent pattern 
to it. Uh, and we really, really want to land slow, because if we don't land slow, we're not really going to have enough time to actually, like, attack it to and do anything. Like, we, we, like, the only thing that we'd be able to do is defend more or less. Uh, but we landed slow on the first string, which is great. So, the nice thing about Bahamut is that its, it's attack patterns are, like, super consistent. Uh, if it starts with physicals, then it always does, like, physical, physical, whirlwind, inferno. Right, and because or we know that we yeah. can, we can use a potion to stop Fang from being launched, which means that we can like actually continue and do things, or yeah, or or, or, or price. Like it's always physical, physical whirlwind something. And yeah. past that, like the fight is honestly like pretty simple because you just attack, rune attack. You get the nice conditional modifiers, um, and and we just like build the gestalt gauge up by by a large amount. This fight can be really troll though, like if you don't land slow, or, or if you use the whirlwind all the time. Yeah, because like that's the other thing to do is lead with whirlwind instead of the physicals. So, like then you're just always knocked up. Your allies die, or like there's a lot of ways that it can go wrong, and it's one of the most heavily RNG. Um, right. so... so that was a 47. I've already, I've actually gotten a 43 Bahamut by using diversity and delta attack. I the think... default paradigms that game gives you are actually really good. Yeah, I think really. my best Bahamut was like 41. <laughs> it was like instant slow and curse, like yeah, only targeted like... lightning, like. Um. Yeah. Like, at, at, like that, it's not uncommon for that fight to range from, like, 45 to 105. Yeah. So the thing, Davey, even though we're not really leveling up that much, we can still take on most of the bosses because uh, we're getting most of our damage from equipment and, like, weapon and accessory upgrades. And even though our HP isn't terribly high, um, we kill the enemies so fast that they don't really have a good chance to kill us. And the enemies who can kill us fast, we just use like sentinels and medics as we need, and we can survive for like a really long time. And potions. Yep. Yeah, that's what I meant by medic. <laughs> <laughs> and we've now officially made it to pulse. Uh, Any percent up. isn't over yet. We still need yeah. one more fight. Yep. So that so that the last fight and this upcoming fight are the only two fights where we. Of all, where we use a uh, light's medic because her medic is really bad, despite being a primary role. It's really the only primary role that's as bad as it is, <laughs> out of any character. But uh, because we don't get to set up our paradigms, it actually works out because we don't really need that much healing. We just need enough healing to get Fang back to full HP after each one of Alex's attacks. Um, and light, Light's Medic can keep up for that at least, so... The, the other thing about this fight is, like, cons it, it is technically the most consistent fight. It's like... Oh yeah, this is the well, most consistent fight in the entire run. Uh, I mean, there's, like, Chapter 4 dogs and, like, some I mean, Wardens, but... <laughs> I, I, like, major fights, yeah, it's one of the yeah. most consistent ones. Yeah. It's by like, far the most consistent Eidolon fight. Yeah, like, aside from... Like basically, aside from the like brain dead fights, like yeah. any fight where you actually have to do like multiple things, like it, it's the most consistent fight in that if you do the same thing every time, you should get the same result. Like, yeah, there's like time. one thing on you have to react hand... to depending on if uh, if Alex does. Uh... Okay, I'm gonna pay attention so I don't screw up. Yeah. yeah. On the other hand, make a single mistake in this fight, and you are thirty. You have a thirty percent chance of just dying because you yeah. don't target hope. Yeah. The very start of the fight is actually the most crucial part. Um, you need Fang to run up close to Alex and then shift back to Sentinel in time for her to get provoke off, so that Hope doesn't get completely murdered. Yeah. I guess if she jumps, you're, if, if, if she jumps, you're too late. Yeah. In this category, is actually not as bad because Hope has almost twice as much HP as he does in any yeah. percent. Oh my god, that's so much HP. But it's still pretty <laughs> scary, yeah. Oh my god. So, like, at any percent, you can survive two of most of his attacks, but there's uh, one attack that you, that you straight up die. Oh, no, you can I'm barely sure. survive yeah, one? You can barely survive oh, yeah, one. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, like, you die on the second one. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. But but like there's one attack that like you just always die to. Yeah. 
right? But like, it actually looks like here you could survive two of them. Uh, yeah, Which is I believe what so. I think I was trying to say. But anyway, yeah, Alex's patterns are very predictable. He just does two attacks, short break, two attacks, long break, repeats. Yeah. The exact attacks he uses vary, but... but it doesn't matter. <laughs> cause... As, long as, as long as Fang is far away from you and is the only person getting hit, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. 129? Th th this fight is, is one of the... If you do want to pick up the speedrun... Like when when you get this fight to click, it it clicks. Yeah, but it's also it's definitely kind of tricky to pick up just because, as yeah. Ferris said, if you make one mistake, you could die. Yeah, and also also like retrying it takes forever because you have to reskip the cutscene. Oh, yeah. It's just like and the second cutscene is really shame. slow. Yeah. All right. Welcome to well. The, not really the true strat, the true start of the flat percent run, but pr yeah. pretty close. Welcome to, it. to the all missions portion. Welcome to all missions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, flat existed as a category before, before all, all missions. Before all missions, yeah. Most of the all really missions like, all actually missions were strategy. born from this category. Yeah. Um. You, yeah. Mean, you mean that you mean that people wanted to do a long run of this game that wasn't twenty hours? Wow. We're now switching in our main party for this chapter, which is going to be Saz, Vanille, and Snow. They, the three of them, are very good because you've got your uh, your best uh, offensive buff and debuff uh, characters in it, and then Snow is just good support and damage. Um, and a good so punching bag. It, yeah, he's gonna definitely. be he's gonna be getting punched a whole lot. <laughs> For the next couple hours. Also, this <laughs> this part um, really showcases how broken preemptive strikes are in this game. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Missions okay. in general, we we preempt like a lot of missions. Yeah, a lot of the tougher any percent fights, you can't really get preempts on because they activate from cutscenes. Yeah. Uh, Wait, or... you're still getting this? Yeah, I don't know. It's just right there. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Um, like yeah, it's maybe not worth it, but but most uh, most missions you can get preemptive strikes on, and that is a large part of the reason why there was so much deceptive farming uh, in chapter two in this category. Oh, there's a shop here too. Yes, to max the shamans. Yeah. Hmm, fair enough. And to dismantle a uh, doctor's code. Doctor's for, code, uh... yeah. Fatuitous. So uh, the way, yeah, sorry. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so the way missions work um, is you have these uh, stones and you activate them, and then there's a mission somewhere. Right now, usually the path to the actual fight is usually pretty close, and the first couple of missions are kind of laid out in a way that it, you can kind of just go from one to the next fairly seamlessly. Um, later on, there's going to be a lot of, like... <laughs> there was a lot of routing involved in, like, minimizing the movement between missions. And it's also very different between this and all missions for reasons that we'll get into later. Alright, so um, for this fight, we one. actually use debuffs and um, I buffs screwed up together the from first time. It's actually immune to physical attacks, which Snow doesn't realize at the start, so he just did an entire string of nothing. Yeah. You'd think he could figure it out after the first one, but nope. I mean, he probably knows after the first one, but he's like, you know what, I started punching, I'm gonna finish punching. Yeah, it's kind of like if, you know, he's punching air for the last four attacks, that doesn't stop him. Yeah, he's very stubborn. I like how we say Snow is stubborn like every other AI doesn't do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like much more apparent with Snow Yeah, though. it just I happens more, more with Snow. snow. It, it just happens more with Snow because of the role he fills. Yeah. Also, this area has turtles. If you like turtles, come back in a few hours, you'll get a lot of turtles. No, definitely don't come <laughs> oh, back because yeah. we're going to be killing a lot of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Turtle soup. That's one way to look at it. Right. Mission 2 showcases how important Sentinels are and are going to be for a while. 
We are going to let Snow stay in Sentinel for the entire fight, just because dealing with these dogs is pain and can, they can kill you really fast. This fight is extremely annoying because both of these enemies have elemental weaknesses, but we can't take advantage of end spells because um, the weakness of one enemy is a resistance. Oh fuck! I should probably heal. Uh, is a resistance for the <laughs> eight HP calculated. Because uh, the weakness of one of these enemies is the re is a resistant mm -hmm. element for the other, and vice versa. So, um, if we try to use an end spell, then as soon as a blitz bullet hits the other dog, it's going to cancel that end spell. So we just can't take advantage of it. When just your is left, we can, but usually its HP is low enough that it's not really worth it. We gotta win this. <laughs> Yo, Snow actually, Snow actually said it in Chapter 1. He can say it when uh, LeBro throws a potion. Right. Steel guard, which makes sense, but but I I couldn't remember ever having heard him say that. Yeah, I'm 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 still waiting for someone to mod the game so that Snow actually shouts Steel Guard. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like we have the voice line record, like we have the sound. Yeah, like... <laughs> All right, so there are two big movement sections and uh... three big movement sections in this run, and this is the first one, so. Uh, we are just gonna be walking for a while now. Yeah, I hope you all like running. Yeah, we just got to this big open area, and we've d done two missions here, and now we're gonna go back to corridors for a little bit. Um, uh, to an optional area that um, any percent doesn't really go to. I mean, we, we were here for, um, for Alex earlier, but we're gonna go much further into it now. Yeah. Basically, we're about to head to an area that uh, you never see in any percent because there's just no reason to go here. The uh, the, the funny thing about it too is that um, there's like a there's like a cutscene there that is kind of the prelude to what happens like around Hecaton. Yeah. But if you don't go there, then the Hecaton cutscene makes no sense. True. Also, and the game uh, never also, point you towards the Valus Media, so there's no reason yeah. for you to actually go there and watch the prelude. Also, chapter so, one, uh, Vanille mentions in the narration. She mentions like you said it made you happy when I smile, right? Which you only see if you go to this yeah. area. So it, oh, but, but that's actually, but that's, actually, like, that's a scene that we don't even trigger. Even, yeah, even in flat, yeah. that's like if you run to this like one specific spot on yeah. one screen. <laughs> so if if you if you do a uh, hecaton and then you run here, does it still Yo, show up, that cutscene? Um, I think so. I don't know. I, Good question. I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, I'm, I guess we'd never I know. Imagine, there's no... I imagine there's a point where it probably disables it. Yeah. Then again, I could totally see the devs just not even thinking about that. <laughs> I'm just leaving it. <laughs> yeah, not sure. <laughs> well, we'll never know because there's no reason we go to Hecaton first in a speedrun. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, the game is surprisingly well-coded on a lot of things. Like, yeah, we, like, we've only found, pretty, like, one actual glitch. This is a pretty glitch-free speedrun. Yeah. There are no glitches. I mean, oh, I triggered a... a glitch accidentally in a practice, in a practice stream, but that's it. And it I wasn't mean... even a glitch. It was just the game trying to work the way it's intended to work. Yeah, I mean, in the... very weird circumstances. There's a, there's the fuckiness you can get with uh, like changing party members mid jump, uh, like um, yeah. which we don't oh, entirely yeah. understand, like uh, like the amazing flying vanille. As well as uh, that video I had from a while back, where Vanille does a super jump and completely like unloads the geometry. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, Davey, we aren't going to play through the entire trilogy, but the, oh, yeah. all three games have their 100% uh, community-defined categories in yeah. uh, in the marathon. So this is the first one. The second one, I think, is going to be Kanri J with uh, 160 fragments for 13. Well, that, that was thought, actually near yeah, the I end think, of the I think Lightning oh, Returns. Okay. So the next one, so that's the last one. And after yeah. this one, it's going to be Dainuitari playing Dash New Game Plus on Lightning Returns. 
Yeah, that's going to be on the 9th of December, and then Conry's 13-2 run will be on the 20th. I just checked the schedule. Cool. So yeah, it's pretty fun. We're going to have all of the longest 13 trilogy categories yeah. in this marathon. And there, there all of the also, longest there also is real a, um, categories. <laughs> there, there also is a trilogy percent uh, oh, yeah. category. But that's that, for any uh, percent. Do. Yeah, where you just do all three any percents one after another. But it's it's not going to be in the in this marathon. I think if I recall correctly, Jake has the record for that. I have no idea. It's not very. Not, it's not a lot of people do it anymore. No, it's um, no. The last one was Olson. He did it a couple of months ago. Yeah, uh, it, that's it's all. It's also just like that one. It's kind of funny because it's like five-ish hours for for thirteen, and then five-ish hours for both thirteen two and LR. So it's just like half the time is spent on the first game. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I, I was I was wrong. Olsen actually had has the record for that. Jake oh. actually never had it. Oh, <laughs> I, was, oh. I, was wrong. I guess Jake was never that good at the sequels, so Fair. They're very different. Well LR is like very different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you run thirteen, you can run thirteen two pretty easily. The same thing applies in reverse, but uh, LR favorite, it's uh... its own game. My favorite LR's preempt is game. coming up. Oh yeah, this preemptive is great. I like to call this preempt Ugalu needs a pair of glasses. Yo, I would be down to see a low percent Twilight Princess run. Now this mission may be very easy to preempt, but it's actually one of the more dangerous early ones. Yeah. Yeah, he can kill you. Like, if he kills you in four swipes, we will be able to tank the first three because of this potion, but uh, afterwards we just cannot get hit again, so we just need to hope Snow and Vanille do their jobs and stagger this guy. That looked really scary. Yeah, it, it, get, it gets scary. <laughs> but, uh, well, it's scary if Snow does that. Snow? Hello? Did he jump? Oh, 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 he jumped again? Oh, oh. Uh, I guess I'm just spamming <laughs> potions. Okay, we're good. Oh, Jesus. No, you idiot. Jeez. Stop, Stop jumping. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I hate snow. Disclaimer. <laughs> Valid. <laughs> okay, I do have a D set for mission four. Uh, I'm... I, I can't decide if I want to use the bonus for six or nine. Six is a better time save optimally, but nine is safer. Mm, your call. Yeah, I'll I'll decide on the on the fly probably. There's no why you hate any percent. I don't hate any percent. I just hate snow. Yeah, any percent is great. It's a lot. It's it's honestly it's a lot of fun. Yeah, any... and and there isn't really any i mean i guess in all the categories like there isn't any downtime you're, you're pretty much always doing something yeah like i think any percent that includes this category i think any percent has like one of the highest skill ceilings of any category just because like all missions gets harder but that's largely because of dumb rng uh which to be fair there is that in any percent too but um most fights in any percent are at least going to be winnable most of the time with uh, good execution. But... All categories are good and cool and valid, except for Shroud. Except for Shroud. <laughs> 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 so, so the thing is with um, with all of the thirteen categories and and pretty much all the fights, like everything is is more or less winnable. And every run is finishable unless you, like, sell the elemental rings here. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, to be fair, you could also, like, 
sell your Genji gloves or your trapezohedrons or something and like uh shout outs to Maelstrom selling yeah. his traps. <laughs> oh for real. Uh, uh but yes, yeah, so, so so like the the runs are I mean they're hard to get into because it's because they are they're they're difficult runs, but they're a lot of fun uh, to do. Um you're always doing something. There aren't really any like boring snore parts of any or of most of the categories um and it, it really does reward like skill yeah and and like being able to do things or, yeah, or, or being able well, to you aren't even going to try the manual once feels bad man i mean uh, i guess i could uh, i don't know what i don't know a better <laughs> thing to use the decept on i have one so. <laughs> So now we get to see uh, Alex for this uh, one fight because we don't have Hecaton yet, and Hope Summon is actually pretty strong. So, um, and we get to see my my favorite guest alt move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still con like, what is actually falling? Like, I still don't understand what this is. Is it just a giant <laughs> like a jet engine from a crashed plane or something? Like, yeah, like I. It's, it just it makes looks no like sense. like one of the shoulder pauldrons. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to kill. Yeah, like, it looks like one of the, the, like, giant rook soldier pauldrons that Alex has, just, like, falling from the sky. Is it just one left? Yep. I'm, oh, I'm not going to. Oh, that's bad. I'm not going to do oh, the you're finisher. Not, you're not doing the finisher for the 5 HP on that guy? Oh. Uh, I don't know. It probably wouldn't be too much slower. <laughs> Than just waiting. I don't, it it, it would have had swag points, especially because I don't know what the finisher looks like. Yeah, I've seen it like once, because usually you kill before you run out of points anyway. Yeah. So here we're going to switch uh, Vanille as the party leader, which you're probably thinking, oh, they're going to use Vanille lead for the next fight. Nope. No. Nope. Still using Hope. It's just Literally just so much the vanilla because she runs faster. <laughs> yep, it's just so much running in between that it's worth doing an entire extra menu. Yeah. Uh, even even in hope percent runs, you 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 do that a lot where you just no, swap no, hope out of, of no, that's of not one. allowed in hope percent. That, you, yeah, that 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 feels like very like, no, like un. Really? That's what Log does. What? Yeah, log, no, Log has... Log. Okay, well, Log's changed the rules then, because Log has specifically... Oh. Like, Log literally says you have to switch to Hope at the end of Chapter 10 before running down the ramp after Bahamut. Oh, all right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I, the last time that I talked, last time that I talked, like, it was like yeah, swap out Hope from Party Lead to Walk a lot, but... Yeah, I don't think that's allowed unless he changed the rules, but... Sure. Oh, well. I mean, there are no rules. It's not on the leaderboard. Yeah, so this next fight's kind of fun. Um, the reason that we're leading Hope no, here is not. because uh, it's very dangerous with Saz's lead, and Hope has all of the defensive buffs, whereas Saz has all of the offensive buffs at this point. Um, now, usually we prefer Saz because offensive buffs are better for getting fast fights, However, in this fight, uh, it's really not safe without the defensive buff, so we're going to lead Hope for uh, this one fight and then go back to Saz. Well, I guess these two fights, but... Saz's lead works fine for Mission 4. We, we really only swap him out for... Because uh, we're going to use him here. What does any percent mean? Beat the game as fast as possible? Yeah, any yeah. percent. For, in, for every game, any percent is always beat the game as fast as possible. Yeah, that's just a universal speedrunning term. Basically means yep. like you don't have to get any particular percent of completion. Just any percent of completion that beats the game is acceptable. Yep, and it doesn't matter what you do to to get it. Yeah, really. I mean, some games might have like uh, like some games any percents might ban like cheat codes or something, but. Well, so, so like cheat codes is is not in the game. Well, no, even games with right. in-game cheat codes. I mean, oh. Sure. Yeah, like if you can't game shark your way to. Uh... Yeah, no. Obviously, game shark is a <laughs> is a different story. 
Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and activate a Forest Wall for this fight because Hope does not have any of the offensive buffs, but we still really want them because they are good. Alright. So this is gonna be the last time we uh, level up Hope for a while. You kind of scared me with how close you got to the flight trigger before you did the mini. <laughs> oh no, I, I've I've accidentally run into it before. I I know where to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing when I switch to Hope lead for some of the Fault Warrens fights, but I know where to stop. <laughs> Don't worry. Because <laughs> I've I've experimented with that in practice. Well, yeah, like. Um, Credit warps are any percent, yeah. Uh, any percent, yes. Uh, one of the most popular speed games, Ocarina of Time, any percent category, just as all with this. No, n uh, recently became a credit warp. Well, it was credit warp, and then it was faster to not do credit warp, and then it was faster to do. Like, it keeps on changing. <laughs> yeah. So if it's, it's not been a good speed run since, like, 2010 or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, so Vanille is actually the first character to get her uh, um, ATB upgrade uh, from uh, Crystarium. Every character has one ATB upgrade in the Crystarium, and for some reason, Vanille's is at the start of uh, her stage 8 Crystarium. How oh, did I do this wrong? I oh, know this is fine. So I, I feel like the reason her ATB is is so early is because most characters get it with like at their fourth atb with the idol on fights and vanille's is the last one and yeah that's after true. like everyone's they, they're they probably assume that like you're going to be exploring grand falls for a while before getting to there that's true so like they, they need to give her the fourth atb so that she can function better Anyhow, um, Batuitus, uh can be kind of rough. Uh, he likes to debuff yeah. you. We kind of go, we kind of go overkill on the debuffs. I've like, I don't know. I really don't want to do as, or on the buffs. Excuse me. I really don't want to do as many buffs as I do. But anytime I've like tried experimenting with cutting some, it just feels worse. So I, just, I haven't really found the right, uh, <laughs> like the right option for that. But. Yeah, definitely okay. some of that buffing can probably be cut. It just needs to be uh, experimented with more. I mean, probably eventually this fight's just going to be Saz lead, because <laughs> uh, it saves you an entire Fort Assault. Uh, yeah, well, I, I guess now that Kisaric is also Fort, it's not an issue anymore, because you don't run out of Aegis Souls. Yeah. And like, because in the current route, since we dismantle the champions, like we have to dismantle the champions badge in chapter 12 um, just for Fortisols, where actually at, we have more Aegisols in uh, Fortisols at this point. So yeah, um, the old route used aggression for this fight with Oakcom, and I didn't realize for a long time, but that just doesn't really make sense, because uh, Snow just does way more damage than Hope, so it's much better as a Ravager. Or so the general strap well. for this fight was, was just like, get all the defensive buffs and then stagger um, and kill? Uh, yeah, but and this fight is a lot a... different okay. from all missions. In all missions, you kind of just uh... buff and then you start debuffing him, but you also have Vanille being a med- you also have Vanille Medic if things go wrong. Or just fight it fighting. once. By the way, just just to be clear on this, we're, we're gonna be referring a lot to all missions, so the, the difference is that all missions is the category where we just beat the game and do all the missions. This has all the extra stuff of getting- maxing everybody's Crystaria, yeah. getting all the equipment, etc. So um, I could and, submit and, a plat run as an all missions run, but not the sure. other way around. <laughs> um, and th that creates some major differences. All missions still has to kind of keep to one party because of, you know, maxing everybody's Crystarium not being a requirement for the category, so it just loses time. Yep. 
and, and it's it's like what a six and a half hours difference. Uh, no, not that much now. It's less <laughs> now, yeah. It's like uh, but it, it, it might be more it's again. Like five and once, a half ish. Once, once I get back to doing all missions and actually get it to below eleven hours, finally. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, what's the So here we're getting our first Aurora Scarf. Uh, we're eventually going to get three of these and going to use them quite a bit in post-game. Um, basically, if you have an Aurora Scarf equipped, uh, the character who has it equipped is going to start the battle with a full ATB gauge, which for longer fights, it's it doesn't really make that big of a difference just because it's only saving you time on one string. But like for short fights, it can be a really big time saver because... Like, enemies that you would kill in, like, one or two strings anyway, you're cutting off, like, a significant chunk of the fight um, with Aurora Scarves. Another thing is uh, we're going to use it on Vanille a bit to um, stagger some enemies early that would be, like, kind of dangerous otherwise. Like, uh, Mission 9, Kaiser Behemoth, and then Pulsework Champion. We're going to have an Aurora Scarf on Vanille because that's going to allow her to uh, stagger faster. Because um, that's another thing, preemptive strikes, only your party leader starts with a full ATB gauge. Your party members uh, start with an empty gauge, but with an Aurora Scarf, um, they start with a full gauge, just like the leader. Funny thing is that we're doing missions five, six, and seven out of order, because if you do them in order, it makes you backtrack a bunch. Yeah, it's just... It, it, it makes way more sense to just go all the way to seven, yeah. and then you can get the others kind of in a much more fluent motion. You can try and not use the D set on uh, nine, and then just use three team to make it faster. Did you see that coming? That's true. I, well, I think her concern is just that she really wants to do the nine three M for swag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I have a bonus. That's what I'm saying. Now. She can get the nine three M for swag. She can just use the Z set for eighteen and thirty seven. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'll go for the manual on nine if it's being like extra bullshit. I may just I may just do the uh, the uh, or use the D set. Did you see that coming? So here we really want Vanille to land deep protect, but it doesn't always happen very fast. There it is. Poison's kind of nice too, but... It's not doing the numbers it's going to do on some later enemies. I mean... <laughs> yeah, uh... I guess in, <laughs> in terms of relative numbers, it's doing the same numbers. True. Yeah, um, just the fact that it's percentage HP. I mean, that's, like, less of an unpopular opinion nowadays. The thing is, like, there are plenty of people who like the 13 trilogy. There are just some very, very loud haters. Quite a few of them. Yeah, there's no way I was getting past that tomato. Yeah, like, the game's a lot of fun. The speedrun's a lot of fun. Like, it, it's a game that reward. It, like, it's a game and run. Even though it's a game itself that really rewards you for, like, knowing how the battle system works yeah which is um, a shame because the game does a very poor job at yeah. telling you how the battle system works yeah i mean like, i think you most can of the... win sorry go, go. go i was just gonna respond to chat that like uh i think most of the people complaining about it probably have played it but like very little or like just got a bad impression from the start and didn't keep playing which you know is fine but like what annoys me is when they then talk about it like they're experts. <laughs> like, it's okay if you're like, yeah, I played it for an hour and got bored, so I didn't like it. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, that's Okay, totally that's fair. fair. <laughs> yeah. So the, the thing that, like, you can win most fights by, you know, heal tanking everything. Right. Solidarity yeah. works for literally every fight. Yeah, and, and like, you can do that, but that isn't fun per se, right? So, yeah. like... And the game doesn't do a good job of explaining that, hey, you can do things other than heal tanking. Yeah. Um, and, and, like, the game's beginning... Like, it is a real shame that the first two chapters of the game 
don't have paradigms. Yeah. Because that that's really when the game starts opening up, and like you can you can actually do things on the fights rather than just hit attack for an hour. Yep. I don't know. It's just people see the auto battle option and they think it's like optimal, and oh, yeah, so auto battle sucks. and so then they're like, oh yeah, the game just plays itself because you know your characters just know what to do all the time and it's like these people have no idea how bad auto battle is <laughs> yeah, like, auto i mean there are really bad and we only use like, it, it when is... we know exactly what it's yeah. going to give us like we only use it when it guesses right which like early on is quite a bit because you know the options are fairly limited but as the run goes on we use it less and less because it has too many options and just is not good at guessing right like, there are also, some we things that actually right. Libra or Libra scope a lot of enemies in the early game, and that's going to just stop being a thing from now on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so again, we, we, or go ahead. Priya, <laughs> strike. Preemptive strikes are extremely OP, um, as you may be noticing from these missions. So far, we've preempted every single mission except for mission seven, seven and because six. Have... Oh well, and, yeah, and six, I guess. So six used to be a preempt, also. Yeah, but then we <laughs> but realized it only it. saves thirty seconds, which is less than a farming a decept. Yeah, and the manual uh, preempts just bad. Like, you can go for it, but I think you're gonna lose time more often than not. And here it works out because we kind of want to use a decept to dodge this. Uh, yeah. So the the thing is anyway. that the manual preempt on this mission isn't actually that bad. It's just that the dodge beforehand is so bad without <laughs> a decept that it's just it. It's just gonna be better in the vast majority of cases to just use the decept for the preempt as well, because you'd have to and do a decept cancel. Now at the start of this fight, you cancel it to uh, move where it would debuff you, which is handy. So you don't even yes. have to deal with that. Uh... Yeah, so Snow's going to be doing most of our damage on the next uh, couple of fights, because he's got... Um... Well, I guess uh, Saz has strength equipment, so... He'll do some good damage on the next fight, but on this one... Oh, why did I get this chest? I don't get this chest anymore. Um, oh, we're actually going to get our first non-instrument trophy, which is Kelger's Cup, which is uh, for completing all of the uh, rank D missions, which are, you know, quote-unquote the easiest, which for the most part they are, but... Um, What's every Kelger? I don't know what that name comes from, but... Uh... Yeah, every um, every mission has a rank A, B, C, or D. Hey, Shonen. Um, thank you for the good luck. Uh, basically, A ranks are supposed to be the hardest, and D are supposed to be the easiest. That's not really always true, but that's kind of the idea. Um, and so you get a you get a trophy for all D rank missions, uh, one for all C rank missions, and one for all B rank missions. There's actually no trophy for all A rank missions, but then there is a trophy just for completing all missions, and then a trophy for five starring all missions. Yeah, so we don't we don't want to lose time just trying to get Lucy Paragon, so we do want to get all of the missions five stars on the first attempt. Yeah. If we are With... going to get it really yeah. easily most of them. There are a couple of missions that can give you some yeah. trouble. With five stars there is uh, one mission that we do seven times and we're not gonna five star it every time but it doesn't matter because we only need to five star it once yeah yeah the vast vast majority of missions are completely free to five star with the strats we have there are only a couple we have to be careful on oh so uh do we actually go over how stars are calculated no I was about to explain the uh, the mission nine preempt though. Um, then, then Do we... the preempt and then yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, so this mission coming up has a very unique preemptive strike. Um, so the way preemptive strikes work is 
you have to so unless you do it with a deceptisol in which case you can do it from wherever any other time to get a preemptive stri strike you have to be inside of a battle zone or it won't register as a preemptive strike even if the enemy didn't see you now one caveat to this is that the battle zone does not have to be the battle zone of the enemy you are preempting <laughs> um so uh there's kind of a we kind of take advantage of this on this next um preempt because what we do is we lure the enemy into a battle zone that is adjacent to its own but because it's not in its battle zone it stops seeing us because it can only see us in its own battle zone so then as soon as it loses track of us we can just run straight into it even like straight into its face and it'll still be a preemptive strike because we're still in a battle zone it's just a different battle zone um it can be a little touchy sometimes uh if it doesn't work on the first try sometimes retries are like really bad because the behemoth like can be in like a bunch of different spots on the retry and like it can get really dumb but i have a backup deceptisol if i need it so <laughs> i'll definitely give it a few shots also, reverse phallus media dodges are fun. No, they're not. Yeah, they're awful. That's, yeah, that's luckily, not quite the word I would use. We only have to run through this area twice, and the second time we're strong enough to just kill most of these things if they catch us, but yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bad. That wasn't too bad, though. No, you did really well on that. Yeah, well, I would say I got really lucky, but also did well. <laughs> so, it could be both. <laughs> so, so while we're still running, um... So, end of each battle screen, there's a, a stars, and the stars affect the uh, rate of drops, uh, like ch per ch chance of like rare drop or shrouds or common drop, etc. It actually doesn't and... affect common drops, but the other two, or oh. it, it does indirectly cool. by affecting the rare drop, but yeah. right, which is yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, go on. <laughs> so. The, the way that it works is that the game sort of calculates how strong it thinks that you are and uh, has that against how strong it thinks the enemy is. And it does some math to essentially determine like how long it should take you to win that fight uh, with those like with the stats that you have. And that's what determines the target time. And then the actual time that you use in order to beat the fight uh, is how long, is like what the actual fight, is what determines how many stars you get. Right. And uh, five stars is, you know, like when you you do like really well. I don't know the yeah, exact Yeah, it's percentage. like, uh, well, you need 13,000 points, which I, I can't do the math. It's basically if you have to be at... Your, your battle time has to be less than 70% of the target time, basically, I think. Something like uh, that. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. There's also, like, a bonus to your score if you get a preempt, so yes. then it gets all wonky. But... Yeah, there's a 1.2 uh, multiplier for that. Realistically, though, there's really only one, maybe a couple other missions where we are in any danger of not five-starring them. Yeah, it's... What's uh, wait, so, did I run into the dogs or the... Oh, of course. I couldn't tell which one I ran into. It was so, a dog. So, so the funny thing Seth. is with the, um... The funny thing is with that is that the Eidolons See, fight look, now this have behemoth really is high just... target times. Oh my god. But you're doomed before it would 5-star. But, like, before it would be not 5-star, so you would just die. So it's not possible, I don't think, to... Um, okay, where is this behemoth? To not like, five-star an island fight. I don't understand. Oh, look, it's literally just right on top of me. <laughs> like... Wait, where, Wait, where, where is that? I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, you got it. Perfect. Yeah, you got it. That's what matters. He's I was, like, half ass. expecting to literally be on top of Saz's afro. Oh, like, yeah, oh, like, what the hell? Out. Oh, whoops, why am I pasting the Neil? Uh, fuck. I, I've never decided on how I like to do the buffs on this fight, so I always end up messing it up. Because I, like, change my mind mid-fight. 
Yeah, that was pretty funny. I'm glad I went for the <laughs> manual preempt. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Like that. I also find it really funny how, how Snow just like uppercuts it and then starts ruining it. Yeah. Like keep on doing that. Well, it's 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 almost like really nice for us. Means that we don't yeah. have to worry about it. Exactly oh yeah, this. no, it's super nice. I just think the animations are funny. Oh yeah. He's going to do the same one, guys, Eric. At least on the first string. Uh, no, he'll keep. Uh, well, he'll keep doing attack ruin ruin. Yeah, he will it... keep doing attack ruins, but uh, when he attacks, he will do one attack in me there. He's not gonna actually yeah, it, going to uppercut it anymore. It's just dumb because he's not launching anymore, but he still wastes uh, ATB on a attack that's doing way less damage. Uh... Uh, yeah, like um, Niji said, there are a total of 64 missions in the game. Yep. And yeah, six of them are required. Like them are required. We're going to be doing about a third of the missions in Chapter 11. I guess this is as good a time as any to um, talk about like general idea of, of the routing of these. Um, um, yes. You don't you necessarily need to do a bunch of missions right now, um, but it works out because doing these missions also opens up teleport stones, uh, also called waystones. Uh, which will just let us get around much more easily when we then come back later. It, because we have to kind of go through through a lot of these areas anyway, and it'll be much easier for us uh, to just open up a lot of the teleport stones while we're already going through the areas. Yeah, it, it... And we need to do a bunch of these early missions on the step in order to open up those later ones. Or, wait, is that even true? Some of those yeah, are uh, just active. No, most of the start. Waystone missions are just active, but, like, 9 isn't um, for Central Expanse. Yeah. And uh, I think 17 for Northern High Plain isn't either, and we're going to be using yeah, those yeah, as a lot. But, yeah. Um, but, like, 18, 19, and 20. Or, like, 18 unlocks 19 for some reason, but 18 and 20 are unlocked automatically, I believe. And then 28 in Airba is as well. Yeah, there's never really been like a huge like serious effort to look into. Okay, what if we just did these missions later? Like, yeah, would it be easier if we're stronger? Um, yeah, because like we've the... just kind of guessed that it's not worth it. Yeah, it but would like it would add a good amount. Of... Like it would add a good amount of movement. Um, it would probably save time overall on fights because having those jacked up stats is gonna make up bigger difference on these small missions than it is on like the big bosses because like yeah. we have like uh we're quite a bit stronger for like the for like bart 2 and like the proud clads and stuff in this category compared to any person no, whoops. because we're doing all these missions beforehand but the thing is that we're still not saving that much time on the fights because of that like we still have to do more or less the same strat they're just like more free in the damage phase, you know? Like, we still have to do all the work to debuff and and buff and stagger and all that. Uh, Meru, you don't need to track all the missions to know when, what you're missing. On your map menu, you can press square again, and it will bring up a mission list, and if you press right on your D-pad, it will bring out the star lists for every mission, so you can check real quickly what is the mission you're missing, and then yeah. you can prior capitalize on that one. I didn't know about, uh, about being able to push right to see the star ratings until like a month ago. <laughs> I, I always thought that if you missed a five star and didn't know which, you had to go through and click into every single one. <laughs> oh no! Oh, so this fight, like uh, pain. this fight coming up is pretty fun. Um, oh yeah, this fight is, uh, is basically amazing. we're set up so we can just barely survive one attack from this enemy because that's all he's gonna be uh, have time to get off. Because uh, we're gonna use a fort assault to get haste, and we're able to stagger like really quickly. And once we stagger. We launch him, and that's kind of the end of the story. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, there oh, is a... Be. Before the fight, we are going to grab a couple of chests with charms, which is necessary items for Treasure Hunter. Yep. Um, which can then... only be obtained from chests. Yeah. I'm saying I'll still have to walk back to the thing and them. Oh yeah, we will have to redo them. Um... Yeah, there's no real way around that, unfortunately. 
Uh, but yeah, our HP is routed in very precisely that we can survive. In all missions, we actually use an Aegisol and we survive because of the defensive buffs, but that means we need to manually buff all the offensive buffs instead. For Plot, since we use a Fortisol, we just need to put end spells because this guy is weak to thunder and to water. To every, every element. Oh, it's weak to every element. Like yeah, many many enemies are just weak to all elements. Yeah. We just need to put on end spells and then hope Vanille deshells. If Vanille doesn't deshell in time, it's a retry, unfortunately, but most of the time she will get it. And after after that, we just stagger time our shift so that Snow gets an ATB refresh and launches before he can yeah. um, get the second attack off. And we just uh, ruin yeah. him to death. It's honestly a really sick strat. It just happens so fast that like it doesn't even look that impressive. <laughs> Wait, right, do you want to I'm... talk about the, ne the Deneb Duelers? Oh yeah, sure. I was gonna mention, just in this last menu, we actually got some pretty hefty magic damage boosts. Um, we got a maxed Sorcerer's Mark, which we're gonna put on Snow for this fight, uh, which is going to be giving him a huge boost to magic. It's 180 uh, additional magic, which is massive at this point. Um, and we also got the Deneb Duelers, which are uh, like a really good uh, magic weapon for Saz. Well, let me do the fight real quick, then I can... Yeah. This is yeah. the hardest mission of early game, by far. And, and since, it, since it's so important to kill it in one stagger, and um, we need to do magic damage on it, it kind of is like uh, something we very much need to ride around in order to be able to do that. So this run is, is probably going to be about 17-ish hours. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to say because there is quite a bit of RNG, but like 17-ish is probably a pretty safe guess. Uh... Uh-oh. Did he land? No. Came no, but it's close. Uh, this is kind of scary. Okay, we're good. Snow's going to relaunch. <laughs> He's still falling yeah. more and more with each string. If Gazeric ever lands, you can't immediately relaunch him. Because, yeah, he's uh, in like a collapsed state. Uh, and where he's and then he's just going to get up and completely murder you. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the problem about Gazeric, if he falls to the ground, he will use an attack called Murderous Smite that actually adds a second target, which is his arm. And because you are using two comms, Snow will target the arm instead of targeting the main body, and then he yeah. will kill you. So, uh, just <laughs> that that strat is totally viable for all missions, yeah. So, yeah. Are we well, I was I was talking to uh, right I was talking. Yeah, to we can about actually it. do um, four things all guys, Eric, because we have two extra fortisols and no yeah no real place to use them. I use one of them on bar two just because I like it, but we can totally use the second one on guys, Eric, and it's fine. Yeah, but, but what like, I mean is like. If we don't need an Aegis Soul for that fight, we don't need to do early 15 and 11 in that category anymore. <laughs> yeah, like I was talking to Ragen about it, and like he was mentioning that um, all missions has like less HP there, but I didn't really understand why, because we're doing the same fights. But yeah, I guess all missions is going farther in Commando, because like at this point, I don't even have like Jeopardize. Um, oh yeah, we, the Crusadium is a little different with like like Jeopardize, you but I don't. I guess we don't really you, need you it. You absolutely do not need it. Jeopardize until Dahaka. <laughs> it's like not oh, really I noticeable. Feel like, I feel like there's there's a potential reroute there to actually kind of like put 15 and 11 in later. Because like you, all missions up to this point has done the exact same fights, maybe some different like Shroud farms, but yeah. Um, so like it, you could definitely work it out. Yeah. Meru, it's going to take a while to get to 64, and I'm being generous. Yeah, it's gonna be, uh, yeah, well over 10 hours before, uh, maybe, so I, well, around I would, 10 I hours I would not now, actually. recommend trying to copy from watching the run. I, if, if you want to do the strats, I would recommend looking at the notes. Yeah. Because, because Serena is going to be doing things very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, and it's you not... absolutely no. For Versi, you absolutely need an understanding of the fight in order to be able to do the strat correctly. Yeah. Um... And like, there's so much. Um... What I'm looking for. There's so much uh, variance. 
um, in like most of the fights in this run that it's like you can't learn how to do a fight just from one example because there's so many other ways things could go. Wait, so did nobody there get the warrior's wristband? No, because we're, we're doing goblins. goblins. We're doing oh, goblins. Right. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. so physical damage is really not super effective on these enemies, so we're putting a ton of magic on Saz, and we're going to be spamming uh, Fyra. I don't think we really talked about com buffering, actually. Um, no. so, I, yeah, I don't think we, we didn't talk about buffering at all, because yeah. it hasn't really come up. So the rolls, uh, uh, the rolls each have like a roll bonus that you get... Um, that applies to things that you do when you're in that role. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, have done a move that, or done an ability that pertains to that role. All it, all that matters is that you're in the role when it happens. So the role bonus for Commando is it gives you an increase in damage. So what? And it's like a, it's like it's like a hundred percent or more if you. Yeah, level it, it, up. it like more than doubles damage essentially. Um, and that's going to be, uh, we're going to take advantage of that because um, that was a really fast preempt. <laughs> that was sick. Um, Fog. Nice. Uh, yeah, we're going to be taking advantage of that in this fight because we're going to use in fire, which in addition to giving a fire element to non-elemental attacks, it also buffs all fire damage by 30%. Um, so we're actually going to be taking advantage of that to... Uh, Use in fire, in fire plus quake, and then we're going to calm buffer those fires to do like a ton of damage. And if we're lucky, yeah. Vanille will land D shell and imperil to further boost our damage. Because these guys are not uh, weak to fire by default, but with imperil they are. Really? I thought yeah. they were. Nah, just pork bears are. Huh. And uh, goblins are weak to, or munchkins are weak to. Uh, Ice. Ice, yeah. Yeah, so... so we just used Furious because it's... See, like, now that he has Imperial, he's just gonna melt on these next two. Oh, uh, well, I meant to throw two. Would've killed. <laughs> so, the, um... So, the, this buffering technique is used a lot in any percent. Uh, most commonly... You with Saz, you would com buff or you would rav buffer a blitz, blitz, and it will give you a lot of chain duration and a lot of actual chain. Uh, it's this technique's actually used a oh, no. ton in 13. In 13, two com buffering spells in 13, two is really important. Yeah, like y you do it multiple times in almost every single fight in 13, two, and it, it uh. amps your damage up like crazy. Minus. Versi is not 10 minutes. Like the worst case fights are going to be around eight, but they can be. They're usually going to be more like six to seven. Oh, the first thing is always going to be a long fight, just Total. because of uh, impenetrable aura. Also, so, so 15 one, million HP. So one, no one other. Weakness. One one other thing with um. Wow, these guys are being assholes. Yeah. One other thing with the with the with the buffering and oh, the roll close. bonuses is that each roll gives bonuses to the allies depending on what roll it is. So like calm will boost uh, your damage, but it also boosts your allies' damage by a by a oh, smaller wait, no, amount. Uh, plat yeah. trophy is 100 percent. Yes. Um, it's the close. So, it's our 100 percent basically. You um, can go. Oh, or sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, for instance, whenever we use Tri Disaster, Ravagers give increases to the chain, uh, the, like the chain amount. And if you've got three Ravagers, then not only do they get their own bonuses, but they get the bonuses from the allies to increase their chain. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if you do it in Plat, but like in any percent, there's a few fights where we uh, have Cerberus, which is triple com, because it like does a lot more damage. Yeah. And and like like the the roll bonuses and bufferings like really add up. Like the, this game is a game of percentages. Well, yeah. Well, we use Cerberus a decent amount mainly because we actually have teams with three good commandos, <laughs> as oh, opposed sure. as opposed to like any percent where Vanille's a pretty underwhelming commando, but she's just better being a commando in some fights than anything else she could be. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Wally is asking if she, she can join. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, oh, I don't think he ever joined the server. Um, you, you just did, but oh. you're... You're, 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 you're mod, you, you two are modded out, so you should be able to... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. Uh, Wait, oh, uh, no, I'm, Now that Wally's here, I'm probably gonna head out soon-ish. It is, it is 6.20 a.m. And I... We just leave the phone That's fair. <laughs> Sleeping overrated. Wisdom yep. does come with age. Anyone uh -oh. who'd think about running this category has to assume sleep is overrated. Yeah. Well, it's not like I it's not like I prepped for for staying up for the whole time. Right. And yeah. I'll I'll hop I'll hop in <laughs> again after I wake up, but I'll I'll probably bounce in like fifteen ish minutes. Yeah, no worries. Um also Pharaoh slash Zwanzig, do you think we should limit the VC to four or five because I feel like I think four works fine I feel like if we get more it might get a little uh yeah potentially like I don't know I, I think five is probably fine more than that is, is yeah like oh, I feel yeah. like we should at least cut it to five like five is probably fine um do either of you have the ability to do that as mods, or do I have to do that? I'm looking at it right now. I think if you like right click on the channel, like edit maybe? Uh, I don't. Oh, wait. User, User limits. No, I, I found it. it. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Yeah, and if we get five people in here and it's terrible, we can always <laughs> reduce it later. I mean, it's fine if the fifth people is here uh, just saying we it's got like to this. Got him. <laughs> 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 I really hope she joins just for that. <laughs> but I, I highly recommend anybody that like thinks this run is cool or thinks this game is sweet and wants to give it a try, like. You can join the 13 Discord. There's a link to it in on the speedrun.com page. Yeah. Um. Know. And and we're we're all very nice people. Yeah, we. And we really like to see new me. people in the community, oh. so we'll uh, <laughs> we are very helpful if you have yeah. questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, like so it, it it is not uncommon for like. People to just hop into well so for one thing most people do runs like in voice channels which is really nice but also like if you need help with something it's not uncommon for like somebody to just you know sit down with you for a half an hour while yeah. you, you bash your head against the fight for sure uh so next mission is mission 14 we like to call this mission prepare to die because this mission is awful it is awful <laughs> which one is the uh, it's the oh uh, this the one font, the font of Nanto mission. Yeah, okay. I remember this one. Yeah, these things are really powerful and they also they... very highly uh, like. Uh, well, I'm at 20 HP, so yep. Okay. Yeah. Also, the this... mission 20. Uh, the s... oh, it's 14. Do yeah, they the... resist provoke? Or yeah, like, the ceratosaurs are very hard to provoke. <laughs> the Sahagans aren't that bad, but the ceratosaurs like like have really high provoke resistance which is, is it why is to haste snow to so you can get more challenges no. off no, uh, not probably it. not i guess i didn't think of it that way but like eh, probably not really i don't know like usually it's fine because you i just target the ceratosaurs first and like they die pretty quick so like it's fine anyway usually um there i just kind of got unlucky because vanille did a full string of cures on herself <laughs> as I was getting hit to, like, 20 HP. Yeah, I found out this fight is so much better if you just go for the Ceratosaurs first. Yes, I also go for the Ceratosaurs even first. If, even if, like, the Sahagans seem like better positioning, it's like, the Ceratosaurs just suck so bad. And, like, once they're dead, you can spend a lot more time in dirty fighting instead, instead of solidarity, which is how you actually get a fast fight if uh, Vanille can get deprotect. Oh, 
she got poison on one. She got a deep protect on the one that's far away. Oh, this is so irritating. Oh my god. See, this is about the time that, like, potions stop really being useful. Uh, yeah, we, well, we don't even have Doctor's Codes anymore, we've dismantled both yeah. of them. So. We are going to get a third one, but it's super but we, late. Yeah, and we never use it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, so I guess no we... No, way of getting higher debuff chances, not at all. I no. guess, uh, we didn't talk about, uh, Chocobos. <laughs> so we have chocobos yeah, now. Yeah, chocobos now. And chocobos are actually very important for plot because one of the trophies is Gizal Wraith. I think that's how that's pronounced. I don't know. It requires you to dig a ribbon. And for you, the, the ribbon is guaranteed to be the 20th dig. So we need to dig 20 treasures with this yep. chocobo. The first dig, the fifth, the tenth, the fifteenth, and the twenty are always the same, are set to be the same. Yep. All of the others are random and they can be from useless to really, really good. They're can usually can you gonna get the be ribbon useless. at anyone before the twentieth? No. It's just okay. the twentieth. Um like the the fifth, tenth, fifteenth, and twentieth digs are all special um accessories that can't be gotten on any other digs. The first dig is it guaranteed to be a gold nugget, to be a gold nugget, which you can get on other digs. It's pretty uncommon, but if you do get you one, it's get pretty nice. If you just get gold nuggets every time, it would be really good. <laughs> yeah, but gold nuggets are like the lowest probability dig, I'm pretty sure. Because like, right. uh, uh, the lowest probability dig is the chocobo plush. Is it really? That's surprising. Yes. Okay. Well, I so, guess that so works in our favor. So here, here's the, the two things that bug me about Chocobos. Uh, They're about as big the as Behemoth Kings. No, well, no. Um, so, so, so the first is that like there's some islands in like the mini ponds, lakes, that you can only access by going on a chocobo. And it's like, the water is not that deep. You can wait <laughs> <into> it. <laughs> right? Uh, like, okay, we got our first dig. <laughs> The specific but, trigger to unlock Chocobo Riding is beating Mission 14. That gives you Gasol Reigns, and that's what you need to ride the Chocobos. It's a, it's the only mission that actually gives you a key item, uh, except uh, for all of the shops. Uh, 46. Yeah, the shops. So, so the other, the other thing that it, that is related. Let me tell you, it is related. Is that in fights we have seen the characters jump 20 plus feet into the air. Hang there for for five seconds while they hit stuff, and then fall back down without problems. But you're telling me that they can't jump or scale these cliffs that they need the chocobo for it? Something's not quite right here. If lightning can do somersaults while a thousand feet in the air without any guardrails, I think lightning can jump from one cliff to the other. Nah, too hard. Well, see what you're. Not uh, taking into account is that there's no blue circle on the ground. True. <laughs> the lightning needs those to have her super <laughs> somersault uh, power unlocked. All right. Another um, tip I can give anyone in chat who is interested and likes 13. If you ever got lost trying to find the treasures for the chocobo dig, the chocobo's head points towards where the dig is. <laughs> yeah. Pro tip, which I never knew until Pharaoh told me. Yeah, I and mean, at this point, Serena probably just knows. I just know the spots, yeah. She, she just knows all the spots. <laughs>
Well, you're telling me it doesn't do like an owl move and. <laughs> I'm like... no, it that does turn its head. <laughs> it does turn its head to the side. It like tries to look behind it. But... Yeah, so I oh, I kind of wish I had had time. Imagine a chocobo owl. That's scary. <laughs> oh god. I kind of wish I had had time to uh, work out the earlier shop in Tajans, because I know it would work. I just. I just never got around to actually working out the specifics, but there's a fight coming up here that's a lot worse than it needs to be because we don't have the offensive equipment that we're going to get uh, here in a little bit, um, which we could theoretically get. I just oh, you, oh, did you not route that in? Not yet, no. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I it probably we're, we're... it makes to it makes. A, a mandatory fight and a mission a lot faster. Yeah. Um. So we're actually done with the uh, big open oh, I guess step it... area now. I guess it would make 19 faster. I didn't think about that. No, it does make 19 faster. Yeah. Like, you just put uh, Bravery and uh, yeah. Thunder on no, and he murders the dogs into attacks. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we... We went and unlocked um, the, the waystones on the step and the chocobos, so now that we have all of that, we can uh, just move on and yeah. come back later for all the other stuff when we'll, we're stronger. We'll be able to move around Pulse a lot more efficiently the second time around, because we'll have the waystones as well as the uh, chocobos. Now, there are still a lot of places we gotta go that are just really annoyingly far from any waystone, so <laughs> there's still a good amount of running, but not nearly as much. You're not going to Tajans now, right? You're doing the missions in here. Well, yeah, we're just doing 18, 19, and 20 along the way. Um, yeah. Like, otherwise, we're just doing any person stuff. But we're just doing the Waystone missions along the way at this point. Uh, yeah, I have a dog and a bird, and sometimes the dog barks and the bird sings. So I might, <laughs> I will try to mute myself when they start being naughty, but. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's good commentary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your your bird is much more enjoyable than the birds in this game. <laughs> True. True. Yeah, so this is the underground area of Mahabara. We're gonna so be... this... So this fight coming up is technically skippable, but uh, <laughs> it's big quotes. It's uh, <laughs> I always, impossible. I always like to say that um, this is an optional fight, but the reward for fighting it is that we don't have to not fight it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fair. So, so basically, <laughs> the the decep despawning trick that we use all the way back in chapter 9 of the bridges um, doesn't work here or and anywhere besides the bridges that we're anywhere, aware of. anywhere besides the bridges <laughs> really and we, we can lure the rust puddings out to get past them and hope they don't like hit you but it takes so long and it's so inconsistent that it, it's just like not you have to like enter and exit the battle zone like 200 times or something it's really dumb <laughs> So, uh, hey, Wally. The commentators are Wall um, yes, Wally One, who just entered, Mr. Titan, oh, hey, Mr. Wally. Zwanzig, and Das Faro. Uh, hey, Kaya. I also want to say that Hi, that Kaya. fight that makes me sad. <laughs> yeah, it makes me sad too. I like it. It's definitely something I wanted to. I just didn't want to make too many last minute changes before the marathon because I didn't want to confuse myself. Fair enough. So now it's actually time to throw lightning back in real quick. Um, oh, and a pretty cool preempt coming up as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, lightning summon happens to work quite well for this mission, so we throw her in real quick. Yep. Now we haven't really used her in a while, so she has a good chunk of uh, Crystarium points to spend. We're doing this mostly just to get more HP, because the other stats aren't going to matter at this point. 
Again, Even HP doesn't actually... matter at this point. Mole Missions uses Lightning for this mission well, yeah, as that's, well. That's and true. we don't develop her at all. That's true. Yeah, we, more, we... we more just kind of level her because, like, why not? We ha Why not? Yeah. We're also yeah. going to do it for Fang, and Fang actually needs the HP. Or yeah. she doesn't need it, it well, but it's it really useful for it another makes Hecaton fight coming up. pretty funny because a lot of times you can just not heal for the entire fight. I used to, uh, oh wait, I need to backtrack. Uh, I used to develop her Sentinel here uh, instead of Commando, and I, I was having like really bad Hecaton fights and couldn't figure out why, and so then I looked at the Cristerum and was like, oh, probably because I learned Entrench. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so oh. then Fang uses Entrench instead of Metaguard, <laughs> and so she just has to, needs like way more healing. Because, you know, a counter stance is clearly very effective against an enemy uh, with no that HP. Has no HP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> counter stances, I don't understand why they exist. They do no damage anyway. Like, they suck. Yeah. There is never an opportunity where you want to use <laughs> Yeah, they just, I don't know. It's like... It's like because if something really doesn't do damage, <laughs> then why even have it? I mean, the thing is, it's just, like, the trade-off is supposed to be that they're worse for defense because they do damage, but they don't do damage. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, okay, like, yeah, the, they're not, like, that bad per hit, but they're just not gonna happen very often. And it's like, all the damage we do in this game comes from, like, sustained, repeated... Uh, Flux, if you are going to do this preemptive, what are you going to do with the bonus you said? Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know. I'll I didn't try even and think about it. Oh yeah, so the way we do this preempt is we dodge the enemy first, and then um, we get to the other side, and then just. Oh hold. no, I have a better idea. Use it on nineteen. Whoa. No, because I can do I whatever can questions you want. 19. Well, mm -hmm. I guess. I mean, using it on nineteen is only going to save like fifteen seconds. Use it on 19 means you can do the cool preemptive for 24. Yeah, but 19 is a cooler preemptive. Mm, okay. I mean, it's just the I'll same as this one. <laughs> I'll leave the choice to you. But yeah, going back to how that preempt was done, uh, Rina actually dodged the encounter first, ran back into it, retried, and then hit the ambling bellows before it could turn around. Because the thing with the Ambling Bellows is that it will try to look at you even if you're not in the battle zone. Yeah. There are quite a few enemies that do this as well. And it's annoying. Yep. Although it, it works in our favor when we need to dodge it. <laughs> Until yeah. next time. Because it creates an opening that wouldn't be there. Yeah, the, the Ambling Bellows and Fox Banks are very weird items to dodge because you sort of need to... You gotta take it slow, but you yeah. don't want to take it too slow. Yeah. They, they kind of glare at you. Hoplites catch up. <laughs> it, they so they kind of like turn to glare at you. Yeah. Also sometimes... And... Oh, yeah. sorry. No, no, no. That was, that was it. But yeah, sometimes those enemies don't like to turn unless you're like literal pixels away from them too, <laughs> so you gotta get like real close sometimes. Yeah, this is a now fun... The... Um, go ahead. Oh yeah, we have the last Eidolon fight coming up here. Um, yeah. Which, despite having a full party together now, we have to fight with two people. Yep. Because just everyone else is just content to stand and watch, I guess. Yeah. This is, is this is Vanille and Fang's moment. Yep. Like they don't want to be a part of it. So this uh, so... fight is significantly easier than any percent because Fang has way more HP. So yeah, we've uh, long we've long since stopped leveling her at this point in any percent. Yeah. But so yeah, we, we yeah. Use it. so we shift to cancel the first paradigm shift animation with um, Doom, and then we just start spamming debuffs. This is, the, like, just like Saz 
uh, Idol and Fight is the only one where Palm is more efficient than Ravager. This is the only fight where Saboteur is more efficient than Ravager, so that's yeah. just what we are going to use. We want to go into the Void and Conquer every single time Hecaton is attacking, otherwise Vanille might actually die if she gets targeted, so we won't Fang to be the target all the time, but um, as long as uh, we are on uh, point with our shift, and Serena is, is really good at this game, uh, he will never target Vanille. Uh... It's, it's a little bit more of a random fight than Alex is. The the general flow of the fight is very similar, but um, there's there's a lot more randomness in like the number of attacks that Hecaton does because the strings are a lot more variable. Yeah, there's various different patterns of attacks that Hecaton can do. Um, one that is very destructive is the quake quake counter. Oh, that's uh, that luckily he hasn't been using it. <laughs> Had to throw in a little bit of healing there to make sure that Fang didn't die prematurely. Yeah. It, we don't really have a... We can't... Uh, actually, maybe we can use the Renew now that we have the... I'll have to try that. Um, but yeah, in the past we have not been able to use a Renew on that fight, and we don't have a Doctor's Code. So, if we really need healing, our... Uh, medic is really the only option. Which right. sucks do you have oh, sorry, physical wall on? No, do you have physical wall on Fang? Yeah, she has like physical wall Fang? ten because oh, she okay. has a max black belt and shield talisman and uh, bladed lance. Cool. Okay. Doing these dodges with lightning is so good. Yeah, it is a nice bonus to having lightning lead. Is uh, she has I think the smallest. Well, actually, hope is probably smaller, but. Obviously, I know Fang yeah. is also very yeah, small. Fang, yeah, Fang, Fang, Hope, Fang and Light are just small. very narrow uh, and good for dodging. Um, but yeah, Vanille's pretty good too. It's really just Snow is really fat and Saz is kind of semi semi fat. Um, yeah, I'm also like really not sure how Lightning puts up with her gun blade hitting the back of her leg the entire <laughs> time that she runs. <laughs> yeah, just doesn't bother her. It's all the sea power. <laughs> Although, I guess she does it before she's a Lissy, so... Guess she's just used to it. Yeah, I guess so. Soldier girl. Maybe, but like, if she just put it behind her waist, it would be so much more comfortable. In it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, it's her life. Uh, Crafty Dog, you are talking about part 2. It's not his last yeah. attack that uh, removes buffs and debuffs, it's apoptosis. We are actually going to summon to avoid the worst part of that attack, which is removing all of your buffs. Uh, what is happening in chat? I'm... Uh, uh, they're, they're talking about part 2. <laughs> they're talking about part 2, because part 2 is a very hard fight, and that is true, it's a very hard fight. Since someone had it confused with part 3. Yeah. Would... Confusing because they were saying part three does debuffs when part three does not. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought that yeah. Um. So, so what I would recommend is yes. stick around until you see how part two happens here. Yeah, part two is because... actually going to be kind of soon. Uh, ish. yeah, ish, like under an hour from now probably. We still got a tower in the way. We still have the tower in the way. Yeah. And, then and, and, and you'll see how we handle it, and it'll be it'll be very enlightening, I think. So, okay, should I use the D sub? And spasming. Should I use the debuff or the D sub on nineteen or a Gurren catch? Oh, on Gurren catch. Like I feel like Gurren catch probably saves more. Oh, one of the many Gurren catches. Yeah. One of the many. Put it towards the third. True. Is he a Mimian plot uh, percent? Not anymore, because we use the Magnums for Bart 2 now. I mean, <laughs> so it's, it's, still a, it's still a meme. Use the Magnums for Bart 2? Yeah. Yes. It's fast. Oh it's, my god. I mean, it's pretty, like, we, all missions does Magnums Bart 2 without an elixir. We have an elixir, so it's, like, extra fine. Like, it's really not scary if, I mean, I did die to Bart 2 in my PB because I played badly, but... 
Uh, it's really not that dangerous with the diamond bangle and with the elixir. Because you just kill so fast. He just does not have time to do anything. Your, your damage is so good that you can afford to basically have Vanille in Medic as much as you want. So it's yeah. not as dangerous as it seems. Sure. Yep. See, Titan, there's many, many and like, categories that you can learn that do Bart with Magnus. Yeah, I'm not doing every Gauntlet. category but any percent. Yeah, oh, that's the only... I was all chests. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would I would much rather do all missions than all chests. Yeah, all chests is saying this as the person who routed it. Not a fun <laughs> category. <laughs> you did it exactly once, right? Yeah, and it it was fun to route and do one run, but I never want to do another run. Yeah, Bart two is a is is a very hard fight. A um, lot of new runners were, will actually quit the run when they get to Bart two. <laughs> Yeah, or I, a I lot of casual players. <laughs> and a lot of casual like, players. Yeah, like, I think the first run that I tried, I was stuck on Bart 2 for an hour and a half before giving up. Um, I thought yeah. you were... Oh, okay, you just used the deep so, Yeah, so here you can basically okay. use the same technique again that she used for the previous mission, where you go yeah. behind the enemies and then the preempt is free. Yeah, in this case, we can go ahead and use a decept to get behind them for free. We couldn't do that on the lap. Uh, wait, oh, I didn't set my default. I was like, why is auto battle? Or why is auto doing blitzes? Okay. Barto is, yeah, it's a, it's a chore. Barto is a chore in basically every category that isn't Starshlots and not chest. Uh, uh, I don't know. It is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Because if you're risky and you want to do an elixir of us, then Anatosia and after push is actually bad. Yeah, no, okay. I, uh, I, in I, <laughs> I intentionally avoid laughter push. Because it's just time loss for no benefit. <laughs> I, I try to avoid it. But it's kind of hard with Magnus. <laughs> It's an accident, I swear. <laughs> the hack at the top of a tower, yeah. The Haka really pushes buffs and debuffs. The Haka is honestly like one of the coolest strats because it like turns like one of the scariest fights for a casual into like such a meme <laughs> for the speed. <laughs> <run. laughs> In all like, categories. It's just the cheesiest the... fucking shit. <laughs> like. <laughs> Okay, now RIC is the cheesiest shit, but true. R I cannot, I cannot argument against that, and I love the Neo Two fights. You're the only why. one that does. I know. <laughs> I think they're fun so, when they work. I, I imagine you're still doing the summon strat for this next fight as well, or no? No. Okay. Okay. Oh, that, okay. That was that was already changed previously. I'm like having a hard time keeping yeah. up with like. Now we were. Changes. We actually did this the in the flat was the before. First, no, the plot, plot didn't right. do the summon before all missions stopped doing the summon. I actually stopped right. doing the summon because I looked at plot and I was like, hey, why don't I try this? Uh, magic will be low, but maybe it will work, and it did. Yeah, you know the grant. The irony of this is that we. We stopped doing the summon here because we were trying to find a way to get an Aether Sol for Neochu. Um, and that that was the best way to cut an Aether Sol that we could find. But then now we cut Eden Toys, so we have that Aether Sol again, but we're still doing the no summon strat because it just turned out to be fast. Nice. And it's All even right. better now because we can actually do two quakes on it. When we were doing Eden Toys and we didn't have the Aether Sol to spare, we could only afford one quake. Which really sucks. <laughs> so even though we're about to do more any percentage stuff, I am gonna hut off for now. Okay. So I'll, I'll, out, I'll be back. I'll be back when I wake yeah. up again. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for hanging out. Good luck. Thank you. But yeah, uh, when we were trying to get the Aether Soul for Neo Chu, I was like, so this is just a goblin fight, right? Why don't you try come buffering Feroz? Yeah. Maybe it will work. And it did, and it was faster than the summon strat. Yeah. And then I was like, uh, maybe this will work for all missions too, even though our magic is 
is not as good because we don't actually max the shaman's mark in all missions on the sorcerers, but it was still fine. Titan's going to sleep. Time to get a world record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, oh jeez. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, world it, record's it, not it, impossible. I'm pretty far behind PP, <laughs> like seven minutes or something. I, I'm sure Titan will sleep for at least thirteen hours. He's not an insomniac whatsoever. Uh. Well, if the dogs don't cooperate. Yeah, that got a little scary. Yeah, this, yeah, this fight is going to be similar to Mission 13 before. Um, yeah. It's the weird. Buffering the fires. Yeah, it's weird because in theory it should be better because we preempt and there are mun some munchkins instead of all of them being goblins but actually sometimes this fight can kind of suck because they don't really group up that well <laughs> so like sometimes you kind of just have to kill them one at a time also sometimes and i haven't figured Did out you just set up uh, the yeah oh. See? um but yeah uh <laughs> Also, sometimes uh, Vanille staggers the Munchkin Maestro with short duration. I haven't really figured out if there's a good way to avoid that. So sometimes the uh, Maestro survives a stagger, yeah. I guess just target it first. Case because the, the stagger on the other two is gonna last a lot longer. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna kill my big Why am I messing up these? We're also gonna grab this chest. It's 20 Sinister Fangs, which is a pretty good number of pretty solid uh, organic components. We'll use that uh, to upgrade a warrior's wristband here in a bit. 13 runners avoid encounters so well. Uh, Serena is notorious for being one of the best runners at just dodging encounters. That is usually what I'm good at. Not as much the other things, but. She'll, she'll play PC at some point. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was good at dodges on my PC. Oh, Granted, the I... dog went through the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my PC also drops frames like crazy, so it's probably more like PS3. <laughs> All right. So, Taijins, we have to go through here to progress through the plot. There are six mandatory missions that we need to do here in order to progress through the tower. So, this, these are the six missions that any percent always has to do. Yep. The yeah. strats are mostly going to be the same between all categories, except for the, la the very last mission, where um, different categories will have to do the strat differently, depending on what you have available in what characters. For any percent, we use Vanille's Hecaton because it's really the only option you have. For all missions and plot, we use Sazus Fyraga. It's really important for you to have a big AoE spell for this mission, and you can afford Sazus Fyraga by the time you get there. Other categories, like Shroudless, has to use uh, Lightning's Ruinga because it's the, fa the closest AoE spell that's good enough for that mission, and that costs less total PP to get. So yeah, we have a decent sized shop here. Um... Yeah, we used to get to up uh, to get the pearl wing stuff for vanilla and upgraded on this shop. It's no longer needed because you don't really need the max pearl wing stuff for anything. And yeah. uh, the the level one pearl wing stuff uh -huh. is like three extra magic from the binding rod, so. It's not really worth it to get it and max it. We are just going to get it for the treasure hunter menu. I am so totally... we are going to. Oh, I need. I know. Sixty-nine. How did we I are... forget? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> 
We are going to get and upgrade two warriors response to max level. That's the major thing for this menu. Um, and the two max warriors response will be a nice strength boost for Saz and oh, the Snow, nice and are going to be used throughout the rest of the um, throughout the rest of the category, the rest of the run. Oh, we are also going to use uh, the Scarletite we got from the step to catalyze one of the warriors' response into a power glove, and the power glove is so broken. <laughs> yeah, it's like really good at this point. It's so bad. And that's why making this menu before Taijin's would actually be very important because it allows the Rust Pudding's fights to go faster just because Snow has a lot more strength than he did before oh and because with the Power Glove uh, you give Bravery and Thunder to Snow and it kills the Urudimus in Mission 19 with two attacks which makes that mission insanely fast. Right. Yeah, we're gonna give uh, Snow's power wristband. It's pretty broken. Um, wait. Oh, I need it. Yeah, okay. The shield. Work. Black. So. The first mission and the third mission are pretty straightforward. They are gonna be a little like Jelly Titan, but a little... No, a little like Ecto Pudding, but a little bit slower. So we essentially want to get uh, buffs on Saz and Snow uh, for Jelly Titan in Thunder and Bravery and for Burangach, which is gonna be the third mission to do here in Bravery and in Water. Uh, stagger it, let Snow launch and then kill it in Aggression. Yep. We do need to get a preemptive strike on both of these missions. And for Jelly uh, Titan is nice. For Gurengach, uh, it, it can be a little annoying. Uh, I don't know. I think there. Jelly Titan's a lot more annoying than <laughs> Gurengach. Yeah, Jelly Titan can kill you real fast if you let it actually do things. Oh, oh yeah. I, I just no, I was talking about the preemptive. I was talking about the preemptive. Yeah. yeah, as an actual fight, Gelatin is <laughs> way more annoying. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gurengach can't really do anything to you. Gelatin like, can Gatch... kill you if you are too slow. Gurengach might bite you once. That's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> And then there's the fight in between these two, which has nothing to do with what they're trying to accomplish here. Yeah, I'm going to be timing my blitzes so Saz doesn't completely whiff them, because if I start a blitz right as Snow goes to launch, then Saz will just shoot where Gelatitan was instead of where he's going to be. <laughs> And just miss everything. Oh shit. That was a lot of gift subs. Okay, yeah, I'm about eight minutes behind uh, TB slash world record. It's all good. Sub five. <laughs> Sub five gel. Pog. Alright. So, the Bellows, we already fought this once. It was a uh, solo twice. enemy. Because uh, Mission 18 as well. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, so this is the third one we kill. The, fir the, the first one, it's a solo enemy, so you just get the preemptive strike, stagger him, and kill him. The second one, we also get a, a preemptive strike, but we use us. But there are four e four other enemies, and they kind of hurt, uh... so you just use the summon to deal with them all at Catch. once. For this fight, we are also going to get a... Wow, Zwanzig really wants a hug. Yeah. Hug! <laughs> yeah, we usually call that dog Zwanzig. <laughs> um, but for the... Um, for this third fight, there are two enemies. We, like, we could maybe use lightning again, but it's just not worth it. The main reason we use lightning for the first... Well, for the second battle fight is because we don't have Hexacon yet. 
So now that you have Hecaton, you can just use that instead. And the reason why is that the Bellows heavily resists physical uh, strength. I'm dumb. I forgot to Aether Soul. Oh. Oops. Whoops. Uh, yeah, um, Bellows heavily resists physical, so Snow and Saz and AoE are kinda useless in this situation, so we just have to rely on the summons. Because we could use the faith in water and kill them that way, but it's just slower than using yeah. the summon. Well, that's what we do on uh, the first one. Yeah, that but since this so one has good. additional enemies... It's just you... not good, yeah, to do that. So we chain on this guy to get um, just off level 3, and then we start using Pukus, which are really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the technical name, Pukus. Alright, I'm gonna. Always broken. Yeah. I'm gonna try to snarf down a banana on this next uh, elevator cutscene. Oh, yeah, so the Limit Breaker trophy um, is for <laughs> <laughs> dealing uh, oh, yeah. 100,000 damage or more with a single attack, uh, which the only way to do that. So currently, most damage is capped to 99,999. Uh, but Eidolons can go up to 999,999, and then later when we get the Genji Glove accessories, we can do that as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to be... That's a pretty trivial trophy because we're going yeah. to be dealing... As, as, I said, as I said at the start of the run, even any percent would get that trophy yeah. on the same exact fight because that's oh, yeah. the exact same. Yeah. So. It's like... I, I like had a me had an idea for a funny meme category where you would have to get every trophy except for limit breaker and the platinum oh, trophy. Jesus. <laughs> so you have to do just all that shit without Genji Glow wait. Oh, I have two gorillas. I don't have a bully. Oh, that's that's awkward. That's fine. That's fine. I mean it is you fine. I'm I'm glad it didn't Okay, see I thought that's something I thought something was off on a uh, Gelatite. I just didn't think too hard about it. I was like, is this normal, I guess? <laughs> All right. We do want that for uh, Mushusu, though. So once... Um... Once we reach Tajans is really where our damage starts going way up because once you um well it's it's really once you enter Mahabara that's when a lot of stuff becomes available in the shops. Yep. Um that lets us um get the really big strength um yep. accessory most, boost. Most notably warrior's wristbands. Yep. Sorcerer's marks as well, but we've already gotten two of those from mission rewards, so we don't really need to buy any. Yeah. We just got another Warriors wristband as a mission sure. reward as well. Yep, and then so. we're yep, and then those are gonna carry us through until we get the Power Glove in Chapter Twelve, and that's when we get like really, really stupid busted. Did somebody say Scarlet Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually only uh, I'm only farming. Um. 11 Scarletites from Sacrifices now, or wait, no, um, 12, uh. <laughs> you farm 12, you farm 12. We used to farm yeah. 16, but turns out the last four, they are a nice convenience, but yeah, not it's really like, needed. It's like, if you just get, if you just go over the amount you need on the Sacrifice fights anyway, like, go ahead and upgrade the accessories, because, like, why not? But I don't really think it's worth doing extra Sacrifices for them, personally. Yeah, makes sense. This whole section takes a while mostly because of these elevators. <laughs> yeah, these these really yeah, add and up. And this whole section is very different from anything else that we've done up until this point. Yeah. 
Because you need to run all over the place in this tower in order to get yeah. to where you need to go. Well, the first For three missions are all just like a, a room or two apart, but then once we get to um, once we get to uh, the last three missions, you have to like ride several elevators, go upstairs and stuff, and like it just takes way longer. I am certain that if the destination marker wasn't there, people would get lost here. 100%. I've gotten lost here with the destination marker. True. <laughs> I tried to warn you, don't go on the elevator. Yep, that's what I was referring to. <laughs> <sighs> that run was on such good pace before that, too. So here's Mishusu. Um, and now you're the... preemptive. Easy, kind first try every time. Okay. See? Easy. Easy, for, easy first try every time. <laughs> Ooh. -wee. Oh, We're... okay. We're memeing. See, I couldn't tell because of stream delay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking it's way too fast. Also, yeah. it's very common uh... that bird will just run at you on your first attempt. Yeah, it's really annoying. You really want these birds to get over here in this corner, but sometimes they just don't. Okay, this should work. Okay, cool. Yeah, it that wasn't too bad. It can be a lot worse than that. Second try is like respectable. Still, I'm just the person who was doing a run and they just ran straight into the shoes and got the brain. Kaya's done that like three times. Because <laughs> he's yeah, the only I, one I, who I... goes for that. <laughs> Most of the rest of us are like, yeah, not worth. Because it's yeah, not. We're, Most we're of too the time. Because most of the time it's not gonna work. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when it does work, it's pretty neat. Okay, so yeah, this kind of sucks because Mushusu's <laughs> so hella far away. <laughs> okay. And also, the thing to note is that when Snow actually does his first attack on Mushusu, it actually heals Mushusu, so we have to over damage. <laughs> True. Thanks. Hey, it gives us Moon Blossom Seeds, and that's Yeah, cool. this mission gives uh, us a lot of money. But if you yeah. need a... Probably it's one of the better guild grinds. Yeah. Oh yeah, what's the repeat reward again? Uh, just one uh, Moon oh, Blossom okay. Seed. I mean, that's not bad for this part of the run. But Wait, how much the... is the Moon Blossom? Is that, like, 6,000? Okay. No, it's okay. Because I guess you can repeat it pretty fast, because the... Yeah, yeah true. Right there, so. Yeah. Also, these six It's no sacrifice, but. Yeah. <laughs> but literally nothing is for Gil, so. <laughs> also, these six missions are quite unique. They're the only ones that aren't activated by a siege stone. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Oh, wait. Thanks. Something you very rarely see, and this you don't really see except for this category. Feralga. Honestly, I don't even think. Like, really, the only time that's. It's only is used in 55. <laughs> it's only used in 55. And, like, sometimes in Cyfax, but I've honestly gotten better results. Um... I've gotten better results on Cyfax having Vanille more in Ravager than, uh, than um, Sab because, like, the bats just die too fast for debuffs to, like, make a difference. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they're weak to air or wind, so Vanille can hit a weakness with Arrow, so she still does pretty good damage as Ravager. Might be worth trying, like, uh, like Cerberus for that fight. I don't know. Routing ideas. <laughs> I was kind of sad when I found out that Light Lead Cyfax wasn't worth it, but it was pretty yeah. obvious when I thought about it. <laughs> it's like it's two full party changes to save a little time on one fight. Like, you save like 10 seconds maybe at, at best. Like, it doesn't even save that much. 
Got the Ruinga spam. I know, it's so sick. And Thundaga too. Which we get Faraga spam instead, which is kind of cool. Not as cool. Being sad, we don't need light for Cyphex anymore. But I mean, we still get our Ruinga fix on sacrifices. True. Oh yeah. Definitely. So, the, the mission coming up sucks. Period. It's, it's not too better, bad in this category. It's better in plot and in all missions because you Wait, have what am I doing? more development. I said it's, I'm getting it's ahead awful of in any percent. You can die really easily to this guy. I already gave Saz the, the shamans like I'm doing in England. In fact, the PS3 world record has one death and it's to this next mission. Here? Like, most of the time, you will be fine, but if he wants to screw you, yeah. you will get rightfully screwed, and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't know about rightfully, I feel like it's pretty BS. But... <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty BS. Vitala is a type of thief that does a lot of damage at once. Yeah. But usually has quite a bit of time between uh, each attack. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's weird. World, world record is one death. Second place is two deaths. Third place is no deaths, but just sucks at the game, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> just time losses that aren't from deaths get tend to get underrated. I think it's like you can lose a lot of time that's not to deaths. Dodges. Yeah, between dodges, just slow fights, slow menus even can add up. Slow movement. Slow battle speed. Fun thing about Vitala, there's actually a stronger version of this enemy, Ractavija, who Which neither we all of, love. Either of these enemies have any physical abilities, but for some reason Ractavija is vulnerable to pain, which disables all uh, physical attacks. Vitala, <laughs> however, is immune to pain. The weak the supposedly weaker one. The, the Vitala can also do deep attack. Yeah, which, well, that that I can understand a little more just because there are fights with, where Vitalas yeah. have buddies, but yeah, for solo Vitalas, it's kind of like, what? Alright, this oh. is the textbook fight. This should ruin. Yeah, easy. No Snow's kind of jacked as hell. Not quite as jacked as he is in all chests, where he's hitting for like 70,000 at this point, but... <laughs> And if he gets a death but, blow, it like, it like caps, <laughs> which is ridiculous worry. at this point in the game. Don't worry, these numbers mean nothing compared to what it's going to be like at the end of oh, the well, run. Oh well, yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> these are peanuts. You know it. It's funny because <laughs> like, uh, like I I've found like a few uses for high wind that were never mentioned in the old notes because I think people just like underestimated like how low the HP values are on some enemies compared to turtles. <laughs> like uh, like I realized for the bridge Vitala, when we go to get the Pharisee stone, all you have to do is stagger and high wind. And it's a literal one shot by like a lot. <laughs> nice. Whereas the, the notes just Yeah, said, I tried that yesterday. It was pretty sick. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Unfortunately, I try to dodge that fight, and if I dodge it the first time, then, uh... Oh, I should probably menu. Uh, probably. Probably be good. Um... This was the fight uh, coming up that Pharaoh was talking about earlier that has some pretty, like, <laughs> they look weak, these little bat things, but they, they, are uh, they can thing. damage you pretty fast. Yeah, and so also need... the Penanglin can inflict deep protect, so yeah, this fight can be really bad, potentially. Like, it is it's potentially very dangerous. This is another fight that we Libra scope specifically for lore master data. <laughs> um, I couldn't think of a better one that has three enemies. I would think there probably would be one, but... I don't think of one that we're not already scoping. Yeah, also the interruptions are terrible. It's just a bad fight. I've, like, we don't do any buffs on this fight. I've, like, 
tried doing buffs and haven't really noticed. A... The thing is, if we do buffs, then it takes longer to get to the Faraga spam, which means the bats live longer. So if we try to buff, then like way too often you just die. It's better to just go on the offensive for this mission. Yeah. And that's the only fight where you can buffer Piragas. Oh no, there's another one. Uh, I love yeah. the other 28. one. Yeah, but yeah, you can buffer Firaga in this fight. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a very big AoE spell, it hits most of the bats, it does very good damage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could combo buffer it on Cyfax like the last one, but yeah, that's not really the intention yeah. of it. <laughs> so, so now that the we... intention is the damage count. <laughs> now, now that we've done the six missions in this tower, we are nearly done with it. Uh, we can now head up to the top. So it's a few more elevator rides, and then... Uh... Ractivija is cute. You know, Ractivija is not really my type, but I don't judge. <laughs> when you do a world record attempts, it may get a bit desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this next fight's pretty pog champ. Oh, I need to switch snow and vanille. I just realized like snow is not supposed to talk here. That's the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Saz's run animation's pretty funny. I like to do the upgrade before the uh, menu, though, just because then everything's in order, because <laughs> I can sort. I also enjoy Vanille's just wild flailing of her arms. Oh yeah, for sure. There's, there's, there's a the part of, of me, doing the part that. of me died when we stopped using Vanille to uh, open the, to do the elevators in stations. <laughs> Oh yeah. I mean, you still can. And... Yeah, you still can, but it's slow. No, on the way to Dehaka, you can delay uh, the menu. Yeah. yeah, sure. Honestly, I think it's better because her hitbox is smaller, so you still have her for the dodges. Yeah, like, I think that's what most uh, people do now. Is... But, but I think my favorite is still Fangs, and we are going to see it. Yeah, Fang... Run. Fang is just such a, like princess about all of her movement like the way she rides a chocobo <laughs> is hilarious like just her legs draped over the side like all dainty like can we punch snow for talking all of turn all, all reasons are good reasons for punching snow <laughs> true lightning does it true <laughs> though um So yeah, we've mostly been stacking the best um, offensive equipment on Snow. We're going to change that to Saz for this next fight because uh, Blitz is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, Blitz we're, is pretty poggers. We're going to be like right in the enemy's face and every Blitz is going to connect. So, for, Like every Blitz bullet, I mean. Okay, mm. Fang, Fang is like, I, she doesn't have a dainty personality, just the way she just like, I don't know, I guess it's really just the way she rides the chocobo is dainty. <laughs> I mean, she ha kinda has to ride the chocobo that way that's, because she's I wearing mean, a dress. That's a good point. You have a good point. I do like that they considered that though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wonder how she doesn't fall off personally. Hey Spencer. Good morning. I've been up for seven hours. At six twenty AM. <laughs> Good time. You you'll be up for even longer, don't worry. Yeah. Finishing a flat run at like 7 p.m. Poggers. <laughs> I 
So yeah, this fight's pretty fun because this enemy has some like really scary attacks, but he's I'm... not gonna get any opportunities to do them. I'm yeah. kind of sad that we never see them because they have some great attack names. They have they some do. amazing animations. The de uh, the deluge, I think that's also what it's they're called, like attack. the. Oh, yeah. So scary. They're like the only abilities that I'm aware of with multiple this elements. And I love this design. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a really cool looking boss. But yeah, we're gonna pretty much mark him. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna gonna be really fast. have a chance. All right, Vanille landed in peril. That's good. She usually does, but sometimes it doesn't. But... He, lose time. he is pretty scary even before he uses his big moves, so we're going to be in Sentinel for most of this with Snow. Um, uh, yeah. And just getting the buffs, debuffs, and chain up with, uh, with the other two. The, the, the hacker hits very hard, but doesn't hit very often. Yeah. And just having Sentinel there just keeps, uh, keeps the hacker busy. But there's definitely a bit of a time limit on this because after a while he'll use full minus firestorm and uh, yeah we're not gonna live if, if that happens. Yep. <laughs> uh, or we're about to stagger here and then when the stagger happens, then uh, the fight is just kind of over. Yeah. So we actually uh, because... oh, yeah, <laughs> just falls down on his ass and uh, just stays doesn't... here until stagger ends and that's more than enough time for us. He actually gets up 30 seconds after collapsing, so it can be before stagger ends, but yeah, it's gonna be like at the very end of stagger, if anything. Yeah. Uh, so we want the pink barrel first for the added chain, and uh, we actually wait on the protect until he's fully on the ground, because he's resistant to the protect just drops when he's on the ground, when yeah. he's actually fairly resistant to it when he's, when he's still standing up. Basically, we guarantee Vanille inflicts D-Protect in one cast, as opposed to if we tried to inflict it earlier, it could potentially be more. So that's it's just more efficient, because then we can have Vanille spend more time as Ravager. More Daka, yeah. <laughs> I wish you could do that fight again, unfortunately, that's not a thing. Yeah. So now uh, there's going to be a little bit of a detour to go pick up a useful item. Uh, also, to fully restore the yeah, tower, which we're gonna yeah, that's yeah, very we, important yeah. for a later mission. Yeah, we yeah. have to we have to do this later anyway, so we just do it now. Um, because uh, we're going to get a lot of money from this item, and it's going to completely yeah. fund the next upgrade. Which leads to another fun topic, the Hyades Magnum. Magnum. Oh boy, it is the best fine. weapon in the entire game. <laughs> okay, like, okay. So let me let me let me let me All right. Let me go set for this it. up quick. You got so this. like there's um weapons generally have they have three tiers and the the second tier weapons are the, the most we generally go up to um that we'll actually use. We we get the tier threes just for treasure hunter, but we'll never actually use them. Um, so for post game stuff, we're generally going to be using max tier two weapons. Now, um, most tier two weapons have somewhere in the range of like two, three, four hundred. Uh, yeah, some up to like five or six hundred. Some go but... up to like five hundred in in offensive stats. Uh, for some reason. Uh, Saz has a weapon that gives you... How much is it exactly? 1,140. 1, so 1, more, than double, more than double the second highest strength value from a yeah. tier 2 weapon. It and, is and, and more than a lot of tier 3 weapons. Yeah. And only well, 10 strength than less than its weapon. own... Only yeah. 10 strength less than its corresponding tier 3. <laughs> It's it's been it, often. It, go ahead. Yeah, I I don't even know why it is that strong because it, the 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 reason for it is that it it cuts your HP. Uh, you only have sixty percent HP when you're using that weapon. So you know it is it very much turns you into a glass cannon. But there are other characters like Hope has a weapon like that as well, and it's nowhere near as strong. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. led to speculation that that value is somehow a typo. 
Which doesn't make sense, because there's no amount that they could have been trying to type, and they accidentally typed 1140. So my other theory is it was like a disgruntled employee. <laughs> who just wanted to fuck with the game before he left. I mean, it's, 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 it's really weird. Like, Saz's, Saz's stats are just weird all around, because he's yeah. like, he's decent. Um, yeah, but cool. like, in post game, his stats are, become way lower than everyone else's, but then for some reason, like this one weapon is ridiculously strong. Well, well, that's the thing. I think they try to go with Saz's weapons being strong because his Crystarium doesn't actually grant him very uh, decent base stats. Yeah, like he gets stats a lot slower than other um. characters do. Like you're seeing here, like Saz is getting HP plus seventy, HP plus eighty, while he's getting like strength plus thirteen. However, other characters are getting stuff like Strength and Magic plus 20s and HP plus 100. Well, Saz does have the second it. highest uh, base HP, so he, he has decent HP yeah. boosts, but yeah, Strength and Magic, he, he falls behind pretty hard. At, at um, Max Crystarium, Saz has both the lowest Strength and Magic of yeah. all the characters. But his weapons do tend to give better boosts to those than other characters. I see you saw on screen for a second there, Snow has a magic plus 5 node in his stage 8. Uh... Yeah, the magnums is one of the big reasons why um, uh, the all missions route works and most of what we are going to do next will work. Yep. Also, I accidentally got Saz's Scourge. I hope that doesn't make me short for any HP nodes for Neo Chu. <laughs> I don't think it will, because it's only a thousand, which I don't think is gonna matter. Like worst case scenario, I lose. Uh... Worst case scenario, you die to Pikachu's faster. But if you die to Pikachu's, you were always going to die to Pikachu's anyway. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, I lose 42 HP. That's it. So that, eh, I mean, I have survived with less. So, <laughs> but not that often. Before we get to the Magnums, there's a couple of other things uh, that we need to hit off our checklist in this area. Um, there's a there's a quick mission guy. here to unlock another Waystone, and then we also have to start the Bhakti side quest. Our Lord and Savior. <laughs> For sure. Bhakti. Giver of Decepts and Platinum Ingots. Bhakti is just this tiny little robot who, who was like Vanille's friend a billion years ago. Who just somehow is hoarding a ton of wealth <laughs> that he that he decides we are worthy of after we've taken ten thousand steps on pulse, which you already which did. we already have by a lot probably. So the the idea of the Bhakti side quest is that you um, you have to go talk to him initially in one of these houses, and then that opens up uh, the quest, and there's five uh, little parts that you need to acquire in order to repair them. Um, we're going to get a start on doing that, but we're not going to do all of it right now, because e even if we wanted to, like, there's there's some relatively tough fights we'd have to do uh, to, to get all of them. And we but even, even if we did that, we would then have to backtrack through yeah. most of this area to get back to Bakhti. And so like, it makes more sense to do that yeah. later. Yeah, we don't. We aren't really hurting for money right now, so yeah, we don't really need all the drops. Yep. We can just del delay getting the rest of the parts when it's more yeah. convenient. Because then, like, once we're getting ready to go to Neochu, then we really need that gill. <laughs> so yeah, this house this... right here, the Bakhti. This, uh. This robot is also who is going to grant us the Treasure Hunter title at the end of the run, which will be the last... Well, aside from the Platinum Trophy, it will be the last trophy we get. Speaking of trophies, I'm about to get to the Pulsian Pioneer. Oh no, I'm not. Well, you're no, not right now. Right 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 Never mind. I, sorry, I'm <laughs> getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I was like, wait, the game's not lagging. The game's not lagging. Where's my trophy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yep. cutscene is just to introduce the quest, but we're not going to finish it just yet. Yeah, we have to um, actually repair him before we get the Pulsian Pioneer. Are you fighting the vampire here? 
No. Yeah, Pharaoh told me that all missions does uh, that. Yeah, which... all missions does this early. I did, I just still think that fighting him early is faster. Yeah, I mean, we can... I definitely right think... Uh... I think it makes sense also because you want to do magic on that guy anyway, and you're set up for magic for this mission. Yeah. Also, on friend. the other hand, I feel like... Magnum's more than offset the uh, <laughs> have. I guess. But yeah, I mean, like I, I, I could, I definitely don't doubt that it would be faster to do it early. I just had never even considered oh, that. Oh, glazed like... here. We were uh, about earlier the deathless run. That wasn't a flat run. That was PS3 any percent. Holy shit, that was. Uh, a deathless plat run would uh, be. Yeah, not. Almost. 1,000% guaranteed to never happen. <laughs> like, between Neochu and Shaolong, it's just... No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, the odds of even just getting through Shaolongs without a single death is basically zero. Like, By the way, um, one of the Bhakti parts is in this house, and you're supposed to um, fight... Uh, the encounter that's guarding it, but you don't actually have to. I'm actually gonna grab that on the next trip. Um, but yeah, uh, basically, oh, okay, yeah. it's supposed to be guarded by this encounter, and uh, the old route used to fight this encounter to get that piece, but then Rusta discovered that you can just go through the doorway and just grab the piece through the wall. <laughs> yeah, I go yeah, ahead the, the... Go ahead. The reason she went in here uh, right now was mostly to go pick up the weapon that will uh, upgrade into the Magnums shortly. Yes. As well and as we also Moogle, get the Puppet, Moogle Puppet, because it's money, and eight, it's right there. Yeah, 18,000 gil isn't too shabby for just a like, five-second chest. <laughs> but first I need to upgrade this collector catalog that we got, because if once I turn it into a um, connoisseur catalog, it's going to sell for... Uh, I think it's 170, 75,000 more, yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to do a split upgrade here because I need that before the shop, and then after the shop, I need to upgrade. Uh, okay, so what all? I think I just sold the console here. Yeah, so weapon upgrades are oh, very no. expensive. I almost sold the perfect conductors, that would not have been good. Oh yeah, I... Yeah, you can buy them back. Yeah, sure. but I, it's, that would actually be... Eh, I could probably afford it, yeah, I'm doing pretty well on Gil, actually. <laughs> uh, let me come back to Motherload. I'm also going to go ahead and pick up a Perovskite for the um, Champion's Badge in Chapter 12, if I can afford one. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and buy everything that I need for the Chapter 12 upgrade as well, if I can afford it. Looks like I can. I'm pretty sure that was it. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Way more money. <laughs> yeah. I did get... Well, I, guess, I guess you're I... nearly 60,000 over, so that's like the gold yeah. nugget, right? I Well, <laughs> I did pick up the gold nugget chest in addition to the... Uh, Oh wait, I need superconductors. That's fine. I can still afford this. So yeah, it would have been closer uh, without, or would not. I wouldn't have been able to afford the perovskite. Uh, thirty-five. So yeah, it, if I didn't get the gold nugget, actually, I would have been. I probably would have had to sell a weapon just to afford the superconductors. Now that I'm looking at it, <laughs> that's okay. We have, we have weapons we can sell in a pinch that. Um, we have to buy back later, so it loses some gill in the long run, but really not that much. Look at the strength on this uh, weapon right here. You're just growing. It sits to 1086 and then to 11 Because we can. Yep. Uh, oh, I should probably... Okay, I need to think about how I want to set up these paradigms. Uh... Diversity. <laughs> Well, yeah, diversity will be yeah. in there. The Remember to pick up the part. <laughs> and I um, guess you already got it. Diversity is kind of important for this uh, wait, setup. Now relentless is good. And um, wait. Uh, 
Yeah, so I'm actually not, um... Or wait, I need to do the nails first. You need Smash. a try disaster. I think you set up to... to... Did I? I thought I had a try to I'll double check. Um... The smart bombs. Oh, did I? That could be. Yeah, so I actually, uh... Oh, yep. Good catch. Really, we don't even need Tri Disaster though, since <laughs> Snow's Perma Rav in uh, Bart 2. I, I, I don't think you gave Saz the Magnums. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I don't equip oh, it for you're, Vitala. Oh, you're gonna fight the Vitala here. Yeah, because uh, oh. you can, like, you'll, like, super die <laughs> to Vitala with Magnums. Fair um, which I kind of don't like that I have to do an extra menu for that, but it's still worth it. Like,. I don't know. I right. I feel like there's so, something. I don't know. I just wish we could make the Magnum's fight safe, but I don't really feel like we can with Vitella. So this is the only fight we still do for the chest because we need this weapon. Yeah, basically we're gonna need this weapon long before we can actually buy it in a store. Much appreciated. And this is the taming pool for Fang. Yep. Which is going to be possibly the most important weapon <laughs> that we get. Both Magnum. Well, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, oh I didn't buff Saz. This is very probably. Yeah, and uh, I also didn't have deep protect, so between those two, I kind of wanted. It's fine. Okay. That's all <laughs> I'm like so bad about reading chat. I hope there haven't been questions that I didn't answer. <laughs> no, it's been fine. Okay. It's been fine. So yeah, um, so this next boss is kind of renowned as the, like one of the scariest, if not the scariest fight in any percent. Um, but it's funny because really it's not that scary in any other category. Uh, all missions it can be because you have Magnums <laughs> and be. No Elixir. But, like even then you kill so fast that like, I don't know, it's probably usually fine still. I think it's a lot easier than in any percent. No, it is definitely a lot easier than in any percent. It's just um, yeah. the timing for your shifts and uh, how safe you are at any given point is different. So you need yeah. to know when you have to go to medic or you will die. Like the the big difference is any percent can kind of struggle to get enough damage. Um, and if you aren't able to kill Bart 2 in the standard 2 staggers, then the fight can get really scary. But we have mag. Yeah, so that's so. not an issue. <laughs> Yeah, it's not, you will always get the fighting two staggers with the magnums. If you don't die. And if we actually like spent all of the time just grabbing resources, we could technically do part two in one stagger, but it's a very long process. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen of the audience, uh, you are about to be introduced to the loveliest noise you'll ever hear. <laughs> <laughs> magnums are very strong weapon, but they don't sound that strong. Yeah, they kind of sound like toys. But try telling that to Bark 2's face. Yeah. So yeah, we're doing 40,000 per split bullet. Per bullet. So I'm and most of these bullets will hit because Bark 2 is right in front of us. This guy has over 3 million HP and we just tore over half of that away like it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, so now there's, um, she's summoning specifically to deal with apoptosis. So apoptosis is an annoying move that dispels all of Bart's debuffs and all of your buffs. We don't really want to lose our defensive buffs because we're already pretty, like, cutting it close with having so little HP with the Magnums. And just yeah. in general, we want to keep those buffs. So... Uh, summoning avoids that attack entirely. The debuffs still get dispelled, but we get. Debuffs. But yeah, that's that's fine. We can we can recast the debuffs pretty quickly. Yeah, we so already it's... got some back. So. <laughs> Holy shit, Vanilla is like. She's fucking... being goddess, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, strong. It, it it happens now. It won't happen later. Anymore. 
Yeah, use the elixir here. It's honestly, it is kind of a luxury having the elixir here. Yeah. You can do the fight just fine without it. But there's just not a there's just not a better place to use it that I can really think of. Yeah. I'm gonna kill before last year. Pretty yeah, you might just skip laughter entirely. Yeah. Easy. That sometimes that's rare. 147. This is like easy fight. Yeah, so typically in plat when I wasn't doing the magnums, like a good fight was like 210-ish, maybe a bit lower. Um so yeah, 147 is a pretty big time save. <laughs> You wouldn't know if you hadn't played this game before that that boss is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> but it really is. So yeah, now we're going to be uh, finally moving on from Chapter 11. Um, yeah, I we're... am going to use the chance to leave and grab some food for a while, because okay. once Chapter 12 is over, I really want to be yeah, here. Yeah, fair. He's good, dude. So yeah, um, chapter 12 is kind of going to be kind of similar to any percent, but we're just a lot stronger and we have magnums, um, but we're going to be doing mostly the same strats. One key difference is that we're going to bring in lightning for the final boss. Um, she is a bit better for damage than vanilla is, not to mention she makes the fight safer because she can also launch along with snow. Um, and we're going to use lightning for the turtle fight as well, which some people do in any percent, but most people still use you now, at least on good runs. <laughs> oh, oh, right. That. For a second, I was like, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but, right, the small. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, that's the second part fight. The uh, first one was in Chapter 9, which was like two and a half hours ago. So yeah, the chapter 12 has some like pretty, honestly, it's kind of one of my favorites for dodges. I mean, there are some dumb dodges that are annoying, but like for the most part, I think uh, like there are a lot of kind of tricky dodges, but like with a good, um, good movement and technique, you can usually get most of them. There are still a few random ones, uh, so those are annoying, but... <laughs> I, I really like this chapter in speedruns. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. Yeah. And I really like the Eden Under Siege track as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's just like, I don't know, this is just a cool part in the story. It's just, shit's just <laughs> going to hell. But, uh, yeah, it's just there are a lot of fun fights in this chapter. Like, both of the Proud Clad fights are really fun. Basically, we get Cold Blood, and Cold Blood's just fun to spam. <laughs> True. Hey Frosty, good morning. So uh, I guess I can uh, talk about Cold Blood um, since it's going to be kind of a big deal for a while. Uh, so every character has a full ATB ability, um, meaning it just uses their full ATB bar no matter how many ATB segments they have. Uh, these abilities are all different, um, but they do have some overlapping uh, um, components. Uh, basically, Saz's is um, primarily for building chain. It's called Cold Blood. Dang it. Um, now, it's really not very good for building chain on an unstaggered target, but on a staggered target... So basically, he shoots 17 bullets, and on a staggered target... Oh, why did I deset? I don't deset this on retrace. But good dogs? Pog. <laughs> Easy. First try every time. Well, second try. Um, yeah, so Saz's full ATB ability is called uh, Cold Blood. He shoots 17 bullets, and on a staggered enemy, each one of those bullets has a base chain of 10%. Uh, and that's before, like, Ravager, Ravager roll bonuses and, like, Overwhelm and stuff. Um, so it's really more than that, but at the bare minimum, a Cold Blood is going to build 170% uh, percent on a staggered enemy, which is, like really big for the amount of or like it's just a really fast way to build chain because the whole animation takes like I don't know like seven seconds or something 
Um, so yeah, we're going to be using that quite a bit. Funnily enough, we actually arguably use it more on unstaggered enemies. Because <laughs> uh, there are a couple other uses it has, which you'll see in a bit. Yeah, there's been some kind of funny niche uh, yeah. janky uses for Cold Blood that have been discovered in recent years. Yeah, it's like... Like, Cold Blood is very obviously intended to be used on staggered targets, but it's like... It's just kind of accidentally good for <laughs> some other things. And, uh, yeah, we unlock Vanille's Commando here. Are we even going to be using it? Uh, uh, yeah, we use it for, um... I still use her for PC1. Uh, okay. Which, like, we could use um, Lightning yeah. instead, but... Eh. Fair enough. <laughs> it probably it's doesn't the, make a the, huge difference either way. Yeah, the thing is that we really want Vanille for Behemoth King, because Lightning can't get in peril at this point, so... Right. Um... So we use her for that. Now, back when we did Eden Toys, uh, let me do this menu first so I don't screw it up. Um, but back when we did Eden Toys, uh, we actually couldn't bring in Lightning for PC1 after Behemoth King because it would create unnecessary party swaps. Um, well, now it actually wouldn't because we would just keep the, we would just bring Lightning in and we would keep that team for the rest of the chapter. So it could be worth looking into again. But still, I really kind of like having Vanille's Medic, especially with Magnums, so... I don't really trust Lightning's Medic for obvious reasons. Vanille's Medic is the only reason why she's still in the team and not just to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> fair. I, yeah, but... You, could easily do lightning stuff. <laughs> yeah. It, if you look up the the speed running notes uh, for this game, like the, uh, the 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 full version of them actually has a whole appendix section that explains a lot of the mechanics of the game uh, in pretty good detail, written by Luke Dolphin. Updated by Rooster. Yep. There's also the game mechanics guide on Game Facts, which is. Uh, generally very reliable. There are a few erroneous figures in there, but uh, as far as FF13 resources go, it's one of the most consistently accurate. Yeah, it basically translates most of the info from the Ultimania. Yeah. Um, another great resource just for, like, FF13 data is Gamer Corner. There, mm. It has, like, so much data. Whenever um, I need to know something like where 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 is this accessory or how yeah. much does it take to upgrade this or whatever, Gamer Corner. It also so has like a complete chart of the Crystarium, which is really oh. handy. Uh, Great. We're, we're not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> no, I don't think we are. I, not, I, not I'd like to be Gamer Corner. Hit me up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the wiki will have some of that info, but just speaking from personal experience, there's a lot missing from the wiki, not to mention some stuff that's just wrong. Uh, which, to be, the wiki which, to be fair, I have found some wrong info on Gamer Corner, but, like, very little. It's really rare that I've noticed uh, an incorrect um, value or something. The shout outs to the person who willingly dismantled an uh, iron bangle just to get the information. Uh, wait. Wait. Yeah, Tuckerless. Okay. Um. Uh, wait. Oh no, we just give us the. H, Diamond Bangle, um, Giff, and the Holy Shield tells me. Okay. Uh, I mean, GameFAQs does have some good info, but you have to know which guides are reliable. 
Because there are a lot of guides on GameFAQs that are just not good. G GameFAQs has good info, but not good forums. Yeah. Definitely don't <laughs> go on GameFAQs forums. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, if you really want good advice or info about this game, just join the speedrun Discord. <laughs> like, you're gonna get a faster and more reliable answer to, like, any question you have, even for casual play. Like, it's really not uncommon at all that we have, uh, like, uh... That we have, like, casual players join to ask questions about their casual playthroughs. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, speedrunners are, like, super cool with helping with that stuff. It's like, honestly, it's kind of cool because it gives us a chance to think about the game in a way that we don't usually. Because uh, it's like, people come in and ask questions for, like, how to do certain fights with really unconventional parties or, like, uh, or, like uh, equipment and stuff. So, so it's, you know, I probably enemies. don't. Go ahead. <laughs> The trick of these behemoth enemies is supposed to be that they uh, get up when you damage them a certain amount. As you can uh, see, but we're the good. <laughs> yeah, but we damage him so fast that he just. Uh... <laughs> yeah, basically we have to, we we have to intentionally avoid damaging him until we have a high enough chain and all the buffs and debuffs we need to kill before it can transform. I think with magnums you could actually like go without deep protect or something. Yeah, well, and it's still be fun. yeah. So what I've what I've started doing is I just go to premeditation at like 250 mm -hmm. instead of like 350. Um, but then there were times like that. I was at like 310 and I had deep protect but no imperil and I probably could have just gone. But mm -hmm. I haven't like yeah. played around with that too much, so I wanted to be safe. But. Yeah, after yeah. I didn't even need the second blitz at all, I feel pretty confident I could have just gone without Imperil. Are you gonna pull off? I mean, I've done it at least, I think I've completed four runs now. I've had like two runs die, so I think this is my, all my splits say eight attempts, but I don't know if that's right, because I can only think of seven. I mean, <laughs> stick around for Oh no, I did actually. More hours. <laughs> you'll, you'll see. I did actually have a platinum run. I reset on uh, on uh, Manazvan because uh, what was it? I had like uh, I had like a setting wrong or something. I had it on like auto battle default, which I know is fine uh -huh. with you, but <laughs> yeah, um, that that's the correct. True. Point. Yeah. Feels yes, weird they... to me when, when when it's not defaulting to the top. <laughs> yeah. So uh Glacier Wolf, that is correct. They heal back to full HP, also cure their debuffs, and be start doing much scarier attacks, so Yeah, generally if, if if it ends up happening in that fight it's a reset. Yeah. At least in any percent. I don't know if we could maybe do it because of the magnums, but I feel like we'd also just kinda die. <laughs> yeah, Funny thing is Funny thing is the Humbaba in uh, Fault Warrens, you can actually just fight if it stands up. Yeah, I remember you, seeing that that's you, actually viable. You lose some time, but like, uh, as long as you just stay in Serb and just keep going at it, like, don't bother debuffing again or anything, then you'll still kill and get the five star consistently. Yeah, there is quite a bit of grinding, but it's nowhere near 10 hours. Alright, so PC1, or the Proud Clad, um, this is where you're going to see the real power of Cold Blood. Yep. Um, the the, uh, the thing with uh, the Proud Clad fights is that they're completely immune to debuffs, and also half all damage from uh, elements, so they're pretty annoying to deal with. Um, Which also halves Col chaining from uh, debuffs. Yeah, yeah, that halves or, uh, chaining from, from most elements, Ravager. Sorry. Yeah. From, from most Ravager skills, which is another reason why Cold Blood is just extremely OP against these fights. Yes, because it is non-elemental, and so the chaining is not halved. Also, part of the reason why uh, why we get Vanille's Calm here, because yeah, she just doesn't do as much with her Ravager. Yeah, like, 
And like, we'll need it eventually anyway, so it's like... Yeah. More and relevant we're... than any first end where the kill is actually tight. Oh. Um... Yeah, for sure. I kind of screwed this up, but it's fine because the kill is super free. Yeah, like this in any percent, this fight is extremely tight. If you don't kill in one stagger, you just die straight up because he'll heal a little bit and then just use an attack that's gonna murder you. Yep. Um, since we've got the magnets here again, damage is completely ridiculous. So easy win. Well, it got kind of scary. I was down to like 385 HP. <laughs> Alright, so here we are going to switch to Lightning Lead. We're actually going to keep her in the party for the rest of the chapter. Because um, she's also pretty good for the final boss of this chapter. Or at least better than Vanille. Uh, I've changed up these uh, <laughs> menus a lot recently, so I gotta kind of think about this. Um, oh, he's good there. Uh, yeah, okay. I can just give her. Oh no, I'm supposed to give Saz the. Yeah, okay, I'm dumb. Give. Uh... By the By the way, I I want to point out real quick that Serena is insane and has through practicing this category so much, now managed to uh, just be able to do the whole run without notes. Yeah, which, to be fair, I do sometimes lose time for it, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, I feel like I lose less time than I would referring to notes a lot. Like, honestly, what I should probably do is just have notes there in case and just not look at them unless I really get yeah, stuck. But my, see, my issue with that is once once I can do most of the thing without notes, I'm not going to be scrolling through the notes every time. So then yeah, when I need that, to look something too, up, I need yeah. to scroll through the, like 10 pages of notes to find the bit I'm at. Exactly. And it's like, I'm going to constantly second guess myself on whether or not I need to look at the notes because it's like, oh, well, I can look at it or maybe I'll think of it in two seconds anyway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just prefer to just keep it simple and just not use notes since I know I can get through the run. Even if I sometimes lose time, because I have to think. Also, I'm not doing a very good job of it, because, you know, I'm trying to, uh, like, commentate and stuff. But when I'm just doing my own runs, I, like, kind of think about menus ahead of time, so... Um, if you want to be real impressed by the menuing memorization, um, there will literally be a 20-minute menu at the <laughs> very end of the run uh, that she's going to do completely from memory. So that was actually one of the first things I memorized, to be fair. Cause, yeah, cause I, that's... I memorized that one as well back in the day, just yeah. because that one seemed like actually worth yeah. to memorize. I, like it's, it's so cute. Exactly. It's like one of the one of the spots where memorization pays off the most in terms of save time, I think, because like there's just no downtime to look at notes during Treasure Hunter or like you'll always lose time for it pretty much. Until next time. Uh, yeah, it's the treasure hunter menu at the end of the run because, believe it or not, the vast majority of weapons and accessories in this game are completely useless. <laughs> so, as, so uh, as, as, as far as I'm aware of, it might be like the biggest menu in any RPG speedrun. Uh, there's one in like Dark Cloud <laughs> Two, I think, that's longer. Because I remember we were talking about this in Discord, and somebody linked. Uh, a clip of, of like a dark, or not dark. Yeah, there, there may be, there may well be something else out there that's even crazier. I don't know. Like I think it was Dark Cloud Two has like a thirty minute menu or something. But yeah, generally twenty minute long sequences, menu sequences are not super common. I mean, some of the Crystariums feel longer than that. Mm, yeah, and the, the one we're talking about is not, it's not a Crystarium thing either, so it's not yeah. like you're you're just holding X and going super slow. No, that, it's actually like 20 minutes of no. inputs. Yeah, you say that, Twirlin, I've literally done Treasure Hunter RTA runs where I just do the menu and time myself. Oh yeah, yeah, we, Which I, I did it too, to practice it, yeah. Yeah, and Lude's done that as well. I know. I, I 
couldn't beat Lude's time. His menuing is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think I think I only barely managed to get it sub twenty in practice. Yeah, I'm, I, I was not that good at menuing, and I still am not really compared to some of the other top runners. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm good at menuing, then sometimes my fingers just fail me. Which, to be fair, that's probably a product of, like, as I get older, my hands are going to be less quick anyway, so... Not that Lude's I'm, like, older old. than all of them, so we've got no excuse. Yeah, that's fair, you're right. <laughs> it was funny, because I was thinking about, like, top four on PS3. I feel like we're all the best at a different thing, because... I feel like you're the best at like getting deathless runs. I'm the best at well, dodging. Uh, part of part of that is just that I also tailor my strats to not die. I mean that's, that's fair. Why I like, but like sword and such. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but like, uh, then like Lude's the best at menuing, and then I think Kai is probably just the best at just getting fast fights. Oh, for sure. Which like we're all good at like all those things to some extent, but. I think it's cool that everyone's like good at different stuff. At some point, there will be somebody who is good at all of them, and then nobody can catch up. I mean, I, I like, <laughs> I, I mean, maybe someone will come along who's like the best at all of them. But like, I feel like most of the top runners, like, I feel like to be a top runner, you have to be at least pretty good at all of those things. But, uh, but yeah, obviously some are better at individual things than others. Yes. Um, so my, my, my favorite dodge strat in anything is uh, coming yep. up. Platt used to just fight this guy because we're pretty strong and could just take him, but we timed it to be like 30 seconds faster to do the dodge, and it's like... We lose like 7,000 CP or something, it's no big deal really. Yeah, so there's uh, some enemies here that, uh, oh, well, okay, you have the little detour for the champion's badge chest yes. here for, yes, this is, a, this is a handy chest that upgrades into something that then dismantles into a bunch of shrouds, so it's, it's yeah. very good value. We also need it for Treasure Hunter, although we could get that from upgrading the Gold Watch as well, mm. but I think the Gold Waiting Watch sells for gold pretty gold good watch. kill. If I remember. Uh, 10k. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, so that means it could theoretically be considered to skip the champion's badge chest, but I don't know. The, the shrouds are just too... Like, it's just too many shrouds to say no to, I feel like. Yeah. So these two enemies here uh, completely don't notice you, and so you can't get them to move, and they're completely blocking the hallway. But um, your party members have collision with the enemies, but don't initiate a fight when they hit them. So what you can do is manipulate your party members to run into them and make space for you to run through. And... Don't think this is a gap. All right, Snow, can you push the... Okay, that should be a gap. Also, Back. the Tyrant's tail is not a hitbox, so... <laughs> with Doggo. Pog... Pogo. <laughs> Pogo. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. This dodge with snow is awful. With vin with lightning, it's just so much better. Well, it's great with lightning, and snow is the one pushing them, and he's the fattest, so <laughs> it's like double, <laughs> double good. See, I'm just skipping the Antares Deluxes. I feel like it's, that chest is just too slow. Like, wow. You don't even need to fight anything for that, it's just walk over there. Yeah, but like... <laughs> but like, it's not like we sell it before Treasure Hunter or anything, so it's only saving us gil on Treasure Hunter and just the odd... Like, I don't remember how much it is, it's like 20k or something, but like... The One of these days you're gonna have bad luck I mean, on gil. I mean, you're right, but even <laughs> if I have bad luck on gil, the odds of 20,000 being what makes the difference is still pretty slim. Mm. I mean, it can yeah. happen, true, but... I don't know, that's just kind of a risk I, I'm willing to take. Because I feel like the number of runs where skipping that chest saves me time is going to far outnumber the ones where it loses me time. Mm. So we're nearing the end of this chapter now. 
It's just some more running and we dodging. We still need and to then, do the uh, cool fight. The cool fight, as in PC2? Yes. Yes. PC2 is pretty cool. It's especially cool when you get like a kill with like lightning smite or something. Uh, I tried doing this fight with plot stats and the magnums, and it's fine if you want to give it a I go. I mean, it. I've. I've tried it quite a bit with magnums, and yes, it is fine, like, I don't know, 75% of the time at least, but if anything goes wrong, then you're screwed. <laughs> the, yeah. One, so, one, one stagger. One stagger? One stagger. Mm, uh, no. I really hate uh, that strat. <laughs> limitless? Limitless. And it's like, I don't know if it's even realistic without, like, a... Uh, uh, like a max tier two on snow, and it and yeah, well, actually, I don't know, he's already hitting damage cap anyway, so easy dodges, by the way. Yeah, these dodges are easy except when they're not. Oh, okay, that was cool. That was a preempt, apparently. <laughs> okay, yeah, you preempted the first fight in the second fight's battle zone. Why was he there? No, that was. No, that was the second encounter, or that was the second encounter. It's just that one soldier hadn't seen me yet. So that one soldier was still like in its uh, waking mode or something, and you can still preempt even if the other ones have seen you. Yeah, there are so many like weird rules about preemptive strikes. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and th th those <laughs> those soldiers are crazy too. Like in my any percent PB, I got chased by one of them into the battle zone of the other enemy. Yeah. Like they just didn't stop chasing me. Well, that's a that's a thing with a lot of Chapter Twelve enemies is they will just keep gunning you down outside of the battle zone. Yeah, there's, there's like, a certain there's a certain enemy in this uh, upcoming area where you can take one of the enemies from the first battle zone and keep him chasing you until the bird. Yep. Wow. Yeah, but he can't outrun you, so it's all good. <laughs> like you'll often see him still chasing you as you go into the fake cutscene. Bring it, shorty. Eh. Yeah, I'll just do magnums. Why not? Pog. <laughs> uh, well, that. Hmm. I'd probably have to take them off for uh, mission eight, though. Yeah, you have to take them off for mission eight. Yeah, so maybe I, maybe I won't. Aww. <laughs> bad, yeah, I did oh, PC2 with the magnums and right. it was fine. Then I went to mission 8, did the strat correctly, got 3 stars and I was like, what yeah. the fuck <laughs> <No>, happened? <laughs> yeah, like, we, that's why we unequip Saz and Snow, because it's like super tight with all the uh, strength equipment. Which, didn't you say there's a better strat, like the all mission strat? Is yeah. Better. Yeah. It I... is. A, it is a lot faster, Flux. Yeah, I'm I... sorry. I believe. I mean, I didn't. Don't apologize. I didn't make up. The... But you use lightning less. I mean, that's true. But <laughs> we still use plenty of lightning in this category. I'm not too upset about it. So yeah, now we're getting a max power glove, which is a pretty good accessory, if I say so myself. Uh, SMTE Shin Megami Tensei. Yeah. Um, I, I love this upgrade because we dismantle like four things and it's so saddest. Uh, well. Okay. Well, I screwed up because I was talking. <laughs> That's fine. Is it? You just need to buy 18 more, right? Yeah. No, it's fine. No. It's not a big deal at all. Um,. But I now have a superconductor, so it's actually uh, going to save me kill later. Okay. Crest on snow here, I don't think it's worth it. Um, okay. 
I always gotta think about this. Uh, the snow needs power glove. Lightning, I guess. Doesn't really need anything. Power wristband, whatever. I don't care. Just something about having the shield talisman equipped for PC2 just bugs me so much. I know. Even if there's, even if it's really not worth <laughs> changing it. I don't know. Sixty strength seems pretty important. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, back, I back. Just let them skip. <laughs> yeah. for, for a while, I was putting like the was that shield talisman or guardian amulet. Oh, oh God, yeah, guardian amulet on the on vanille for like four fights where we use an Aegis soul. <laughs> Wait, I'm on pace to save a ton of time over my PB chapter 12. I'm confused. Did I did I miss something? Uh, maybe you died here? Maybe? Well, it's also my gold. Well, okay, to be fair, my PB was guaranteed the gold because it was my first, uh... My first... Do you normally take a bathroom break here or something? Uh, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Do like extra Crystarium normally for other characters that aren't here? Uh, like Hope or something? I don't know. No, don't know. we never use Crystarium for Hope here. I don't know. Oh, I'm, well, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's fine. 52. Um, uh, okay, that's fine. He's pretty, uh, uh, he's pretty rough. Okay. He does a lot of damage. But, uh, so we just keep him in the air all the time? Yeah, he's very easy to stagger, and once he's staggered, we can launch him. Um, we want to avoid him getting too many attacks off, because after a certain number of attacks, he will go into aerial <coughs> mode, which is more annoying to deal with. That's effectively when he becomes more like PC1 again. Um, at that point, we can't like launch him, because he's already flying. Again, Cold Blood putting in a lot of work in getting the chain up. Yep. Because again, uh, PC2, just like PC1, halves all elements. So any elemental, uh, any element based chaining is going to be halved. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, um, <laughs> It, it looks very comical when they're both failing the launch. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's impossible to launch while Cold Blood is happening. Yeah. Uh, I Gold was. Well <laughs> uh, when I was on my practice for. I think it was actually for Blood when I got here the first time. Um. Oh. Snow and lightning just both jumped instead of launching, yep. and I just broke laughing as I restrike the fight. <laughs> it's like, yep, this is this is the snow and lightning we know and love, <laughs> doing what they so do now, best. Now we've reached chapter thirteen, and yeah, this is when plot starts doing its own thing. Yeah, that was a yeah. thirty-second gold in chapter twelve. That's wild. We could at this point um, do more stuff here, but we also now get access to portals that take us back to Pulse, so we're going to do that because there are some specific things we want to be doing in this area uh, that we need some other stuff for that we don't have yet. So we're going to piece do out I, of here for do now. I ex do I explain 55 now, or do I explain it when we um, are in Erba? So I, I was just going to... Well, let me do this menu. I was about to say something... Uh, so. Um, yeah, so PC2 gives uh, 100,000 CP, which is really big, um, which is going to be really helpful. Uh, well, I guess we don't even really have the option to go do 55 before leaving Chapter 11 now that I think about it. But um, yeah, like this fight that we're about to do is extremely dangerous, and like even with all that CP from Mish or from Chapter 12, this fight's still like very scary. We're cutting it very close.
Okay, you can go ahead for her. <laughs> okay. So, mission 55, can't we all just get along? It's my favorite fight in the game. I'm... Really? Yes. She's no, <laughs> I don't know. No, I just really like it. Okay, let me uh, start from the top. Because I I it's a really accurate. long story, and we have quite a lot of time to until we actually get there. We need to do at least one more mission, and then we need to do a couple of fights in Erba. Mm -hmm. So, the... Stra so... Mission 50, behind Mission 55, the reward you get from beating it is the Growth Egg. The Growth Egg is an accessory that doubles your CP gain. In a category where it is required for you to max Crystarium of all characters, it uh, comes to a natural conclusion that getting the Growth Egg as soon as possible effectively makes the category twice as short. Um, because, yeah, all fights starting from that point forward will net you double the CP gain. And uh, it makes gil and not CP being the um, hardest thing to grind for. Exclusively because of that accessory. Yeah. So Plot wants to do 55 as soon as possible. And uh, 55 unlocks after you beat Bar 2. But because after you beat Bar 2, you are kind of poised to go straight into Chapter 12. Yeah. So and you we... go do that, and then you come back. You can come back right at the start of chapter 13, and we do that because we want to do 55 as soon as possible. Yeah, the but issue is that 55 is one of the five the hardest... The issue with 55, guys. it's the one of the hardest missions in the game. It's a Neochu plus five Pikachus. Uh, then the Pikachus on their own aren't really a huge problem when you're using Sands. The Neochu hurts. The Neochu hurts a lot. Uh, beyond its physical attacks that hit, that hit like three to four times, it has two very problematic attacks. The only one we are going to see now, or that is going to be important now, is Screech. Screech deals massive damage, removes all of your buffs, and buffs whatever Pikachus are on the field with bravery. We cannot survive that attack. N no question. Yeah. So we need to kill it before it uh, has a chance of using Screech. The solution that Platt had for it before was using Vanille's Death. Vanille's Death, we have more than enough CP to actually get it, and Vanille's Death spell, because it has a chance of just instantly murdering whatever it is you're targeting, except for a few bosses, but Neo Chu is thankfully not one of them, um, allows you to just jack up the defensive equipment and um, have hope as med while you just you spam death with the Vanille and pray it works. Um, when I was first learning the All Missions category, another member of the uh, community uh, asked me if I was going to do early Neochu, which for All Missions was thought for a long time to be impossible because we didn't um, and didn't need to um, develop hope at all, so we didn't have two medics for that fight. Um... But um, turns out there is actually a way of doing the early Neo Chu fight, and that is Random Instant Chain. Random Instant Chain activates whenever you equip two combina a combination of two accessories and or weapons. Uh, the weapons and accessories are actually very specific. There is one weapon per character, I think, and the accessories vary a little bit. Uh, there are uh, two for Saz and Lightning, but yeah, otherwise... Oh, okay. Um, the what in random instant chain does is for every attack or offensive action a character does against an enemy, it has a very small chance of getting of dry, getting the stagger gauge of that enemy to its highest point right before staggering it. So the Neo Chu has a stagger point of eight hundred and eighty eight percent. You stagger the Neo Chu and it instantly becomes ninety nine point. Mm, yeah, uh, 999.9. So you've actually dealt massive damage to the Neochu. The issue is, with that, the Neochu just dies. You don't have to deal with it with anything afterwards. With Random Instant Chain, you just stagger it. You still need to kill it, which can be uh, it's a little it's got a cool bit of a um, So I actually routed the fight to be as consistent as possible for all missions. And when I was 
helping Serena route this, Zwanzi came to me and asked, isn't random instant chain going to be better than death? And we did the setup a little different from what all, all missions had at that point, and it worked. It only worked because it was on PC. The stagger is actually too tight uh, on PC, so it can actually be done on console. But uh, that problem was amended by Niji Bashira. He suggested that we summoned on the opening attack to dodge it, and then we just kind of have to pray Snow gets the... Um, um, get the provoke on time so you don't get hit with the second attack. So, all missions doesn't really have a choice. It has to use random instant chain. Plat does have the alternative of using death, but we did the math. Um, the probability of you triggering death before Screech occurs is about 17%, no, 13%. Whereas random instant chain, we have a 27% chance of triggering, triggering it before Screech. And the big reason for that is because the random instant chain chance is actually lower than death, but Sass can trigger random instant chain for every single one of his bullets, including Blitz and Cold Blood. So... If you haven't realized by now, he shoots a lot of bullets for those. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's the gist of the fight we are going to enter right now. It's a very RNG fight. Yeah, it's we a might very be here Fiesta for a while. fight. We are go we might be here for a while. Even if we do get the stagger, we are not guaranteed to kill it because there are five other enemies on the field. Snow does his best at provoking them, but sometimes but his initial aggro will drop. And they can tar all target says and we just die and there's nothing you can do about it. The good news is we do have a renew on deck, so I I like to save that for when provoke wears off. Um yeah. that makes it like yeah. significantly that was like one of the biggest things I found that like made the fight way more consistent. Because um, it's like I used to just kinda of throw the renew just whenever my HP got low, but like the thing is, Vanille's medic will keep up fine if the Pikachu's are still aggroed to snow. Um, so it's like, there's really just no need to throw the Renew until they gang up on Saz. Oh yeah, there's so what... Go we'll just have to go before we get there, I guess. Yeah, so what, what, we have to. Do? Uh, we have to go repair Bakti because we're gonna need some of that yeah. guild to get. Uh, we're gonna get like Malboro wand on Vanille. We're gonna get General's belts for Snow. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the clay ring into a siltstone. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we do. In the shop. I think that's it. So in, the, in this in this route, you don't go and do like the Juggernaut missions and stuff first, right? No, no, no. Right. You you just do mission eight and fight for the Bhakti parts before going to Neo Chu. Yep. There is no point in doing the Juggernaut missions because their CP yield is actually kind of um, nifty. So we, we want to double it. Fair enough. And we actually, I actually looked into doing the Juggernaut fights. But uh, before the growth egg, they are kind of pointless. Okay. They don't give you enough HP to really yeah. justify going out of your way to do them. Mm -hmm. So one other thing I wanted to mention about the growth egg is that um, in Chapter 13, we actually have the second best uh, enemy to grind CP on. Um, and the, the best one isn't going to be available until like very, very late in the run. So we're actually going to have to spend a lot of time on that enemy um, because that's going to get all of the CP that we need for all the fights prior to the final CP grind. Um, so that's kind of like why we, like, obviously we want to get the growth egg as early as possible, but like at this point it's like not negotiable. Like we have to get it before we continue because once we complete chapter 13, that enemy uh, is gone forever. Um, so basically, once we complete Chapter 13, we don't really have a good source of uh, CP, or a good source of a uh, CP grind until, like, very, very late in the run. Okay. Yeah, the enemies she's fighting right now are guarding the remaining Bakhti parts that we didn't pick up uh, when we were here the first time. It's just easier to do them now that we're a bit stronger. 
And uh, she needs to go here anyway because this area is also where the mission stone for uh, mission 55 is. Yep. So it all works out nicely. Yeah, mission 55 stone as well as another stone in here which we'll be uh, interacted with quite a bit later are sort of the furthest away from their actual marks. Yeah, I mean, it's literally opposite ends of pulse. <laughs> the stone in the mark. Yeah, she's picking up these parts here. Um, you're, you're also going to see that uh, the thing we were talking about of uh, grabbing one of the parts through the wall yep. uh, shortly. She yep. avoids having to do one of those fights. So this yeah. enemy is guarding or drops one of the pieces. Um, it's yeah, it's kind of weird. All, all the other parts are like on the field, but just guarded. Yeah. And but this guy one... actually has the part. Yeah, it's or weird. The same implies does. I, I, I think what's happened to this enemy is that the part has just gotten stuck within the seep shell, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you look very closely, there is a trochoid gear in that vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, this game does get a bad rap from some people, but, like, I don't know. I, like, I guess I'm kind of biased because I mostly hang out with <laughs> uh, FF13 speedrunners, but, like, I kind of feel like most people who play it at least, like, like don't hate it like I think most people have a have a good time with it some people it might not be like their favorite Final Fantasy but I think most people enjoy it but yeah um, the people who hate this game are very passionate about hating this game so you hear <laughs> a lot about it from them uh, yeah, they, and... you defeat the toys and you sell if he gives you platinum ingots. If he gives you hadrons, you do not sell them under any circumstances unless you have more than six. Which yeah, even then, if you if you want to get more than just the six <laughs> tier threes for treasure hunter, you would even want to keep those. But if you're just going for treasure hunter, then yeah, you only need six. Really, you only need three, because you can get the rest from dismantling Genji Gloves, but if you want to keep the Genji Gloves... Orphan, one Orphan 2 is way too nice. Yeah. Okay, so um, she's picked up all the all the Bhakti parts, so now we're going to go use them to repair them. And uh... Bhakti is going to give us some pretty serious rewards. Yeah, like... It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, like, uh... Let's see, two ultra compact reactors, a gold nugget, six perfume, seven perfumes, something like that. Seven perfumes. Three platinum ingots, and uh, what did I miss? Two ultra compact react. Oh, and ten deceps. The the total value of this is something close to like a million gill. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And not in terms of selling the deceps. Oh, it's five perfumes. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, so there's the Pulsian Pioneer Trophy, which we get for taking 10,000 steps on Pulse, which... No idea He's how free. many steps we've taken, but I feel pretty confident it's more than 10,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, um, we, we get a bunch of, uh, bunch of D sets here, which will help uh, for the rest of the run. Because these sets, we can buy them now at this point. Once you get to chapter 13, a shop opens up. Or, well, when, when you beat PC2, really. But um, a shop opens up that lets you buy shrouds. But they are expensive, and we need money for all the treasure hunter stuff later in this category. So, yep. uh, Slangster, that's not actually correct about physical and magical attacks. Uh, it's oh, Ravager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ravager abilities that increase chain quickly, and Commando abilities don't, but there are physical and magical abilities in both of those. That's a really common misconception. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a pet peeve of uh, a lot of the 13 runners. Because <laughs> <True. all> <laughs> <laughs> I just give the Neo Commando, she doesn't have very good strength. Uh, yeah, but she has very good magic. Uh, 
and ruin is there exists. something else I'm supposed to sell? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna sell all this junk. Uh, look! Look at the gill. It said about a hundred thousand, and uh, it's two hundred thousand. <laughs> And uh, there's these ingots that sell for a total over 450k. And then there's the decepts, which is 10 of them for 60k a piece, so... Well, they, they you, you'd you buy them at 30k a piece. Oh, yeah, 30k. Well, pieces. yeah, I mean, we would just use fewer... De we don't even... Well, I guess if we were down 10, we'd probably have to buy some, but... uh. Maybe, I don't know. But we don't have to worry about it because yeah. Bucky's yeah. got our back. True. You're right. We're also going to buy some uh, niche weapons here that were, well, some niche weapons along with the Belladonna Wand, which is actually going to become Benil's weapon for the rest of the run. Um, yeah, so a, a lot of the weapons um, have got neat um, secondary abilities that help out. Uh, the Belladonna Wand is just improved debuffing. And it's also just got high magic, so honestly, it is the superior weapon for Vanille in pretty much all yeah. situations. There's just not any other weapon you need for Vanille ever. <laughs> oh, whoops. I need yeah. to level. Uh, for yeah. Snow, we're grabbing the, the Paladin here, which is improved guard, uh, yeah. which will help him stay alive in this uh It's mainly fight. for Neochu, but it's handy for a few other fights. We're also getting a couple of General's Belts, which at max level are 25% uh, resistance to physical... Oh no. I leveled the Royal Armlet. Classic. Oh dear. Royal Armlet. I was supposed to sell that. that was the... <laughs> I knew there was something I was... I knew there was something uh, I was supposed to sell. Okay. At least you only used the Sturdy Bones on it. That's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, okay. That's like 3,000 gil. <laughs> yeah, it's like nothing really. Uh, accessories, okay. Yeah, we're also going to go ahead and uh, get a silt stone ring, which is uh, an earth resistance um, accessory. It's not like super crucial right now, um, but we're going to be using this a lot in post game because the Turtles that we farm all use their stomp attack, which is Earth Elemental. Mm-hmm. And uh, Neo's attack is also Earth yeah, Elemental. Yeah, Neo's attack is also Earth down. Element. We are going to give this ring to Vanille. Uh, the main difference between the the PC and the console setup, which is now the same setup for both, is that uh, PC can give the Silkstone Ring to Saz, and he will um, always survive the Neo 2 opening, so you don't really need to have to summon. But uh, but without the power glove on Saz, the uh, console can't kill the Neo 2. So now both setups just summon to dodge the attack. So I just want to stress again how ridiculously underleveled we are for this. This is why we have to do this very specific preparation and uh, what amounts to basically a cheese strat in order to win. Basically. But, it, but <laughs> it's just completely crucial oh, because the reward for it is so useful for this category. Yeah, like the thing is that this is a very random fight and you can lose like 30 minutes or more just to bad RNG here, but the fact that we're getting this accessory now is literally saving hours, so <laughs> it's like, in spite of the potential time loss, you're still basically always going to save time by going for this accessory now. Uh, yeah, well, Neochu does, yeah. but he's Neochu's not really going to be hitting Vanille, except for maybe the first attack. Um... So, like, we kind of just give it to her because it's kind of like a, yeah, sure, why not? Like, the next best thing we could give her would be, like, a magic accessory, which, like... We don't really have anything good to give her. Yeah. Which, it's like, a ma she's going to be doing some damage on this fight, but, like, really not very much. Because the problem is that, so as we've mentioned, um, 
If you have multiple commandos in your party, they're always going to target different enemies if there are multiple options. Uh, so this is really frustrating for this fight because <laughs> this fight if would be... If we could use Vanille's yeah. commando, it would be so much easier. Yeah, like if we could have Vanille's commando target Neochu along with Saz, like the kill would be so much safer, or like considerably safer. But um, instead, the best we can she do is have her... She will just target a Pikachu, so we need a Ravager. Yeah, so we just have her in Ravager, even though Neochu's at max chain. Gold Nugget, Pog. Nice. Yeah, even though Neochu's at max chain, we just have her in Ravager, because then she at least does some damage to Neochu, even if it's kind of puny. With, with respect to these digs, um, again, we need 20 total for a specific trophy. Um, so, yeah, she's she's just going to get these whenever they pop up. Yeah. Um, you never know when you're going to get digs. Yeah, the digs are actually kind of tight in the current route because we've cut out a, hand, a couple of uh, turtle loops. Um, so there's actually a lot of times I have, like, I, I have to be, like, very aggressive about digs or, or I'll usually have to farm for some extras at the end. Which even still, even going for like every dig that shows up, I still sometimes have to farm at the end. All uh, right. Rodon, late Neochu fight did kill the Pikachus with a summon. I don't think Saz is strong enough to do it in this Ralph though. And you still died to Screech anyway, so kind I'm of gonna pointless. Put a Davis Bless in the chat. Um, anybody got any similar emotes, now would be the time to post them. Here is the RNG nonsense. Yep. Uh, it's the first major RNG nonsense. There will be plenty later, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. They get resummoned if the Neo 2 gets off Sea Dispersal, uh, which is an attack he will only use if he is below half HP and there are less than 5 uh, Pikachu. Oh. Shit. Uh, okay, that's not worth retrying. I forgot to set my default. But this might be okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't have mattered, because, uh, well, maybe it would have, because Snow didn't have a chance oh. to provoke because of the shift. That's my Oops. B. Not a good start. <laughs> I even noticed that I had the wrong default paradigm when I was, uh, uh, when I, oh, god. Okay, pay attention. <laughs> I didn't activate shrouds. All right, so two Neo, two deaths. <laughs> Very cool. But yeah, again, um, the strat here is summoning at the start to avoid the first attack because there's not enough time for Snow to provoke before it happens. There is a yeah, there is a small chance that we can survive it, and there's also a chance that he, it won't target Saz, but most of the time it will target Saz, and most of the time it will kill you, so... Yeah, it's just not worth yep. retrying most of the fights. Also, here we get to see uh, Saz blitzing the ground. Very cool, Saz. Also, was what was that? Like 36 HP? Switch on these uh, okay, Snow's so really struggling. Oh my god. Snow's <laughs> really dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> wow. He was not getting the provokes to land. <laughs> Yeah, so that's yeah, what makes this. This is the this this is, welcome to mission fifty five. Yeah, so this is what's especially frustrating about this fight is we're not only having to deal with uh, RIC RNG because a lot of fights we don't even get a chance to try for it because of this dumb shit, and then even when we do get it, sometimes we can't kill or we die while we try to kill because yeah. Snow drops the provokes and the Pikachu's just... Ooh, tasty black man. <laughs> tasty afro. Gotta win this. <laughs> oh no my snow. god. See, I, I started putting Vanille in slot oh. two because I wanted her to start healing sooner, but maybe I should have kept Snow in slot two for getting more provokes provoked. off. I don't know. I still feel like more often than not, it'll be better to have Vanille there. The baby bird in the... Oh, yeah. That's absolutely. Yeah, the baby Chocobo is going to get a lot of screen time here. 
Pretty rough so far. Yeah, like I haven't. How many cold bloods have I even started? Zero. Zero? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> Granted, the first two deaths, quote unquote, were my fault. But... Come on, Snow. All right. I think we're gonna get a chance. So, no, every single one of these bullets has a 0.5% chance of doing the thing we needed to do. Almost feel sorry. Yeah. Uh, Cold, Blood, Cold Blood has 17 bullets in it, Blitz has 7 if all of them hit. Yeah, which not all are gonna hit, I think it's probably like 5. Oh, okay, and sometimes Saz blitzes the ground, it's really cool. Yeah, this is something you don't usually Almost see that much of in, in any percent runs, but in fights with, like, lots of enemies, Taz sometimes gets a bit confused with his aim. Yeah, you'd and really... the ground. You would really think that since you have to pick Almost a single sorry. target, Saz would just aim for that target. But nope. Yeah, this is probably a retry. One more blitz. So yeah, as soon as uh, that Screech move is about to come out, that move will 100% one-shot us without question. So if I know I'm I'm not going to be able to get the stagger before it goes off, then it's just faster to retry. Because if you die, there's like a whole screen that comes up, like game over, and it loses time compared to just retrying. Yeah, so one real attempt. I'm already a minute 43 behind my gold for the split. <laughs> if I... And, uh, and anyone who wants oh to run God. all missions has to run against the first try. Neo 2? Yep. I don't, because... Well... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. PC, PC world record gets this fight first try. For all missions, not for plot. Uh, I think it still uses that. Yeah, I mean the I'm the only different in all missions. Mm -hmm. The setup is a little bit different in all missions. The right? setup is a little bit different in all missions. In all missions, since we do the chapter 13 fights and some juggernaut fights before coming here, we have enough HP that we can use tortoise to tank the first attack. We don't right. need to summon. Right. Uh, so other than the that, the setup is pretty similar. We also don't use the ring on vanilla because we don't need to do rings anyway. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much oh, it. Sorry for you. Holy shit, I'm actually doing cold bl Okay, we're in business. Let's go. Let's uh, go. We are not out of the woods, so don't get yeah, too excited Yeah, we still need yet. to kill him. It's real scary. He needs to kill this thing in time in this stagger, otherwise, well, we're still right where we started, basically. Uh, and after that, still need to deal with killing the Pico. The Pico coaches Which before they... is still dangerous. Yeah, they can be. Usually once Neo is dead, it's fine, but... Sometimes. This is actually scary. Staggering a Pico Chew means it's quite oh, uh, probable that it uses to dispersal. Right uh, now. Okay, okay. okay go okay, into okay. go into solidarity as soon as they pop out of the ground. Yeah, I'm already in it. Renewing. Okay, so extra Pico to spawn here. Um, that should be fine. Once Snow provokes them, once they should be provoked for the rest of the fight. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I just need to make sure most of them are provoked. Okay. As soon okay, as he safe. as soon as he uses uh, uh, the. Oops. So that's because you killed one of them, right? So yeah, yeah. Eris triggered, triggered, triggered on one of them, and then he was in the way. Or I think he uh, used Pleat, uh, actually. Uh, uh, Pleat uh, uh, can uh, trigger the... Uh... Well, I think Pleat only happens if, if they're, like, near death. So it's because the RIC. Yeah. Holy shit, I'm getting... Look how many RICs! That's four this fight. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can still get the random staggers to hit on these guys, which is yeah. pretty helpful. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, five! <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Can we save some of these for 45? Like... <laughs> nice. Yeah, the fight yeah, is pretty much won at this point. Uh, okay, yeah, we should be good. Enough of them are dead now that it should be all uh, fine. Okay, that <laughs> got a little scary. <laughs> Oh, that didn't kill. Okay. I I just took a look at Saz's HP, and he really is doing this with like 2,000 HP. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's yeah. terrible. There yeah, we go. Now we have the growth egg, and we can do the rest of the yeah. the rest of the category. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't do death for Neo Chu anymore. Just... Yeah. Good time. But, uh, wait, did I get the Gloomstalk's chest? I think I did, right? Maybe? Uh, I'll just go check. <laughs> okay, I will have to be gone for a bit, but I'll be back soon. Okay, sounds good. Bye. No, I did not. No, I didn't think you did. I was too busy eating. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so now at this point, uh, you're gonna do Cyfax, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, so we're, cause we're, we're near, um, another mission stone that is quite out of the way. Otherwise, um, we're yeah. just gonna do this one now. We're basically, this next sequence of missions is all working towards getting a Genji Glove accessory, which we really want on Fang. Uh, because we're about to get her Venus Gospel weapon, which means she's going to be breaking damage cap a whole lot. Yeah, Genji Glove is the uh, the accessory that allows you to break the damage cap. Yeah, it raises the damage cap from five nines to six nines, basically. And, and if you're wondering whether we'll ever nine. hit the second damage cap, yes, we will. Yes, we do. <laughs> In fact, we do it. Uh, we can do it quite a few times because high wind can sometimes do it. All right, mm -hmm. never mind. I'm back. Hello. JP yeah, 1.0. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh God. Yeah. Usually, Vanille oh, isn't our DPS master, but for the uh, highest HP enemy in the entire game. She is pretty much unmatched um, <laughs> because she is the only character with a, with an ability that both bypasses uh, physical and magical resistances and can also hit an elemental weakness. And uh, both of those are very important for maximizing damage on this enemy. And yeah, that's the that's. That's yeah, the other that interesting too. property of death. Uh, the first one, obviously, being it can just one-shot things. The second being that it ignores resistances. Yeah. Which, like, the we, the enemy that we use death on is actually immune to instant death, so we're only using it for the damage. It's just that good for damage. <laughs> yeah, like, but that will be a, uh, near the very yeah. end of the run. So. But... Under most circumstances, Fang is still going to out-damage Vanille anyway, uh, but Fang is really not viable for that fight for a number of reasons. Yeah. But yeah, so n now that we've acquired the Growth Egg, uh, we want to start uh, farming CP fairly soon, so yeah, the the next few things are set up to, um, to start farming, basically. Yeah. So yeah, we... Uh... As I mentioned, we're working towards doing Mission 63, which is going to give us a Growth Egg accessory, or sorry, Genji Glove accessory. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be important because Fang's hits are gonna start calculating for like 200 to 400,000 when we go back to Orphan's Cradle. So, I mean, at, at the most, not like all of her hits, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, but before we get to the CP grind, since we finished Neo Chu, there's a string of missions we need to do that, that we can do. It's just convenient to do them now. Yeah, and again, since we were close to the mission stone for Cyfax. Well, most of them are required to get the Genji Glove, though, because uh, we need to get Default Warrens to unlock mission 63. Oh, yeah, true. So the only one that we do along the way that isn't 
uh, required for that is mission 53, just because it's there. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and the route used to backtrack to do yeah. 60, to do 53. Uh, yeah, that was later. weird. I but when I, I when I was doing this, like, is is there any reason why we just can't slap in the all mission strat here? And I, when, it when, we initially, when we initially did all missions, we also still did that because that's what Plat did. And then I was like, wait, yeah, we don't need to go <laughs> to the stupid cave twice. <laughs> yeah. And, like, Mission 53 can be kind of scary at the development we do it, but even if we die, like, multiple times, we're still saving time on move, uh, or we're, oh, we're still saving right. more time on movement, yeah. yeah. So this is a little, like, hidden area of the Mahabara, um, Subterra that, uh, you can get to by riding Atomos back from yeah. Sulia Springs. You actually have to go to Sulia Springs to get to this spot in Mahabara. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit weird how hidden it is. Um, I think yeah. Bhakti gives you a tip about it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, one of his one of his tips is like, if you ride a Tomos from Solia Springs, you might find yada yada. Chocobos in this game are horrendously ugly. I respectfully disagree. They're just majestic chicken horses. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing that's ugly in this game is just the character's hands. That's all it is. <laughs> kind of true. Fair. I, is this and... possible to do without a decept? Yeah, I usually go for it without. Okay, well. But birds suck. I mean, I... This wasn't mentioned in chapter 4, birds suck. I usually get it without a decept on the first try, but then yeah, I think the retry may not be as consistent, so I should probably just decept second try. I'm stubborn though. Yeah, th th this area of Mahabara has quite a few annoying enemies in it. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to... Uh, and, yeah. you, got the, you got the annoying birds. You then have some annoying thief. You also have some annoying flan. <laughs> oh yeah, in a bit. So the mission we're about to do is Syfax, which is another one of these special seeth called the Undying. We've done two of these already, uh, back in Chapter 11. They're kind of like the real, like, unique enemy boss missions. Yeah, and this is a pretty unique fight. Yeah. The main mark won't actually spawn until you kill enough Seath. Yeah. yeah. I think you have to kill 25 of the uh, Numidia that okay. will start the fight off. Damn, is it for real 20? That's crazy. It's quite a few. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're going to put some strength equipment on Snow, and he's just going to be pretty much permanent commando until Syphax shows up, so... He can clean stuff up pretty quick. So I haven't really decided how I like to do the equipment for this fight. I've been putting General's Belts on uh, on a Vanille and Saz. I'm not sure if that's completely necessary. Need Sashes? Um, uh, no, that's a good point. Speed Sashes might be good. Try that. I think all missions use speed sashes. Oh, that's true. All missions use speed sashes, but all missions also uses magic snow, and that's not really a thing in uh, uh, this category. Yeah. What am I looking for? Belt. Also, also, you only have one speed sash in this category. Yeah, that's true. We only have one at this point. I. But I tried the old mission setup, which has different equipment, and it worked just fine. take off the magnums? The heresy. Uh, I don't know. I've not had super good results with magnums on this fight. I don't know. I, I need to lab this fight more. I haven't really done that much work on it since I took out Light Lead. Like, I... I, yeah. I should have looked can, at the... Uh, you I can try look the old mission the, uh, setup. It, yeah. It, it's fine. On, for Doesn't my that have, like, uh, well, I guess the Sentinel helps with the Magnums, huh? 
Uh, yeah, like you thinking... can. It has to Sentinel uh, Paradigm Solidarity right. and Matador, the nuke that you can use if you are in trouble. Yeah, that makes sense. And you need to set up uh, Solidarity for Tyrant anyway, so. The funny thing about um, retrying this fight as well is that it despawns the enemies in the area, uh, which is handy for the way back because that Patala is really annoying to dodge. Yep. I don't know exactly why it does that, but uh, it works, so it's a good time. I just noticed when I was practicing it one day that, oh, hey, why aren't the enemies here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, more blitzing the ground. Really cool. <laughs> what are we doing a rogue this time? <laughs> yeah, I, I meant to play around with that, I never really got a chance to. Yeah, yeah we have to kill some of these old bad. And the big bat will spawn. The I like Midia? I like how Zwanzig puts this in his all missions notes. Blitz to your heart's content. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was probably a maelstrom line. Oh, yeah. okay. It's only because he wrote really most of those notes. Midia B. Uh oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, D protect, D protect, D protect, D protect. Not good. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much the worst. Yeah. Uh, and it's like we all... you can get there. Yeah, like we only have uh, tireless for the medic. Okay, it's about to wear off. Use a remedy. What do you mean that I need to? Brave summon. There's a few moves that Cypats can do. Uh, Brave summons is one of them. Revenge for the Fallen is another. It's all to do with the uh, Numidia guild. Like... Yeah, this went really poorly. <laughs> but it's all good. We should be in the clear. And then the Mentum Fry just distributes random debuffs to your characters yeah. and like, hopefully it's not tragic. <laughs> most of them you can handle. D protects pretty bad though. I think D shell as well. I think uh I think there's some I think Cyfax has a magical attack. I'm not sure. The Revenge for the Fallen is a magic attack. Yeah, Vanille has Aurora. Um Yeah like uh, and also for that fight, you only actually get 36,000 CP at base. Uh, actually, we don't have to throw that gold for that fight, do we? So, yeah, we do. We yeah, put we it do. on before this fight, and we it's have going it. to stay there until the end of the run. Except, yeah. except for Percy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you only get 36,000 fight base for that one, and that's only because of the six starting Numidia. They all drop 6,000 CP each. Yeah, uh, so... Or Forgot. All concurrent new media do not drop any CP, so we can't actually use that as an endless CP farm, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, for whatever reason, if more enemies spawn over the course of a fight, you don't get any CP for defeating them. It's kind of a ripoff. Yeah, it's 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 the same thing for the Full Warden's Neochu fight. That Neochu can, yeah. well, especially it's just a in the category, he can spawn more Pikachus, but uh, uh, they won't give you any extra wait. CP. Why do I? And oh, it's yeah. also a thing for both for the for the Ochu fights. That's also gonna happen in Full Warden's. They will very often uh, spawn more Microchus, but they won't give you any extra CP. Alright, so here we're getting Fang's uh, Venus Gospel. It's a pretty alright weapon, I guess. Uh, no, Fang's powerful. It's and, no Magnum, but you know. And then here, gets very, the job done. here very shortly we're going to be putting her in our party for basically the rest of the run. Only exception being Long Guise. Yeah, so so far we've we've been rolling with Saz Vanille Snow because, you know, Saz has all the good buffs, Vanille has all the good debuffs, and that is just kind of what you have to roll with. Yeah. Um, because those multipliers are just too good to pass up. Yeah. Um, once you get into actually leveling secondaries, which we will shortly, 
those advantages of using Saz and Vanille will disappear because a lot more characters get those uh, powerful buffs and debuffs. Yeah. So you get a lot more options. Yeah, and that, namely Lightning Synergist will replace Saz's uh, alongside uh, Fang Synergist also, granting a lot more yeah. uh, powerful buffs as well. And like Fang and Lightning are going to cover all the debuffs that Vanille has as well. Um, yeah. Vanille does have the Malboro one, so she's still like is kind of good for debuffs for that, but usually Lightning and Fang get the job done just fine. Hey. As expensive as the secondary roles are in the Crystarium, they're still very useful to have. Yeah. And like, we're literally required to get them anyway, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. might as well get them once, uh, as basically once we can afford them without making huge sacrifices to stats, uh, that's when we... Well, even all missions picks up two of the three secondary roles for Saz, doesn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, we pick up Saboteur for Deprotect and Sentinel for yeah. Provoke, but we don't yeah. really use Saz as a Sentinel. So now since we're in this cave anyway, we're going to head down the secondary path, at the end of which is another mission stone. Um, guarded by a fight, which I guess Serena is setting up for now. Yeah, well, we're this setup's going to carry us through the next few fights. Basically, this setup this is our setup until we retire this team, which is like three more fights, <laughs> or yeah, three. We would just go ahead and put Fang in now, but uh, I have not had good results with Fang on mission fifty-three. We really need a better Sentinel. Yeah. Oops. Um, you also see that she's going backwards in the Crystarium just to fill in some of the previous notes. Oh yes, we uh... So basically... Yeah, because because Neocho is out of the way, we can actually start filling in notes for yeah. most characters. We skip most of these nodes along the way because they kind of suck and they <laughs> tie up CP that we really need to get to other stuff. But it, from this point forward, the CP thresholds really aren't going to be that tight. Uh, except for on Lightning and Snow. Lightning and Snow, we still have to be careful. Um, their Crystarians are going to be pretty tight uh, for a while. Um, but yeah, like, uh, everybody else is kind of just like, we can just fill in all of these out-of-ring nodes, it's fine. Which, to be fair, I guess even on Lightning and, uh, even on Lightning and Snow, we're still filling in all out-of-ring up through Stage 8. No, now has entrenched, so his sentinel's about ten times worse. <laughs> no! Uh, and I, we're gonna go ahead and do a um, Crystarium for Fang as well, just so we don't have to do an another, or just so we don't have to come back into Crystarium uh, before we use her. You see, we have a lot of CP saved up on some of these characters, over 400,000. Well, yeah, I mean, the last time we used. Fang was Hecaton, so that was the last. Uh, that was the last time we did Christ for her. <laughs> Where... Even then, it wasn't much. <laughs> Where is the best place to grind CP? There are two very good places to grind CP. One of them is coming up in like half an hour. Yeah, it depends on what, how strong you already are and where you're at in the game. Um, like the best CP grind, hands down, is Shaolong Guiz, but those are also one of the. <laughs> Uh, hardest enemies in the game, so you kind of already have to be pretty strong before you can even fight them. Um, wait, I should be doing Sunmall first, because I don't know where to stop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. For as long as you already have days, you should be fine. Yeah. I just, I know where to stop in Sentinel, because I'm just going to Accessory. But I think Saboteur, I just spend until I'm out. Now, Fang has entrenched, so our Sentinel is almost mm. super. Yeah, we're really. I mean, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, we're only using Fang Sentinel for Tortoise from here on out. Yeah. And it's not really used as a Sentinel, it's just for the roll bonus, so you yeah. don't buy. Uh...
Ooh, post final. Well, that's rough then, because Vladislaus is gone. Uh, I don't really um, know. Are just turtles the best at that point? Yeah, poison. Yeah, probably. Probably. It's probably just turtles. As, as long as you haven't done the sea stone circle, it's just yeah. Poison. If you've done the seed stone circle, then you kind of have to wing it on some weaker enemies before you're strong enough to fight yeah. that one. Yeah, uh, BK and M, I guess, is still viable. At that point, oh, that's probably like, yeah. your best but, option. No. That would be terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so... And of course, the nice thing about turtles as a grind is that they also give good yes. skill rewards. Yeah. The second best source of... Treasure Hunter is great. Yeah, they're the second best source of... Oh! <sighs> Not good. Uh -oh. I sold the Shrouding Towel. Okay, that's fine. Well, uh -oh. their nature might be sketch, but hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. You can give them a blast and... Yeah, I just... Cross I their just, fingers. I just gave them the blessed instead, but like, Shrouding's like the most important. Auto Veil, no! Wait, do I have a TR? Uh, no, I dismantled it. No. no, you dismantle it. You won't have any until chapter 13. Uh... Hey, look, it's rust puddings and the ferruginous puddings. These guys suck. Wait, hold up. I have a. Oh no, I don't have the crown yet from the dig. Wait, I Soon, no, I still have yeah. my I still have my crown from uh, Sid though, so I could I could upgrade that because I have a Scarlet Knight from the Goddess's favor. Uh, I should probably do that, huh? Back up. That would actually know. be really good because that gives him six buffs, <laughs> 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 including Veil. That honestly might just be the, a better way to do it. <laughs> And you would have to upgrade that crown anyway, so... Yeah, and like, I'll get the Tesla turbines for it and everything, so it's like... Ah, oh, seeing these bombs just melt is actually, like, satisfying. Yeah. What are they guarding again? Uh, particle accelerators Me and, uh, metal armbands. Metal armbands. Band. This is... This fight is debatably not worth it, but... Yeah, it's fast enough that I, I just say whatever. Also, it's an annoying dodge on the way back, so... It's nice to just kill them and <laughs> get rid of it. Although, if you die to Tyrant or retry, uh, they respawn. It saves you 27,000 gil, <laughs> but... Well... Uh... Well, one of the metal armbands is worth full price and one is worth half price, because we would just sell one of them. But then the other one would just save us from buying one for Treasure Hunter. Also, all the birds, including the Chapter 10 birds. Hey, Diane, thank you for the good luck. <laughs> the only uh, enemy that comes back from Chapter 10. Yeah. So this here is not a mission, but it's a fight that's guarding the mission stone. Yeah. Um, it's, also, it's also a pretty annoying enemy when not preempted. <laughs> yep. So this sword here, all these, so all these big, uh, whatever you call these, have, they spawn Dragon these sword. Sword Yeah, they, they spawn these sword enemies, and the sword enemies are immune to provoke. <laughs> so, they can kind of just kill you, even if, uh... Like that, yeah. almost. Kind of got, oh, wow, okay, I'm still almost dead. Oh, fly. Oh, no, the big the stomp. Bomb. Oh my god! That's so scary! I still don't have D-Protect, this sucks. Oh no, okay. Forging Blade again. Okay, that's okay. fine though, because I'll, I'll kill. And if you kill Tyrant, it kills the blade. Yeah. Even if it spawns. No that's... point trying to stagger this enemy. It has like 95% chain resistance. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, the second time we fight a Tyrant in Fault Warrens, we actually just ignore the sword completely. We actually use Tri Disaster for damage. Actually, you know, well, I don't know. Relentless would be better, but we would have to do an extra Paradigm menu for that. So, I guess, uh, I guess Probably Tri Disaster. Probably not worth it because yeah. we like using the pre the same Paradigm yeah. deck for, for like ninety nine percent of yeah, all warrants. For the first three runs, for sure. 
Well, I guess we change assassination to espionage for Humbaba. Oh, that's interesting, Grudon. I've never known that. I'm not sure there's anything we can use that info for <laughs> because we kind of have to do physical that. attacks. <laughs> yeah. Quick, routing hope. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, we're almost to sacrifices. Don't give Log an inch. He'll take a mile on that hope train. <laughs> I don't know, Log already talked me into using Hope for the second round of final bosses. Why did you give in? No. I don't know. Because I couldn't really <laughs> conclusive. Basically what I did is I did like three rounds each with Hope, Vanille, and Snow in the third slot. And all of them averaged within like five seconds of each other for the total battle times, but Hope was slightly better. So I'm going with Hope until I test it more. We aren't talking yeah. about Orphan 2 only, we are talking about all three of them. Well, I mean, they are a victory lap at the end of the they round. They are, but... <laughs> Although you can still sometimes die to Orphan 1 if you don't get a poison. You, you, you can die to both Bart 3 and Orphan 1 if you're reckless. Yeah. I mean, you can't. You could play it safe and have like a tireless in your deck for in case you can't kill with Zonta and then it's fine, but... Nah. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, the one one stagger orphan one, boys. One stagger orphan one. It's going so, yeah. to be in the end of this run. It's going to be glorious. Yeah, we're going to grab these Tesla turbines. They're pretty nifty. Uh, mechanical oh, components. Don't uh, forget to upgrade yeah. the crown. Yep. Well, uh, Groudon, like, Poison for Orphan 1 is purely because that's gonna make well, the one dagger work. Yeah, basically, since we're going for Merciless Judgment Skip with Zontetsuken, we really need that extra damage. Because, like, once we're in Gestalt mode, we don't really do that much damage. I mean, we do pretty good damage, because Odin's, like, level 16 or, or 15. What, what's the max level? Um... No, it's 16. Uh, well, he's max uh, level. Wait, I don't need to shop. Yeah. Because, uh... Yeah. Yep. Good talk. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go ahead... We're gonna do this for two other Tetratic Crowns leader. We're gonna need uh, three tiaras. Um, for both of the grind fights, actually. Uh, or both of the CP grind fights, I should say. It's, it's a little bit weird. It's basically just for AI manipulation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's on Vlad, not necessarily, because Lightning actually doesn't know Protect and Shell yet. Um, mm. Which actually makes me wonder if we even need the TR. Like, we still need Protect is the thing, so like... Mm, I guess so, yeah. So like, I mean, we could also just keep our shield talismans and use those, I guess. But like, we're gonna need yeah. the tiaras eventually, so it's like. I, I guess if you need them for shallow anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because basically, lightning is a dumbass, and uh, her AI <laughs> on a shallow she will not in fire anybody until the entire party has protect and shell, which is going to take a very long time if she's the one casting it, because her <laughs> her center just cast animation is not very fast. Yeah, lightning support animations it's are... It's painful. At least the startup. When she does, like, multiple in a row, it's okay, but as a synergist, yeah. she's doing every single one as a single buff, and it's like... This strat is so good. I love yeah, it. Yeah, this is a pretty pog strat. So, uh, welcome to Starry Bird. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is the Nitra. first thing Mitra we fight. There's gonna be a few of these. It's one of the tougher mission marks. Um, it's a bullet in each slug, and it dies. Yeah, it's pretty fun. These, these other enemies are real weak, so we just one-shot each of them. <laughs> and then we deal with the Zernitra. Um, the thing with the Zernitra is that it has some interesting AI quirks, where it will uh, target whoever has the most buffs. 
for... Well, no, I think it technically can target anyone with buffs. It yeah. targets anyone with buffs. Yeah. So at the, at the start of the fight, it's important that we have an auto uh, buff accessory on snow so that he gets targeted before he can actually yeah. provoke. Yeah, because if uh, if nobody has buffs, then Zernitra is going to do an AoE that will one-shot Saz. So that is why the buffs on snow are so important and why Veil especially is important, because Veil decreases the risk of Zernitra dispelling all the, bu all the other buffs. But I was a silly goose and sold the Shrouding Talisman before I was supposed to. But honestly, this is better, because this is sick. Like, I feel like I'm just going to route this in now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, like, like you, you gave Snow six buffs in the end, so yeah. you know, it's it's such a big cushion. Yeah. Yeah, so Nitra, it's it's a tough enemy, not that bad with uh, with a preempt. We're yeah, gonna, yeah. We're gonna fight a few of these guys. We are There's going to one that we can't preempt, and that yeah. one will be a little bit harder. Uh, it's pretty free by that point because yeah, I guess because in flat because that's know. post game, yeah. yeah. Grind. Actually, that's the second Zernitra we fight. So yeah, the other the other ones are like mega free. Although, of course, uh, the one in Solia has the frogs, but Fang kind of cleans those up pretty quickly. Fault Warren Zernitra in all missions cost 15 minutes of world record, by the way. That's Fun. how awful it can be without the preemptive. All right, so say hello to Fang, everyone. She's gonna be here for fucking ever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at least I cannot be mad at that. Hi, Fang. Hi, Fang. Just to, just to, just to cover why Fang is so good, real quick. Okay. Yeah. First off, she has the highest strength stat of all characters by some distance. Pretty hefty margin, yeah. Um, um and she has high wind, which is useful in that role as well um uh, she's pretty much inarguably the best commando in the game yeah um, ravager but she's fang gets good. as a ravager fang is way too good <laughs> fang's yeah. just good in every role that isn't medic <laughs> like yeah. she's yeah. just that, very good like, she is like one of the better characters in almost every role except for medic yeah, which she's terrible in medic, but like we, as we've mentioned a few times, like medic is by far the least useful role, especially as we get more and more HP. Um, so like we really don't even need a, a super good medic um, in our party, which is why we roll with Fang Lights now. Uh, and like, yeah, <laughs> Fang just covers everything else. She doesn't have end spells. That's like one of her few weaknesses. Of course, um, again, this is all like speaking from a like with secondaries developed perspective. Yes. It, for again, she's not in the any percent party largely because she doesn't have Rav as a primary role. Yes. Uh, which is her big downside. But once we develop everybody's secondaries, it's yeah. Fang is just so powerful kind of a similar deal with lightning where she goes from a pretty mediocre character without secondaries to like one of the best with them because her saboteur and synergist are just ridiculously good yeah. her sentinel's lightning, good too you just don't need it <laughs> is a weird case where all of her secondaries are really good yeah. and one of her primaries is terrible yeah they're so, like without secondary yeah, here, that's really good no support game She's a good commando and ravager, and that's all there is to her. Yeah. But with secondary development, she's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, hi, the crown dig. Yep. It's just, it's wild how bad they made Lightning's medic. Like, they, they gave her the lifesaber and thought that was enough, I guess. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's the fact that they leave her Cura out until stage 8. Yeah, like, and even then, and by then, like, she doesn't have Curasa, so she's just outclassed by, like, every other medic besides Fang anyway. It's Fang, Fang, I think Fang actually does get Curasa. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Oh. Fang Fang's the only medic who's worse than Lightning. <laughs> yeah, Fang and Lightning get the same abilities in medic as do Saz and Snow, and then Hope and Vanille. 
Co coincidentally, there are also three very clear tiers of medics. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this speedrun, um, world record is 16, 16, 24. The end time is going to vary quite a bit just because there's a lot of RNG. Um, but 17 to 18 hours is probably pretty likely. I, uh, it could sub 17. I'm not like on good pace, but like with, with good... RNG uh, can very easily change that. Yeah, with good buffs, uh, or good drops, I mean. Um, it could still be sub-17 for sure. Uh, so this area here opened up by doing the mission with all the bats in the cave earlier. Um, we're going to do a couple of uh, things while we're here. The main reason we go up here now is because uh, we want to enter Fault Warrens shortly. I forgot to set... I keep forgetting to set my default paradigms. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, the estimate's way over, though, because it was uh, made at a time that the world record was two hours slower than it is now. <laughs> it's okay, there's plenty of RNG. Yeah, so, I mean, I I still would have gone with, like, 18 to be safe, probably, but, yeah, 19's a little generous. See, who's in their magic blast. Yeah. This fight was so much worse. I, I finally found a way to make it less bad by, uh... I started using Devastation Default and gave Vanille an Aurora Scarf, and then if you just do one attack on the champion, then Vanille will always stagger it uh, with Imperil. Hmm. Nice. Or Imperil guy, I mean. So, um... So this next mission is going to unlock the Fault Warrens. So this is a Tonberry, which... Are no, no but it says Zenobia on the screen. Oh shit! Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't we don't watch the cutscene, so you don't get to see the hilarity here. Uh, but, when uh, do you when do we swap out Saz? So Saz is going to be used for three more fights in the rest of the run, counting this one. True. So Zenobia very soon, and one of them is a ways down. So after this fight, then after the next, after the fight after this, we're gonna be benching Saz for a very long time. Basically, if you want to fight the last and dying, you need to play 13-2. You cannot fight Zenobia in this game. No, this run's all been played by Serena. We've just been talking a lot. So this is Tombri. Uh, Tombri can be very scary if he's allowed to do grudge, but we don't let him do grudge. Yeah. Um... Brayden, yes, there are notes. Um, they, I'm once this marathon is over, I'm uh, going to be doing like a m major rehaul of the notes because they're pretty out of date now. Like they would get you through the run uh, for sure. Like, like it's not like they don't work. It's just uh, there are a lot of optimizations we've made since then. But yeah. Is there a way I could see the schedule? Yes. But yeah, after right this there. run... It's up time. Tombray, you're so far away. Yeah, I know. But yeah, <laughs> after this run, um, I'm probably not going to be doing plat for a while, so I'll, I'll finally have time to actually update the notes. Rooting rock. I don't... I'm probably going to come back to plat someday, though, because I just think this is a really fun category. And it's a lot less stressful than any I'd, percent. I play this category a lot if it wasn't yeah. 17 hours. Yeah. And it's oh, like, a... but I will do it. I will do it once, and it's gonna be hard. Yeah. Uh, the, the other commentators from the top are Desfaro, Mr. Zwanzig, and myself. Yes, Wally won. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> we we may have a Titan come back at some point. So, uh, this is what we uh, refer to as the Grandpa Simpson. Um, yes. we, we go into <laughs> Fault Warrens, which is this area we'll be seeing a lot of uh, later in the run. And yeah. we immediately leave. Yeah, because by entering Fault Warrens, we actually unlock some missions. So, we unlock Isn't the missions. Isn't it just one mission? Uh, uh, I think it's, it's just 63. I could be wrong, oh. but... 
the yeah, reason we sure. do it is for 63. <laughs> yeah. So if there are others, we don't care about them. Uh, so we're about to fight the first big turtle boy. Um, so this is going to be kind of a different one from the rest in that we're leading Saz. Uh, this is gonna yeah, be this the... is the only turtle where we lead Saz. Yeah, and the only one that we don't lead Fang. Well, besides Longui, I guess. Uh, yeah, basically, um, the... So basically, we're going to cheese this one. Uh, we're going to summon to instantly skip the... Uh... Oh, <sighs> warp to Northern High Plane. Whoops. Rip like 15 seconds or something? I don't know. That would be good if it was Toys Loops. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking like, oh, Mission 63. Oh, I just right. forgot yeah. about the stone. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so the, the thing... So we're going to cheese this one and we're going to summon at the start to skip having to take down the legs. Um, but then what we do after that is going to be kind of the same as what we do on the turtles going forward, which is going to be... Um, uh, yeah, uh, We're going to... Uh, give our party buffs. We're going to put Bravery on Saz and Faith on Vanille. We're going to haste everybody and then get debuffs. In particular, we need D-Protect, D-Shell, and Imperil. Um, and then once we have those, we stagger. Then we go to the Devastation Paradigm, which is two commandos and a saboteur. And the saboteur, who is Fang in this case, is just going to be spamming Days. And while Daze is inflicted, all damage done to the enemy is doubled. So basically... Daze is very balanced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair, most hard enemies are immune to Daze, but the turtles luckily are not. Long Gwiz Daze, might be, I'm Daze not sure. Daze in this game is basically like sleep in other FF games. Yeah. Um, where it it makes the uh, it makes the the person inflicted unable to do anything, and if you hit them, they will wake up. But that hit will do double damage. <coughs> yeah. Um. Also, a fun thing about days is that it actually has a minimum duration. So, what Zwanzig just said is correct about how um how when you hit a dazed enemy, it cures Daze, but does double damage, but if Daze was just inflicted when you hit it, then it won't cure Daze. Daze will always last for, like, uh, I'm not sure, a few seconds. Um, yeah, we're gonna use that to our advantage, because that means if we time our attacks with Fang's Daze's, then we're gonna get that Daze multiplier on every, every Blitz bullet. It lasts for two to three seconds. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't need days anyway. <laughs> we're hitting six nines without it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still a bit too weak to fight uh, uh, one of these turtles straight up. So, yeah, the, the summon strat to take Especially out the with leg magnums, yeah. required. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even without that, I'd, we'd probably live, like, maybe one stomp. <laughs> Not even, I don't think. Yeah, it's... Uh, they're kind of strong. So again, it's just a matter of... Uh, our defenses are uh, way too weak to deal with the enemy normally, but with some cheese strats and uh, just very optimized offense, we can take out these enemies. Very cool, BKNM. Very cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this dodge is annoying, and we can kill them pretty fast, so if we get caught, we just fight it usually, at this point. Fighting <laughs> <laughs> thousand CP. Yeah, and it's decent CP, like... For like, how fast the fight is. Yeah. If we get caught by a lot of those, then they could totally, like, save us a Shaolong Gui fight later. Or no Vlad. Yeah, that too. Oh, Farrah, do you have that chart I sent you with the sacrifice and Vlad fights? Uh, yeah, I do. Because I, yeah, I, I did not memorize that after I made the changes. I forgot. Oh, to do okay. That. I'll, keep, I'll, so I'll, may... keep a, I'll keep an eye on it, yeah. I mean, I, I could probably guess pretty reliably, but. Oh yeah, the the grind starts right after this this mission. 
yeah, After it's this actually. Mission, we go back to Orphan's Cradle and then we start the grind first for Scarletites and then for CP. When we yeah. say the grind, there's like there's several separate grinds. Five. Yeah, arguably five separate. This grinds. is the boring one, though. Uh, well, I, I mean, don't know. I like the I like the run, I guess. Sacrifices are fun. Sacrifices are fun because sacrifice fights yeah. are chaos, and I love it. But like, Vlad, Vlad is, just... is uh, yeah, snooze fest. Yeah. <laughs> Getting quite a few digs so far. Yeah, we're at six, I think, which is really good. Well, it's good. Maybe not like amazing, Eight. but it's good. Seven. I think it's seven. Did oh, did I get got... two since yeah. the crown? Did you yeah. just got two. Like. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, I've. <laughs> I'm kind of getting to that point in the run where I'm kind of just <laughs> not totally here. Okay, here's the big turtle. So the mission 63. We're gonna be First doing this. Time we do this mission. Yeah, we're gonna be. Uh, oh, what am I doing? We're gonna be doing this mission quite a few times because. Uh, oh, I I guess stalled before haste landed. <laughs> Awkward. Basically, every mission has a has a primary reward for the first time you beat it, then a secondary reward for any time after that that you beat it. This mission's secondary reward is a gold nugget, which is 60,000 gil, which is pretty big. So we're going to be um, we're going to be working this fight into our turtle uh, grind loops later on. Aren't you going to Liberscope this? I just Libra. Is that all? Uh, yeah, there's there's no need for a uh, for a scope. Yeah, Imperil's kind of the most important thing that we need to land on these guys because uh, the sooner we land Imperil, the sooner that we um, can uh, stagger, which is like the main thing that determines your battle time. Alright, and now we get to see what happens when you blitz during the day. HP bars disappear. So she's syncing up the blitzes with Fang's Daze casts so yep. that all the blitz bullets are taking advantage of the Daze multiplier. Yeah, and you can kind of... Um, so basically when, when Daze is in... If Daze is already inflicted, then Fang won't start a Daze string. So um, if Saz and Fang have completed their strings and Daze is still inflicted, then you'd know as like right after Fang, or uh, Vanille hits... Um, Right after Vanille hits uh, the turtle, that will cure days, and you know that's when Fang's gonna start her string. So you can kind of like preemptively. Uh... Don't you grab the Cactuar though? Uh, yeah. Shit. Um. You can get it on yeah. Long Farm. It's yeah, no yeah. big deal. It's only twelve thousand gil anyway. It's uh, that might that might mean I need to get some extra perfumes, but hopefully not. All right, so now all the preparation for the big grinding is done. Um, we've got the growth egg. We've got the Genji glove. We've got enough money to buy whatever we need to. Oh, uh, well, not quite, because that's part of the sacrifice. Oh, well, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> part, yeah. Yeah. Some I mean, of them are going to be part Got Why is there a chocobo up there? Yeah. When you enter the Cactuar a spawn cutscene with the chocobo, the chocobo just stays there until you ride yeah. on it again or until you die. It's the same any time you ride into a cutscene on the step, not including like if you reach the edge. Um, but like if you ride into a cutscene, or if you're riding when you initiate a cutscene, then the chocobo will just be there afterwards it's the same if you like activate the the mission stones in the sea stone circle when you're mounted on a chocobo then it'll force you to dismount but then the chocobo will still be there pretty handy all right hope you like the tesseracts because we are going to stay here for at least two and a half hours yeah we're going to be here for a minute
Uh, I don't know if it's quite two and a half. No, it's like I was two. trying to estimate between two. Yeah. Oh yeah, but blood farming is forty-five minutes now, so it's probably closer to two. It depends on how fast sacrifices will go. Well, I think it's a little more than uh, <laughs> than forty-five, just because of all the crystariums in between. But oh yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's around there in terms of, like actual Vlad fights, I think, or a little less, I guess. <laughs> So yeah, we have officially retired the Sazvanil Snow Team. Oh, I need to do Crist first, actually. Yeah, yeah we are actually going to unlock a lot of secondaries here. Oh, or not really. Yeah, we um, unlocked we just... Vang's Ravager and Hope Saboteur. Yeah, that's going to be all for now, but we will be getting more very soon. So, the, the first grind that we're going to be aiming for here is Sacrifices. There's a handy encounter here with four uh, Sacrifices, which drop uh, two useful things. They can drop Perfumes, which is handy for some extra gill, um, but also they drop Scarletites, which is the most important thing. Uh, Scarletite is one of the catalysts that we will need a bunch of for uh, getting all the equipment for Treasure Hunter. And they cost 100,000 gil to buy, which is, I mean, that's not quite as unreasonable as some other catalysts, <laughs> but it's, it's a lot when we need quite a few of these, and there's an easy fight to farm them from with a pretty high drop chan. The, the uh, catalyst uh, uh, prices get exponentially more unreasonable with everyone. <laughs> Uh, no, we didn't actually, Zelmus. <laughs> We've just been going off the Twitch stream, which, I mean, it works fine. But if you've got the link, then, uh, uh, wait. Start. by all means. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I, I meant to ask you about that before the start, but I slipped my mind. Oh, yeah, so we're going to be doing, like, three and a half minutes of Hope Crystarium, because... You, as you can see, we have a few, we have a few unspent Crystarium points, on Hope. Just a couple. But hey, um, for the for the first time since the start of this, uh, well, since we've been able to choose our party, Hope is going to actually be useful. So well, fortuitous. But yeah, aside from that. <laughs> Oh man, it was just the same link, but with an extra extension. Oh. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, we'll do Zelmus. Uh, sure, this works. Yeah, Hope, this is actually the part of the run. This is going to be Hope's chance to shine. He's actually going to be used quite a bit in the next few hours. Uh, the only exception is he, we're going to sub him out for the Vladislaus fight. Um, so he'll 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 uh, get a break there. But aside from that, we're going to use him for everything else in Chapter 13 and then for uh, the first like hour and a half of post-game or so. But then after that, he's gone until the end of the run. So... <laughs> But he's using the most important fight in the run. What? Gigantor. Oh, true. <laughs> so yeah, we're actually... So Hope's Saboteur is a bit of a meme because he only has the AoE debuff spells, which cost 3 ATB and have pretty low infliction rates. So they generally suck, but they actually are really good in a few situations, including this next farm fight, um, <clears throat> because we're going to... So we're going to preempt them, uh, so they're always going to be like a... Uh, I can't remember their stagger threshold, but it's like 400, 500, something like that. Anyway. How did I get stream chat out of here? Anyway, they start at a very oh, high... Wow. Uh, very high chain, so um, Hope's D-Shelgas are pretty much guaranteed to inflict 
even though they don't have a good infliction rate, generally speaking, on a really high chain. Um, uh, we use Saz for Atticus, mission 51, because Sin buffered Cold Blood. It's pretty good. Yes. Saz is big send off. Yep. Before we just don't use him at all. Yeah. Hope is... gets used in the very end, but Saz, his yeah. last fight really is Atticus. And honestly, Hope is. I mean, Hope is good for Gigantoir, but for everything after that, he's just kind of optional. He could just as easily use Vanilla or Snow. Like, Lightning and Fang are the only ones that matter there. Okay. Thanks, Onzig. Okay. I mean, so... thanks, Elmas, but. <laughs> and thanks, Elmas, as well. Well, we're thanking you now, Onzig. Okay. <laughs> Deal so, um, with the praise. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and unequip these three because we're not gonna be using them for a little while. Um, yeah. F uh, so basically, this enemy has um, magical or uh, physical damage, so we're only going to be using uh, magical damage. Um, so we're gonna give a blessed talisman to uh, Fang and Lightning. We're going to give. Lightning her Lionheart weapon, which is usually kind of a bad weapon, but it has an ability called Quick Stagger, which basically, if an enemy is close to their stagger threshold, then they, um, basically a, a move that gets close to staggering them, or would normally just get close to staggering them, will just actually stagger them. And that's really important because we need to get all of these guys staggered, like, ASAP, because if we don't, they will use a move called Anathema, which is bad. <laughs> It's slow. Yeah, it, it, inf slows. it inflicts debuffs, uh, including some really bad ones like Defaith and Slow. Oh, jeez. The one kind of annoying thing about this farm is that we do have to preempt the fight every time. Yeah, and it's not always very, <laughs> very cooperative. Uh, okay, that should be good. Oh, yeah, I can follow. Yeah, as you'll see, this uh, all we're doing with Fang in these fights is just spamming Ruinga. It's pretty fun. And then uh, Lightning's going to be spamming Ruingas as well. And Hope is there to both uh, build some chain and Ravager. Well, at first he inflicts D-Shell. Um, and then once he's done with that, we move him to Ravager and he just kind of helps clean up. One handy yeah. thing about Hope as a saboteur is he only gets uh, multi-target versions of the debuffs. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I kind of went the main reason that. why we use Hope in Full Torrents is because full to most of the fights in Full Torrents are against multiple enemies, and Hope is actually the superior saboteur in that uh, yeah in that sort of scenario. And yeah, Hope Hope Sab is good for Fault Warrens. Also, I don't know, he just fits. I just can't really. I've like thought about maybe replacing him with someone, but I just don't know who we'd replace him with because like his synergist and saboteur are both really useful in full warrens. He doesn't do much else, but like that's all we really need because Fang and Light are the powerhouses anyway. That's a really fast map, though. Feels bad, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Lightning got defaithed, which we put blessed talismans on both Lightning and Fang, so they have faith uh, going in to the fight, um, which is serves two purposes. One, it's it's a 40% increase to magic damage, which is really going to uh, increase our damage output. Um, but it also acts as a defense against defaith. Um, two. Which defaith is a uh, very very bad. It is <laughs> it reduces your magic damage by 90%. So we really really do not want that. Hey, Wolverine. These fights are just like visually satisfying. Yeah, they... yeah these <laughs> fights were chaos, up. but it's so good. Yeah, this is like what how Cyfax used to be. Rip. Also, Sacrifice you may notice. Have to be made in the name of speed. Yeah. 
You may notice I'm kind of mashing more slowly through the result screens. That's because I need to keep track of how many Scarletide drops I'm getting. Which does lose a little bit of time, but I'd lose more like going into the menu to check, so I, I just do it this way. Usually, even if you're mashing through it, you can kind of see your drops, but in this case, because you can get multiples, it's really yeah. hard to see what you got and also how many you yeah. got if you're mashing through. So. Exactly. It's like I could look at the right and see, oh, two and, or well, that's not a good example. I could see like three and one, and I wouldn't know if I got three perfumes and one Scarletite or the other way around. So basically um, what we're doing here is we're farming these guys until we have, uh, I'm going for 13 Scarletites. Uh, you can do up to like 16 if you want, but. Okay, so there was three, that's pretty good. <laughs> I've gotten four Scarletites from a fight on two occasions. So do you do you have a Connoisseur yet at yeah. this point? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we actually have two Connoisseurs at this point. Uh, well, we we sold one, so we oh okay. We have two collectors and one Connoisseur right now. So the drop chance for Scarletites from any sacrifices then twenty seven point five. Yep. Yeah. And then if that fails, it's a thirty seven point five percent for yeah. So since that's for every sacrifice and we're killing four each time, you get these Scarlet Tides pretty quickly. Yeah, and you usually get pretty good perfumes along the way, which is, uh, we're, we this might, yeah, which is, uh, pretty good money. Uh, this is actually, this is actually the best gill farm in the game, um, as well as the best Scarlet Tide farm. Yeah. Of course, the viewer so can't peek at the farm. <laughs> uh, what's up? I mean, this is the fine farm. After this, this is a boring farm. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it is the first time we get to use my favorite party. Yeah, the, this section goes out to uh, to all the casual players who played with Lightning Fang and Hope. Yeah. <laughs> As and Fault Warrens. This and Fault too. Warrens. Yeah. yeah. And final bosses. Final, final bosses. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is why this farm can be annoying, though, is because sometimes they just don't give you an opening for the preempt. There's not much you can do to create one, because even if you try to, like, lure them to the edge, like, half of them just don't even care and don't move. Sometimes it's, it's it might even be better to just fail the preempt on purpose, just to retry and reset their positions. Like, I'm a, I might have gotten it faster if I had done that there. I, I also find that hilarious, Katsuban. The, the any percent team is the exact opposite of yeah. the most popular. I still want That's a lot of debuffs why... on, the, on Lightning. Yeah. I still want to understand why Flying Lightning and Hope is like the team that casuals you. Well, because the game kind of tells you to. It's the team it gives you at Bridges, and then the team it gives you after Alex. And, you know, it covers all roles, and there's not that many teams that do that. Without yeah, secondary. Without, yeah. And then there's, like, people like to use Lightning because main character privileges, I guess. Yeah. And Fang is best girl, so... And then, like, Fang has the highest strength and Hope has the highest magic, so it, it just it's just something that makes sense to yeah. some people. Hope technically has the highest magic, but only technically, because he doesn't have adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he gets out-damaged by Fang and magic. Probably gets out-damaged by Lightning, too, because faster casting, I would think. But, well, I don't know, I'd have to see, like, I'd have to compare their weapon stats. This hope gets better magic from weapons, I assume. Uh-oh. Wait, why did that anathema not go off? I didn't see it get interrupted. Oh. Take it. Oh, Hello. Yep, there are the debuffs. 
Lewd. Hello, everyone. Lewd. Lewd. Oh my. Oh boy, Lewd. it's dead. Also, death. yeah, I don't know about this. Uh, are we gonna kill? Uh, okay. <laughs> Just a little <laughs> scary. Easy fight. Yeah, I wasn't worried. So yeah, slow is terrible. It's really just this the worst. It's so easy. Buff. I don't know why anyone ever dies to it. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any recollection of dying to this fight. <laughs> just coming close sometimes. When when I were eight eight. <laughs> yep, I. Uh, eight Florida falls eight to seven. Oh, no, yeah, this is totally. this is my eighth sacrifice fight, right? A ninth, actually. Is it? I'm yeah. pretty sure it's nine. Oh, okay. I've I been trying to keep count. Right yeah, I'm at eight Scarletites. Eight Scarletites, eight person. Yeah, I'm and a partridge in a pear tree. I don't really <laughs> track, uh, or I don't really count perfumes, just because I just go and do the shop, and if I need more, I go fight more. Because <laughs> it's like it's kind of hard to even know how many perfumes you need. Ten Scarletites. Uh, the stars affect drops, they do not affect CP gain. CP gain depends exclusively on the enemy you're fighting. So this is fight number 10. Alright, I'm just gonna take y'all's word for it. Well, also uh, we can actually add one to that, because I did a BKNM, which is actually more CP than one of these. So this is effectively fight 11. Okay. So you guys are like a hundred, a hundred percent sure that was the tenth sacrifice fight. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't count one somewhere then. I haven't been counting. I like, I like no, literally. I'm the king and name. It's eleven, and this is gonna be twelve. I literally like. Have a spreadsheet open to track this, but I guess I just forgot to <laughs> mark one. Wait, did I get a Scarletite last fight? No, nope. just okay, a perfume. I didn't think so. Take this. online perfume. Kind of stuff. The oh, I just remembered I also got a gold nugget, Doug. A gold nugget, Doug. Dig. Wow, I can't talk. <laughs> gold nugget, <laughs> dig. <laughs> So I should be good on Gil. Gold it's okay, you have commentators that can speak for you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, well I guess the Scarletites are all gone. We used up the RNG. We only need two more. It's uh, it's always when the, it's the last one that the game just refuses to tell you. Uh, three more, actually. Uh, oh, I you're doing 13, okay. Because I start with one. And I need to get 12 from these guys. Actually, I don't think you you have zero right now. Huh? You used one on the crown. Oh, true. But um, but uh, okay, yeah, true. Then you really need 13. No, I just need 12. Because because oh, yeah. one of those 13 would have been used on that crown. That doesn't need to be start used. Oh yeah, I need to mark the this trick, one. The trick is that 600 of the Melodia are actually bots. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is a bot except for you. Yeah. 11 perfume, 11 stone types. That was fight 13. And this is fight 14. So since we have a team of people that are counting the drops, this is now a tool assistant speed run. <laughs> <laughs> wow, just calling Pharaoh and Wally tools. No, not the first time he has ever called me a tool. <laughs> not gonna I, uh, be the whoa. last, I suspect. I, I had Maelstrom do math for me when I was doing Chain of Memories at ESA. <laughs> Pretty handy. All right. One more Scarletite. <laughs> uh, yeah, that wasn't gonna work. Oh, that's 
that's what those numbers in chat are. I was like, what are these people talking about? <laughs> oh, I guess it's just Sharky. You just realized. Uh, 11 pence, 12 shifts. Sharky out just didn't take his medication. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so this is fight 15? Yes. Oh, he needs his morphine. So, where's the, here they are. Oh, but you're on the same range anyway, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, okay, so that's, that's a uh, 29, right? That's, that was a uh, 15 uh, total Yeah, fights. that's 29, 29. All right, Or so. 16 fights. Hey, it's exactly the same number I did on my practice yeah, file. 16? You've got 14, so... Shout out to Serena, by the way. Zerus, we can just use to have swag accessories. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna use it for, uh... On a Warrior's wristband. Uh, wait. Am I good on Gil? 36? Yeah, I have, like, exactly enough. Wow, okay. Cool. Um... Or, let me do... Comforts, uh... Wow, I am just zoning out hard. I've done this job so many times. Uh, Motherload, no. Lenora's, no. R&D, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Lude. <laughs> she set up HD for this run. I mean, I've also just wanted to for a while. <laughs> just didn't really have the means. This gave me a good excuse to actually. Well, you're missing a. You were short a reactor. Yeah, I know. I, man. I'm gonna get that. Um. Yeah, yeah. The chest. That reminds me, I should send Lou the RTMP. I'm not actually, I'm not actually using the RTMP. I couldn't make it work. It's not a very good connection. Get loot. You want to use that? Uh, okay, so. Uh, um, 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 um. I'm oh, shit. I need caffeine. Uh, <laughs> what am I? Okay. Hermes sandals. Jeez. Why can I not? <laughs> okay. It's alright. You'll get a bit of a mental break soon enough. Yeah, true. Yeah. You're not wrong. Um, and I guess I'll just use one of these Scarlet. Or I guess I can use two, because I only needed, I only need 12, right? Yeah. So I can actually upgrade Yeah, I upgrade already have them. a tiara, so you only need 12. Yep. Cool. Alright, so let me not forget to get lightnings and thunder before Vlad this time. Uh, yeah, McMims, uh, there's a big grind coming in like 15 minutes. It will last for, it will last for uh, anywhere from 45 to an hour. Significantly an hour. shorter of a grind than it used to be, though. Oh, yes. I think I might still take a nap during it. That's fair. I don't, um, I don't take a nap. I can't. Uh, oh, whoops. Also, welcome to Fang Stage 9, it's a bit dumb. Yeah, Wait, so... Wait, why did I not I can... already do this? I stopped early on... On Fang... Or I, I stopped early doing Lights Crystarium earlier for some reason. I usually so do I can medic. talk a little bit about the... Yeah, go ahead. The differences between Vlad as it was before and as it is now. So and so before Serena and I picked up this category, um, we used to actually do enough Vlasdos farming that it was the main CP grind. So 
we would get out of here with just enough CP left that the rest of the game would give us Master Seal and then we'd fight the Shaolongs and Longwees until we had enough Dark Matters and the Trapsohedrons to finish treasure hunting. The thing is, uh, as long as you get everything you need to do um, Adamant Toys fights, you don't really... Uh, those alone during the guild grind will be enough to make your character strong enough for the Shaolong fights, which in return make it strong enough to do the Long Wii fights. So that was one of the main goals of Serena's reroute of this category, was just to determine uh, what was the minimal amount of Ladislaus we could fight before we were strong, strong enough to fight, the tur to fight the turtles for the guild farming, or the main part of guild farming. That so, was actually... Oh, sorry. She was grinding for PS3 and E% percent world record, and I had time to spare, so I off volunteered to do the math and to actually see if everything checked out. Turns out, the route before fought this guy 80 times, or 80 plus times. Yeah. The minimal amount you need to fight them to be, to be strong enough to fight turtles is 25. So that's almost a quarter of the fight, just, and the rest is just gone. Uh, the me the for convenience purposes and uh, to make our our characters a little more beefy, so we don't rely on damage rolls. We are actually going to to 29 bloods on average, but yep. yeah, it's a significant amount of grinding just cut away from the run, and it allows yeah. us to tie up all of the grind in the end game for the for four resources instead of just two in one big package yep. so like the cutting all of the uh cutting all of the shaolongs alone was a huge or all of those vlads was a huge time save on its own but um one sec let me do this menu <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, a huge part of the time save of the new route was cutting all those Vlads, but the thing is that it's actually more than just the time we save from cutting or substituting Shaolongs with Vlads, because the thing is, this new route actually isn't necessarily fighting that many more Shaolongs than the old route did. Like, it's fighting more, for sure, but the, ex the amount of CP that we're... Uh, getting from the additional Shaolong fights is actually quite a bit more than the CP we're losing from the Vlad fights we cut. The reason for this is because in the old route, um, the old route, like, very, like, basically all the time would overflow on CP. Um, because uh, by the time you got to Shaolongs, you were already, like, basically maxed or close to max. And so then all the time you spend grinding for Dark Matters and Trapezohedrons is only for that. And for Gil, I guess. Yeah, if you're still missing. Yeah, so we we really just were way overdoing it on the CP farm at the cost of efficiency. Yeah, and it was actually Tjarnus yeah. who, uh, who suggested that reroute. I didn't. Tier being the uh, the person who made the initial route. Yeah. So like Tiernus was aware that that the Vlad was overkill. It's just somebody had to sit down and like really figure out how much overkill it was. Because like going into it, we really didn't know how many we could cut. Like I was thinking maybe 20, yeah. 30. Like I was not expecting 50. And it's like this. It does. You know, potentially, uh, camera. It does potentially lose a little time on um, on some fights in post game, just because we don't have as many stats. But like those time losses are really not very noticeable. Like for the most part, the fights in post game are yeah. kind of like we, the same speed as they've we always had been. to reroute some of the fights, especially yes. Atticus. Atticus because and the uh, stats Neo Chu. were which, yes, and Neo Chu, because the stats were just not good enough for the strats that were used in those in those strats. But now, like, I don't think it it loses time on um, 
it loses time on Atticus. The Atticus strat was a lot faster because Atticus really depends on how much strength you have, and with max stats, we'll obviously have a lot more strength well, than what we do right we're now. We're still but... technically saving time just because we have a much better strat for Atticus, but. <laughs> yeah. Also, that. But the thing is, Saz also would have had a. Uh... Oh, geez, I'm getting cut. Okay. Uh, this looks good. Nice. So yeah, this is a pretty slow treasure chest, but the content itself for 78,000, so I still just get it. I I have a hard time skipping this chest. Like, if I get... Also, you kind of have to get it if well, you are yes. short on perfumes. Yeah, exactly, because if I, if I wasn't going to get this chest, it means I would have had to farm more sacrifices anyway, so... Um, but yeah, 78,000 gills, just so much. Now, if I get a, a platinum ingot drop from mission 63, then I usually skip this chest. Okay, Should these dodges... Should also get Hedron on, mission six, on the first time you do mission 63. What's up? Uh, I got a Hedron drop on my Podactus file on the oh, first fuck. time I went to do mission 63. I'm like, okay, cool. Nice. Guess we are using Save the Queen all the time. Yep. I've wondered about that though, because sometimes that kind of screws with the like phases on Toys's because you know how uh, you do need to you do need to uh, retime your strings because yeah. Snow is doing one extra spell. Yeah, because like you know we want Snow starting his string a decent amount before Lightning because that is the uh, oh wait, I just skipped this. Um, because that is how we, uh, that is how we get snow to, um, target one leg and light to target the other. Alright, so remember Enlil and Enki all the way back in Chapter 6. This is going to be Bandersnatch and Jabberwocky, which is the same type of enemy but a lot stronger. But on crack. And Bandersnatch is immune to physical damage. However, full ATB spells don't care about that, so just watch, this is hilarious. It's hilarious if it works, which got launched, so we should be good. Conveniently, it's also hilarious if it, if it doesn't work. So that was true. true. So that was, uh... Is that Snatch? We didn't really preface that, that was actually the first, um... That was the first, uh... I went of the run. Bahamut? No, 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 Bahamut. We don't need that. Back to take care of that all by yourself. <laughs> yeah, High Wind's pretty powerful. That's Fang's full ATV skill, and it's got the most ridiculous damage multipliers. Yeah, especially on staggered targets. It's not super effective against unstaggered targets. Um, at least comparatively, but, uh,. The thing about um, High Wind is that it resets the enemy's chain, so we can't just spam it like crazy, which it would be super dumb if we could. <laughs> Basically only really want to use it if it's going to kill whatever you're hitting. Yeah, or if or if you're just at the end of Stagger and just want to maximize damage. Yeah. Um, but that's not really going to come up in a speedrun setting. Anytime we use High Wind, it's to kill. Yeah, so this is a uh, optional fight, but behind this enemy that we are going to do now, there's a, there's four very valuable chests. One of them on its own is like 300,000 gil. There's no reason for you yeah. not to, do this, to get that chest. And if you have to get that chest, then you need to get all the others too, because they're just too good. Because you might as well, yeah. So, fun fact about this fight, we actually want to shift to Strike Team as soon as we stagger and have D Protect. The reason being is that if we execute our full string, uh, then a lot of times we reveal too much data. And what happens is Hope casts Protect and Shell on the party instead of Bravery and Faith. So that is one of, one of a handful of instances where uh, the AI is actually worse with more info.
So this is going to be my last chance for a bathroom break for a while, so I'm going to do that on the next... Actually, no, I'll do that on Crystarium, because I can actually <laughs> just hold X. <laughs> Hog strats. Yeah, so that Adamant Bangle yeah. is, is alone what makes it worth coming in here, because without that, we would need to max a Diamond Bangle, which is expensive on its own, and then we would need to buy an Adamantite, which is 220,000, I think? Yeah. 220, yes. Yeah, which adamantites are the only um, catalyst of the top of the four most expensive that can't be farmed from an enemy. We just have to buy every one that we need. Yeah, which... that's a that's a pretty like hefty chunk of the guild that we need for treasure hunter is yeah. going to work buying adamantites. Yep, that and the uh, that and the fault warrens weapons if we don't get the drops. Mm-hmm. The other things we get here is an, another elixir, uh, another scarletite, and a weirding glyph. Yes, devastating physical fine, attacks but... does that. Revealing that info. Alright, so now we're going to be setting up our. Uh... Sorry, did I interrupt you, Pharaoh? I wasn't sure if you were. No, no, okay. no, 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 no. I'm, I was done. There's an elixir and no one cares. Well, they're not as important in this yeah. category. I and mean, we the, definitely... You know, missions, we routed this guy out, so... Yeah, like, we definitely wouldn't fight that guy just for the elixir, but uh, some of the other stuff makes it worth it. I mean, um, if, if you have to do a lot of long guise, then elixirs can be handy to, like, speed that that's up. That's true. That is true, yes. Uh... Where do you use elixirs on plot? Uh, we are still going to use... They are still gonna be most useful uh, on Vercingetorix, so mission 64. Then we also use one on bar 2. We use one on Orphan 2, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we, well, and Orphan we can, 1, yeah. Orphan 1, yeah. Uh, but only for the first uh, for the first fight against Orphan 1. Um, then we can we have an emergency one for double rectivisia, but it's um, usually not needed there. I well I usually use uh wait, where was it? I usually use two on Versi. So I d I don't yeah. even I don't oh, even wow. care to save one for because uh Yeah, if you it's... have an ex if you if you uh, don't need the second elixir for Versi, you can just use it on double rectivisias, but it's really yeah. not really not a big issue in the plot. In like other categories where the fight is horrible and no yeah. one likes it. You can also, um, so a lot of times on Varisi you can get through with just one elixir. Um, and if you do that, then you you have either an emergency elixir for Varisi or for double racks, which is rarely needed, or you can use an elixir as a makeshift ether soul to give yourself extra summons uh, for um, long gui farming at the end. Um, which sometimes you only have to fight long gui, one long gui, but uh, a lot of runs you have to fight multiple, so having an elixir um, available means you can do the summon strat uh, like one more time than you otherwise could, which the summon strat's like a minute faster, I think. It's pretty chunky. Yeah, so the most important thing about this, these Christeriums is just uh, getting snow and lightning where we want them to be for turtle farming. Yep. We need snow to be ready by the first loop, we need lightning to be ready by the third loop. We can sub in lightning for vanilla while lightning isn't ready, but lightning is usually faster and just yeah. more convenient to use than vanilla, so we want to get her up and ready to go as soon as possible. Yeah, so for this fight, we're going to be equipping, um, uh, we're going to be equipping mostly accessories that grant buffs. Um, we're not going to be using as many, or we're not going to be equipping any accessories that are, uh, for, like, strength boosting. Um, the reason being that, uh, The reason being that um, the buffs are actually going to be a, a bigger increase in damage than those accessories would be. 
Now we do, we would have the option to actually manually cast the buffs in the fights if we wanted to, but it's really not worth it on these fights because the fights are just too short. Um, and we're gonna do the same sort of thing in Fault Warrens where we have the, uh, where we use a lot of these talisman type items which grant buffs at the start of fights just so that we can make, we can really streamline the fights themselves. We don't have to like cast a bunch of buffs at the start. So I need to finish this shop because I couldn't afford the full Midnight Sun upgrade. Um, oh, whoops. So Midnight Sun is actually an interesting, uh, actually an interesting weapon. Um, because in the old route, they actually did not get this weapon for snow. They used a weapon called Battle Standard, but uh, we looked into it, and Midnight Sun is only um... oh yeah, Midnight Sun is only like ten strength less, and it's significantly cheaper. Um, so we just kind of rolled with that. Uh, it does have the stagger lock ability, which means Snow can't stagger when it's equipped, but there's really only one fight where that actually causes a problem, and we have a workaround for it. All right, good start to this fight. It's not a good start if you don't get the protect, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. I was telling really a lie. Sure. All that we need to cast here in terms of buffs and debuffs is having uh, lightning cast and thunder on everybody and getting the protect from this guy. Yo. And then... The dodge by snow, Pog. Wow, what a hero. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it mattered, but <laughs> pretty Pog. Yeah, so for these first few fights, we're going to have snow start out in Sentinel. The reason being that Fang and lightning could not survive three hits from this guy right now. Um, and, uh, oh shit, I did not, I did not upgrade my crowns. And I should have just done whatever, I'll just do it now. I just realized, like, uh, I was like, why did, uh, lightning take so much damage? Okay, um, <laughs> that would make sense. It's okay, everything is fine. <laughs> We got through the first blood. We can do this! Oh wait, I need or to no, upgrade. We gotta do this! We gotta upgrade win this. this one. Oh my god, <laughs> upgrade. Choose the right thing. I need to upgrade one of these tiaras to max because we're actually going to uh, dismantle it um, before Tiamat. As soon as we're done? Yeah, as soon as we're done with blood. So yeah, we will get a third farm. tiara later, but yeah, flood oh. farming starts yeah. now. Well, yeah, well, we have three, we'll dismantle one, and then we'll get the third one from the 10th dig later, which we're going to need three again for Shaolong Guiz. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. Don't hurt me. I'm, I no me. more. I'm, pl I'm totally playing the song on my end. Poker rap? No. What is love? No, you gotta play the pumpkin rap. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time that Zwanzig and Maelstrom and I, and I think Tiernus, and maybe Coffee, were doing a race. And during this segment, uh, Zwanzig was singing the poker rap. Mm. From memory. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a lot farming. But, um. But yeah. Um, oh, I think I didn't finish my thought from earlier about the Sentinel, um, how we have Snow in the Sentinel role right now. The reason for that is that he is the only one who can survive three hits from Vladislaus right now. Um, now, once we level up Fang and Lightning a little bit more, we can change his Sentinel roles to Commando so he can just do damage. Uh, because once we're at the point that Fang and Lightning can survive three hits, um, we're, we don't really need the Sentinel anymore. And that's actually going to be after this fight. We should be able to do the, that Crystarium.
yeah, basically the equipment we have on um, the characters is we have a morale talisman on everyone, which grants bravery. Um, we have a tetratic tiara uh, on the entire party, which grants four buffs, but the only one we care about is protect. Um, and then we also have, so on Fang and Snow, we have sprint shoes, which gives them haste. And then on lightning, we have the growth egg because we have to put that somewhere. Oh yeah, Crystarium. So uh, to, to reiterate, this is the this is the second most efficient CP farming you can do in this game. Yep. And, and we'll we will be doing the first most efficient later on. Yep. Because We're gonna... it, it's gonna take a while for us to be able to actually do the best CP grind. Yep. It's also a much fun, more fun fight than this. Yes. At least it's far more engaging. Even if he bullshits you, which he will. Yep. Many times. And this is just in Thunder Go So we'll be here for about an hour-ish um, between doing the fights and actually Crystariuming in between. Uh, which is a significant downgrade from the roughly two and a half hours in the old route. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. Yeah, we're going to basically max out... Um... Crystarium through uh, tier 9 on Fang, Vanille, and Hope. For primaries, that is. Um, on Snow and Lightning, we need to be careful because they're going to need a lot of their stage 10 uh, nodes to survive turtle stomps, so we need to s we can't spend too much on out of ring nodes in, uh, in stage 9 for them. We will get all of the HP nodes for Lightning in Stage 9, uh, but we're going to leave the rest of the Out of Ring alone for her. Yeah, and this was all routed in very precisely, so they can actually get the secondaries they need. When I was working out what was the best solution for the, for the fight and getting all the, all the, the important nodes, because I had recently rerouted 55 and I needed to get HP on Saz, I realized how important HP actually is. So after yeah. I got all the secondaries, because I was testing things, I got all the secondaries first and I got stats last. Uh, so I just prioritized HP on Snow and Lightning and it turns out it would was ideal, and then Serena refined those Crystariums to you get, to actually get stats first and the secondaries it, um, right as when you right as you need them. Yeah, there's definitely still some optimization uh, to be done on these Crystariums, but honestly, once I got once I got a setup that worked, I was just like I didn't want to change anything. <laughs> but uh, definitely in the future, there is room for more. Um, efficient upgrades or more efficient menus. Yeah, there is a painful amount of backtracking you need to do, which is the which is um, big the big problem with doing the Crystariums like this, just backtracking slow, but for now we don't really have an alternative. Yeah, like there's just some out of ring that we just cannot justify getting on the way. We would like delay really important stuff way too much. So Asaz, we're actually going to keep him kind of under leveled in the HP department. Um, the reason being that the one fight we're going to use him for, uh, we actually need to get him down into red HP. Um, we will elaborate more on that later. Uh, but basically, we need to keep his HP kind of low so that it doesn't take too many hits to get him down to red HP because that would lose time on the fight. And really, for the for the characters we're not using, it's really only necessary to spend the CP right now because we're otherwise going to max out the CP yeah. and then we'll just be wasting it. Exactly. Because if you uh, you can't get over a million 
CP stocked up. Any more will just be wasted. Yep. And there are some segments where we will get pretty close to the 1 million CP, but then we'll just dump it all in stage 9 and stage 10 and secondaries because those are hella expensive. I will confess, sometimes I do let it overflow by one on long wheeze. I know, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, if, if you've got like anything you need to take care of, you know, now would be the best time in the run to go take a break, you yeah. know, go to the toilet, get some food. We're going to be here for a minute. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, no. and one. these aren't really engaging fights and long, sh and like shell longs we're, where we're, you can take gonna... bets if we are going to kill it or not. Yeah, we're gonna try to make this as engaging as, uh, as possible with the commentary, but you know, the, this this will be the next hour ish, maybe a bit less at this point. I don't know. Yeah, so don't the really first know. item on the agenda, the first 140 digits of pi. <laughs> Three point one four one five nine. He's gonna, he's two, gonna say the whole thing, six, guys. Five. The, what, what the whole thing? There's no whole thing. Well, the, the, the 140 <laughs> digits. I mean, that he said. Oh well, yeah. I, guess. <laughs> I just mean I. I Ninety nine bottles of beer on the wall. Ninety nine bottles of peas. Take one down. Pass it around. Ninety eight bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> Yeah, so these fights follow a very simple flowchart. Um, Snow's just going to be permanently in commando. Fang is going to be saboteur until we get deprotect inflicted, and Light is going to be, or she'll be sab until we get deprotect inflicted, and then she'll go to commando. And then Lightning will be synergist until everyone has in thunder, and then she'll go to commando. And that's and the whole strat. Fun. Yeah, we've got all the paradigms set up that, so that we can kind of dynamically yeah. shift between those roles. We even have the paradigm devastation, which only comes into play if uh, lightning <laughs> gets in thunder on everyone before Fang gets uh, deprotect, which means she has to miss 10 deprotects, which I have not Unlikely. calculated the Very odds of that, sad. but it, it has happened. In all the time I've spent playing Plat, I feel like I've used devastation in like five fights, maybe. <laughs> Also, if you really screw up and, like, Mounting Contempt goes off with, like, significant HP left, you would maybe use that, but that really shouldn't happen. So I guess uh, if, if we've got to talk about something, we maybe we could do, like, a, a brief kind of history of Flat Percent. Yeah, I don't know too much sure. about that, but go for it. <laughs> Uh, I'm well, down to learn. I, I, I guess out of everyone here, Lude would would have been around the earliest. Like you would have been around roughly, I imagine, when Tiernas started routing it. All right. So from the very beginning, God created light. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, not that far back. Okay. Um, I know that Tiernas's motivation for routing Plat dates back to some comment on the most beloved gaming site in the world, GameFAQs. <laughs> where uh, someone said that this game is terrible because it's a 20 hour tutorial and Tyrannus is like you know I would really like to prove this guy wrong by proving that you can actually get all of the achievements in the game within 20 hours <laughs> <laughs> and then he spent several months working on routing uh, modifying the any percent speed run to account for early missions and um, doing various calculations such as where is the best CP grind, deciding that Vladislavs provided the best CP per hour, uh, the best skill grind. His original assumption actually was that he would be spending a lot more time fighting sacrifices for Gil because the usual casual belief is that you need Gil more than you need CP because you're gonna spend so much upgrading stuff. But it turns out that since you don't really need more than six tier three weapons, you don't even need to max the tier three weapons. You need a lot less gil than you would normally think. So uh, sacrifice farming was a very small part of the run. Vladislav's farming was a big part of the run. Um, he had been working on this for months, eventually he announced that he was mostly done with the routing. And, and then Maelstrom was like, hey, let's go to a race. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, as, so, as, as soon as we were done, we were like, yeah, let's just race it. Well, actually, you guys were, and you roped me into it, but... Indeed. The notes weren't, like, 100% done. Like, he had some, like, things hey, Locke, he still needed to like... work out and write out the details for. Uh, and the first race we did was really fun because the notes got progressively less detailed the further we got into the run. <laughs> Uh, I believe something like Mission 62 said something like equip, uh, equip magic resistance and snow sun. Like, that was basically the strap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because we don't use any sun in that fight now. Um, and so, the, uh, th I, there was also a bit of a mishap, I believe, because there was like something about it saying to sell a Minar stone twice, but you actually had to yeah. keep one. <laughs> so both Maelstrom and I ended up like a Minar stone short. So that was a whole thing. But oh, um, yeah, those are like 60,000. Yeah, it was, it was not a great time, but... Um... <laughs> I was actually smart enough to realize you needed them. Because just yeah, from my casual experience... <laughs> yeah, because like Minar stones... Um... Other than like for a few upgrades, like you would hold on to a couple to upgrade collector catalog to connoisseur, and um, you get like three collector catalogs, I believe, in the yeah. uh, game. So the third one you upgrade to connoisseur and you sell because that's more kill efficient than selling the collector in the in the nar. By the way, nar is my favorite word. Nar. <laughs> nar. So in that race, I believe the the fastest time was like 22 hours and something by you. Something like that. If I recall correctly, and the slowest time was like 25 hours by me. I mean, that's not bad, honestly. All things considered. All things considered, I was pretty well, I mean, dead by the end of it. Like I, I, I. The the problem was that I I decided to join the race the the race a week before the race. Oh, and yeah. I had just enough time to go through the entire route once. Yeah. And unfortunately, on that file, I got three traps before uh, getting to Longwee's, so I had done Longwee exactly one. Wow. <laughs> Which Oof. was suddenly a real problem when it was 20-something hours in, and I suddenly had to, like, consistently kill this guy because I'd only gotten one trap drop. Yeah. And I was failing at it pretty hard. <laughs> Yeah, I think most people fail at killing Longwees at first. It's like really a surprisingly hard fight, but really consistent once like you understand it. Yeah. And then like over the next year and a bit, uh, there were like some small improvements to the to the route, but nothing too major. It kind of stayed in place for the most part. Yeah. And then it kind of fell off because, you know, it was... The RNG was kind of ridiculous, much worse than it is now, because the, the guild grind was more inconsistent, dark matter farming was more inconsistent, uh, Neochu was even more inconsistent because death. <laughs> because death. Um, so, you know, the, the, the world record at that point was down to, like, 18 and a half hours, and uh, then people kind of stopped running it. Um, and then in late 2017, me and Maelstrom decided to route all missions, uh, which was, as we kind of considered it, plat without all the bullshit. Uh, <laughs> which was, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a fun category, um, and I, I do love it dearly. Um, but it, it, we kind of thought at the time that, that would be kind of the permanent death of plat as a category, because who would want to do all this like grinding nonsense? The only real cool part of Plaid then was like getting to do turtle fights, which all mission doesn't. Um, and then Serena comes along and just like makes Plaid a lot better. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we've kind of talked about how that process has gone with all the like cutting out Vlads and, and stuff. Yeah. So some context on my end was uh, this category is actually what got me into the game and speedrunning in general in the first place because. Um, Basically, I had been, it was like uh, 2018, I had like kind of a passing interest in speedrunning. Like I thought it would be a cool thing to do someday, but I, I didn't, I wasn't like set on a particular game or anything. Um, 
And so I had just like dug up my copy of FF13 because I hadn't played it in a few years, and I was like, huh, I should like play this again and get all the achievements and stuff. So I was like curious um, if I could find like a guide or something that, because uh, like I knew how to get it myself, but I was curious if there was like a, a good guide on like an efficient, like an efficient way to actually get the um, platinum trophy. Well, needless to say, I found no such thing on GameFAQs. <laughs> Um, I, I started going through with the 100% uh, guide on GameFAQs, which, uh, we, you know, leaves a bit to be desired. Um, uh, like, I, I got mad respect for this guy for typing it all out, but, like, I got to a point, there was just so much of it that was just, like, oh, yeah, I should have said this, like, 20 paragraphs earlier, but it's actually better to do this instead of what you already did. <laughs> and after enough of that, I was like, okay, this is not good. So then it just occurred to me one day, like, I know who <laughs> would know an efficient way to get the Platinum Trophy? Speedrunners. So I went on uh, SRC and, like, looked up the page and found Tiornus's Plat Notes, and, like, I started just playing through it, like, that day. And I played through the whole thing, and at the end of it, I was like, huh, that was pretty fun. I should learn any percent now. <laughs> and the, and the goal was... Was... Yeah, the goal was ulti always ultimately to do flat someday, but... Uh, for a while, I kind of thought that was just never going to happen, because I was just never going to have the time to do it. But somehow I eventually found the time, and yep, now here we are. <laughs> Yeah, you start off with a good game and then you show the FD did. Yep. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's that's the brief history of plot percent, I guess. Yep. Uh, and, uh, crap, we well, what about minutes. the history of speedrunning Final Fantasy thirteen? Swan's like, <laughs> I think you have some experience in this. Uh, it mean? all began with someone in 2010 who decided to make a speedrun oh, no. guide. Oh, oh here no! Here we go! Wait, the what? Yeah, no. <laughs> so, yeah. If we're talking about, like, the earliest, earliest speedruns of this game in general, um, there's, on Game FAQs, there is actually a speed <laughs> that guide. Oh, that guide. With, with speedrun written as two separate words, which actual speedrunners always take umbrage with when people do that. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a guide written, like, right after the game came out, basically, like a few months after, uh, by G. Anakin RPG. Um, Legend. Absolute legend, um, pioneer of the Odin Sky Tank strats, um, <laughs> though not really in the way that is actually good. But uh, <laughs> also, but, uh, yeah. Also, also, it was like ten-hour time that he reported getting yeah. with like segmented strats. Yeah, and, and it's like it's like I beat the game in ten hours, but I bet it could be even faster or something. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, yeah, he did said something that. like yeah. that. So yeah, not 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 to take the mick out of him too much. It was right after the game came out. Yeah, so. like I mean, no, like it would be like unbelievable if the, it was actually a good speedrun guide. Right. <laughs> uh, how do you replay uh, missions? You need to go back to the mission stone to redo them. And that is only if you've already beaten them. No, oh, can you miss more attacks, please? Holy shit. <laughs> wow. That's special. It's like, well, you girl keep pushing in the way. Gee, if only Just I had trying control really over... hard not to hit Fang. If only I had control over the position of my character. So, How many so, ones have you done? Uh, 14. So, oh, okay. 15 to go, so we're about halfway. Have you 
are you going? When are you going to do the Crystarium? Uh, after two more. Oh, okay. I, do, I usually do like 13 and t I don't know. I don't think it matters very much. Like you have to do two in there, so you could do like 15 and eight, or you could do like. Oh yeah. It really like, doesn't matter. After. I'm... Oh god. Uh, after the 13 trilogy runs, the one run I want to see the most is that Smash run. Yeah. I mean, I want to watch part of it. Probably not the whole thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Zelda speedrun where you stare at a rupee for so many hours. Wait, is that real? Apparently oh. low percent in Twilight Princess and I don't low know the Low percent in Twilight Princess. Oh, uh, Twilight Princess was another game I, I was trying to get into. Like basically, I tried learning three different speed games in uh, 2018, FF13, Twilight Princess, and Sunshine, and FF was the only one that stuck. <laughs> Although I do definitely want to finish learning Twilight Princess someday, because I thought I think it's a pretty neat speedrun. There is one speedrun that I want to do, and that speedrun is Final Fantasy IX. No. <laughs> uh, last, Don't do uh, that to yourself, uh, dude. <laughs> I just wanted to hear one Zig's reaction. <laughs> I'm just I'm just silently disappointed over here. <laughs> he wrote a. He like so I wrote any percent notes for thirteen. Wanzig liked them and wrote ninety any percent notes. Partially for me, but they become they became well used in the nine community. Yeah, and I proceeded to never use them and now they're outdated. <laughs> Classic. Okay. Well, it was for like two years that was like the route everybody used, so it was it was very much not a wasted effort. A lot of people got use out of those. Just not the person I was actually that like gave me the impetus to write them. <laughs> so, I'm gonna, it is what it is. I'm gonna take a bathroom break during this Crystarium because I can just hold X on Snow's medic. <laughs> nice. Yep, gamer strats. Shout outs to wireless controllers. Yep. Shout outs to wireless controllers. Another reason why console is the superior version of this game. <laughs> As if we didn't have enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to run on PC plus because I'm a scrub. Rip. And it's because okay. no one we'll else has shown PC interest in doing... No one else has really shown an interest in trying the category for PC. So oh, I yeah. thought I might as well give it a try. You get a free world record, basically. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <For> real. <laughs> Unless yeah, I get yeah. really screwed by RNG, the route should carry me, yes? That's true, if you're only doing one run, you you could get super unlucky. Uh, Plat Plat Percent and uh, Shroudless are PS3 exclusive, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just could not imagine running this category without having any confirmation that I got Lore Master. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to set up a new Steam account just for that. <laughs> Like all the other ones, sure, I can keep track of. Like I'd be paranoid that I'm that I missed a five star somewhere, but you know, yeah, I, uh, Maelstrom uh, always just check after the run. Didn't uh, like Maelstrom have a run where afterwards he realized he didn't have Lore Master and had to restart, or not restart, the, but in the old it. route, I don't know how you could have been, how you can even miss Lore Master. I think, I think he actually, actually, I think he once had a situation where he realized he missed a note in the Crystarium afterwards or something. Oh, jeez. Started that the sucks. timer real quick and grabbed that note. Yeah, that's another th Master Seal would also be, would also sketch me out. Yeah. It's... You need to look at the Crystariums. That's what I had to do now in my practice yeah. file. Just look at the Crystariums really carefully and see if I'm missing something. Did, did Maelstrom have to fight the final bosses again? I forget. It's been a <laughs> while. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I missed something. I better go grab that and then do the final bossy. By the but way, yeah. Tyrannus's original envisioning of plat percent involved the timing stopped, stopping when you get the uh, platinum achievement. Yeah, we kind of talked about that already, and now it oh, makes us sad. <laughs> oh. 
But, yeah, why why didn't why did we decide to do it the other way though? Because I mean, I, I I know why it it's much more fun this way, but like, why yeah. was that the initial decision? Just for, for because fun? because speed runs are better when they finish the game. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I think so too. I... Yeah, like that's kind of the big thing for me personally. I think it's the thing for a lot of this community. Yeah. I, I I know they do the same thing with like um, uh, Mario Galaxy, for instance. When you do 120 star, you have to do the final boss. Right. And actually, like through the credits, like midway through the run. Oh, jeez, um, <laughs> that's yeah. kind of brutal. And then and then they do it again at the end, even though in that game it's not even like it's different. Like at least here we get to do like swag strats for the second time. Yeah, true. So, if they do it, I don't think we have any excuse yeah. not to. On, on the other right. hand, there are games that with longer, uh, but their category is a lot longer. I'm talking about Breath of the Wild specifically. They will fight Gale the final boss, Calamity Ganon, at some point, but they are not required to finish the timer um, on, uh, on, the, on defeating it again. So, they just grab it. Um, I don't really know where they do, but they just stop the timer when they finish their um, requirement for Hundo. They don't fight Calamity again in a second time. But yeah, different. I guess different communities will choose what's diff what they think is the best for their game and for their their bigger categories. Also important to note that Breath of the Wild is a 24-hour category, Hundo. And that's on a very good run. You're a very good run. Thank you. Luke. <laughs> Wally. Spent to week farming Trapsohedron after beating this. Uh, we kinda, sorta can manipulate drops to get better chances at Trapsohedrons, but uh, we only need, we are only uh, required to farm to farm three. The other three we are going to get by dismantling Genji gloves, so it's it 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 shouldn't be a big issue. If we don't get them during the first uh, uh, toys loops, we can just get them on long wheeze, but... Um... Yeah, and honestly, long wheeze are hype fights, so I'm totally fine if we have to fight a few of those. And she's back! <laughs> yeah, did you not notice how I went to the next screen? After Snow's Medic. <laughs> no time loss. I thought that was Loki doing that. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't be Wait, surprised. Is that not allowed? Well, it would make it more of a tool assisted speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> but it cat already, already was. Speed so. run. A cat. Wait, seriously? You know that I hate people spitting in stage 9? Huh? Why, why? Why does Vanilla get HP plus 50 in stage 9? What is this? <laughs> oh, like out of ring? Yeah, and in ring. The first node really? of the meta wow. in stage 9. <laughs> That's pretty fucked. I swear some of these Pistarian nodes were just accidents. <laughs> Kinda like Magnums. I like the HP plus 5 in like Sab level 5. Or I like... Well, uh, stage 5. My favorite nodes are uh, Snow's HP plus 36 in stage 9 sub. Okay, just me, I guess. No, I mean, yeah, it's because I think that's the only time that it's a non-multiple yeah, 5. the only time in any any role in any character's crest. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got HP plus 195s, and then there's HP plus 36. But hey, I guess it's better than Vanille's 
random 50 HP that she ends up with. Yeah, so... 21,050! Now, Serena, yes. you're getting HP plus 15 on Sass, but his HP's only going up by 9. Is your game bugged? Yep. Yep. Okay. It's a glitch known as the Hyades Magnums. <laughs> Yeah, so we are just dumping all of our uh, CP for Saz in secondaries because we want to intentionally keep his HP low uh, because that will in turn help us get to red HP for Atticus. I don't think I really explained why we want that, but that'll probably be better to explain once we get closer. You cold-blooded monster. No, Hope has last report. <laughs> really just makes you realize how actually big the system is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just wait until the post-game crisps with like 960,000 <laughs> CP. <laughs> Doing the rest of Vlad farm, I guess I can go and do dishes. Dishes, pog. Don't think I'm gonna miss anything, am I? I wanna, I wanna give a shout out to my mom. Um, <laughs> I, I don't see her as much uh, these these days because of COVID and reasons. Um, so she hasn't been able to cook much for me. So out of like her maternal instinct, uh, she decided to like sometimes just order me food. Uh, one such occasion being today because it's Santa Claus, which is like a Dutch holiday. Um, so I'm I, I don't actually need to go out and get food today. Aw, you know, that's sweet. Indonesian food ordered later. So there are two kinds of people out. I don't like in the world. Those who discriminate on people based on their country of origin, and the Dutch. <laughs> Alright, this is done. But we will get ruined in uh, for Cold Log. It's literally his first uh, commando node. I mean, we just got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is your just get ruined? Oh. True. So Lightning hasn't fire now, so she's going to use that instead because it's earlier in the menu than in Thunder. And Vlad is weak to every element. Yes, even Earth. Wait, why am I in devil? Why aren't we used? Why aren't we using quakes? Good point. <laughs> oh yeah, we're at the point now where light has in fire, so we get the better end spell. I used to like build. I I used to develop a uh, lightning center or sentinel and saboteur first, but then I realized I could just do synergist earlier and get in fire for more vlads. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the. It's just like. It feels viscerally more satisfying. I mean, I still fire. wish we could get in water, but in fire is okay. <laughs> There's no speed difference, by the way. We're just... Yeah. <laughs> Unless one somehow manages to cause the game to drop frames. Which would surprise me on PS3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> PS3 just drops frames when there are trophies or good, uh, um, or uh, the area after the birds dodge in Chapter 12. <laughs> but the one where we say there are no birds, to be specific. So this is the CP farm, yes, 
Yes, it is. It is the we first are... one. It is actually not the primary one. Sorry, you can continue. Uh, I was just going to say we are uh, a little over halfway through now. Yeah, we uh, we've done 18 out of 29. Also a little over halfway through the like the actual run, if all goes well. Yeah, true. Uh, all goes well, turtle loops there. with all. Uh, yeah, thanks for cursing all of my post-game RNG. You're welcome. <laughs> I think it's just dinner log. I don't think we have Shaolong's unlocked at breakfast time. Teeth tears farming, yeah. You do get a lot of these, like. <laughs> yeah, in the old so so many of them. There was an upgrade that relied on a certain on high tears number. of woe, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, because we don't uh, like this have a bunch. But uh, now it just uses other components because we won't have nearly enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. You can also get bonus Deceptisols from these fights. I've gotten one ever. <laughs> I, I I I liked the 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 idea of using the tears of my enemies to fuel my power. <laughs> That's fair. You just reminded me that I got the Decept drop from bar 2 two days ago. That was pretty fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've also gotten a Decept from uh, Shao Long once. <laughs> and I think an Aegisol from Sacrifices? I think they drop Aegisols. All of these I've only seen once, I'm pretty sure. Kill the beasts. What are the beasts you are talking about, Groudon? Because they can mean a lot of different things. <laughs> I, I imagine he means B and J, which the, there oh. is also another. Oh, oh. B and J on the I, other side. Uh, I mean, kills just the fight is longer, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's the same CP. Pretty sure they're both sixty-four thousand. Um, I think that's right. Because I'm pretty sure B and J are sixteen thousand apiece without growth egg. But, but um, it's, it's so yeah. There's there's oh. just no way it would it would be faster. Like these Even fights are so kill. quick. It's just better to farm farm gills on turtles in general. Yeah. There's no point in trying to do both of them at the same time right now. Like especially because like to kill Bandersnatch, we have to stagger it. Yeah. It doesn't take that long, but, you know, it takes longer than probably the whole Vlad fight. <laughs> Alright, eight to go. We are almost done. So then after this, we just go and fight the final bosses of the game for the first time, and then we embark on the post-game journey. Now, the only reason we actually have to fight the final bosses at this point is because it opens up stage 10 of the Crystarium. Yeah, uh, which not which... only makes a lot of fights much less terrible, but is also literally required for the category. So if the requirement was to end um, timing on Platinum Trophy gets, there would be no reason to do these fights again, but we like to do them again for swag, so just even come if back the, here to dab on them. Even if the leaderboard rules changed, I'd still just go fight final bosses after ending the timer. Yeah. So, um, 
and with with the old route, the the goal was literally to farm Vlad like as much as possible. Like literally, what we did was max everybody up through stage nine for all rolls, and then fill up RCP to yeah. the max without like wasting any. Um, and then go five final bosses, unlock stage ten, and then immediately be able to spend a bunch in there. Yeah. Um, so you know, a lot yeah. of that is now. Bad. Grab yep. on stage nine versus is totally doable. It's just scary as fuck. It's less fun, yeah. <laughs> what all missions does. <laughs> what all missions does. Stage eight versus is where it's at. Uh, is that possible? It's, yeah. It's hard over here. <laughs> I did it with no upgrades and no shrouds, too. Oh, God. I mean, shrouds would, don't even help that much on Versi. Right. You have all that time to buff, and uh, starting from phase two, he debuffs you anyway. Have I ever told you where the legend is? Yeah, he Pretty was sure. doing like crazy challenges before he was even speedrunning the game. Huh, this Vlad farm segment went by a lot faster than it usually does. Probably because we have commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the same thing applies to Shao Long. I, th I, th I think I will just listen to music on my headphones so yeah. Twitch doesn't pick up on it and gets mad at me while I'm farming this yeah. in my run. <laughs> yeah, Zwanzik, did your plat run get DMCA'd? <laughs> it hasn't, bizarrely. <laughs> <laughs> it really should. But yes, I've checked. Uh, it's not even like muted by Twitch or anything. Oh wow. <laughs> even though I literally play the entire What is Love song during the run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the joke I mean, for anyone who doesn't get it is that What is Love sounds like Vladislav. And he says, baby, don't hurt me no more because we keep killing him. Fair. I know the joke. It's always much funnier when you explain it. Yeah, and I I never actually listened to this song until like two or three years ago. <laughs> I only knew it from like the SNL skit or whatever. You're right. What is love needs more cowbell. <laughs> yeah. True. I have a fever. Then the only prescription is more Vladislav! Oh god. <laughs> god, getting blindsided by Fang just looks so painful. Like, look at this. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So I guess I can kind of explain what I'm going for in the Crystariums, um, especially particularly on Snow and Lightning, because they're kind of the ones that we have to route around because they have the the most like CP like requirements for all the stuff they need. Uh, so Snow is going to be very valuable in all of his secondary roles. We need him to have Curasa and Medic, so he can be. Uh, because he's really the only viable medic on this team, and he's only viable with Kurasa. Uh, we need him to have haste, so he can haste himself, which saves us um, some time on turtles. And then we need him to have daze, because he's going to be our daze spammer while Fang and Lightning uh, do the damage in Commando. Um, so that's the deal with Snow. With Lightning, we are... Um, so we already have up through, we already have D-Protect, D-Shell, and Imperil on Light, which is all she needs for a while. We'll need to get her Poison later as well. Um, we're going to get her Elude for Sentinel because she's 
gonna need it for one fight, and then um, the big thing with Lightning is we need to work towards her haste, because her haste is pretty late in stage 10 of her Synergist, which getting to late in stage 10 of a secondary roll requires a lot of CP. Um, Several million. Yeah, so we, like most of these Vlad fights we're doing are, are to fund that as well as all the stuff Snow needs. Yeah, like, so th those like important abilities are kind of your number one priority. Once that's taken care of, it's like getting like roll level five and stuff like Commando Ravager and Sentinel is pretty useful for just yeah increasing roll bonuses. But that will really only become a thing in post game. Yeah, like um... when I was when I was working on how many bloods were necessary, I only did the math assuming snow because even though he doesn't really need anything in stage ten, um, he needs so many so many things from secondaries yeah. that. Uh, well, he... I didn't actually do the math. I don't know if he needs more to get everything, or if Lightning needs it's more actually, just for haste. It's actually Snow, which surprised me, because I thought it was Lightning, but Snow needs just a little bit more than Lightning. Um, so, with that, with that in mind, I just went into these fights knowing I only need a 25. I tr for the first time, I tried to do 27 just to be a little safe, and it worked out just fine. After getting everything I needed for Snow and Lightning, again I try or worked on their HP until they were needed, and Snow sur doesn't survive the first, doesn't really survive the first loop. He dies to one fight, but we do an extra Crystarium there, so he can actually survive it. And Lightning just survives the third loop. Yes, yeah, Snow is actually the squishiest character in the first uh, twice loop, which is funny. But that's just because we have to neglect his primaries so much because of how much stuff he needs in secondaries, and secondaries just don't give good stat boosts at all. As you can see, like, <laughs> these are puny. 20 HP. 30 HP. So yeah, basically, like, there's just no reason to develop secondaries past the abilities you need, In I mean, until you're... Uh, primaries are maxed, at which point, obviously, you have to max your secondaries as well. But uh, prior to that, there's just no reason to do anything past the necessary abilities. Yeah, and after Lightning and Snow, we don't really care about Crystarium for a long time, except yeah. for Long Wee Farm. For a long way farm, Crystarium becomes important again, and it becomes important on Vanille, because we need three, thing three things that are very late in our secondaries. We are going to need her calm level 5, which is the very last note of her Literally commando. max commando, yeah. <laughs> we are going to need Phaethra from stage 7 synergist. Stage 10. And oh, stage 10. Like, and we are going almost to need the end. <laughs> yeah, and we are going to need Reprieve, which, which is, is stage on... 7. So that, oh, that's the one in stage seven. But yeah, she needs she, to get. She almost, only needs us very late, so. Yeah, and um, I used to actually max out Vanille's primaries before going for those, but I found out I, I can actually stop at accessory in Ravager, so that you can get to the stuff for Longui faster, and um, that gives you more of a buffer, so you're less likely to overflow on CP. I've thought about maybe stopping earlier in. Medic as well, um, but I haven't really experimented with that. Um, I, I think I'm kind of able to guess like what the priorities are for the other characters. Like Fang, you want to get the good buffs and like strikes, I guess. Um, well, she already has the buffs. She already has all uh, all of her raw buffs, and um, she has Spark Strike and Flame Strike, which are the only two she really needs. Yeah. And um, you she's don't really need to get Spark Strike and Flame Strike for the turtles. It's for Fault Warrens. Yeah, and we get uh, we need to get Thundara on Fang before um, before uh, Fault Warrens Neo Chu just in case we don't get our RIC because she doesn't have any other AOE uh, chaining moves at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're we're also gonna need to get haste on Fang. We.
We're going to put that off a little bit just because we're going to have sprint shoes for the entirety of Fault Warrens. Um, but we do need to get it for her before Mission 47, the solo Ractivija. Is there anything that particularly matters on Hope? No, um, Hope and Taz are pretty much done at this point. The only yeah. important thing Hope needs is Last Resort, uh, and that's already been taken care of. Yeah, he, well, we need to get his Sentinel before Neo Chu. Um, but that's 3k CP low. That's it, yeah. Hmm. Fair um, and yeah, Saz. The only thing with Saz is we want to neglect his primaries as much as we can without overflowing on CP. Um, yeah. Now, that does kind of imply that we are going to neglect his strength a bit, which I guess is true, but the thing is that Fang is really doing most of the damage on that fight anyway. Yeah, in Attica, Saz is only there to send buffer cold blood. He's not there for the damage. Yeah, the damage like... from the Magnums is nice, but Fang is the one doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. Especially if Fang can land deep protect at the start of the fight, so he's deep protected for like all of the chaining phase, then like it, she puts in so much work. Yeah, for the comparison, like the plot strat, it's the plot strat and the all mission strats for Atticus is now is essentially the same. You use Sass and buffer cold blood and then kill with comms while keeping Sass in the snow in a sentinel roll all the time. The time for the plot strats is it ranges between uh, four and four and a half minutes. It can be sub four. I've I've had like uh, three fifty two yeah. is my best, I think. All missions cannot use Fang, so we have to use Vanille Calm, which is hilarious because she will use attacks. She will not use ruins. Yeah, well, you uh, don't want her worthy. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want her to use ruins to be even lower damage. Uh, a good time for the all missions fight is seven to eight minutes. Wait, huh? I don't, I don't think it is, but a lot no, of people no? still get those times because it's wonky with positioning. Well, yeah, yeah. that's true. Because like you, I know, the yeah, top seven fight is really, really good. Because I remember my PB had like a five thirty something. I'm pretty sure. But I don't remember exactly. Well, I can take a look in my PB real quick and see okay. what the time I Sounds got for good, Atticus. Zelda. Good luck with your emergency. Holy shit! I get to use Devastation on the very last flat fight. <laughs> Plug. Nice. Do I have a refresh? No, I don't. Shit. She, she got it on the 11th cat. Yep. <laughs> she was literally just doing it to make you go into Devastation. Honestly, I'm okay with it. It was a good meme. Especially being the very last flat. <laughs> Alright, so we're done. Uh, yep. So we're actually going to take Lightning out um, for these final bosses. We're going to bring Hope in, and we're actually going to use him as lead. Uh, and you will see why. He has a move called Last Resort that kind of shits on these final bosses. Um, yeah, it's... Last Resort is very similar to Cold Blood, except it can be combo first. Yeah, except it does damage <laughs> and is faster yeah. and chains almost the same. Slightly less, technically, but... It, it's more, really, because, uh, uh... Okay, let me do this shot. Then I can it works a little bit different when there's multiple enemies, where it will actually spread the hits and not yeah. just focus on what you're targeting. Yeah, uh, terrible, my, yeah. okay, so my Vlad fight in, fight in my All Missions PB wasn't really that good, but it was still a 703, so sub, six, sub 7 is a good time for... So there's a two minute difference almost every single time between the two categories, just because in one of them you are forced to use Vanilla and in the other you can use Fang. And Fang do be pretty strong. I don't need other load. Uh... Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and get a um, maxed Hawkeye for Hope. It's his best magic weapon. Uh, 
it doesn't really matter that much, but we need to get one eventually for Treasure Hunter, and, like, we might as well just get it for, for these bosses, because we can afford it. Um, we're also going to get our second and third Aurora Scarves, because we're going to need one for each party member uh, going into Fault Warrens. And I think that's all we get here. Yeah. Aurora Scarf is kind of a funny... Um accessory all it does is it gives you full atb at the start of the fight yeah. pretty minor but when you're doing a lot of really quick fights yeah it, the time adds i kind of i kind of talked about that earlier how it's like it's pretty not a good accessory on like long fights but on short fights it's it can be like a big game changer is uh, it possible to get world record too early to tell uh, eh, it's possible. I don't think it's likely at this point. I'm uh, 16 minutes behind PP right now, so. Ouch. Um, wait, what goes here? Malevolence. I think it will be world record for a run on really, really long a thon. Oh, true. true. Definitely. True. I can't, I, I don't know what the uh, PB is for plat percent on really, really long a thon. Okay, so. So, yeah, we're gonna put the strength. Uh, equipment back on. Uh, malevolence. Uh, default you're in console. Oh, thank you. I don't know what is wrong with me. I cannot remember to set <laughs> defaults today. <laughs> that would have been awkward. Console default. Uh, wait. Why am I giving him? You don't need to give him the catalog. Yeah, I'm. I'm think. I'm thinking of the wrong. Uh, Part of the run. Full Florence paradigm. Oh my god. Whatever. It doesn't matter that much for this fight. Oh, the console default. Uh, yeah. First fight. Whatever. Wait, what am I doing? So, fun fact about Hope, he is the only character who's uh, synergist, a synergist targeting does not default to himself every time you cast. It actually stays on the character that you last uh, cast a buff on. So when I queue up repeat here, this is going to target Snow, whereas on every other character it will have, uh, it would have um, gone That's back. The hammer. Yeah, so here's Last Resort. You can kind of see, uh, yeah, it builds a ton of chain and does pretty good damage to Oh, I should have faced Maybe there's no force after all. Um, that's fine, I don't think it matters. Maybe there's no force after all. Snow and Fang are the ones doing most of the damage. Yeah. I mainly just like Faith for combo for last resort. Uh, wait. Oh, is, oh, I never Libra it. Holy shit. Okay, I'm not paying attention. The whole. <laughs> the, uh. <laughs> The messing up the default paradigm just threw me off so much. Oh, what is happening? I... Maybe there's no force after all. You still get the kill. Yeah, I just was really tripping there. Honestly, since I had to do a menu to change default, I probably should have just subbed out Hope. It was probably worth it at that point. I I timed it. I actually timed subbing in Fang to run to Bart 3 and then subbing Hope back in. It's actually like three seconds slower or something, which surprised me. I expected it to be closer than that. Alright, so final bosses. Phase uh, part one. Yeah, honestly, and I really. And then like... we'll be done! Honestly, yeah. No, we won't, Lamal. Honestly, I really, I really like these fights with Hope lead because Last Resort's fun to spam. Yeah. The orphan strat really needs to be improved, though. I feel like we need to get Vanille in here. I just these fights or er, orphan just sucks so bad without poison. It's just Vanille sucks for for all the other fights. <laughs> and going for poison on light means like a whole additional Vlad or two. So yeah, no. So, hopefully we want Fang to land in peril pretty quickly here. That's kind of the biggest factor in getting a good fight, and we don't have it, so cool. 
open okay, the there it is. three where Imperial and Deprotect never wants to land in any category and it's actually kind of important for us to land. Just kind of, yeah. The cool thing about using Fang here is that we can, we actually have access to slow, and uh, slow makes it quite free. I mean, it's free without slow too, but yeah, it is nice. <laughs> it is. It makes the fight free in any percent. Oh yeah. Any percent we're used to having to like shift to Sentinels to like barely survive Ultima. If it gets high rolls, but here it's just like, yeah, we don't yeah. care. <laughs> that fight's like 20 seconds faster than the any percent fight. Potentially even faster. You can get sub minute, like 55 ish, if you get an early imperial. You don't, you don't use Libra in Bart 3, do you? Yeah. No, you did. You got zero. And that was like without using Shroud as well. Yeah. So this is. For a lot of categories, this is a really, uh, especially any percent, it's a very rhythmic fight, but it's not easy at all, but it's so uh, satisfying it's, to it's execute. It's a very satisfying, I, I was gonna <laughs> just use the same word. Like, I remember when I first learned this game, like, I was in love with this fight. I practiced it so much because I just thought it was, like, the coolest shit. It is. Like, for this category, we don't really care about the slaps. We can just face tank all of them for yeah, any percent, like... that's not true. So you need to time send shifts for every single one of the slaps. But they are timed in such a way that if you shift at the same time after doing the same action, you will always get the timing right. And that makes it such a good fight to just execute properly. Yeah, this strat... I don't know, it needs to be improved because it has some like major weaknesses, but I don't know, I just don't know how to fix it. Because like, nobody in this party knows poison, which kind of sucks. <laughs> like, poison's really good for this fight. We're needing D protect, and we ideally would like D shell as well, yeah. Alright, so the reason why Horde Stagger Gauge was stuck there at 400 until um, rest, rest, last resort drop uh, is that both Fang uh -oh. and Snow. Okay. Both Fang. Oh! <laughs> Terry. Just a bit. Right. <laughs> See, that's one of the problems with this strat, is we have no counterplay to that. I mean, we you can do like. Well, we can't even do an emergency summon there because we don't. Uh, we don't have the TP. Hmm. So yeah, I don't know. It, this fight needs to be worked on. I just haven't really gotten around to it. And it's like this works well enough most of the time. So it's whatever. For the record, he just um, Hope just almost died to a. Uh... Yeah, I, there's a 50% <laughs> chance <laughs> of me dying there. <laughs> Uh, I was saying early, Orphan's Chain got stuck there for a while, for 100%. That's because both Fang and Snow have Stagger Lock weapons equipped. Yep. And uh, Stagger Lock weapons will not stagger the enemy, even if he has at the stagger point. That uh, Progenitorial Wrath actually worked in my favor, because I got a pretty good damage push out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have very easily been bad. All right, Orphan 2, the victory lap within the victory lap. Yeah, so you're going to see Fang hitting for 450,000 on this fight. <laughs> it's pretty great. Also, Hope always gets his ATB refunded here, and I don't know why, but we take it. Also, sometimes you can skip long paradigm shift like that. So, uh, if we can get the 5 star uh, in this fight, it's usually fine when we get it on second try. There's, like, I can't imagine how you can fail the 5 star this, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> it was yeah. on the nose, so I was like, yeah. maybe it can happen, but... I, I know I had it happen once in a run. 
Yo, the Pope attacks though, Pog. <laughs> so yeah, the Vega. boomerang. Fifty-two, nice. All right, GG everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so Orphan. Has... So I know you're smart, but uh, I'm gonna say it anyway. Please save. Yes. <laughs> yes, please save. I'm... I All don't I do know, but I feel like this is a pretty bad route for any percent. Nah. You just don't. Also, under fun fact: all plat percent runs contain a mini any percent in it, <laughs> and are a valid all missions run. Sure. But they do not count for shroudless, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. Shroudless That's the word plan. I would. No. Damn. Bad. So it's very important that you uh, save after doing this uh, because yeah. otherwise you just get kicked to the main menu and you and your run is gone for it. <laughs> yep. Just, just imagine if you didn't save after doing all of that in a plat run. Just yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder uh, who knows what that's like. <laughs> I did that once. I. Uh, <laughs> what happened is since there's some. The, the load screen after skipping the last cutscene is fairly long and you have to wait for the end to like fill in partially. Um, I decided to go take a bathroom break real quick after final bosses, came back, was like, okay, uh, moving on, pressed no on the save thing, and then realized I was thoroughly screwed and had just killed my run. Yep, but then you PB'd the next day, right? Yes, yes, my, my current PB is actually the run I did the day after that. <laughs> Salty run backs always works. Yep. All right, so now we are getting into stage 10, uh, where we get, you'll see, we get some pretty juicy HP nodes. Uh, get some decent strength and magic nodes too, but mainly we're, we're in it for the CP at this point. Um, uh... So yeah, we're going to invest a decent amount in primary stage 10 to get uh, like the HP that we need for the fights coming up. And then we're going to, from there, focus on getting all the important like secondary stuff that we need. Uh, oh, and also we're going to be unlocking every character's fourth accessory slot here. Well, <coughs> not Saz's actually, but we unlock that later, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we're going to be going back to the, um, nope, back to the uh, Fang Light Hope team. Um, this team is, like, very good for Fall Warrens, which I can kind of go into more detail on that. I just want to make sure I don't screw up this Crystarian first. <laughs> so I actually have a question that I forgot to ask during Vlad farming. Yeah, what's up? Um, what what is it exactly again that getting the Genji glove early for is so important for? Um, uh, Bandersnatch, uh, as well as like Orphan, like Fang breaks damage cap on all of the final fights. Sure, but like that's like minor time save, right? Mm, I don't. We we do kind of so. go out of our way to go get that Genji glove early, don't we? Yeah. Um I'm I'm Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking. like Yeah, there, I mean, I have No, I get I get what you mean. Like I have thought about this. I kind of didn't really I'm go too right far down the right. Um Like I don't Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's probably worth like uh timing like see how much time we would save by doing it later. Um cuz like it, it is probably pretty noticeable time save on those fights, but if we would be saving like minutes of movement, then yeah, that is that is valid. Well, it's probably not minutes of movement. Yeah, so I like I have definitely considered that because I also asked myself the question like why do we need <laughs> why do we need the Genji glove early? But I kind of just figured like. It's nice enough that I'm okay with keeping it like that for now, and we can always like look into it more later. Fair enough. Right. So 
here we're going to be putting Morale Talisman, uh, Blessed Talisman, Sprint Shoes, and Aurora Scarves on uh, Bang and Lightning, and we're going to be uh, putting Sprint Shoes, Growth Egg, Tiara, and um, something else on Hope. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, oh, and an Aurora Scarf as well. So yeah, our entire party is going to have Aurora Scarves and Sprint Shoes, and those are going to be very important because we're going to be going through a lot of, uh, of very Fast fast part. fights. Uh, yeah. Before we get to full torrents, there's just two missions that we need to do real quickly. Yeah, because, um, well, one, they're just kind of on the way. Um, like, there's just not really a better time to do them, but also one of these missions gives us a survivalist catalog, which is actually something we want for Fault Warrens. Uh, so basically, the um, the survivalist catalog, like, what it's mainly for is it increases the drop rate of shrouds at the end of a fight. Um, basically, what it does is it does an extra 5% check for the shroud drop in addition to the regular check so it's not like a direct five percent increase but since shrouds are so unlikely at this point it's basically a five percent increase now fault warrens has like six um kind of like i don't know what to call them like final final boss things at the end of the at the end of the like run throughs of fault warrens um each one of these has a uh each one of those has a 1.25% chance to drop a very expensive weapon. Uh, the cheapest one is 180,000 and the most expensive is 300,000. Um, now, with the survivalist catalog equipped, those weapons actually occupy the shroud slot. Uh, so, having the survivalist equipped actually increases those odds to like 6.2-ish percent. Um, so it's still not that likely that we'll get any of those, but like now that we have four accessory slots on all of our characters, it's like pretty easy to justify using one of them for that just because getting even one of those weapons has the potential to save like a lot of time on farming later. Um, and if you get multiple, then you're in like real, you're like set on kill pretty much. That being said, I have yet to get a single one in a run. Only in practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, and I I've got never like... got, and I never got those weapons in practice. And I've been through full torrents with the plat yeah. setup twice already. So, like, I've, I know I've gotten three in a single full torrents run. I feel like I may have had four once, but I'm, I might be imagining that. So, right now, just gonna. Clean up a couple of quick missions that survivors. we did do. Yeah, uh, that we didn't do the first time we were here. These are just like easy to do now. Yeah, we mainly don't do these the first trip because one, it's kind of some extra move. Well, I don't know. I guess we do the movement anyway. But um, the big reason we put these off is because there's really nothing locked behind these missions. Like, there's no advantage to doing them early. So by coming back when we're much stronger, we can do these fights much faster than we otherwise would. Mm -hmm. And they don't get like super impressive CP or anything, so it's like it's not like doing them early is going to help us on fights or anything. All missions currently does them earlier to get like an extra Age of Soul, basically. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, if we do routing Fortisol, yeah, if, if we do uh, routing Fortisol between us, then, uh, no, guys, Eric, then we don't need to do these missions early. Google Puppet. Fog. Money. So yeah, this fight is the main reason we equip the Blessed Talismans on Fang and Lightning. I've kind of debated if it's even worth equipping them, but I've tried the fight without it, and honestly, it kind of sucks, so I just equip it. Because <laughs> I don't really have a better thing to equip anyway, so I'm just kind of like, whatever. Honestly, there are a lot of like equipment menus in post-game that probably aren't worth the time to do them, <laughs> but like it's kind of hard to like measure that, so... 
I've like definitely trimmed down some stuff in that regard, but like for the most part, I still uh, we still equip the full like four accessories for everything. Rude goblin. Let's keep this up. Yeah, right. Let's keep this up. Hey, see ya. See ya. Snow said we gotta win this in chapter one. <laughs> like, can you imagine? It was it was on the same fight that I intentionally uh, fucked up the other day to try to get him to say it, but I didn't think he could. But it turns out he can. I'll I'll send you the clip. It's okay. I mean, well, okay, there's not going to be any we gotta win this for a little while, I'm sorry. But there will be a lot later. Probably. Wait, I got the... Okay. Alright, I managed to make it this far without having to do a paranoid <laughs> mission stone check. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, forgetting to activate a mission is one of the worst things that yeah. can happen in these long categories. Well, well it depends on... World Records forgot to activate a mission. It depends on the mission. Some aren't too bad. Some are, like, you're losing 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> like... Well, Imagine maybe... running all the way to Versi Stone, getting to the mission here. Yeah, but I don't know how you yeah, See, that, that one, one, I don't know how you could, like, you're <laughs> you're literally going there just for that. It'd be pretty hard to forget that one, but yeah, if you did, then yikes. Hey, Nikki. Alright, sounds good, Glacier. Thanks for hanging out. I can't believe it's 10.35 a.m. This is wild. <laughs> I should start runs at 1 a.m. more often. This feels great. <laughs> I'm going to have so much of my day left. So this is a funny fight. Oh, yeah. Disclaimer, the preemptive strike is slower than the normal fight. Yeah, so you're going to see a lot of fights like this. <laughs> Where we just kind of show up and do one string, and then they're dead. Popcorn! Well, it's not popcorn, you need to actually execute because we're leading Fang. Fair. Wait, what? Oh, uh, it was it was it was a meme with some of the some of these fights in the uh, initial plot uh, route because we were leading Hope for a lot of it. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Doesn't do anything in these fights anyway. The strat was literally popcorn. <laughs> like you just sit there and let the girls kill. Uh, yeah. So I That's guess we can. Uh, cool. Yeah, that deep protect. <laughs> Let's go hope. Yeah. So um. But obviously, we're not leading hope for these anymore because that means running with hope, which slow. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we can kind of go ahead and explain the fault warrens. So fault warrens is set up in five stages now the first stage there's only one mission there mission 35 um then once we complete that mission it gives us two options for where we want to go in stage two or uh yeah stage two um and then those each split into a couple with one overlapping so then there are three in the third stage four in the fourth stage and then the fifth stage is kind of weird there are actually six there um and then once we've completed all of those six, or once we've completed all of the uh, 16 missions, uh, it unlocks mission 51, who is kind of like a super boss kind of thing. Um, well, I don't know, not really to the level that Versi or Longui is, but... Um, Still pretty tough. Yeah. Still a but, pretty tough fight. Yeah, but we're going to have to go... Th basically, the way it works is we go through, do one mission in stage one, one in stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five... Then after fighting the final enemy in stage five, it warps us back to the beginning. So the way that we have to go about this is we actually have to run through this seven times um, to get to each one of the final missions. Uh, now, um, what that means is we're going to be repeating a lot of missions. Uh, and, and this poor Gurren Gatch is going to get slaughtered seven times. Um, but it's actually okay because the repeat missions actually drops or give us some pretty good upgrade components that we can actually make use of. So 
kind of works in our favor. I wonder how much these things eat. This area is super chill, though. Like, most of the fights are really straightforward, but there are, like, a handful of really cool fights. Then there's double A-moms. <laughs> and again, so cool. no, I don't... most of these fights are really easy. We're set up with a lot of, like, auto-buff accessories and Aurora scarves. Yeah. To, like, make those quick fights as quick as possible. Yeah, so, like, we're, we're basically going to enter these fights just kind of, like... On a lot of them, we're just going to go straight to attacking, and that's the whole fight. On Gurengatch, uh, this guy has very high resistance to damage until staggered, so we're going to stagger first, which um, uh, we can stagger a lot faster after we inflict in peril, so we're going to start with that. Yeah, so Lightning and uh, Fang are both able to cast in peril, so usually you can get it pretty quickly. Sometimes it takes a while. Um, now the thing about this fight is most of the time we're probably not going to 5-star it. Um, but that's okay, since we're fighting it so many times, we only have to get a 5-star on it once, and uh, we have a Deceptisol reserve to do a... Okay, well I already got a 5-star, cool. <laughs> if you get in Peril first string, it's yeah. usually a 5-star. See, it's funny but in because... in Peril first string is kind of rare. Yeah. It's funny because it used to be like thought to be like impossible to five star without a decep, but that's because in the old route they were going to Cerberus to kill instead of Devastation. Uh, by going to Devastation, even though Hope only has Deep Ortega, it's still guaranteed to inflict first cast. So uh, Hope is like now that I think about it. Yeah, so like Hope is a lot more useful beefing up Fang and Lightning by 89% than he is doing his own ruins. So this is an annoying fight because we want the preemptive strike, but a lot of times they just don't give it to you. But it's not as it's not a big enough deal to retry if you don't get yeah. it. You can do it just fine without a preemptive strike. Yeah, so like for reference, the preempt fight is usually like seven, eight seconds. The non preempt fight can be like 21 to possibly more. It depends on like positioning and stuff. Um, now that's that preempted seven to eight plus the preempt animation, which is itself like, I don't know, five seconds or something. So the difference between the two is really only like 10 seconds or so. So retrying the fight isn't can't really be justified. No, like, uh, well, all missions still does 70 subs for the seven gear and gashes, right? Mm, all all missions still does 70 yeah. subs for the seven gear and gashes because we don't need treasure hunter, so a yeah. lot of the money you get from Bakti is actually funneled into the seven subs. Yeah. We can't, yeah, we cannot justify buying a single Deceptisol for this whole run. I mean, unless you're just really comfy on Gil. Yeah, 30,000 is a lot of money when you need to actually yeah. use that money for. Yeah. Category SCs. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Speaking of what? which, I do have a bonus. Uh, any, any percent is also kind of stuck in uh, terms of um, in terms of money. So any percent and plot struggle a bit with money, but no other category really has that issue. All missions yeah, swing in the all all Throwing well. money at whatever you want to, really. Hey, Ada. I'm doing my best to go. Gotta go fast. Yeah, all chests eventually gets to a point where we have so much shit to sell and so many, so much CP to spend, but it's just not worth doing any menuing. Like, we just completely stop spending CP at a certain point in all chests because the late game fights are not challenging in it, like at all. So like the time spent doing Chris just can't be justified. And yeah, obviously all chests is just like drowning in too much gill. Like there's just nothing we can, like at some point we just throw all the gill we have left into deceps and just however many you have, just find a fight to preempt with it, basically. 
This is the first of these fights that isn't like totally trivial, although I, I don't really remember what the plot is. Uh, like. it's... this fight's it's kind of a pain. Still trying... Like, I don't know, it's not... Sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not. It just depends on debuffs and spacing, but the annoying thing is that you can't really track what debuffs are on what enemies, because you can only look at one at a time. Right. Uh, but I yeah. guess at least you don't get one shot by Borg Bear in this version. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, why did I go to strike team? It's a bit annoying because, like, uh, goblins are best dealt with uh, by magic, and Borg Bears are best dealt with by physicals. Yep. And Munchkins just kind of die, so those are fun. Yeah, they're... <laughs> Yeah, munchkins are pretty weak. They are the weakest of the goblin family. That is the most offensive thing you've ever said. I'm sorry, question mark? <laughs> munchkins are people too, you know. Um, no, I don't I don't take I mean I do them in the same order every every run, so it's pretty easy to to keep track, because like Basically, each each Fault Warren's run is ultimately to get to one of those six uh, missions in Stage 5, and if I know which one of those I'm going for, then I, I know what the optimal missions to do along the way are. Because in most cases, it's really obvious. <laughs> Yo, gift subs, Pog. So I don't know that we really have gotten to talk about Vertiluts. Um... <laughs> They're kind of a funny Vertilets enemy. Are kind of for joke in this game. Because <laughs> their whole thing when is that they the summon. Things, yeah. It's like no, on whole... my casual playthrough, these guys were little nightmares. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and give Light the Survivalist catalog. Um, but yeah, Vertilets, uh like, their whole thing is that they try to summon, like, big, scary monsters that actually are dangerous and a pain in the ass, but. Like, they have so little HP that we just murder them in, like, five seconds, and their summon animation takes, like, a billion years, so... They just never even get a chance to do their thing. And that's the fight. No Aldebarons. Looks like a reset. <laughs> you got the hides, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's what I need. Thick <laughs> hides. <laughs> the funny thing is that by having the Survivalist catalog equipped, uh, we're a lot more likely to get some bonus shroud drops from the missions along the way. The thing is that bonus shrouds really don't help at this point. Like, like Deceptisols are still fine because they just we can just use them on more current gatches, but like Fortisols and Aegisols really don't do that much for us at this point because, well, Fortisols, the problem is that we're going to start using Bravera and Faithra for everything, so Bravery and Faith aren't, like, having them active at the start of the fight doesn't even really help us. And even if we did want to use those buffs, the thing is that all of our characters kind of know most of their buffs by now. Um... So that the benefit of like having them from the start of the fight really isn't that great. All it does is save the time that it would take to cast them ourselves, which isn't that much. Like if I get a bonus Fortisol at this point, I just use it on Rare Sea, because like having haste is nice <laughs> from the beginning. It also means you can get to like uh, Vigilance faster, which is really nice to have. His light won't cast Vigilance until, like, you have all the other shit. Ooh, another 5-star. Oh, another so easy. String in peril. Yeah, it's it's really just if you get that uh, in peril in first string, then it's more or less guaranteed. Well, maybe not guaranteed. But... Now, you're going to you're gonna notice that even though we can take different paths through this, uh, she's going to take the exact same path for this up to the final uh, fight. Yeah. For the Just most part, it's faster. 
we always have to fight the Gurungach at the start. After that, we get a choice. But six out of seven times, we're going to make the same choice because this fight right here is so much easier than the alternative. Yeah, yeah. but you'll see the alternative on the sixth run through. <laughs> we have to do all of them at least once. Uh, you know, all missions need to be done, but... When we get a choice, we're going to take the easiest path every time. So, what's funny is I noticed I, I'd started playing around with using aggression in this fight on the non-preempt. Um, and I, I started getting, like, better times. But then, really? after a while, I, <laughs> I remembered that those guys are immune to magic damage. But Hope is somehow more useful just building chain on them than he is, like, doing anything else. Because, <laughs> like, he's useless as a synergist because he's just going to cast, like, Shell and Veil and shit, and they're going to... the Rafflesia are just going to... Doesn't he start using Endfire at some point? Eventually, but usually the fight's over by then because the Rafflesia dispel your shit, so they'll just... Hope will just cast Shell and Veil over and over and over. If you're lucky, you could get in fire pretty quickly, but like, you usually don't get it in time to like save a significant amount of time. Oh yeah, also having Hope in, in uh, Ravager does mean you get Ravage from Fang. That's a good point. Sorry, see ya. It's only for like the next hour or so. Yeah, most of Fault Warrens is pretty chill. We're going to be using this team Fang Light Hope for the vast majority of it. There are only two fights where we switch it up. Uh, we do lead Hope for a couple of the fights, but mostly it's Fang lead. See, so yeah, I like to kind of sum up why this team is so good. So Fang is just God for the rest of the run. Like, <laughs> there's not much explaining needing to be done there. Um, but then, like, uh, Lightning. So Lightning is just a very, like, well-rounded character. She has, like, she does pretty good damage. Like, she's not the best commando, but she's a, still a really good commando. Her Ravager is really fast. She has really good buffs and debuffs. Um, and her Sentinel is useful for one fight, so. But, uh... I'm trying to remember what that fight is. For Oh yeah, so um, yeah, and then Hope, like, as weird as it sounds, he's just useful mainly for his saboteur, which is usually a meme, but is like very good against large mobs. I mean, and this area just happens to have a lot of those. Yeah. Um. So like, I've thought about, I've definitely considered like other teams, but I just can't think of any other team that would offer more benefits than this. Like, this team does have some weaknesses, but I feel like any other team would have more weaknesses. And obviously you don't want to be switching out your team all the time. Yeah, exactly. So, like, this is just a team that's going to be, like, solid, if not the best. They're at least going to be pretty good for most fights. And it's like, that's kind of the most important thing. I've gotten four unique item drops from that fight twice in a row now. Not that that particularly matters, because they're not that terribly useful. Do I just kill these guys? I think I just kill these guys. They should die pretty quick. Could you use snow instead of light? Not really. No. Snow's and Saboteur are really bad compared to light. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Snow would... Okay, I could have played this better. I think it would have been worth it <laughs> if I had actually targeted the goblins. I thought, uh... I thought she would target those by default, but I was wrong. Um, yeah, like, I don't know, Snow just... I just feel like he doesn't have that much to offer in Full Warrens. Just because, like, I mean, yeah, he, he'd do good damage. Like, his Rav is good, but, like, that's all he'd be for, because we really don't need a Sentinel here. 
We really don't need a medic at all. Um, and yeah, his Synergist and Saboteur are completely outclassed by uh, Lightning, so... And right, so this is well. the second <laughs> fight. This is the second fight against the Tyrant. And uh, this one is it's kind of pretty funny. interesting. We just completely ignore the sword. <laughs> like, it's not worth Sad. our time. As Overlight, well, the thing with Saz is that he's only really good when he's your leader. Yeah, and like, that's Fang the thing. Kind of taken over that spot at this point. The thing is, like, like, we can only lead one of them, and we're gonna get more benefit from leading Fang than we would get from leading Saz. This is also one of the few fights where we kill with uh, for, with Ravager skills. Yeah, the reason for that is because if we have multiple commandos in the party, then uh, they're gonna they're not all gonna target, they're gonna target the target disaster. And the thing is, like, since we can hit an elemental weakness, we're not even doing that much less damage in uh, Fire Disaster because it's really not worth getting in spells for that fight. It's just too short. And I, I think we'd probably have to Libra or something, so... Well, maybe not, because I think Hope does... Uh, so I think Hope and Lightning do spam Thunder attacks, so I, I think they figure it out. Yeah, Saz is just very slow is the thing, so it's like... Like, yeah, Blitz is still really good even at this point, but like that's really all he has at this point. Because like his Synergist isn't really that critical anymore now that all the other characters have good buffs. And like cold blood is nice, but like not really that crucial either. Like high wind is generally a much more useful uh, full ATB ability at this stage. I wonder if you can send buffer army of one. You can. It's like not as good, but because <laughs> it's fewer hits in about the same time. Oh okay. In fact, I think it's probably slower. Okay, three out of three five stars. At this rate, you don't need to use the decepts at all. Well, Saz's Sab has more stuff than Light has, but the thing that the things that Saz has that Light doesn't really aren't that useful, mostly. Like Saz oh yeah, has... this is my favorite string in Fault Warrens. Oh my god. Deal with this. Another battle. 19, that's pretty good. Yeah, like aggression's so good for the non preempted. It's like so unintuitive. Yeah, like he has days, but he casts it pretty slow. <laughs> like if we need days, Fang or Snow are gonna do a much better job. Like, Slow and Curse are pretty useful, but, like, they're sometimes useful. They're usually not that important, though. And Pain and Fog are just useless, at least in speedrunning. Like, there's just no application of them in any category that I'm aware of. So we're actually going to take a different path here instead of going to fight all the goblin enemies. 
Uh, we're going, we are going to go to fight, fight the, the blobs. Pretty cool mission. So this is the last fight that we throw a Libroscope on for lore master data. It's, it gives us three unique enemies, which is pretty nice. Well, okay. <laughs> there is no application of us casting Pain and Fog. Let me clarify. Like, the thing is, the enemies where Pain and Fog would be useful are mostly just going to be immune to it. So it's like, they're kind of just meme, meme uh, status ailments. Like, I'm sure there's the occasional enemy that they're useful on, but... We're gonna lead hope for this fight to control and fire. Open. This fight is pretty great in all missions. In plot, we don't actually need to summon, so we just. We also kill it in a pretty, pretty cool way. Yeah. We just get in fire on um, Light and Fang, and we actually cast Bravery on Hope just because. Uh, just because the uh, corrosive custard, who is the main enemy we have to worry about, like like 90% resists physical. So even though Hope's magic stat is so much better than uh, than uh, his strength stat, like uh, uh, attacks are still better. Yeah, within fire, um, Fang and Light can clean up the other two pretty quickly. So on this one, I actually we're, we are going to use hope for the next fight, but um, it's actually I didn't I haven't actually timed this, but I'm like fairly positive that it's uh, it's worth it to swap them out because this is quite a bit of running, and we have to do a menu anyway. So um, okay, so haste. Hope doesn't matter. Yeah, the custard does quake us. That fight can get a little scary, actually. Um, usually it's okay, though. Uh, wait. Oh, I didn't get the last 30k note, did I? Oh, I was short two of them. Okay, I think that's fine. So now we're just going all in on Light Synergist. We aren't going to need her uh, haste for a while, but we still have a very long way to go to get to it. So we're just, we gotta start on it now. So we're just gonna stop leveling Saz after he gets his accessory here, because we want to keep his HP low for Atticus. Oh, hey, Log. Yeah, I'm here. I take it nobody's explained Sun Buffer and Cold Bloods yet. No, we. I was kind of no. kind of holding off to explain that once we. Uh... Yeah, we don't really need it until Atticus. That's the only place in this particular run it's useful, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is the only uh, fight in the run where Sun Buffer Cold Blood is actually useful. Uh, Y'all use it for Juggernaut in all missions, right? Yes. For At the, the one, Juggernaut. Yeah, that one. Obviously, you And we it. do. Also use send buffer to cold blood in fifty five, but that's not really yeah. the send buffer to cold blood. It's just to help snow survive. Yeah, that's just kind of a side effect. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna. Oh play. yeah, and rectavisia. A uh, single rectavisia also send buffers cold blood for double rectavisia only if you're doing maelstrom strat. If you're doing zonzig strat, then you're not gonna use send buffer cold blood. You're just gonna use strat <laughs> buffered blitzes. You yeah. can also sometimes send buffer cold bloods in any percent, usually on orphan one. Uh, oh yeah. Shit. Forgot to. What's up? Um. So I'm actually gonna drop out for at least a bit. Okay. Uh, 
Once again, shout outs to my mom. My food just got here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, nice. Five ones. What you gonna eat? The, uh, uh, Indonesian. Uh, so she he's did gone. most of the routing for this. So now that he's uh, gone, the current why don't we talk about the merits of Final Fantasy IX as a speed um, game? Yeah, I, I've done, uh, along with Pharaoh, who's on commentary with me, we did most of the work on the newer route, um, with some help from others, of course. But we kind of took this on as our own personal project. Uh oh. Uh. This is not good. He died? No. Don't worry, it's a hopely play. Oh, that was so close. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. That's fine, though. Well, you can still fight it out. Yeah. It's, it's really not that big of a time loss when it happens. It's just kind of a feels bad. Uh, no. There's a... Um... One sec. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's at least, there's one other that's ranked B. I think 48. Yeah, no, um... I've, I've like, tested that out in, uh, practice Sharky. It can, like, get kind of close to the threshold, but you... You're never actually gonna go over if you just stay in Cerberus and fight it out. Because the good news is Humbaba is still weak to fire when he stands up, so we're still doing pretty good damage. Oh yeah, we should have already reached the 100 powers for the marathon. Almost. Oh, it's frozen. In 99 hours. Oh, the timer? Yeah. 99 hours timer. of the marathon. 99 hours of the marathon. <laughs> Take one down. Pass it around. This is going to be another five Nine, star. 98 hours of marathon on the wall. Take one down. Pass it around. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going that far. And I'm too... The last two are guaranteed to five star because decept. So if I five star the next one, that's seven out of seven. With only two D-subs. Not that it matters, very, but... Well, very it, poor champion. I guess it matters because it means using, we're getting fast fights. We are using all of the luck we oh, yeah, that's right. get for weapons to instead get five stars on the ring edge. Yup. Okay, I'm gonna get Tiger Claw, Dragoon Lance, and uh. Malphas? Yeah. I like how we were just doing Blitz Blitz at the start of this fight, and then Wally was just like, so wins Blitz Blitz attack. Because <laughs> <that, laughs> usually after the two Blitzes, one Rafflesia survives with a little HP. I was like, huh. And then I tried just doing, um,. Auto battle on it, and it does blitz blitz attack. I was like, oh, neat. All right, so we're going to diverge a bit more on this fight. We're going to go fight a very annoying enemy. This is just Ochu. regular Ochu, not re not Neo Chu. So this one's not too scary, but it's still a pain in the ass because very high chain resistance. Um, has summons a lot of little buddies. Can do Fallen, which kind of sucks. Yeah. And I've seen him done Screech once, so that was fun. Yeah. I didn't like, die, it was just annoying. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty hard. Like, usually you're going to kill before that shows up, but if you're just getting, like, I don't know, if you get, like, really bad luck with Deep Protect or something, then sometimes it can still happen. Because I, I know I've seen it as well. It's like it's pretty rare. I hate that these guys just they act like they're trying to chase after you, but they suck at it. These enemies because of how goofy they look. Especially the ocean types. Yeah. I'm gonna go 
go ahead and throw a Libra scope to reveal um, fire weakness, which will uh, have their Ravagers doing. Oh, whoops. We'll have the Ravagers doing fire attacks as well as um, having Hope casting fire. Which Hope got launched, so in fire is. And of course, he's gonna veil first. Uh, hope. Gotta make sure everyone is protected first. Yeah. From those totally scary debuffs, like poison. Like, uh, see, uh, uh, this enemy is different die. than the one we fight with, um, with snow. Damn. It's the same type of enemy, but it's just a different enemy. Yeah, so it's, we fight uh, Ochus right, without right. snow. We fight the Neochus with snow. Yep. Those ones aren't too scary, so we don't need snow to tank. They're just annoying, <laughs> but not scary. Hope did almost die though. That would have been funny. If Hope died, I would have been sad. Yep. Feels bad now. Yeah, no, like, they're hardly comparable. <laughs> I think you're smart, Sia. Maybe not about the game, but just in general. So, when we were doing the routing, I found that we just had a couple of extra decepts lying around. And, like, this fight was the best use I could find of them, or for them. It still kind of sucks, though, because we don't have vigilance, so the Borg Bears can still interrupt you, and it could be a shitty fight. But, like, optimally, I'm pretty sure the decepts save, like, 20 seconds here, usually, if the fight goes well. And of course, there's just a lot more variability to the non brand fight. Oh my god, I hate these guys so much. Yeah, these guys are awful. Yeah. I mean, if Hope had died there, it would not have mattered, <laughs> really. Uh, where am I going? Zernitra. I mean, I guess I could have just done Rack instead. Uh, people dying too much of a bad thing. It depends on who dies. Like, sometimes yeah. when Hope dies, like, Lumal, who cares? Yeah. If your party leader dies, you will always lose time, and for everything else, it depends who dies, when he or she dies, and uh, what you are fighting against. Yeah. That's one good thing about 13-2, is that if your party leader dies, you just switch to the other party member. You can also switch freely leader. When will we have of... plat hope percent? Talk to Log. Yeah, it's my dog. Sometimes he barks. Doggo. Doggo. So we're going to use Hope Lead for this next fight, but I'm going to wait until the last possible second to menu, so to minimize the amount of running with Hope. I have a personal grudge against this fight, because mm. I'm pretty sure that's what robbed me from uh, sub-10 in uh, Hope Missions World Record. The strat is more consistent now, but it's just. Gonna put it I'm here. very pissed. So yeah, this is uh, the one fight where we actually have lightning tank. Um. 
god days, that's very cool. Very cool and funny. Lightning might die. Oh, never mind. She was fucking badass. Can we get some? Yeah, so Elude. So Lightning is a pretty unique sin uh, sentinel in the way that she actually tanks. She's not. She doesn't tank attacks per se. She dodges them. She's. I think the only Sen that actually do, uh, does that. Oh, as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah she's is basically like mini white sun. But he has shit like Entrench and Vendetta, so his AI is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas so... White doesn't have any of that shit. Yeah, uh, a big part of the old Attica strat was just using Lightning as your Sen, and it worked because Elude only works for physical attacks and it doesn't really work 100% of the time. I don't yeah. know what's it the percentage. It increases it your evasion rate by 50%. It, it, yeah. So, what started happening was when I got to Attica's and I tried the strat with um, the development with the lower blood fight was that lightning started dying. She died like four times in a single fight and I was like, nope, this does not work. We need snow here. Yeah, it's like, it's a cool, like it's a cool idea. Um, there, we just never need it. Like, Snow Sentinel is just too good. Like, there are just no situations where it's not gonna get the job done when we need a good Sentinel. Yeah, Lightning works for the Zirnitra fight because it doesn't hit nearly yeah. as hard as Atticus, but yeah. uh, for Atticus we just need to use Snow. And, like, Snow would be perfectly fine for that fight too, it's just we already have Lightning in our party, so it's like, might as well just use Light. What Log just said is 100% true. Uh oh, I think. When have I, really I ever that? been known to speak in lies? Uh, well, your oh, name no. was Hope Good for a while. It still is. Oh, okay, so th then right now would be a time that you've been known to do that. Alright, let me uh, amend that statement. Mm. Hope Good, but only in Crystarium Stage 9. Okay. Rip the five this star. This not gonna be a five star. Nope. Feels bad, man. So close. And you are going to see a lot of the goofy sprout thing in uh, Kanri J's run, which is gonna be towards the end of the marathon. He's going to do 160 fragments, and Chi Chu is pivotal. Oh my god, any... look at this shit. They're just giving me nothing. <laughs> yeah, like, those uh, two in the front so. had every approach angle covered. There's just nothing I could do. Oh, and I don't even have aggression. I don't set it up. On this, uh... I think the monsters of choice for 160F are Chi Chu and Cloud Burst. Just like I planned. Okay, Serb is fine too, I guess. It barely lost any time.
Yep, we have to fight th this asshole one more time. Yeah. I've honestly wondered if for Activesia it's just better to go through double aim moms so you can do Vertilettes instead of uh. But you need to go through double aim moms. Yeah. I feel like. I mean, it's not that bad in this game. Yeah, exactly. Like I it's feel a like. It's a it's a non-issue in all missions. You just do not want to fight. Them. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know, I feel like... Like, this strat is kinda consistent, so... Yeah, I mean, the strat that I use for double aim moms does require a decept, but... Oh, okay. We could definitely, like... We could get one, like... Oh my god... Uh, I hate this fight so much... <laughs> it's awful... Uh, Elus, the marathon has been running for just a little over 100 hours, but uh, yeah, the timer stopped a while ago. Because it cannot go above 100, uh, it cannot get the uh, 3 numbers or anything. <laughs> That's big brain. <laughs> Actually, massive brain. Okay, which flavor of Nutrigrain bar should I eat next? What flavors do you have? Raspberry, mixed berry, strawberry, blueberry, and apple cinnamon. Raspberry or strawberry? Okay, well, I already had a raspberry earlier this round, so I'll do a strawberry. They also have cherry flavor, but you know. I, I just couldn't do it. This wasn't for me. Like, I like all the other flavors of Nutri-Grain bars except for cherry. Chat agrees with me. Well, I want to mix it up because I already had a raspberry, so I'll just use strawberry. But yes, ra raspberry is a very high tier. So we do this fun fight again. Yep. Thankfully, it's the last time we did this fight. Yup. Yeah, so please cast Protect on everybody. Really make me proud. Sharky, what do you mean, Apple? Huh? Sharky says apple. Yeah, apple cinnamon. One of the yeah, but what does he mean, apple, when you have raspberry and strawberry and other good flavors available? I mean, because apple cinnamon and fucking slaps? I don't know what you're talking about. I might just eat an apple cinnamon to spite you now. Dang. Yeah, I mean, I, so I just can't tolerate this, this apple cinnamon. This fight is actually kind of cool. For both uh, this category and uh, the one and yeah. all missions. Yeah, so this is kind of a unique enemy. Um, do you, you, do you want to explain it, Pharaoh, while I do the mission? <laughs> or while I do the menu? Uh, uh, sure. So, at the start of the fight, he's going to use Inertial Barrier. It's the same thing that Vitala does. It uh, makes him immune to all sorts of damage. The only thing you can do is, sta is chain and then stagger it to dispel that barrier. While he has the barrier going, actually he will only use multicast, but multicast can be a lot of different things depending on how the fight is going and what he's can the if he has or doesn't have the barrier. While he has the barrier, multicast can either be um, a string of ruins, a string of arrows, or a string of uh, AoE spells on uh, anyone. Uh, after the barrier goes down, his first multicast will be Dispelga, which removes all of his debuffs and all of your buffs. We do not want that to happen. 
so in this category we're actually strong enough to face tank almost everything he throws at us provided we actually knew during his uh, or after during uh, his sorry uh, multi casts so we are just going to slow him oh, and so throw in peril and throw in peril so we can uh, chain a little faster on him because chain resistance is actually pretty high as well I made a uh, lightning the Ravager in my assassination paradigm is so... Whoops. Is that a problem? No, not really. It just means... It just took an extra little bit to get uh, in peril as well. Not a big deal. Oh. Yes. So okay. we're... Uh... Um, after... So once he is close to stagger, we are actually going to time our attack stream so he... We can... Um, Interrupt him as soon as he staggers, and we are going to carry that into the second paradigm that we need to kill him. And this is only to stop him from using the spell though, because that makes it quite slow and potentially dangerous if we can't kill him in one stagger. Yep. Yeah, Ruthless is kind of like, kind of a niche paradigm for the most part, but it's like perfect for that one scenario. Um, because you have Hope as Ravager who who staggers. Um, then as soon as stagger happens, Light starts casting Deep Protect. The reason being that he is immune to Deep Protect before uh, stagger, but then not immune after. So Hope staggers, then Light will start casting Deep Protect immediately, and then you start your string with Fang to start the interruption, and then on the on the fifth attack on the split spear animation, you shift and um, Lightning and Hope will both have, uh, should have full ATB. Um. To, uh, go ahead and continue the interruption. Yeah, the rule for the all missions fight is pretty similar. The chaining is the only thing that changes. We don't have slow, but that's not a big deal. We just yeah. use send buffer cold blood to stagger him faster. Slow is just kind of a... send buffer cold blood doesn't care about the chain resistance, so it's actually staggered him pretty quickly. And then we just keep him interrupting the same way while the Neil uh disinfects. Didn't even break a sweat. Poor Hope, wait, why are we saying poor Hope? Hope is being useful. Also, this fight is awful. Yeah, it's alright in this category. Yeah, it's alright in this category. Um, it's still awful. It will always be awful in my heart. Yeah. We gotta give uh, Petratic Tiaras to Bang and Lightning, because uh, the strat depends on that. <laughs> Because they need to have Vigilance um, at the start of the fight to interrupt the breath attack that these enemies do, which is very bad. <laughs> like, uh, gives us a bunch of debuffs that are really not good. Yeah, the Cursed Breath can uh, inflict pain and uh, fog, and it will inflict pain on your physical attackers and fog on your magic attackers, because that's how the game works. Mm -hmm. It will always give you the worst debuffs at the worst possible time. Yeah, when I got here, when I was trying out the minimal plot strat, I got to this fight and the notes had a little sentence above this that said, this strat sucks, find a better one. <laughs> I was incapable of doing that, uh -huh. but the old strat did suck. And then Serena came here and uh, she came up with a pretty good solution to it. Yeah, I think the strat works pretty well. It's not like, it's not like super consistent just because of the deep protect infliction. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Just getting started. Yeah, you kind of want deep protect, but it doesn't matter that much because even without it, Fang still hits for like 85k. 
And she doesn't have a Genji yeah. glove, so <laughs> deep protect and doesn't As do long as they are staggered, they're actually pretty squishy. The problem is yeah. stagger runs out. They don't have deep protect. They yeah. will start spamming Storm Conductor, and that uh, heals them for more damage than you can deal with them. Storm Conduction is honestly fun. one of the most bullshit moves in the game. <laughs> like, it's so dumb. The next fight is just going to be another Virgilay fight for the mob. Pretty fast, pretty easy. Yeah, those ones summon a Juggernaut if they get a chance to get the summon off. Fog. Yep. So this is my favorite menu, because we change Ruthless to a different Ruthless. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know that I really like this strat. I just haven't really tried to update it <laughs> at all. So I'm just gonna go with it. It's still a cool strat. Oh yeah, yes, so it's the menu where you change Ruthless to less Ruth. No? Sorry, I had food in my mouth or I would've laughed. Um, so, the, the, we are going to fight three Tonberries. And first? the fight is made trivial by using a decept because it, the Tonberry stagger point is 777 percent. 600? Yeah, because uh, oh, okay. Gigantor okay. is 777. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's 666, so it's um, pretty high once you stagger them and you deal a lot of damage. It's also utterly ridiculous that we can even stagger these guys. <laughs> Yeah, their chain resistance is insanely high. Well, I just mean in terms of like, like these are supposed to be like supernatural, like, <laughs> like it's just so ridiculous to me that we can sneak up on a Donberry. <laughs> They're like supposed to be these fucking mystical like gurus. Like I feel like they should sense the pre presence. Oh yeah, if this fight was swapped, imagined by the Humbaba or the uh, Verdelays, it would act it would probably actually be a good challenging fight, but with the Decept it's just way yeah. too easy. What exactly am I doing here? Uh, I'm doing some missions. There are 17 missions in this area, we need to complete all of them. So this is one of my favorite fights. Um, it is kind of BS though, because uh, to get a good time, we're gonna equip the random instant chain ability again, um, but we're not gonna like wait on it. Uh, like if it doesn't, yeah, we are to. we are strong enough now that we can actually tank Screech. Yeah. Um, this guy starts on his own, so the Pikachu's there will be no Pikachu's for him to use bravery on. And once the stagger, the chain gauge is high enough, we can actually just auto him to death. Yeah. Uh, Rooster, yes. Um, Idolons, that's it. They can be staggered in random. Yeah, you can stagger Atticus. If you open the Libra menu, it says that it, he doesn't have a stagger point, but he staggers at 999. And like, I don't know if it's realistic to stagger like sky tank turrets. Like, I don't know if there's any way to actually pull that off. But I'm, I would assume that they do stagger at uh, 999 if you can get there. Same with uh, Bart's face during Head's phase. But we don't have sin buffered cold blood for those. So yeah, good luck. Yes, Atticus yes. does actually stagger. 
Those aren't enemies, they're from... Okay, in that case, I'm pretty sure every enemy can stagger, yes. But there are some that are basically impossible to confirm unless, like, we can cheat. Uh-oh. -uh. Yeah, so I love this fight because, um... <laughs> If the RIC doesn't trigger, then uh, what happens is um, he will 100% use seed dispersal once he gets below uh, half HP. Yep. Yeah, um, so then we have a bunch of the little guys to take care of, but they're kind of funny because they're uh, they're weak to earth damage, which usually is a meaningless weakness. But in this one case, we can actually abuse that because um, Fang can Faith Throw herself, which increases her magic damage by um, 80%, uh, and combine that with, they also have very low chain resistance, so we're able to build a lot of chain on them very quickly with uh, Thundaras. So we just cast a Quake for chain duration, um, spam some Thundaras, then just do some additional quakes for damage, and usually that's gonna kill. It's like a crazy strat. <laughs> But we do also equip random instant chain on all of our characters because if we can get it to go off, we can save multiple minutes, so. Hard to justify not equipping it, even though the alternative is hella swag. Notice how Snow is using entrench and therefore sucks. Oh, well, all right. Well, I guess we don't get to see the quake. <laughs> Oh, that was really fast. Yeah. This is probably going to be like a sub 2. Yeah, that's, that's just marathon lock. I could have high winded earlier than that. Um, did those attacks miss? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, I'm salty. Keep this parcel, we are still going to see them. I think we need, we need to change. Yeah, probably a bit. Uh, I kinda wanna. Uh, screech. Bad, 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 bad. Is this a retry? Uh, quite possibly. Oh, Snow's dead. Yeah, I'm retrying. <laughs> uh, I thought... I guess High Wind's not safe to go for. I... Like, it just missed a hit. Like, I was well under the HP threshold where it would have worked. <laughs> oh well, that's fine. <laughs> Back off. Honestly, it did kind of feel like cheating. Getting RIC that quickly. Yeah, I've only recently started using High Wind there, so I kind of set myself up for that because it's really not a well tested strat. I just thought it was safe based on my preliminary testing. to keep him in the Ravager as much as possible, so he sh sh shifts between his tower and the Tri Disaster Arches to try and get that going while still having him tank all of Nisha's attacks. 
Yup. So here's the one time in the run we're going to use Dispelga, which uh, dispels all buffs and debuffs. Um, Kinda important. Yeah, on uh. Because that's a lot of debuffs. Yeah, it, it dispels all debuffs and buffs on both allies and enemies. Um, so you know, it's obviously not just a free cure all, but in that case, the only thing we're losing is. Um, the only thing we're losing is the Imperil on, uh, oh my god, the Imperil on Neochu, which we can get back to quickly. Alright, yeah, we're gonna have to do Quakes this time, I think. Uh, wait, was that for, uh, yeah, it was, oh no. Nope. Now we're in Steel Guard, or we can trench, because snow is bad. Mark, mark, mark. Oh, okay, uh, this could be bad though, because Screech is- oh wait, we can interrupt Screech. Okay, well I guess I'm just not gonna high wind this time. <laughs> no, fuck, see the dispersal's going off. Okay, we're good. Yeah, sometimes Fang jumps instead of launching, it's very- uh, okay. Oh, you got the stagger again. Oh my god! Bang, you have one job. Okay, cool. Well, I guess we're gonna see the quakes anyway. <sighs> oh my god. Okay, that's just annoying. Okay, probably. Hang out with Solid Guardian. Until Snow gets his shit, it's challenges all of these. Yeah, well, I guess we get to see the cool Quake Strat anyway. I'm still mad about this in principle, though. So all of these sequences are actually gonna die pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see how quickly these Thundaras build chain on these guys. They have 4% chain resistance. Oh, sick. I R.I.C. to Pico. <laughs> As per usual for this run, also high on that. Okay, did you see these fights once? <laughs> they were not really entirely. I was busy cleaning up my food. Fair. Yeah, so the first fight, I got a nearly instant RIC. Then uh, Fang missed a hit of high wind, so that was a retry. Ah. Uh, yeah, just didn't kill. Very cool. Um, and then this fight, I got RIC again, but then Fang just couldn't stop jumping for her attacks, so I didn't keep launch, or didn't maintain so, the launch, so two seed dispersals went off. The second one went off when there was no visible green on the uh, Neochu's HP bar as well. <laughs> Yikes. Yep, it was really cool. I'm going to use the chance to go out for a bit, but I'll be back soon. Okay. RIC okay. is a random instant chain. It's a really dumb ability that when you have it equipped, um, every move that that character does that increases chain in any way has a 0.5% chance to uh, just instantly stagger, or instantly increase the enemy to, or the stagger gauge to right below the stagger point, which yeah. in essence means instant stagger. And that was the last time you'll see it in this run. Yeah. Thank god. Uh, we really only go for it in the O2 fights. Yeah, and even there we don't rely on it. It's just kind of there and like... Well, we don't rely on it for the second one. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I meant. Uh, what am I looking for? Or, uh... Yep. Yeah. Continuing my streak of no weapons. Because uh, yeah, that was the last one where she could have gotten one of the expensive weapon drops. Yeah. Oh well. Um, uh, 
that. And again, most of your runs have also gotten pretty good luck on guild drops otherwise. Yeah, so, so it's fine. Uh, you could. It wouldn't save enough time to be worth it. Like, like we'd have to unequip some really, like, the only option to really have uh, RIC for Vladislaus would be to take the sprint shoes off of Snow, and like, I tried that a bit, and like, most of the time, it felt like I was losing a second or two because of it, and like, the occasional RIC that you may not get a single one in the whole Vlad farm, it's like, it's more than likely not going to make up for that. Because like even if it even if it does go off, it's like it's still probably not even saving that much unless it happens at like the very beginning of the fight. Wouldn't you only get it off of the protect anyway? No, it would be snow. Um, snow would be the only one who can equip. Well, no, I guess we could on Fang as well, but we'd have to take the sprint keys off of her for that. Like, does does Calm even increase uh, the chain at all? I believe so. I guess on Vlad, Vlad, Vlad might... Yeah, Vlad has like 95% uh, <laughs> chain resistance or something, so... I think Calm does still slowly build chain. But yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Either way, I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> mm. What's weird is I stepped out to make lunch during the Rafflesia fight, and I came back, and you're on the Rafflesia fight. Yeah. It's almost like we fight it six times. Groundhog Day! Yeah, I got shit on by Neoshi. That was fun. It's been a while since I've seen that movie, but I guess we're on the final loop now where he reaches enlightenment. Phil? Phil Connor? Yeah, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen that movie, so... <laughs> Going way over my head. And I was just getting started. Poor Vertilets didn't get to summon Mushu soon. Good. <laughs> so we get to do this fun fight one more time. Yeah, so uh, I guess that now would be a good time to explain Sin Buffered Cold Blood. Um, oh, I thought you were going to say now's a good time to read donations. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we haven't talked too much about conditional modifiers, but conditional modifiers are modifiers to chain um, that, like, as the name implies, they, uh, they occur when certain conditions are met. There's, like, a ton of them, like, I don't think anybody even knows all of them, but um, there is Bond accepted. yeah there <laughs> uh, there is one very um, <laughs> significant one in the Sentinel role, which um, the conditions for it to uh, the conditions for it to activate are um, you have to use a physical attack and you have to. Um, well, depending on where your HP is at, it, that uh, the exact uh, modifier that you get varies. So if you're in red HP, which means below 30%, and you're using a physical attack in the Sentinel roll, then the, uh, the conditional modifier for that is 2%. Now, the thing about conditional modifiers is that they completely bypass chain resistance and are the only modifiers that do so. This is very important on Atticus, because um, Atticus has 100% chain resistance, which means all of the chain that we build on him is through conditional modifiers. Now, the way that we use this... Whoops. The way we use this to our advantage is um, we're going to bring Saz back in for the last fight that he's going to be used for, and uh, we are going to use his cold blood, which is going to do, you know, 17 bullets, as we've seen. Um, and then we're, as soon as the cold blood starts, we're going to shift to a sentinel paradigm, and 
of what that effectively, or what we call that, is Sentinel Buffered Cold Blood, which means um, he'll be doing 17 bullets and everyone is going to increase chain by like 2%. So that's 34% per uh, Cold Blood, which doesn't sound like that much, but for an enemy with 100% chain resistance, that's like nothing else can even compare for building chain. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to remember one. This guy has uh, eight million HP. Oh, like nine think? million. Nine million. Yep. Uh, and the the old strat it's was over to basically nine million. The old strat was to basically sit there chaining for like five minutes. Yeah. Now compare that to this strat, which can literally get sub four minute battle times. <laughs> so that kind of like gives you an idea of. Uh, of like how big of a difference that chaining method is. We're also going to use Fang's medic for this uh, for this fight, which is kind of a meme, but um, I kind of like it just because it usually lets me save a renew, which is helpful later. It's not like super necessary. It's just kind of a why not kind of thing. It, it's kind of funny because Atticus looks like a very like glass cannon kind of boss but he's actually ridiculously defensive yeah he's well he's the third he has the third highest hp in the game i believe only behind yeah. Mercy and, and, and and he halves physical attacks and it only uh, takes 10 percent from magicals so it's yeah kind for of ridiculous. sure And has extremely high chain resist. Yes. That said. We're also going to see the Saz, the legendary Saz headbang on this fight, which it's pretty self-explanatory, but <laughs> you'll see it soon enough. Oh, we're also um, this is kind of a funny thing. We are equipping uh. Two iron bangles on Fang, which um, where is the growth egg? Oh, I need to go do the upgrade actually. Um, but yeah, which seems kind of silly because an iron bangle on its own does nothing but increase your max HP by 100, which is like nothing. 50. Oh yeah, no, you're right. Is you're right. <laughs> yeah. So um, those two combined are only going to increase. Oh, oops, I need to. No, I need to upgrade. Driven. Um, so yeah, so those two combined only add 100 HP on uh, on Fang. But what they do is they synthesize an ability, which synthesize just means um, if you have multiple uh, if you have multiple pieces of equipment that have that synthesis ability, then that will activate the ability. Um, it's the same way RIC works. Yeah. So it, it's a synthesis ability called High HP Power Surge, and what that means is as long as Fang is above 90% HP, all of her damage is increased by 20%, which at Fang's current stats is a greater increase in damage than um, two Power Gloves, which would be the alternative. Although we actually don't even have that many power gloves to equip, so we would have to take some things off Saz as well. So it actually works out pretty well because um, those kind of substitute for strength accessories and are actually better than them in this case. So the start of this fight is just Saz uh, provoking thanks. with his wonderful provoke animation. Yeah, so goes, that uh, is uh, an unfortunate risk of this strat. Um, Kind of sucks, but it's a quick death at least. The thing is that as soon as um, Saz gets hit down to red HP, we switch immediately to a uh, paradigm with Snow Sentinel, and then Snow Sentinel or Snow needs to land challenge before Atticus kills us. Yeah, this is the only fight with the Saz headbang in all of it. FF13 speedrunning that I'm aware of. Uh, Saz, can you land challenge, maybe? Yeah, and this, again, is specifically to get down into red HP because that increases the conditional modifier for, um, for the send buffer cold blood. Yep. You actually get a 
fairly high one for being at max HP as well. Uh, it's, but it's, it's nowhere uh, near as good. It's one percent. Yeah, and then for yellow HP is, is one point five. 5. Yeah. And if we're green HP but not max, it's point five. <laughs> Yeah. Also, Fang landed D protect, so that's gonna save a big chunk of time because during this whole chaining phase, she's gonna be doing way more damage than she would without it. Which, granted, chain's not that high yet, but like, still, like, as long as the chaining phase is, Fang still puts in a pretty good amount of work even at these lower chain values. Yeah, so this thing has like incredibly high pain resistance and Saz is raising it up all by himself, basically. Yeah. This is like significantly faster chaining than you could do through any like intended means on this enemy. Also, Saz gets stuck in the same one-liner, it's hilarious. On these fireworks. Um, yeah, uh, they do the same strat in all missions, but um, they don't, they can't use Vanille because she, or they can't use Fang because she's not developed, so they have to use Vanille instead. So obviously, it's Fang is considerably worse. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, fireworks. Fang is much better. <laughs> Bang is already taken like a quarter off his HP. So. Yeah, like it's ridiculous. Okay, this will be the last one. Then I'm gonna head to protection. Um, Fang actually can't get me to green HP with a single string of cures, so I'm gonna throw one renew. <laughs> um, and then, um, so the reason that I have to heal to green HP is for the ability adrenaline. Um, which, when you're in green HP, adrenaline increases all of my whoops. Adrenaline increases all of your damage by, um... Oh, no, 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 no. No way. Wait, what? Uh, I'm dead. Oh, your offensive screen is... Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, that's a mistake. No way. So you're supposed to set up a paradigm with a sentinel and two commandos, but the sentinel is supposed to be snow uh, and not sass. That's so bad. Oh my that god, that's embarrassing. Very... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sad. Uh... Yeah, that, that move he was charging up to do was 100% gonna kill me, so I just retried to cut my losses. Oh, I Maybe lost haste. Summoned or something? Oh yeah, true. Uh, I don't know. The fight was gonna be so slow after that, regardless. On these fireworks. So Saz lost haste, but it's kind of hard to get it back because our only synergist paradigm it also has Fang fireworks. Medic, and it's kind of hard to time it so she doesn't heal me out of red HP. Um. But we're getting ATB refreshes on most of these, so I don't even think it matters that much. Then we'll get it back, uh, obviously, before going into the damage phase. All right, I do have the correct offensive screen this one. Okay, I double checked. Well, I can say I've never done that before. First time for everything. Oh yeah, I also would not have had TP for summon. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I would have done if I could have survived there is I would have just, uh... I would have just kept cold, spamming cold blood and just Fang would have to do all the damage. Because then I wouldn't have a paradigm with both, uh, commandos. Uh, I cannot believe I did that. 
I mean, it is pretty far into the run, so I guess it's kind of understandable. <laughs> yeah, as, as, as far as, like, paradigm menu mistakes go, that's probably one of the worst ones you could make. Like, yeah. on one of the longest fights, and one that only becomes apparent, like, yeah. really far into the fight. <sighs> oh well. <laughs> At least I'll know to double check that next time. Whatever, this run wasn't gonna world record anyway. It's like, it, world record's pretty dead. I'm like half an hour behind PB. And PB had like a really good end game, so aside from just doing. It did have a lot of long weeds, but like that's the only time save in late game. Okay, well this spacing's pretty juicy at least. Hopefully it stays like this. The one thing I need to watch out for is when uh, Provoke wears off. I need to immediately shift to another Paradigm with Snow Sentinel uh, to make sure that Snow is able to re-challenge before uh, Atticus chooses his target for his Meditate attack. Okay. Oh, well, he already got it. Good shit, Snow. Didn't even have to shift. Well, the spacing is less juicy now, but... That's okay. Yeah, it's just crazy that you can visibly see the HP bar go down like every one of Fang's attacks. <laughs> she does so much damage. Yo, 359 though. After two deaths. <laughs> nice. Alright, so that's the end of Fault Warrens. Yeah. So uh, we get the kind of... Uh, <clears throat> disturbingly named Natural Selector trophy for completing those <laughs> by basically eliminating a number of endangered species. Yeah, this basically least... moves us uh, into the next phase of the run, uh, which yeah. is mission cleanup and toys farming. Yeah, so basically we're going to be... Uh, ma ma this is mainly focused on fighting the turtles, um, who are going to be our best source of gill at this point in the run. Uh, and they also have a small chance to drop a trapezohedron, which we're going to need three of. So if we're lucky, we'll get all three from these guys, but if not, there's an enemy that has a much higher chance to drop them later, but is a lot slower to farm, so... Um, but yeah, as we're going through and doing the turtles, like, we're kind of just gonna do, like, convenient missions that are along the way yeah it, it, it works out nicely that um when we go through a bunch of these turtles we end up near a spot that actually has a bunch of uh mission stones right next yeah. to it um uh. so and that that normally takes like a little bit to travel to so it, it actually works out really nicely in this category where after every toys loop, we can just activate one of those. Yeah. Okay, so Fang, Genji, Growl. This brand shoes and power glove is good. Snow needs. Growl. This brand shoes. Uh, your collector. I guess. Lightning just needs her TR. No, she needs growth. Egg. All right, I haven't said anything in a million years, so I'm gonna leave in case anybody else who actually wants to comment. Oh, okay. Oh in. no, I got, I got like. I haven't said anything in a million years, so I'm okay, just gonna sit I'm... here more. I don't Dang. know if y'all saw what just happened. Must like, be good to be you. I got stuck in like a. Uh... We kind of talked about that earlier. How sometimes changing teams mid jump can really screw with the game and you get like stuck trying to jump to the same spot. 
But you can fix it just by going in and swapping party members and swapping back. Um, yeah, there's still probably... Uh, I mean, there's probably closer to six hours left. Cause like, hey, I'm, I can do an any percent run in that time. True. Because um, I'm, uh, I'm like half an hour behind world record, which is 16, 16, 24. I have faith. How many math degrees do we have in the... Com yeah, at least 54. Yeah. Uh, s on the uh, comment about Saz's HP, we do intentionally keep his, H his HP low for that fight. Um, uh, because it... Um, allows for us to chain faster because of a conditional modifier that depends on red HP. Uh, is this Fang Vanil Snow Time? Almost. Two more missions before then, and then it's Fang Vanil Snow Time. No, the correct answer is, no, this is Patrick. True. Come on, BFBB runner. Yeah. Okay, oh. what did I miss? Uh, Atticus was bad, Neochu was bad. I'm Tanyochu. Oh, yeah, okay, she Atticus was bad. She accidentally made an offensive screen paradigm with Saz as the Sentinel. Yeah. Oh, joy. And, uh, yeah. as you might guess, I didn't notice until I went to offensive screen, you know, like, two and, and, and a half minutes into the run. Oh, yeah. hey, Tira. The good news is when I finally did kill Atticus, it was a 359, so that was pretty hot. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good time. But yeah. <laughs> it was technically <laughs> two deaths, because the first one I died to uh, Snowden re-challenge in time, but that's a quick death and not really my fault, so I don't really care. Well, I got here just in time because this is a full fight too. High window P. Yeah, this this is a uh, significantly easier than the last time we had to fight this big boy with uh, the lightning summon. Yeah, this is the baby turtle version again, uh, and at this point. Uh, there's a fun strat we can do where we daze it. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't have adrenaline there. Uh, this is probably pretty quick to kill with the surf there, right? Uh, I'm kind of nervous about the five star, actually. <laughs> I'm retrying that. I don't Oh, yeah, the five star. I know I've failed that five star in practice for all missions before, so I'm not sure how tight mm. it would be. But note to self, get adrenaline first. I didn't know if it actually was needed. But I don't think I've ever not had it. Yeah, it's... Not five-starring a fight in this category is really annoying because it yeah. means you have to go all the way back to the mission stone to reactivate it and do the mission again, so... Yeah, this just is a very being safe here. This is very quick, happy. Yeah. Oh, I lied earlier. We actually use Light Probably Medic for three fights. <laughs> but we only use it for that fight because, uh... If, we don't want her we don't to... Because we don't want her to get rid of days. Yeah. yeah, Fang... Fang is just, like... So, her... Uh, magic stat... Or her strength stat at max development is 2,000. Or just her raw strength. And to put that into perspective, the second highest is Lightning at 1,700. How much strength does Fang have right now? Good question. Uh, like 2,500-ish? I'm not sure. Enough. Wait, that was 56. Okay. It's a positive number. Positive integer, even. Yeah, big, large number. I think I'm pretty sure it's less than Plank's constant. Uh, debatable. So yeah, that that right there is uh, the Seathstone Circle that has a bunch of uh, high level missions, which ranging from low level them, to high level. <laughs> yeah, some of them are like really easy, 
even though like number wise these are numbers 56 yeah. through 62 so you'd think they'd be yeah. pretty hard but a couple of them are really easy yeah yeah i mean like they they kind of increase in difficulty as you go up like 56 and 57 are completely trivial then like 58 is mostly trivial just because we decept it uh 59 is a zernitro which is a little trickier than 60 is three jello titans then uh 61 and 62 are a good bit harder although juggernaut 61 is a juggernaut yeah a juggernaut is juggernaut not, not even that hard at this point no yeah i was i was about to say it like i would yeah. consider it like kind of a higher level enemy but yeah at the point we fight it it's fine although that is one well actually no mission 29 is the one where you got to look out for the five star if um if you don't get the preemptive strike mm. but um 61 you just have to go for the preemptive strike like you're too strong at that point the risk of failing the five star is way too high but i i just i just go for the preempt on 29 anyway i don't trust it <laughs> like you have to get under it uh, a minute to five star that juggernaut and um a good like a good non preempt fight is still going to be like over 50, so you really don't have a lot of room for error. And if you get bad debuffs, it may not even be possible sometimes. Now, for a lot of these remaining missions, the routing is kind of designed to try to chain stuff together as much as possible. Like, yeah. after finishing one mission, try to pick up another stone that's near it. This one's really annoying because not only is it a very trivial mission, but also it connects it's to out like, of the nothing. way. Yeah, we've already done everything else in this area, pretty much. Yeah. Except for Versi, yeah. Yeah. And Versi has a teleport stone yeah. almost directly True. to it, so... This one is just really out of the way and inconvenient. Yeah. And it's like, it's not even a hard mission. Like, we go all this way just to do a mission that, like... Like, come on, game. Slap you could some just... Slap like, some munchkins and then leave. It's like, come on, game. You could just assume we're gonna five star this fight. Why do we actually have to do it? So um, Zernitra's. Wait, what? To some degree. Sorry. Whether we talked about toys loops, but we'll talk more yeah, about yeah, it yeah, when, we, uh, when we get into it. I guess. Forgot to change my default. Left this guy with spear. Remember when this guy was hard back in chapter 11? No. That's good. Um, yeah, so I guess we can go ahead and talk about toy sloops. So, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of these fights, so we can explain kind of how it works as we're doing them, but. Basically, on the step, there are five big turtles who are kind of conveniently placed in a line, and we kind of just run through all of them one at a time, and we call that a toy sloop. Um, now, these toises, they give pretty pretty good CP. It's 80,000 with the growth egg for each one, so it's 400,000 in a loop. Um, so it's like it's not like as good as Vladislaus or Shaolongs, but it's like it's up there. Like it might be the third best CP grind. I'm not sure. But um, the main thing is it's the best uh, gill farm that we have uh, from this point till the end of the run. So that's the main thing we're going to be doing. Um, we basically they have a they have a 5.5% chance to drop trapezohedrons, which is nice. But then if that fails, there's a 37.5% chance to drop uh, platinum ingot, which sells for 150,000, and is going to be our main source of gill from this point to the end of the run. Yeah, so the way the Toys Loops are routed, um, when I got here on uh, my on my practice run after the minimal blood farming, when I got here, I had enough TP for a summon, so I just went and did that. And the first fight you do is against another man Toys, which is the stronger enemy. So <clears throat> afterwards, you fight three Elemental Toys, which are the weaker type of turtles 
and those fights yeah. are fine. But the last tortoise fight, you must summon on it because there's more enemies to it, and no one actually really tried the fight without summoning. But uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I think I've good. tried it. It's just not worth like, like you have to like. I I don't know if the paradigm deck we have can really do it because like we need. It's just not worth it. We so need more we healing. Need to summon. If we're gonna so do we that. always need to summon on that turtle, and uh, the last turtle in the loop is another Adamantois, which is the stronger one. And when I got to that fight, Snow just died, and I was super confused. Uh -huh. But um, <laughs> uh, because of the four previous fights you do, you have enough CP, you have just enough CP to give him just enough HP to survive the Adamantois. This is only important for the first loop. For all of the others, he will be yeah. okay. Yep. And so we're going to be coming back to activate mission 63. Um, most likely for all of these toy sloops. Um, yeah, we need to activate 63. The repeat reward for it is a gold nugget. So which... not only it gives us a chance of yeah. um, Trapezohedron and Platinum Ingot, it will always give us a nugget. Yeah. So it's always worth coming like, here to this grab is, it. This is the best repeatable source of guaranteed gill uh, by far. <laughs> like like anything else that could be faster gill than those gold, the gold nugget you get from this enemy is going to depend on random drops. So... Um, it is kind of a big detour to come activate this every time, but like it's it's it yields better gill per second on average, so like we generally say it's worth it. Um, but you know. Clock question: yes. What are the five hardest missions in the in this category? Uh, I'll have to think about that. I have a big menu coming up, so I'll think about that after that. <laughs> okay, let me. Try and throw some stuff in the air and see if you agree with me. Uh, yeah. Mercy. Yeah, I mean. Um, Tweetus. Don't maybe. Yeah. Uh, um, well. Yeah. Kinda. You gotta be careful. I mean, with I'm Petutas, leaning sure. more towards the early missions because the late missions are kind of trivial. Yeah. Do we for the count most part. Neo two. Uh, yeah. Uh, Fifty five. Yeah. 55. Uh, I guess Fault Warden's Neo 2 as well because it's a cool strat, but it's kind of hard to execute. Um, yeah. And one left. Um, like, I can't say Double Rack to Vigia because Double Rack to Vigia is kind of trivial. Yeah, well, it's easy to win, it's just annoying and bad. <laughs> yeah. So I guess uh... I'll have to say Mission 3 for the memes. Atticus. Atticus isn't really hard, it's just long. Yeah, I, I mean, it. I died because I made a menuing error. Like, a pretty serious one. Um, but usually, the risk of death is not particularly high. Like, there is a chance that uh, Provoke wears off right before he picks his target for Meditate, and then you happen to get targeted, and there's, like, nothing you can do about that, really. But uh, that's pretty rare. Uh, yeah, I need like three superconductors because I have all the bomb shells and bomb cores. Um, uh, wait. What is it? Like, I don't remember. I think it's, uh, I think it's 94, but I'm gonna get 97 to be safe. Uh... Alright, so here we're going to be getting a magic weapon for snow. Um, this is going to... Uh, where's my... Oh no, I need to do the sashes first. That's right. Uh, okay. To Rectivigia is easy in plot, yes. In all missions, it's the hardest mission by far. Okay, it was 97. Good shit, me. Uh, wait. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, we're going to be getting the Soul Blazer on Snow, which is going to be his best magic weapon. Um, we're going to need to have him uh, spec'd for magic damage for these turtles, because if we don't, then uh, he will run in as a Ravager uh, while chaining on the legs, and it's like way slower, so we want to avoid that. Um, same with Lightning when we bring her in. Um, but Neil does not have any uh, physical rap abilities, so we don't have to worry about her in that case. Uh, where's the... Yeah. And we are also going to get um, some Gaian rings, which are going to be very important <laughs> uh, for some fights coming up. Um, or for, for the turtle fights in general, I mean. Uh, because they reduce earth damage by 40%, which is massive. Uh, Gigant War is another mission that, right now, even in all missions, it's not that hard. It's just annoying, and in plot, is it's very Yeah, trivial. it's easy. <laughs> Like, if you're not paying it, like, you gotta kind of be careful about the five star, but even then, with the setup we use, it's pretty free. Like, we cheese the fuck out of that five star. Yeah, with a lot of these missions, it kind of just depends on, like, when do we do them. Yeah. And since Gigantor in, in this category is, like, at the very end, it's... Yeah, exactly. Uh... Yeah, Gigantor is the second to last mission. Uh oh. I sold my connoisseur catalog. Oh, you did. True. Uh, oh, I saw it at the time as well. Well, I yeah. thought I, I thought I was supposed to sell it. I'm confused. Um. Uh, okay. Uh. I mean, I guess I'll just buy one. Can you? Yeah. Well, you can buy a collector. You can buy a collector and, and I have trader. and I have a Minar stone, so hmm. uh, kind of expensive still. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I sold I sold the collect connoisseur for 125, so it's really only a 25,000 expenditure, I guess overall. That's so I'm confused because I was like positive that we sell one here. I must I must have screwed something up. Oh well, that's fine. Easily recoverable. That's not that bad because it's just a 25,000 loss overall. Alright, so... Um, uh, do one of you want to explain the uh, turtle... Like how the turtle fights kind of go? Uh, just while I'm doing the menu. Sure, so when um, when Serena fought the Adamant Tortoise mission earlier, uh, she used the summon to take out the legs. Uh, that's obviously not going to be possible every time, because we have to do a bunch of these in a row, and you wouldn't have to TP to summon every single time. So for most of these fights, uh, we're going to have to deal with them straight up. I think you just said that uh, that it's possible to summon for the first one. Yeah, right? we have you to have summon, to for, the summon, summon one, or... for the first one. Or... Right. Otherwise, no dies. Uh, he can yeah. die. Um, okay. With slow damage rolls, he won't, but... So it... w once, you've, once you've taken Wait, out the doing? legs, the fight looks much like it looked before, just getting uh, some important buffs and debuffs on and staggering, and then doing the uh, lining up attacks with daze. Uh, in this case, it's going to be snow doing the dazes. Yeah, uh, because we need Fang to, well, do damage, and then high wind in the end. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, when, uh, when we're going to have fights where we have to take out the legs, it's going to be a bit more complicated. Uh, the idea then will be to stagger both of the legs uh, from far away. Again, this is why we've set up uh, Snow to uh, be magic so that he doesn't run in and get owned by the stomps because they will yeah. do more damage if you're closer. The yep. stomps, um, I'm also pretty it's sure just they slower. can one shot if the uh, character is directly below the leg. Yeah, depending on it, it, it it's basically a double hit. So if they could die to two hits, then they could die to, or they could get one shot by that. But 
Yeah. Um, if they so, are at an HP where they can take two hits, then they're safe. But yeah, still not good. <laughs> yeah, so the goal there then is to stagger both of the legs quickly, and then Fang is actually able to one-shot them once staggered uh, with a high wind. The legs actually, I think they... Did they resist damage? To, they uh, yeah, to they, degree, they, have, they? they have physical, I believe. Right, but again, a uh, high wind just cuts through that. Yeah, just ignores. Uh, wait, do I have any? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, now that we're getting to the point where we can start maxing out some of our rolls, we're going to be getting these seal trophies. Like, I just got the commando seal. Um, you just get one for each roll once you max out one character in one of those rolls. Uh, but doesn't really matter because we still have to get the uh... master seal. Yeah, we still have to get the master seal, which requires us to max everybody anyway. So it's like those are kind of just incidental trophies that come with the package. Um... Where are my... Oh, I need to do Fang first. Yeah, okay. I forgot. She has the... Uh... Soul Blazer, Blessed, Sewer. I'll have to like think back on that and figure out what, like, why I. Oh, not two Blessed Talons. I was up. fine. I got uh, two Connoisseurs and uh, one Collector. I didn't sell the second Connoisseur on this menu, but I do remember having two. I could have sworn that I sold one. I can also much. open my save and check real quick. No, it's okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I'm. I don't want to think about it during the run. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just look over it at the end of the run. See what I see what happened. Yeah, the the flow for this fight uh, do is, I have... is, is almost always uh, going to be pretty similar. I think I need to ether saw. That's like slightly. Well, actually, no. I I won't ether saw here. But then if I need it before the fourth tortoise, I'll just ether saw there. Oh yeah. That makes mm -hmm. more sense. Because that way, because it's like really close, it looks like it's just under three and a half, so. Um, I don't want to use the Ether Soul if I don't need it. Dig? Fog? I think we're at 11 now. I think my last dig was the TR. That's pretty good. We're on good pace with digs. But they can just disappear any moment. Yeah, so I guess this is kind of the first time, well, no, I guess Neo Chu, but outside of that, this is the first time we're really going to start seeing how broken the Bravera and Faithra buffs are. Oh, yeah. Um, which we've kind of talked about them. They're basically twice the uh, increase in damage that Bravery and Faith are. The trade-off being that they don't last as long, but it really doesn't matter because... Um, because what we do, uh, because, like, if, if, even if it wears off, like, um, we can, uh, we can just, like, rebuff it pretty quickly, and, like, we're still gonna save time for all, just all the extra damage we're gonna do. Yeah, again, just quickly taking out the legs with the with yeah. the summon and then just immediately getting rid of the summon by doing the finisher. Yeah. Bahamut is the most used summon in this category just for these fights. <laughs> yeah, like um What was I about to say? I don't know, I forgot it. But yeah, we uh, we need to get Deep Protect, D Shell and Imperil on these guys. Um, we cast Bravera on Fang and Faithra on Vanille. Uh, they're gonna both be doing um, a lot of damage once we get into uh, a little chain. And now Snow's gonna spam Daze while Vanille and Fang kind of just beat him up. Now we have to be kind of careful with these guys because we're not really strong enough to like one shot these guys from like 50% HP just yet. Um, so it's kind of tricky. That's like one of the 
hard, really hard things about these fights is that uh, like really optimizing when you need to go for high wind because you really want to play it on the safe side with high wind because if you if you go too late then you'll yeah you'll lose a couple seconds because you went later than you had to but if you go too early then it can be really bad because it resets the chain and he can just stand back up and uh, that's a retry yeah uh depends because uh Sometimes you can just camp in discretion and just spam high wind on the head. <laughs> it, like, it looks pretty silly, but since the head, I believe, 90% resists damage, like yeah, it's like your I only way to damage at that point. <laughs> Which high wind kind of sucks on unstaggered targets, but it's still going to be better than attacks. But yeah, so if... these, enemies, these enemies look very similar, but they're slightly different in stats. So the version that uh, she's going to be fighting now is... A little bit weaker. Uh, yeah, these are the four toys. The first one is the toys. Yeah. They give the same CP and drops as well, but the uh, stats are a little bit lower on this one. Yeah. Um. The one. You one... did you liver scope on the first uh, toys? Huh? Did you use the liver scope on the first yeah. toys? Oh, okay. Didn't see. But Very yeah. Fast. Um. So yeah, these, these guys are weaker in most ways. One way that they're actually more difficult is that they have a higher chain resistance um, right. than uh, the Toises. So it does take a little bit longer to stagger them. I also feel like these guys have a higher resistance to debuffs, but I, I'm i not 100% sure on that. It just kind of seems like it's a lot harder to get Imperil to stick on these guys. But I don't know if that's just my perception or if that's actual. And you can't look that up on Gamer Corner because they only have the uh, the standing version resistances. Maybe saying they do resist more. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, like that would have killed it like in later toy sleeps when we have more stats, but yeah. Uh how's the run? It's alright. Uh it's not gonna world record, but it's just it's been fun. We're just chilling. So are we are we are we zero for three on toys drops so far? Yep. Oh boy. Yep. Very so again, um the the hope here is to get ingot drops or the long shot trap drop. Um, ingot drops are around 27 percent. Um, trap they're, drop is they're, well, they're, point five. Oh, are, sorry. Are, are you? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's higher. It's 5.5 for the trapezohedron. Then if that fails, it's a 37.5 for the uh, for the yeah. ingot. So I think that comes out to. Of around a 27% overall for ingots. It's, well, it's close enough. Uh, Snow died? Am confused? Oh! Uh. That shouldn't happen. Yeah, I may have, uh. Oh, well, then. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, uh, oh Snow may have less oh, HP than he's supposed to. Because uh, I did kind of screw up and get some out of ring and Ravager that I wasn't supposed to. But. Uh, well, it's just this fight. The next one is a summon fight, so. Yeah, I'll just go we ahead and just... get some more here just to be safe, because with... you really should only need a couple more nodes and he's in the clear. Yeah, it's like he's true. good now. We are all math nerds. Okay. Yeah, I thought like 12,000 was enough, but maybe it's a little more than that. You probably had that fight if it wasn't for the badly timed stomp anyways. So. Yeah. 
would have just had to rehaze the snow, but that's not a big deal. Oh, you know what? 12,000 is enough. Um, I screwed up. I put the, uh, I, I have the silt stone on snow instead of fang. Oh, that's the problem. That explains it. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. Of it. I was thinking about how later we put it on snow. Well, I need to swap that out. Uh, that could be a problem on the poison. Oh yeah, that will definitely be a problem on the poison. That, like, it was just so weird because I was like certain that 12k was enough. No, I think it is, but I think it's just because of that. <laughs> so to, to clarify, I have um, I have two Gaian rings, which reduce earth damage by 40%, and then I have one Siltstone ring, which reduces earth damage by uh, 35%. Uh, we used to just get three Gaian rings, but I, I decided to try out just doing... Um, just doing uh, two, because I felt like the third was kind of overkill for the most part. Because at every stage of development, we have somebody who's tanky enough to survive with uh, just the salt stone. Early on, it's Fang, and then later on, it's going to be Snow. Although, really, I guess once Snow can survive with the salt stone, Fang still can as well, but... Okay, yeah, well, I need to fix that. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, wait, do I have. Oh, I'm so close to 3 TP. Oh, feels bad, man. Just, I don't, I don't do know. Bring up yeah. the on the dog, so. Nah, I just threw it. It's not that big of a deal. You yeah. can that uh, ether soul is reserved for one loop if you don't use it on the first one. You don't want to later yeah, so that just means I won't be able to summon uh, on a later loop, but that's not really like I don't even think the summon strat seems that much for the first choice. Honestly, just because I mean, the I... full finisher. So yeah, th this this is um, for every loop that we do, we're gonna summon on this one specifically because it means we just don't have to deal with the dogs and yeah, also then don't have to deal with the legs. Yep. So it just works out nicely. Uh. Yeah. So we used to use assassination here um, instead of infiltration, which is uh, a ravager and two saboteurs instead of three saboteurs, but. I kind of figured that Fang is more useful as a saboteur just spamming in peril before in peril lands. Because, like, her Ravager isn't even doing that much work if there's no in peril. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. Because, like, either, either in peril is slow to land, in which case you're stuck in. Uh, assassination for a long time and um, not even building that much chain with Fang's Ravager, or Imperial lands quickly and you just go to try disaster anyway. So it's like I feel like there's not really a scenario where um, where uh, assassination is actually better. Are we still at no drops? Yeah. Not a good start to this toys farming. Yeah. No, it is not. Okay. Um... Is for the record, this is where most of the rest of our money is going to have to come from from these yeah. farms, and it's all from random drops. The platinum ingot, which is the thirty well, and something the, and the percent. Gold nugget. Uh, sure. Them. Yeah. Okay. We we do get the sixty k every time from the mission sixty three reward. Yeah. But that's um, not going to be enough on its own. <laughs> yeah, because the ingot is. Uh, 150k, so that's like two and a half gold nuggets. Yep. For every one of those you get. 
And on average, per loop, you expect to get... Alright, thank you, Ada. ...around... Good luck with your errands. Two-ish. Oh, or a little bit, little, bit, little bit less than two ingots per loop is expected. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, zero in a loop is pretty bad. <laughs> we do have a, another chance here, but uh, yeah. Granted, we could always make it up with good drops later, but... You know, you can't count on that. <laughs> Yeah. And if Guess we. Who's back. Um, I would say you, but that seems too obvious. <laughs> Holy shit. Fire, blizzard, 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 blizzard. Nice. Welcome back, Titan. Excellent execution string. How's, how's it been going? Peachy. Uh... Not farming just started and it's been us because no drops. Yeah, Fault Warrens was bad too. <laughs> two deaths to both, uh, or no, just one death to Neochu, but then a really slow fight, and then two deaths to Atticus, although one was really quick. Yeah, the second one was really unfortunate because I had set up the incorrect paradigm and did not realize until uh, like three minutes into the second fight, so yeah. Uh, Rusta is asking if you can join the commentary. Uh, if you are on stream in Discord, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, we can. I'm fine with. We have to increase the room size. Uh, well, a mod, a mod should be able to drag. I'll do it. In. Well, yeah, that works too. Um, yeah. Did you join my Discord, Rusta? Yeah, so one thing that really sucks on this fight is when we don't have Adrenaline, um, which can happen if we get hit by the, uh, when the long, er, long we, when the Toys collapses, it has a hitbox. Um, and usually if we get hit by that, then we're not going to have Adrenaline for the final phase, which sucks, but like, okay, there's Ningit. But I don't really Fog. think it's worth going, doing the more The first medic. of many. Yeah, so this next split is, I call it the Powerpuff Girls split. We're going to <laughs> you be using Lightning, Vanille, and Fang, and we're going to run around saving the day. Yeah, we just do a, a bunch of random mission strings. Yeah. And we're going to be um, leading Lightning because end spells are going to be pretty important on a few of these fights, and uh, we don't really want to rely on her AI. It, I don't know, this... this I'm waiting for you to join the Discord so I can put you on the on the call, Rusta. I don't know. This section I feel like could be reworked because, like, I don't know. Just something about it just doesn't feel that good. But I don't really have any immediate ideas. I I have started putting a, a pair of sprint shoes on Fang, just because not having haste on her is really bad on a couple fights. Um. Which is unfortunate because we used to be able to just switch this party in and not even change any equipment. Okay, there he is. Like, it would be nice if we, if I could like fit in Fang's synergist somewhere in here, but I don't know. I, I haven't well, really thought. Oh, he already through. gave you the, the roll. Hello, Rooster slash Blake. Hello. Good morning. Hello. I, for a second, I was like, is it still morning? Not quite. <laughs> no, very close. No, it's still is. morning no, it is somewhere. Not. It is for me. That's... You are very quick, Sia. Yeah, Sia's on top of that shit. She is a gamer. So yeah, another pretty much trivial mission uh, coming up here. Wait, how do I do this? I do... Uh, Get yeah. Snow out of here. Yeah, I was just trying to think of how I... What order do I do it? Okay, so... Uh, strike team. 
Destroy disaster. Or infiltration, rather. Um. Oops. You know. I don't think I need bully. Probably something better I could put there. Like, what do we use bully for? Uh, so bully so is it's for the nitra. It's and... for if Zern. It's for if you don't get oh, the it's debuffs. It's only for the nitra, yeah. Yeah, it's just if you don't. Oh, whoops. It's just if you don't get the debuffs at the you beginning, but the like, effect. I feel like I never even see that. I feel like I always get the debuffs in the first stream. You, you are going to fail getting the strings right on the first time you don't have bully, and then you're going to cry. But what that's is what I was about to say? Yeah. What is my problem <laughs> with like setting default paradigms? I'm so bad at it today. Um. Yeah, that, that one I wouldn't have retried, but that five star might actually be scary without that. Really? Even with a Priya? Uh, yeah, probably not. I don't know. I just didn't want to risk it. I'll have to calculate afterwards. Yeah, I mean, we can just uh, see what the battle rating is. No, live routing. Okay, yeah, no, it would have been fine. <laughs> that was a 21,000. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say. Well, I don't, say. I don't know. I just know it's a low. <laughs> I didn't think those were very high level enemies, so I thought it might be tight. Just didn't want to risk it. Yeah, yeah but level 13 doesn't make sense. Alright, so. I mean, you're not we wrong. just got the trophy for all the B C. rank missions? C rank missions. Yeah. What is the uh, Zeth at? I don't know. Friends I feel like with I Kelger, asked this question probably. six on hours ago. You asked. see turning back and going to the teleport stone is faster than doing these dodges. Huh? I think it is. I don't think so. I mean, it probably is if you, like, fail multiple dodges, which is probable. But I feel like with no failed dodges, I, like, on PS3, I doubt it, because that adds two no, loading screens. No, on PS3, screens. it's absolutely faster to go through here, but yeah. only if you don't fail any dodges. Yeah. I've been meaning to time that, but just haven't had a chance to. As long as you timed it, didn't you? Oh, this? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I found that I think it is, like, barely, as in, like, less than 10 seconds faster to do this rather than run back and teleport. Really? So if you fail any dodges, it's not worth it. On PS3? That's really surprising, because yeah. that's two extra loading zones to go the other way. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I think it was. So, to clarify, you mean you backtrack to Yashas, and then... Yeah. And then, and then so teleport, teleport to, to Valus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know, that sounds oh. like it'd be significantly slower. Maybe, in, uh... it, 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 might, it might be because I was always... I don't know if I was at the time doing that yet, because I know now I'm always... I was always decepting one of the flans because I couldn't figure out how to do that dodge oh. that you did. The dire flan? Um, I mean, I that dodge know. is dumb and random, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if I if I was already doing that at that time. I, I don't really remember exactly. Yeah, I get you. Well, it's one of these well. days I'll get around to timing it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Groudon. For... So apparently those trophy names... They're the Warriors yeah. of Light from Final Fantasy V. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that uh, it's it's Kelgar's yeah. cup. Well, I knew Caesar about Galoof. I didn't know that the I other one was Grail and Dorgan's trophy. Those are the four Warriors of Light, or technically yeah. the Warriors of the Dawn. Because I knew um, for FF5. I knew Galoof. Like I played through FF5, but I guess it was like 2016, so I've probably forgotten a lot of it. <laughs> Well, G Galoof is the only one that's like in your party. The other three yeah, yeah. are basically like his old buddies. Right. From okay. That the game. that does sound familiar. Now that you say it, actually. Right, yeah. I, remember... I, I haven't gone through that one yet. FF5 is already. Remember the Amon fight in Fault Warrens? We are going to fight another one, but we are just going to bully this one because it's only one. Yeah, and it's a free preempt. 
Um, we do have a Tetratic Tiara on Lightning, so she can interrupt the Breath attack, her attack. Tetratic Tiara giving Vigilance, which is what lets yes. her interrupt. Yep. You know what I'm suddenly very thankful for? That you're not required that the next battle that you do is the mission. Yeah, that would be kind of weird. He tried using Storm Conduction. Yeah. Yeah, the Zer Nature fight. I don't know. I. Zer Nature without a Sentinel just sucks, but I don't know. I'll get that on the way back. Oh, it's actually over here. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah, I'll get it on the way back. Hmm. Um. Yeah, Maybe I don't the know. Kelet gold nuggets, yes, but uh, we are not going to fight Kellets for those. <laughs> yeah, we, we do get the gold nuggets, but we get them. Uh, in, later in the game when they're defended by Shaolong Guiz because Shaolongs are a lot more worth our time to fight than Kellids. Yeah, we would be doing that anyway, so it, uh, yeah. it worked out nicely. Which, like, in the old route, that wasn't even really an option because they were getting the battle standard on Snow, which is very expensive, and you kind of needed those gold nuggets early on. I mean, I guess maybe if you got a ingot from... Eden Toys or 63, you may not have needed it, but generally you wanted those gold nuggets early in that route, I believe. So now we're going to be fighting yet another Zernitra. Uh, this will be yeah. like the easiest one. That digs the one up on the plateau. That's not worth yeah, it's chasing the one down. Up on the plateau. I always keep this one. It's yeah, not worth. it's really not worth. Yeah. <laughs> Cactuar. That's just being a jerk. Yep. But they're so cute and cuddly. Lol. I don't know about okay, boomer. Like cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, the only other fight where you fight a Zinitra on its own it is uh, in all forms, and that one cannot be a preemptive, so this is the easiest one by far. I'm not entirely sure how the hitbox for this fight works. Because you just kind of like ran underneath it, yeah. and apparently that was enough to preempt it. Yep, we do that for the Zinitra and... Uh... And I was just getting stuck. Massif as well. You, you'd think that you, that wouldn't work, right? Like, you'd think you'd have to, like, jump from on top of it. I mean, that's, like, very far from the most illogical thing in this game, so... Can't say I ever <laughs> thought much of it. <laughs> There's even a chocobo jump point right next to it. You totally could have done it like that. Yeah, but you can't... And you can't get into an encounter from a chocobo minor details <laughs> Fair. so fun fact uh i actually timed if it was faster to ride over to mahabara or to go to the waystone and teleport uh riding straight to mahabara was about five seconds faster but i still opt to go to the waystone because it gives more chances for digs yeah, because we've already done this path yeah. by Chocobo. Yeah, so if there were any digs over there, we would have seen them already. So if not jumping on the bird is not the most illogical thing about this game, what is the most illogical thing about this game? Oh, God, I can't even... <laughs> <laughs> that the data log entry for Ravager mentions spells of fire, ice, lightning, water, and other elemental affinities <laughs> when the other elemental affinities is arrow. <laughs> that's I'm a pretty gonna, good one i'm gonna agree with loot on that one <laughs> no i'm gonna i'm gonna go with consolidation being limited in effect you know efficacy yeah i still think it's the water 
Oh yeah, the chocobo that's jump true. Onto the island. That is yeah, pretty... Like... What like was the big don't... thing in the... That is Titan, not Mr. Titan, but... That is the... Well, there are no Earth Ravager abilities. Uh, but yeah, Isn't the Ravager ability? The big thing walking in the background is Titan. That is a foul C who... Uh, th those were like the trials we were going through in Fault Warrens. That was like his domain. And he was pitting us against a bunch of endangered species. So Titan's job in... Uh, so all falsies have a very specific job. Titan's job is to foster and... Um, foster evolution. So what he does is um, eat some species and then spit out new ones and try to see if the new ones are stronger than the existing ones. Uh, last... He basically is a catalyst for evolution in Pulse, uh, generally speaking. Last save was like two hours ago. I'm... You don't really do safety saves in this game because there are no actual game overs. I will probably do a safety save before Treasure Hunter, though. <laughs> I don't do those in my own runs, but I really don't want to screw that up in a marathon. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, jeez. So yeah, there are some right. pretty annoying dodges here, but the good news is if we get caught, we can just beat them up in like five seconds, so... <laughs> oh yeah, we are gonna do plenty of those bullshit dodges very soon.